Hi guys. I would like to invite you to the audiobook service where we upload more than 300 hours of different audiobooks a week, link in details in the video description. 77. In that case, I'll let you go first. Although I don't know why Su Mu can still maintain his sanity after being turned into a corpse, Taoist Zishan is not the ultimate Taoist priest, and it will not hinder anything. Taoist Zishan performed Taoism, transformed into a huge paper crane, and sent Su Mu down. Lu Yuqing followed closely behind him with the coffin of acacia wood. After landing, Su Mu went straight to the corpses of the two martial arts masters without saying a word. It's actually quite distinguishable. The warriors under the martial arts master no longer have complete corpses, they are all broken corpses. Only the master of martial arts has a tyrannical body and a condensed chi. This preserves the integrity of the body. It is also ironic. I don't know how much time and energy these geniuses have spent. It took a lot of hard work to cultivate into a martial arts master, and wherever he goes, everyone is in awe. But in front of the scarlet dragon centipede, which can swallow the sky, the only advantage is to keep the body intact. Thinking of this, Su Mu felt a little emotional. Not for others, but for yourself. The water in this world is too deep, and Su Mu deeply feels that his power is far from being strong enough. The road to becoming stronger has just begun. Su Mu thought about it, took out the blood essence of the two martial arts masters, and swallowed it. As for the other warriors, although there is some strength, the broken body and the overflow of blood essence are useless. The blood of the two top martial arts masters was swallowed, and Su Mu immediately felt a fiery and surging power explode in his body. He hurriedly lay down in the locust wood coffin that Lu Yuqing had prepared for him in advance, and began to condense the corpse energy in an environment full of yin evil energy. After Su Mu was put into the coffin, Taoist Zishan searched around the big pit for a while, but unfortunately found nothing. The shocking swallow of the red dragon centipede was like a dream, so powerful that it didn't seem real. Only the giant pit here and the corpses nearby can prove that everything just happened really happened. Daoist Zishan, who did not find the slightest, could only give up, and return to the cottage with Lu Yuqing and Su Mu lying in the locust coffin. After a few days, Taoist Zishan left the cottage and embarked on the journey of fighting against drought again. In the previous few times, he had become familiar with the people from Tiani sect. The Tiani sect also accepted this fellow with good cultivation and willing to fight against the drought together. However, due to the wrong number of paths, Daoist Zishan and the monks from Tiani sect had a hard time cooperating, so they could only help a little on the side. Therefore, to deal with the drought, we still have to rely on a group of Qi cultivators from the Tiani sect. Speaking of which, before going to the villa, Daoist Zishan and the monks of Tiani sect had a fight with Hanyu. The drought was defeated and fled, and there was no trace for the time being. Therefore, Taoist Zishan had time to find Su Mu and Lu Yuqing. So many days have passed, and I don't know if the people from Tiani sect have found the scorpion. In this way, Taoist Zishan left the cottage and embarked on an unknown lost road. Time flies. Su Mu lay down for two months. In the past two months, the corpse energy in his body was rolling, and it became more and more condensed. Lu Yuqing kept pouring corpse-raising liquid into the locust coffin, and then accompanied by Taoism to ensure that Su Mu was in the most perfect corpse-raising environment. As time passed, the thick corpse hair on Su Mu's body gradually faded, revealing his original appearance. When the corpse hair was completely gone, Su Mu's appearance was not much different from that of ordinary people, but his skin was slightly paler. Of course, there are still big differences. For example, Su Mu has no heart, no blood, cold skin, and a stiff body. Some parts are still standing still. However, these are not the focus of Su Mu. What he cares most about is his own strength. After the corpse hair completely faded, Su Mu finally evolved into a flying zombie. To have such a fast evolution rate, naturally, the help of the source of drought is indispensable. If there is no source of drought, Su Mu estimates that it will take him at least half a year to refine the blood essence of these two top martial arts masters, so as to advance to fly stiff. These two were top martial arts masters in their peak state before they died. 
Not a guy like Wei Zhuang who lacks qi and blood and is half dead. Let's talk about Su Mu's strength. After evolving to this level, his corpse is indestructible, almost immortal, and has the ability to fly to the sky. Ordinary methods, it is difficult to eliminate the hemp. Not to mention the rumored methods of dealing with zombies. Fei Zone belongs to high-level demons, and its combat power is similar to that of ordinary martial arts masters. It is enough to be a disaster. Su Mu is stronger than the ordinary flying stiff. After all, he has wisdom and martial arts, and is not a fool without a brain. What's more, Su Mu has the origin of the scorpion, which gives him the possibility to evolve the scorpion. Just a little possibility is precious enough. After the smooth evolution, Su Mu originally wanted to retreat for a while to stabilize his strength. But at the moment when the avatar was frozen, a mechanized sound disrupted his plans. Congratulations to the host for successfully evolving into a flying zombie. The Dungeon World Monster Template has been confirmed, and the dungeon is complete. The host can choose to return immediately, or return automatically after a month. Hearing this voice, Su Mu was stunned for a moment. He originally thought that this dungeon world would require the elimination of King Biling or the Drought, or even both at the same time in order to clear the level. Unexpectedly, after evolving into a flying zombie, this dungeon world will be cleared. After thinking about it carefully, it seems reasonable. With the strength up, Su Mu's evolution into a flying stiffness is already the limit. Some time ago, his behavior of secretly stealing the source was discovered by Hanji. The drought directly abolished the proximity symbol, cutting off the connection between the two, or the two corpses. Su Mu probably stole half of her source of drought. Say more, say less. It can be regarded as a possibility for him to evolve into a drought, but there must be an extreme chance to do so. Besides, the two bosses originally conceived by Su Mu, the king of Biling and the Ganji. King Biling died tragically under the mouth of the red dragon centipede, and there was no left. Since then, it has become the so-called mysterious disappearance in the history books. As for the dry scorpion. Chi cultivators obviously have an advantage in fighting against them. As a zombie, Su Mu, who is a low-ranking rank, can't be of much help. So. Is this copy coming to an end? Thinking of this, Su Mu felt a little melancholy. Before I focused on improving my strength, I always felt that everything had just begun. In a trance, I realized that it was about to end. At this moment, the first figure that appeared in Su Mu's mind was Lu Yuqin. Separation always comes so suddenly. Su Mu sighed and did not leave directly, but chose to return automatically after a month. He flew out of the locust coffin and was about to find Lu Yuqin. But as soon as he came out of the coffin, Su Mu found that the atmosphere in the cottage was a little wrong. The lively cottage in the past is now devoid of people. If you listen carefully, you can still hear the sound of fighting outside. There is an enemy attacking the cottage. Who will it be? Su Mu's face flashed a murderous look, and the figure disappeared in place. Outside the cottage, a team of elite soldiers lined up neatly with awe-inspiring murderous aura. At the forefront of the army, Jiang Hongfeng rode a black-colored horse, high-spirited, so unhappy. Jiang Hongfeng, who is over fifty years old, is a martial arts master. It's a pity that the martial arts masters are also divided into three, six, and nine. And he happened to be the weakest one. What I really want to say is the early stage of the master. This kind of cultivation is already very good in other places. But under the command of King Jinshan, it is not very conspicuous. On weekdays, Jiang Hongfeng is not reused, and his cultivation resources are also very limited. But two months ago, the top martial arts masters around King Jinshan suddenly disappeared, and no one knew where they went. And the positions they vacated were naturally filled by the people below. These replacements have not only improved their status, but also greatly increased their cultivation resources. Jiang Hongfeng is one of the winners. This time, these martial arts masters received a secret order from King Jinshan. King Biling plotted to rebel, and has now been executed. But there are still many remnants entrenched in Jizhou and Yenzhou, and they need to be eliminated. 
The task Jiang Hongfeng received was to destroy this Wulong village that was said to dare to loot military assets. The cottage that Su Mu and the others founded originally had no name. But the mountain range where it is located is called the Wulong Mountains, and gradually it has the name of Wulong Village. A few days ago, Jiang Hongfeng had sent people to attack Wulongzai several times, but they were all repelled. In his opinion, the bandits in this Wulong village are indeed extraordinary. The overall strength is good and the discipline is very high. There were rumors before that the bandits in Wulong village had defected from the army, but Jiang Hongfeng still didn't believe it. After all, who is a good soldier who should not be a bandit? Now it seems that this news should be true. The elite soldiers of Wulong's High united as one, and with the help of favorable terrain, they defeated them several times in a row. But today, this farce should also end. Because, Jiang Hongfeng plans to take action himself. He wants these weak ants to see the strength of the martial arts master. On the other side, in the cottage. Everyone was silent, with worries hidden in their eyes, and their morale was obviously low. The reason is very simple. The enemy has been attacking the cottage for several days, but Su Mu has yet to show up. They didn't know that Su Mu and Lu Yueqing had gone out, and they didn't know that Su Mu was in the critical stage of raising the corpse. But at this critical moment, as the hidden leader of the cottage, Su Mu disappeared. This was a huge blow to the morale of the crowd. When asked Lu Yueqing, she didn't say anything. It is only said that Su Mu has extremely important things and can't get away from it. This made everyone more depressed. What's more, the enemy this time is not ordinary. Looking at the enemy at the foot of the mountain, the Nyo said in a solemn and solemn voice. It seems that the martial arts master plans to take action himself. During this period of hard work, he advanced to become a first-class warrior. This progress has been very fast. But in front of the martial arts master, it was just a bigger ant, with no resistance. Hearing this, Ah Hu said with a bitter face. Master of martial arts, master of martial arts. I didn't expect that I would still be qualified to die in the hands of masters of martial arts in my life. It's not a loss. Don't talk nonsense. We haven't lost yet. Hearing this, Lu Gao Tian, the owner of the cottage, immediately scolded. But even so, the morale of everyone was still low. The martial arts master is too powerful. In the eyes of ordinary warriors, it is an insurmountable mountain. How are they going to fight this battle? Everyone's hearts are covered with a layer of haze. But they waited left and right, and did not wait for the martial arts master to attack and eliminate. Looking down the mountain, I saw a familiar figure. You, who are you? Seeing this person who suddenly appeared and stepped on the head of his steed, Jiang Hongfeng's heart trembled, and he felt a sense of fear inexplicably. The master's powerful perception ability told him that this pale, handsome and tall man in front of him was very terrifying. So he didn't dare to shoot directly, but asked aloud. Hearing this, Su Mu was a little surprised. This martial arts master is a bit cowardly, so he doesn't shoot directly. But because of this, Su Mu was interested in chatting with him. Look at your battle flag, it should be from King Jinshan, right? King Jinshan is already dead, what are you doing here? Jiang Hongfeng was taken aback and retorted. Nonsense. My king is very good, when did he die? Not dead. Now, it was Su Mu's turn to be stunned. The Jinshan king in history is indeed not dead. But he clearly saw that the red dragon centipede swallowed the king of Biling and the king of Jinshan, how could he live again? That can't be done, the king of the mountain in the villa is fake. Or, the one that appeared after that was fake. Or, King Jinshan was indeed swallowed by the red dragon centipede, but he didn't die. For a time, Su Mu thought of many possibilities, but he couldn't guess the truth of the preparation. The only thing that can be confirmed is that there must be a big problem with King Jinshan. If it wasn't for the return in a month, Su Mu would definitely go to investigate. Now. What? Su Mu suddenly burst out and appeared behind Jiang Hongfeng, breaking his arms. The difference in strength between the two is too great. Su Mu's sudden action interfered with Jiang Hongfeng's qi in blood, 
causing him to be subdued by one move. Su Mu was very satisfied with the combat effectiveness displayed after the advanced flying freeze. He is more than ten times stronger than before. Although Jiang Hongfeng was far inferior to the top grandmasters, it was not something that Su Mu could beat when Mao was stiff. And now, Jiang Hongfeng was taken down by him in just one face-to-face. -face. This is the difference between Mao Zong and Fei Zong. What's more, Su Mu also gained some new abilities after advancing to Flying Freeze. It's just that Jiang Hongfeng is too weak, so he knelt down before Su Mu could show more strength. After restraining Jiang Hongfeng, Su Mu asked him some more questions. This year, the master of martial arts who is over 500 years old, his bones are softer than Su Mu imagined, and he easily explained everything he knew. From his mouth, Su Mu learned that he did not know that King Jinshan had a secret meeting with King Biling more than two months ago. I only know that some top martial arts masters and some close people around King Jinshan mysteriously disappeared. As for King Jinshan, he stayed in the palace. More than a month ago, they told them that King Biling was dead, and sent people to surround and suppress the old loyalists of King Biling and some forces that did not obey the discipline, such as Wulong village. After listening, Su Mu had more questions in his heart. Which side is this king of mountains on? He and King Biling are not brothers with the same father and mother, so are they very close? There are so many questions here. But Su Mu can't handle this anymore. After asking, Su Mu directly drained Jiang Hongfeng's blood, turning him into a mummified corpse. This scene scared all the soldiers under his command stupid. This is a martial arts master. An almost invincible existence in their eyes. It's like a little chicken was pinched to death, what a. After Jiang Hongfeng died, the army under his command naturally disintegrated. Seeing this, Lu Gaotian immediately led someone to rush to eliminate. Su Mu's strong return has boosted their morale. Destroyed all those remnants of defeated soldiers, and won a great victory. But as soon as the battle was over, Su Mu immediately asked Lu Gaotian to inform him, and everyone packed up and prepared to leave Jizhou. To be precise, it is to leave Dagon. Jizhou suffers from constant drought and the situation is chaotic. After Su Mu left, it was difficult for Lu Gaotian and others to live safely and stably. Therefore, Su Mu intends to find a place for them to settle down before leaving this dungeon world. While the people in Wulong village were packing up, Su Mu went to Taoist Zishan again. When he was found, he was mingling with people from Jianyi sect. A group of people sat on the ground, discussing what formation to set up and what Tao technique to use to destroy the drought. Su Mubin wanted to persuade Taoist Zishan to stop taking care of the drought. But after talking for a long time, he didn't move. Boy Su, you're right. I'm someone who almost died once, and I'm getting older, so I might as well find a good place to practice in peace. If I can make a breakthrough, I can live a few more years. But. I am a stubborn person. I must do what I want to do, or I will not be able to understand the Tao and heart, and I will not be happy. Then what can I do? Brave it. Ha ha ha. Seeing Taoist Zishan's free and easy laughter, Su Mu looked complicated. He didn't say anything more, and turned to look at Qing Shuzi who was on the side. Thinking that the sect of Tianyi sect no longer exists in the history of later generations, he couldn't help asking Qing Shuzi. If I tell you, you will all die, and the entire Tianyi sect will be wiped out. What are you going to do? Hearing this, Qing Shuzi was stunned for a moment. Obviously, he didn't expect this living corpse friend of Daoist Zishan to ask such a sentence. After coming back to his senses, Qing Shuzi thought for a moment, and then said calmly. Those who cultivate Tao seek longevity. Who wouldn't be afraid of death? Life and death are gone, so many years of hard work will be in vain. But. If we run away too who will deal with the drought? Everyone retreats, and everyone has nowhere to retreat. Someone has to stand up. Hearing these words, Su Mu was silent for a long time. Finally, he bowed to Tainijio and Zishan Taoist, and then left silently. In this world, there are always some people you can't see, silently supporting you. You can take a back seat, but please be respectful. 
Five days later, Su Mu returned, and everyone in Wulong village packed up. Su Mu took them north and entered the grassland. Along the way, I met a lot of barbarians. Su Mu, who had fled far away, was too lazy to care. But as long as they dare to do something to them, they will all be eliminated. After more than half a month, Su Mu finally found a place with lush water and grass, and cleaned up the surrounding barbarians. In this way, Lu Gao Tian and others have obtained a place where they can live and live. All are happy. Except for Lu Yuqing. That night, Su Mu and Lu Yuqing lay side by side on the grass, feeling the gentle breeze blowing across their faces. The two were silent for a long time, and finally Lu Yuqing broke the silence. Little Mu. You, are you leaving? Lu Yuqing's voice was a little choked up. Although Su Mu didn't say anything, Lu Yuqing had already read everything in his eyes. 78. In the face of Lu Yuqing's inquiry, Su Mu was silent for a moment, then said with a sigh. Yeah, I'm leaving. Then. Can we meet again? Lu Yuqing didn't ask Su Mu if he could not leave, but tearfully asked if he could see him again. This girl is so sensible that it hurts. Su Mu opened his mouth and was speechless for a moment. He still hasn't figured out what the essence of the dungeon world is, and he doesn't know what will happen to this world after he leaves. So no answer can be given. After a moment of silence, Su Mu decided to leave a spark of hope for Lu Yuqing. Yes, we will see you again. Practice hard. When you reach the end of the immortal road, we will see you again. The end of the fairy road. The end of the fairy road. Lu Yuqing lowered his head and muttered to himself, not knowing what he was thinking. Su Mu stepped forward and hugged this girl for the last time, his wife in this life. Lu Yuqing also hugged Su Mu tightly, tears moistening his chest. She used all her strength, as if she could keep Su Mu. But the month of January has come. Under the moonlight, Su Mu's body turned into little stars and quickly disappeared from this world. The last picture he saw was Lu Yuqing holding his phantom in tears. End of this simulation. Score, E. Dungeon Completion, 92. 6%. Points earned, 500. Comment, you have successfully evolved to the limit of what you can do in this dungeon world, but you are not perfect in some things. Dungeon Completion Reward 1, you can choose one of 10 random talents to be permanently cured, which will be automatically carried in future dungeons. Dungeon Completion Reward 2, congratulations on getting the monster template, Fei Zong. After regaining consciousness again, Su Mu has returned to the real world. In the real world, not even a second of time has passed. It's still that night, that bed. But Su Mu was no longer that Su Mu. He raised his head, looked at the bright moon hanging high outside the window, and was full of emotions. I hope that people will last a long time and live together for thousands of miles. After recovering his emotions, Su Mu began to organize the harvest this time. First of all, he chose to solidify the talent of kindness. Kindness, favorability of all living creatures 30%. Although the two talents Big Dream and Assimilation are very powerful, they also have many limitations. It only works under certain circumstances. However, the talent of kindness is very versatile and can be used in almost any environment. Unless there are all monsters and monsters around, not a single living person. After choosing the talent to be solidified, the real harvest arrives, the monster template. In the last dungeon world, the monster template that Su Mu obtained was Fei Zong. Su Mu thought about it, he was still alive and transformed into a zombie in an instant. And it is a very high level of flying stiffness. A powerful force surged in Su Mu's body, an endless corpse aura condensed around him, ready to go. That terrifying momentum is shocking. Fei Zong has the strength comparable to a martial arts master. With this monster template, Su Mu's combat power immediately increased more than tenfold. The most powerful ability of flying zombie is naturally the incomparably powerful corpse, but it still has some special abilities. Su Mu counted it, and there are three kinds in total. They are corpse poison miasma, blood control and corpse explosion. 
if I really want to say, there is also a flying escape. Among them, the corpse explosion is the most worthy of attention. This skill was acquired by Su Mu after he evolved into a flying zombie. It's just that I haven't encountered a powerful enemy in the back, and I haven't used it in battle yet. Su Mu tested the corpse explosion skill. After using it, his corpse will expand several times and become hideous and terrifying. This is the appearance. In terms of actual ability, it can explode several times the usual combat power in a short period of time, and the sequelae are small. After the outbreak period, Su Mu's strength will decline by about 30% and gradually recover within a day. Overall, this skill is the most powerful skill of flying stiff. In addition to the above two gains, there are some hidden gains. The real objects in the copy world cannot be brought back to the real world. But memory can. In the last dungeon world, Su Mu used his points to exchange for half of the nerve illumination, which is enough to cultivate to the innate realm. At this time, he still grasped the profound meaning of this martial arts technique. Su Mubin has mixed feelings and emotions. Thinking of this martial arts technique, I simply walked out of the house and practiced in the dark. Although his cultivation has not changed in the slightest, he is still a second-rate warrior. But after several lifetimes of tempering, Su Mu's martial arts became more advanced. Casual punches and kicks have the style of a grandmaster. Every bit of strength was brought into full play by him. But after practicing, Su Mu felt that it was not enough. The power of a second-rate warrior is too weak for him. In this state, Su Mu feels weak and uncomfortable. Moreover, it suddenly became weak, and the gap between the front and the back was very large. This makes the discomfort even more intense. Why not just unleash all your power? Thinking of this, Su Mu let out a low growl, and the corpse turned on. For a time, the corpse energy surged, and the incomparable power filled his body again. But Su Mu still felt unsatisfied. He subconsciously thought of another monster template, the Blood Evil Skeleton. The strength of the Blood Evil Skeleton is similar to that of the top innate warriors, and its various abilities are good, but it still needs to be developed. Su Mu didn't know what to think, and subconsciously stimulated the power of the Blood Evil Skeleton. At this moment, the two monster templates, Fei Zong and Shue Sha Skeleton, were activated at the same time, and a wonderful fusion occurred. On Su Mu's corpse, terrifying bone spurs grew, arming him. In addition to being terrifying and ferocious, he actually looks a little handsome. There is a unique dark wind aesthetic. Of course, Su Mu is more concerned about strength. In this state, his strength has once again improved a notch. If it's just Fei Zong, Su Mu's strength is probably equivalent to a martial artist in the middle stage of the master, or slightly stronger. In short, compared with the top martial arts masters, there will still be some gaps. But at this moment, the two monster templates of Fei Zong and Shue Sha Skeleton merged, allowing endless vigorous power to surge in his body. Su Mu felt that in this state, he was definitely not weaker than the top martial arts masters. Powerful feeling, wonderful. The monster template can be activated at the same time, and the bones are fused. I like this feeling. Su Mu looked at his body and felt the power in it, and was very satisfied. Under the stimulation of the surging power, he suddenly became a little restless. After a pause, Su Mu licked his scarlet lips and flew into the air. Then he soared recklessly over Yen Jing, venting his power. This feeling is very comfortable. Very happy. Where is the evildoer who dares to spread wildness over the imperial city? Too dare to take the Jin Mosi in his eyes, let me down. I don't know how long it took to fly, Su Mu suddenly heard a loud shout, and then a sword like shot at him like lightning. This sword like passed through the void, and in the blink of an eye, it was in front of Su Mu, as if to eliminate him with a sword. The incomparably sharp sword energy cut through the surrounding air. It made Su Mudu feel a sense of threat. His face condensed, and he waved his backhand with full strength and patted the sword light. When? With a sound of gold and iron intersecting, the sword light disintegrated in the epicenter, revealing its original appearance. It was a quaint flying sword that was three inches long. After this move, the flying sword flew upside down. 
Su Mu felt a slight tingling sensation in the palm of his hand, but it was not a big problem. This time, Su Mu woke up. This is the imperial city where the masters are like clouds. How could he be so reckless? Even if the strength increases greatly, it is far from the point of contempt for the heroes of the world. Thinking of this, Su Mu woke up. He didn't get entangled with that sword light, turned around and flew into the distance. If you fight again, I am afraid that you will be surrounded and beaten by the masters of the imperial city. Fortunately, Fei Jian didn't go after Su Mu. Su Mu spared a few laps in Yanjing. After confirming that no one was following him, he recovered and returned home quietly. After recovering, Su Mu vaguely felt that something was wrong. It is true that after coming out of the dungeon world, he felt a little bored in his heart. In addition, after the fusion of Fei Zong and Shue Sha skeleton, the powerful force will make him a little restless. But normally, it is impossible for Su Mu to be so brainless, flying directly over the imperial city to spread wildfire. Thinking back carefully, after turning into a demon, his consciousness became more and more restless, and there was a mad urge to vent in his heart. What exactly is going on? Su Mu was a little puzzled. Suddenly, out of the corner of his eyes, the crescent moon hanging high in the sky seemed to flash with blood. But if you look closely, there is nothing. Su Mu frowned slightly and stared at the moon for a while, but still found nothing unusual. Helpless, he could only turn around and go back to sleep. However, he was destined to be sleepless tonight. On the other side, a long-bearded old Taoist pinch repeatedly, and finally controlled the flying sword that was slapped by Su Mu and let it fly back swayingly. After taking back the flying sword, the man's face was pale, and there was a trace of cold sweat on his forehead. Ha! Huh. This time, the flying sword of Pindao was almost abolished. In this situation, all the people around this old man were stunned. They couldn't be more clear about the strength of this old man. On weekdays, slaying demons and slaying demons is as easy as killing chickens and dogs, or chopping vegetables and melons. Yu Yu reading WW. Bukanshu. Calm. But tonight, just fighting against the mysterious monster, it's so embarrassing. What is the origin of that mysterious monster, so terrifying? Master Kong Yun, how are you, are you alright? In addition to being shocked, these people did not forget to pay attention to the old man with long beards. Pindao is fine, but the demon just now. Very strong and terrible. Kongyin's face was solemn, and there was a deep worry in his eyes. These people belong to the Dagon Town Demon Division and are responsible for arresting the world's demons. Su Mu didn't cover his whereabouts, so he was discovered by the people of the Town Demon Division before he flew for a while. But he flew very fast, and his corpse was billowing with air, and his appearance was terrifying. It feels bad when you start it. Therefore, they invited the Taoist Kong Yun, who was highly skilled, and asked him to deal with the mysterious demon. This Taoist Kong Yun has cultivated to the state where the three flowers gather on the top and the five qi lack one. It is only one step away from refining qi to the great perfection and making his own small world take shape. And he is also a sword cultivator and his combat power is considered to be a good player among the qi cultivators of the same cultivating level. But even so, they still fell behind in the battle. That mysterious monster is really scary. Thinking of this, Taoist Kong Yun sighed and said. Hey! The strange celestial phenomenon that is rare in a century is about to come, and it is in troubled times. This world, this imperial city. I'm afraid there is going to be trouble. Saying that, Daoist Kong Yun raised his head and glanced at the crescent moon above his head, his eyes full of worry. 79. After the emulator is turned on once, it will enter a silent state for a period of time. I don't know when it will be opened next time. However, Su Mu just came out of the dungeon world, so he is not in a hurry to enter again. It takes a while for him to sort out his gains. For the next half month, Su Mu spent most of his time cultivating the spiritual illumination. Although the martial arts talent in the real world is average. But with several lifetimes of experience, Su Mu still easily advanced to become a first-class warrior. Such strength is naturally not enough to see in front of a master. 
But in the middle and lower tiers, it is not bad, and it can be a good errand. Of course, martial arts is not the root of Su Mu. His core strength must be the power of a demon. During this period, the eldest princess Li Lingyan approached Su Mu once and asked him if he would like to join the Xinma division. Recently, the town demon division has been recruiting new people on a large scale. In her opinion, this is a good opportunity for Su Mu. Su Mu was somewhat interested in the official force responsible for slaying demons and eliminating demons. Especially after a fight with the people from the town magic division that night, the interest was even greater. But after thinking about it for a while, he still refused. At present, there is no substantial benefit for Su Mu to join such an organization. It's better to stay and wait for the next simulation to start, so as to improve the strength. However, the tree wants to be quiet but the wind does not stop. Su Mubin wanted to practice safely until the next dungeon world opened, but in this troubled world, he didn't agree. This evening, Su Mu was having dinner with Su Tsongwu's family. After the catastrophe, Su Mu and their family became closer, no different from their relatives. At the dinner table, Su Kongwu frowned, as if something was bothering him. Su Mu looked at it, but didn't ask any further questions. Su Qingxue and Du Wanrong also noticed that the lively atmosphere on weekdays was much quieter. After the meal, Su Tsong sent his wife and daughter out, obviously he had something to tell Su Mu. Uncle Su, what happened? Su Mu took the initiative to ask. Hearing this, Su Kongwu sighed and said. After staying in the Imperial Army for so many days, the more I treat it, the colder I feel. It's so rotten to the point where it's hard to see what the Imperial Army is doing. It's full of children from aristocratic families, and they entered the Imperial Army with a gilded mind. Don't talk about first-rate warriors, even second-rate warriors can't see a few. The cultivation base of a third-rate martial artist is just a waste of the body that has been hollowed out by the color of wine. To say that they are wine sacks and rice sacks is an insult to this word. I thought Jinyui was bad enough, but compared to the Imperial Army, it's so good. Su Kongwu complained, obviously depressed for a long time. But before that, he never mentioned it. Suddenly mentioned today, obviously something else happened. Sure enough, after a short pause, Su Kongwu took a look from the left, and after confirming that no one was there, he cautiously said to Su Mu in a low voice. Xiaomu, I got the news that the rebels in Liangzhou have been victorious a few days ago, and they have already conquered more than half of Liangzhou. What is the imperial court doing? Whitewashing the peace and pretending that nothing happened. There is also the Holy Lord, who has not been in court for three months, and doesn't even know whether he is alive or dead. Hearing this, Su Mu's eyes flickered and asked in a low voice. Uncle Su, what do you mean? Su Kongwu sighed and said. Hey! The building is going to collapse. I'm afraid there won't be much time for this big job. We might as well find a chance and leave Yanjing as soon as possible. Su Mu didn't know much about the situation in Dagon, but hearing this also found the problem. He asked. Uncle Su, if the capital of Yanjing is not safe, can other places be safe? Wouldn't it be more chaotic? Su Kongwu shook his head and said. No. Do you know King Jinshan? The king of Jinshan is known as a virtuous man, he manages Yongzhou in an orderly manner, and his troops are strong and strong. In recent years, his momentum has become more and more powerful. It is clear that he has other intentions. I have an old boss, and now I work under the command of King Jinshan. We might as well go to him, maybe we can be a servant of the dragon. Xiaomu, what do you think? Su Mu didn't respond at first. But after hearing the three words Jinshan King, his eyelids jumped wildly. This guy, the king of Jinshan, is alive and dead, jumping repeatedly. Who knows what the he is? Take refuge in him. I'm afraid it's not going to die again. Su Mu couldn't figure out the bottom of King Jinshan at all, and really didn't want to have anything to do with him. After Su Kongwu finished speaking, he immediately persuaded. Uncle Su, be careful. From Yanjing to King Jinshan's fief, it's not a one or two day journey. In this troubled world, are we capable of protecting Auntie and Qingxue to get there safely? 
On the way, rebels, rebels, demons and monsters are terrifying. Hearing this, Su Kongwu frowned again. This, this is indeed a big problem. Hey, why is this world so difficult? Su Kongwu sighed deeply, feeling powerless. But only to give up the idea. Seeing this, Su Mu breathed a sigh of relief, comforted Su Kongwu a few words, and then walked out. As soon as he went out, he saw Su Qingxue waiting there with a worried look on his face. Seeing Su Mu come out, she immediately greeted her. Brother, is something wrong? Is there anything I can do to help? After the last disaster, Su Qingxue has matured a lot. The fourteen-year-old girl has already begun to worry about the future of her family. Su Mu shook his head and smiled, patted her head and comforted. Small problem, nothing major. Besides, it's really a big deal, and your father and I will help you. Hearing this, Su Qingxue relaxed a lot. Suddenly, as if remembering something, he said to Su Mu. By the way, my mother bought some sweet-scented asmanthus cakes, and I'll bring some for you. Having said that, the girl will go back to the house to get it. But after just two steps, he stopped. She stared blankly at the sky, and said in a daze with a bit of shock. This moon. Why is it red? Huh? What? Hearing this, Su Mu turned to look at the sky behind him. With just one glance, the pupils shrunk to the size of the tip of a pin. I saw that the full moon that just rose was actually blood red, as if blood would drip at any time. Red dazzling. Seeing this blood moon, Su Mu's heart was alarmed, and he felt a strong sense of unease. The blood moon is in the sky, I'm afraid it's not a good sign. Where's your mother? Where did she go? Su Mu hurriedly asked Su Qingxue. Mother went to Aunt Wang's house next door and said she wanted to send them some new dumplings. Su Qingxue was frightened by Su Mu's eager tone, and answered immediately. Hearing that Du Wanrong just went to the next door, Su Mu let out a sigh of relief and instructed her. Go, call your mother back quickly, and tell her that there is something important, and let her go home quickly. It is good. Soon, the people in the imperial city discovered the spectacle of the blood moon in the sky. Ordinary people don't know anything else, and they appreciate this spectacle one after another. Xiaomu, is there any problem with this blood moon? In Su Tsongwu's family, the four of them gathered together, and Su Mu looked like he was facing a great enemy. Hearing Du Wanrong's question, Su Mu said solemnly. This blood moon makes me feel inexplicably uneasy. It's safer for our family to stay together. If it's really all right later, I'll go back to my house. This way. What? Before Su Mu could finish speaking, there was a shrill scream not far away. The first scream was like a horn for the beginning. After that, there were screams one after another outside. A louder sound than a sound. Su Qingxue was so frightened that she almost didn't get into Su Mu's arms. Su Kongwu and Du Wanrong also changed their expressions greatly, they were terrified. This is the imperial city. How could there be mass killings? What's the big deal? Everyone is extremely uneasy. After hearing the scream, Su Mu, who had a bad premonition, immediately went out and climbed to the roof, looking at the place where the scream came from. I saw not far away, a civet cat-like, but extremely hideous and ugly monster was killing people. In this short time, I even eliminated three or four people. Maybe it's standing tall, too conspicuous. After the cat demon eliminated another person, it rushed towards Su Mu. This enchanting figure is strong and vigorous, leaping like a flying. At this speed, an ordinary person would definitely not have the time to react. The weaker warriors are far from being opponents. Unfortunately, it encountered Su Mu. One-handed corpse, bone claws spread. Su Mu faced the cat demon and slapped it with his paw. With this move, a fast, ordinary person can't even see the afterimage. A muffled sound exploded. As soon as the cat demon arrived in front of Su Mu, the entire upper body exploded into a cloud of blood. The rest of the corpse fell in a pool of blood and fell silent. Yu Yu reading. During the whole process, it was not even obvious that Su Mu had made a move. 
he seemed to be standing still. And when the cat demon approached him, it exploded. It's almost the strength of an acquired martial artist. Such a monster, one or two, is nothing, but now. Su Mu looked around, and wherever he could see, there were demons. All kinds of terrifying demons are scattered in the imperial city, slaughtering frantically. These demons have different strengths, but the weakest also have the combat power of acquired warriors. But this is clearly the imperial city. Where did so many powerful monsters come from? If I didn't say it, I thought it was hell. Su Mu really couldn't figure out what was going on. At the same time, he saw that there was something wrong with the state of these monsters, and they seemed to be extremely violent. Su Mu looked up at the blood moon in the sky and vaguely thought of something. When he was using the power of the demon just now, he also had a restless and violent feeling in his heart. It's just that he only transformed one palm, and all these thoughts were weak and did not affect him at all. But if it is completely demonized, it is not easy to say. This big thing, is it really going to die? Su Mu's face sinks like water. He didn't know what was going on tonight, but there was always an ominous premonition lingering in his mind. After thinking for a while, Su Mu decided to send the Su Kangwu family to the eldest princess Li Lingyan. Compared to here, the princess mansion is definitely much safer. Only when Su Tsongwu's family is settled can Su Mu look around to see what happened in the imperial city tonight. Click to download this site app, Massive Novels, free to read. 80. Uncle Su, Auntie, Qingxue, follow me, I'll take you to a safer place. Su Mu called out, and then took Su Tsongwu's family to the eldest princess mansion. Along the way, he encountered several demons, but they were all easily beheaded by Su Mu. Su Kongwu was stunned by his amazing fighting power. What happened to my nephew? How can you suddenly be in a mess after serving a prison sentence? Could it be that he was enlightened in prison? If it really had this effect, wouldn't the major prisons in Yanjing be full? Escorted by Su Mu, a group of four came to the inner city. Yanjing is divided into inner city and outer city. Most of the people living in the outer city are ordinary people. The inner city is full of dignitaries. Without some identity and background, it is impossible to establish a foothold in the inner city. Su Mu entered the inner city with the token given by Li Lingyan. As soon as he entered, Su Mu realized that something was wrong. There are significantly fewer demons in the inner city, and the average strength is one level weaker. Most of them are little monsters with only first and second rate strength. You must know that the people living in the outer cities are ordinary people with low strength. And the dignitaries in the inner layer, who doesn't have a few powerful guards. These little demons couldn't make waves in the inner city at all, they were being cleaned up quickly. It is estimated that there are not many casualties in the entire inner city. This distinction is too obvious, Su Mu can't help frowning. He felt more and more that the demon riot tonight was planned by humans. Otherwise this will not happen. But who has the courage and strength to play such a game in the imperial city? This matter is very big. Su Mu's heart sank slightly. But the most important thing right now is to send Su Tsongwu's family to the palace of the eldest princess. He stopped thinking about it and continued to act. The inner city is much safer. So Su Mu didn't spend much time and came to the Princess Long's mansion. After showing the token given by Li Lingyan again, she was politely invited in. A housekeeper-like figure helped Su Mu settle the Su Kongwu family. Then, according to Su Mu's intention, he took him to see Li Lingyan. When she saw Li Lingyan, she was standing in the back garden of the mansion, with several martial arts masters and qi refining masters guarding her side. Su Mu glanced at it, and roughly figured out the strength of these people. For martial arts masters. One grandmaster is consummated, and three grandmasters are in the middle stage. Three qi refiners. It was just a little bit away from the great perfection of qi refining, and it was similar to the master Kong Yun that night. The strength of these guards alone is enough to see that Li Lingyan is strong. But how could she be caught by the third prince that time? This is somewhat illogical. Su Mu walked towards Li Lingyan while thinking wildly. When he got closer, 
he found that Li Lingyan was looking up at the blood moon in the night sky with a solemn expression. You seem to be getting stronger again. Aware of Su Mu's call, Li Lingyan glanced back at him, showing a rare smile. This smile made all the masters around her look sideways, and their eyes were a little surprised. Who is this young man? How could she actually make the eldest princess smile at this moment? Is it just because he was born handsome? What the is going on tonight? Where did so many demons come from under the emperor's feet? Could it be that someone is playing tricks? Su Mu was too lazy to care what other people thought, and directly asked the biggest doubt in his heart. Hearing this, Li Lingyan restrained her smile and said with a slightly gloomy expression. A teenager who doesn't know anything can see the problem. Can't all the civil and military officials of the Manchu dynasty see or guess it? Don't dare to speak, don't dare to speak. Saying that, a look of anger appeared on Li Lingyan's face. And, powerless. Hearing these words, Su Mu moved in his heart and asked. Listen to what you mean, do you know who is behind the scenes? I know, I know. Otherwise, why do you think the town magic division suddenly recruited a large number of new people a few days ago? Actually, I already guessed that something would happen tonight. I just didn't expect it to be so crazy. Li Lingyan's answer made Su Mu a little horrified. Who in the end has such great power to dare to do anything in the imperial city? At this time, a middle-aged Taoist nun beside Li Lingyan explained the situation. The blood moon shining in the sky is a rare spectacle that can't be seen in a hundred years. Under the blood moon, the demons will be violent, more manic and bloodthirsty than usual. But, even if the blood moon is shining in the sky, the demon should not be so violent. Someone, added something else to the imperial city. Saying that, the Taoist girl, Foshan, waved, and a green light appeared. Under the cyan light, a translucent blue particle can be seen in the air, like dust in the sun. What are these things? Su Mu frowned. In this environment, if he turned into a demon, he would be more manic than usual, even if he didn't lose control. Su Mu hates the feeling of being out of control. A kind of pill dust that can amplify the effect of the blood moon. If there is no blood moon, it will have no effect. This thing is refined, obviously preparing for today. Hearing this, Su Mu breathed a sigh of relief, under normal circumstances it wouldn't affect him. After thinking about it, he asked again. Who the did all this secretly? Li Lingyan shook her head and said. Not to be said. That person's cultivation is too terrifying, as long as he mentions any title associated with him, it will cause him to feel. Su Mu's expression froze, and he felt that the water in this imperial city was too deep. Can you feel it when you speak twice? What a noble way of doing this. The most terrible thing is that such a powerful character is actually doing such evil things. Let Dignified go to the Imperial City and turn it into Purgatory. If this goes on, Su Muzhen will consider leaving Yanjing and find a safe place to avoid it. But in this troubled world, is there still a safe place? You came just in time. Although we guessed it was the one who did it, we don't know what his purpose was. So I'm going out to investigate, are you interested in coming together? Li Lingyan sent an invitation to Su Mu. Hearing this, the experts around Li Lingyan were even more surprised. This young man looks unremarkable, just an ordinary first-class warrior. What qualifies to act with them? Of course, these experts were just a little surprised, not stupid enough to question the eldest princess decision in public. Can. Su Mu ignored the surprised eyes of others, he just wanted to find out what happened to this imperial city. Then let's come together. After Su Mu agreed, Li Lingyan and his party left the princess palace and flew to the outer city. In this world, the human race is the absolute ruler. Demons, ghosts, demons, and some other evil spirits are all heterogeneous, and the number is very small. This time, so many monsters suddenly appeared in the imperial city, and all of them were quite powerful. This is very abnormal, obviously someone has arranged it in advance. But what the purpose is, I don't know at this time. Returning to the inner city again, there is a strong smell of blood, obviously I don't know how many people died. 
At a glance, you can see that many people from the town demon division are fighting with demons. They did their best to slay demons and slay demons. However, the manpower is limited, so I can't be busy for a while. Under the night, there are dilapidated corpses everywhere, and people crying for help everywhere. Such a scene of purgatory caused the faces of the masters beside Li Lingyan to change slightly, with anger in their eyes. Li Lingyan was calm. She took a deep breath and commanded in a deep voice. Our mission is not to save such people, but to find out the purpose of that person. Let's work in pairs, act quickly. Yes. After receiving the order, those martial arts masters and qi refiners left one after another, leaving Li Lingyan in place. This scene made Su Mu feel very strange. Why don't you leave two people to protect the eldest princess? You must know that she was just kidnapped by the third prince not long ago. Li Lingyan seemed to have guessed what Su Mu was thinking, and she said solemnly. The master of the third child is that one. I don't know if it's because of that person's influence. The third child's behavior is getting weirder and crazier recently. I haven't met him in private for a long time, and I was desperate to take advantage of the kidnapping opportunity to see if I could see him. Love reading. Who knows that you will eliminate you before you wait for a while. Speaking of which, Li Lingyan was a little helpless. But she also knew that even if there was no Su Mu to spoil the situation, the third prince Li Hongxiu probably would not appear. The teacher of the third prince? You are talking about the country. Thinking of the person who could feel it, Su Mu said a word and stopped. He didn't know much about the royal family. But he still knew about the fact that the master of the third prince was the master of protecting the country. Li Lingyan obviously knew what Su Mu wanted to say but didn't say it. She nodded slightly and said. That's the one. Nine times out of ten, what happened tonight was his work. The evildoer is born in a troubled world. And he is the biggest evildoer in Dagon. Hearing this secret, Su Mu frowned. His knowledge of royal affairs is limited. I only know that there is a national teacher in Dagon, who is very important as a pilgrim and has been practicing with him. This national teacher does not ask about the government and does not hold real power. In addition to taking the saints to practice, the only major thing he did was to accept the third prince as his disciple. It is rumored that this is the meaning of the saint, which shows his love for the third prince. But the specific reasons for this are beyond what ordinary people can guess. Before that, Su Mu never imagined that the calamity of the demons would actually be related to the protector of the country. Could this dauntless emperor have become so sluggish? Is he really that stupid? Even turning a blind eye to the slaughter of the people in the imperial city? Thinking of this, Su Mu felt annoyed and speechless. Who doesn't want to live in peace and prosperity? It's just the current situation, I'm afraid that a few good days will pass. Su Mu shook his head and stopped thinking about these troubles for a while. There were seven people around Li Lingyan, and there was only one person left in the 2 to one team, who happened to be the middle-aged Taoist nun who had spoken directly to Su Mu. It's useless to talk too much, why don't you and Lei Xuanji team up to investigate? Li Lingyan asked Su Mu. Then you are left alone here. One person is enough, this palace will protect itself. It is good. After a simple exchange, Su Mu and the Taoist nun named Xuanji Lei started to act. In fact, Su Mu prefers to act alone. But considering that he doesn't know anything about qi cultivation, Taoism, magic formation and other things, a qi master around him might be able to find something he can't see. The two of them traveled around the outer city one after the other. Su Mu's speed was not at all dissatisfied, and he easily kept up with the lay master Xuanji who was using Taoism to fly. This surprised her. Looking at Su Mu's methods, it is a bit like a martial artist. But upon closer inspection, a faint demonic aura could be perceived. But he is obviously a living person, how can he have the spirit of a demon? Could it be that he used some kind of Taoist magical power to steal the power of demons? This middle-aged Taoist nun was a little puzzled, but how many people have secrets? She didn't ask much. The two went around the outer city to investigate, and along the way, they saw many hideous and terrifying monsters, and most of them were people who died tragically. 
This outer city is really purgatory. The complexion of this layman Shuanji became more and more ugly, the anger in his heart could not be suppressed, and it was all written on his face. Fortunately, after more than half an hour, they finally found something. Su Mu and Layman Na Shuanji all the way to the edge of Yanjing. If you go further, you will be out of town. At this time, Lei Shuanji suddenly changed his face, and the compass in his hand sounded kakaka, and the pointer pointed directly at the city wall. Lei Shuanji looked at the city wall in front and said solemnly. There is a formation on the city wall. Go, go and see. I saw that under the instructions of the compass, a mysterious rune appeared on the towering and towering city wall. Twisting and squirming, it's very weird. Just as Su Mu and Lei Xuanji got closer, they were stopped. Two Taoist boys appeared out of thin air in front of the city wall, with dull expressions and gloomy aura, like puppets. The two Taoist boys stood in front of them, and said in a stiff voice without the slightest emotion. Forbidden land ahead, no idlers should enter. Walk. Daoist Xuanji took a deep look at the runes on the city wall, greeted them, and left with Su Mu. During the whole process, Su Mu was at a loss, and after leaving a distance, he asked. What happened just now? What are those runes? What are the origins of those two Dao boys? Go back and talk. Layman Xuanji's face was gloomy and terrifying, and he seemed to be extremely angry. Su Mu couldn't ask any more questions, so he could only follow her back. After returning to Li Lingyan, two teams have already returned. It is Su Mu and Xuanji Lei, they are the three teams. After a while, the last team rushed back. The directions of the four teams of men and horses were different, but their expressions were the same, each with a gloomy face. Several people got together and talked about their respective discoveries. After some discussion, a consensus was reached. Su Mu also heard it right next to him. It turned out that the huge and strange Taoist rune on the city wall just now was some kind of rune for alchemy, which should have been engraved in the alchemy furnace. But now, it was engraved on the wall of the imperial city. As for those Taoist boys, they were naturally the people under the command of the national teacher. Whether it's a human or a ghost, I don't know for the time being. On the contrary, you can't easily take action against them, otherwise it is very likely that the national teacher will be attracted, so you can only leave just now. Several experts in qi refining agreed that the national teacher was using the imperial city as a pill furnace to refine some kind of pill. The imperial city is the pill furnace, the blood moon is the pill fire, and the people are the great medicine. Such a cruel heart, such a crazy evildoer. Layman Xuanji gritted his teeth, already furious to the extreme. Li Lingyan remained calm, she said in a deep voice. When the matter is clear, let's go save the people. Write this down in advance, one day, I will settle the account with him. When Yen the masters under her command could only nod their heads and endure this sigh, preparing to help the people of the town demon division to clean up the remaining demons. But at this moment, a red dragon shadow flew out from the palace. This infinitely spreading dragon shadow exudes a warm red light. Illuminated the entire night sky, throwing a red avenue in the sky. This scene attracted the attention of everyone inside and outside the imperial city. They all stared at the sky in astonishment, their expressions shocked. In the eyes of everyone, a man in sackcloth, with no age or gender, came out. This person is flawless, like a god. He stepped on the red dragon shadow and walked out slowly. The pace is not hurried or slow, leisurely, with a faint rhythm. But every time he took a step, it was a distance of hundreds of meters, and the figure kept flickering. After a while, he came to the sky above the outer city. The moment he saw this person, Su Mu immediately understood that this person was Dagon's protector of the country, who was the initiator of all this. And the black hand behind the scenes actually walked in front of the world in such a high-profile way. I don't know what the plan is. More importantly, Su Mu vaguely felt that the red dragon shadow at the foot of the national teacher was somewhat familiar. Where have you seen it? Su Mu thought about it, and suddenly his eyes widened, and there was a look of incomparable shock in his eyes. 
This Scarlet Dragon shadow is actually similar to the Red Dragon centipede that swallowed King Biling and King Jinshan. Is there any connection between the two? In other words, this national teacher is the Red Dragon centipede. Click to download this site app, Massive Novels, free to read. 81. When Su Mu's heart was shaking and his thoughts were running wild, the national teacher had already started his own performance. The blood moon is in the sky, the demons are in troubled times. The sufferings of the world, purify the world. Good, good. The national teacher's voice was not loud, but it was very penetrating into everyone's ears, and it seemed to have a magical nature. He looked pitiful and folded his hands. During the chanting, the red dragon phantom roared and roared, and the infinite power swept across the city. In an instant, all the demons in the imperial city burst into pieces, turning into filthy flesh and blood. Afterwards, all the corpses spontaneously ignited, regardless of whether they were humans or demons. A faint blue flame emerges, with a strange beauty. All the corpses were burned at a very fast speed, and then turned into a little bit of aura and flew to the sky, as if to merge with the stars. However, the truth is extremely cruel. Only those who are deeply in the way can understand the truth. The aura generated by the destruction of endless creatures rises into the air and smelts and combines with each other under the moonlight. Finally, it turned into a ball the size of a fist and was accepted by the national teacher. This is what he asked for. Underestimate him. Not only the common people, but the monsters he unleashed are also great medicines. Isn't it true that you are not afraid of divine condemnation by using this method to make alchemy? Lei Xuanji's body trembled slightly, and her huge anger made her unable to restrain herself. Another expert in qi refining beside Li Lingyan sighed and said. This one is about to transform into a dragon. If there is a way of heaven, then there will be a catastrophe. Is he still afraid of any divine punishment? Hearing this, Su Mu suddenly noticed something was wrong. He asked tentatively. Do you know that this is a demon? After discovering that the national teacher was most likely the red dragon centipede he encountered in the last dungeon world, Su Mu conceived a general story in his mind. The big demon sneaked into the dynasty, deceived the emperor and fooled the world. Then he kept stealing the dragon energy and took the opportunity to transform into a dragon. Who knows, listening to the conversations of these people, they seem to already know that the national teacher is a monster. Hearing this, a rare look of tiredness appeared on Li Lingyan's face. She sighed helplessly and said. As long as you know that person, you know that he is a demon. But when the pilgrim publicly announced that he was the true immortal of the Red Dragon and the great master of the country. Who can do anything to him? Those two words, Li Lingyan didn't say it directly, just made a mouth shape. But everyone can hear what she has to say. Hearing this, Su Mu couldn't help being stunned. It turned out that the old emperor knew that the national teacher was a demon, but he still treated him like this. This. Is this crazy? I don't know if it's a liar, but it's understandable to transfer the money. Knowing that it is a liar, but also transfer the money. Who the is this guy? At this time, Su Mu finally understood why Li Lingyan seemed so tired when she talked about it. With such a father on the stall, everyone will be tired. When Su Mu and others communicated, Dagon National Teacher Purdue Jinren had a new move. He stood on the Red Dragon Phantom, looking down at the world like a god, and said in an illusory voice. The deity has swept away the demons, and sent the dead into the kingdom of God. You can rest assured. Good, good. It was another Buddha's name full of compassion. Afterwards, the huge incomparable red dragon phantom rolled at the feet of the real Purdue, and the figure disappeared in front of the general public. After Mr. Purdue left, countless people who were rescued took to the streets and bowed to the place where he disappeared. They were extremely devout. In the eyes of the world, the national teacher is the true immortal who saves the suffering and saves them from the sea of misery. Can you not worship? Not only to worship, but also to worship after returning. But in the eyes of Su Mu and others, this scene is extremely ironic. Taking advantage of the rare spectacle of the blood moon shining in the sky, 
the imperial city is arranged as a pill furnace, and the demons and the people are the two great medicines, so as to refine some mysterious pills. So many lives have been sacrificed for this. But after the practice, the people have to be grateful and treat him like a god. Is there anything more ironic than this in this world? Phew. Go, let's go back. Li Lingyan let out a long sigh of relief and suppressed the anger that was churning in her heart. Su Mu glanced at her and couldn't figure out what this woman was thinking. As the eldest princess, her best way of life is to enjoy the prosperity and wealth in peace and stability. If you have ambitions, you can fight for power, maybe you can try to be a queen. But now it seems that Li Lingyan seems to have a vague intention to oppose the real person Pudu, the national teacher. Saints have great confidence in Purdue real people. Going against him is equivalent to going against the saint today. Li Lingyan. What does she want to do? Su Mu kept thinking and thought of many possibilities, but he couldn't accurately guess what Li Lingyan was thinking for a while. But one thing he can be sure of. That is, with such an emperor on the stall, the work is really over. In addition, Yan Jing is too dangerous, and if you are not careful, it will be used as a big medicine for alchemy. Whoever wants to stay in this hellish place. Anyway, Su Mu doesn't want to stay. He has already thought about it, and will leave Yanjing city tomorrow to see if there is any safe place to stay. As soon as he found a good place, he picked up Su Tsong Wu's family, away from the right and wrong in this imperial city. After returning to the eldest princess mansion, Su Mu hesitated for a while, but finally found Li Lingyan and asked her a question. This Yan Jing, is there still a national teacher that anyone can deal with? A few decades ago, the Red Dragon Centipede was already outrageously strong, but now. Is there anyone in this world who can stop him? Couldn't he do something wrong? Fortunately, Li Lingyan's answer was yes. However, they are basically her father's people. Hearing this, Su Mu was silent for a long time, and was speechless for a while. After a while, he asked Li Lingyan if he could temporarily place Su Tsong Wu's family in the princess mansion. Li Lingyan asked why, and Su Mu bluntly said that he would leave Yan Jing for a while. This time it was Li Lingyan's turn to be silent. The eldest princess seemed to have guessed what Su Mu was thinking. After a long time, she let out a faint sigh and said. It's good to leave, it's good to leave such an imperial city, such a big job, don't leave and wait to die. After sorting out her emotions, Li Lingyan said again. This palace has agreed. As long as this princess mansion does not collapse, the Su Kongwu family will be safe. By the way, the town demon secretary will send someone out to perform a mission in a few days. These monster slayers who often go out are very familiar with various places. Do you want to go with them? You can leave whenever you want. Su Mu thought for a while and agreed. Are you going out of the city with the people from the Junma division? Well then, thank you, your highness, the eldest princess. If he travels alone, he has no problem at all in terms of strength. But Su Mu knew too little about the outside world. It is naturally the best to have a few guides who are familiar with the way. After thanking Li Lingyan, Su Mu found Su Kongwu, Su Qingxue, and Du Wanrong, and told them that he was going out of the city to find a new home. Su Kongwu was a little worried, but when he thought of Su Mu's amazing strength, he was relieved a lot. After the family had spent a few days of peace in the eldest princess mansion, Su Mu set off. He rode the horse presented by Li Lingyan and met at the city gate with the team of monster slayers who were out on a mission. What Su Mu didn't expect was that there were only three people in this team. A big man with a beard on his face, with a ghost-headed sword on his back. This person is full of blood, and at a glance, he knows that he is a master of martial arts, and he probably has an innate realm. A slender woman, long and charming, with a smile on her face. This person is wearing a long bone whip around his waist, and his breath is weaker than that of the bearded man. It should be an acquired martial artist. The last one was a short old man with white hair and white beard, who smelled of alcohol. This person has a restrained breath, and is the one that Su Mu can't see through the most. It is very likely that it is a qi refiner, but it does not look like it. Su Mu couldn't figure out the details of this old man for a while, 
because he knew too little about people who cultivated qi and cultivated Taoism. Are you Su Mu? When Su Mu observed the three demon slayers, they also discovered Su Mu. The charming woman leaned over first and asked with a smile. It's me. Su Mu replied lightly, still observing the three of them secretly. These three at least have the strength above the acquired martial artist, and they are already very good masters. It is no wonder that they are qualified to go out to perform tasks. However, it was far from enough to see in front of Sumu, and he didn't need to worry about anything. Of course, with these three monster slayers, it's more just to find a way. Sumu doesn't have to think too much. Tsk Tisk, he's quite handsome. No wonder someone ordered it in person. The charming woman said with a smile, but she felt like she was not smiling. Okay, stop talking nonsense. Everyone's here, let's go. Don't waste your time. The bearded man coldly dropped a sentence, and after speaking, he drove his horse and ran wild. The man looked at Su Mu with a trace of disdain. As for the little old man, he was drunk and never looked at Su Mu from beginning to end. After the bearded man drove his horse and ran wildly, he followed behind him staggeringly, but he was not at all dissatisfied with the speed of the horse under his crotch. Little brother, follow your elder sister. If you lose it, no one cares about you. Giggle. After a laugh, the charming woman also patted her horse to catch up. The speed of these three crotch mounts is extremely fast, and only one back is left in a few breaths. Su Mu squinted his eyes and chased after him unhurriedly. Su Mu can understand the attitude of these three people. The demon slayer, walks on the edge of life and death every day, slaying demons and demons for the world. They are not babysitters and have no obligation to protect someone. Especially in their eyes, Su Mu, who infiltrated by the relationship, was even more despised. This run is a small test. The warrior can inject the chi into the horse's body to increase the speed of the mount. But if you don't enter the day after tomorrow, there is no chi. If Su Mu can catch up, they will recognize that Su Mu has the strength to follow them, at least not too much drag. If Su Mu can't catch up, then he should pack up as soon as possible, and go back wherever he comes. The outside world is very dangerous. Even the warriors of the acquired and innate realms would not dare to say that the journey is worry-free. Not to mention protecting another piece of trash. Su Mu doesn't have Gang Chi, but he has Corpse Chi. The Corpse Chi has a better blessing effect on horses. The disadvantage is that the Chi is properly controlled and will not hurt the horse. If the corpse is angry, the lifespan is considered a trivial matter. Whether the horse under Su Mu's crotch can survive this trip is a question. This thing, not all living creatures can bear it. But no matter what, Su Mu easily caught up. This made the bearded man and the charming woman look sideways, and they treated him a little better. Only the little old man, who drank non-stop along the way, was always drunk, and hardly said a word. A few days later, a group of three left Yanjing city and entered the boundary of Yuzhou. The farther away you are from the imperial city, the more desolate and dilapidated it becomes. Su Mu was shocked when he saw it. Along the way, bandits and bandits appeared frequently. After entering Yuzhou, they even encountered a small group of rebels. Su Mu was greatly shocked, but the expressions of the three monster slayers did not change in the slightest, obviously they were not surprised. After this period of time together, Su Mu knew the names of the three of them. The bearded man's name is Yuan Chuhu, and the charming woman's name is Menyao. As for the old man, there is no name, only an apt nickname, the old drunk. After getting to know each other a bit, Yuan Yenhu and Menyao were not bad for Su Mu. As for the old alcoholic, his attitude has not changed from beginning to end, and he ignores everyone. Along the way, Su Mu asked a lot of questions, including geography and humanities, just to learn more about the outside world. Yuan Yenhu and Meng Yao answered him one by one, and they didn't find it annoying. Su Mu also asked them, why do they still want to eliminate the demons and eliminate the demons when they are so messed up? Can't live your own life. Yuan Yenhu first said that he had been used to it for decades. After thinking about it, 
I added another sentence. Changes of dynasties often happen, but as long as the human race is not destroyed, the demons still have to be eliminated. In this way, the four of them walked all the way. After more than a month, they arrived at a place called Yuntai Town. This is the final destination of the three demon slayers. The task of slaying the monster is a secret. But when everything is like this, the rules will naturally loosen. After getting acquainted with Su Mu, Meng Yao revealed it to him. The mission of the three demon slayers this time is to find a colleague. This colleague was carrying top secret documents, but mysteriously disappeared when passing through Yuntai town. What they have to do is to find the missing person. Live to see people, die to see corpses. However, Yuntai Town was not Su Mu's destination. He came out to find a safer place. Not to mention the paradise, at least not the chaos, the monsters, and the monsters the places he walked all the way before, obviously did not meet his requirements. Su Mu decided to look elsewhere. So, the day for the four to separate came. When parting, Meng Yao gave him a hairpin hidden weapon with poisonous needles that could eliminate the acquired martial artist. The alcoholic old man, who had never spoken to Su Mu, also gave him a small jug of wine. As for Yuan Chuhu, he searched all over his body and couldn't find anything to give. He could only laugh twice, looking a little embarrassed. Poor people, short ambitions. Su Mu didn't care, and passed on some of the exorcism charms that Li Lingyan gave him to the three demon slayers. Then, it's parting. In this world, if we say goodbye today, we may never see each other again. But the children of the rivers and lakes are not so hypocritical. After parting, Su Mu left Yuntai town and prepared to go all the way east. It's really not possible, and it's not impossible to leave Dagon. In the last dungeon world, that's how he placed Lu Yuqing and the others. Unexpectedly, on the first night after parting, before Su Mu fell asleep, the simulator that had been silent for a long time made a sound. The death simulator is on, the new copy is ready, do you want to enter? Yes. Su Mu did not hesitate, and still chose to enter immediately. 82. With a flash in front of him, Su Mu returned to the standby space of the simulator, and a virtual interface appeared in front of him. Host, Su Mu. Basic attribute points, 135 five basic attribute points will be awarded based on the performance of the previous instance. Body. Wisdom. Life. Please allocate the basic attribute points, and a new copy will be automatically generated after the allocation is completed. Note, after the copy world is generated, it cannot be changed. This time, Su Mu has five more basic attribute points at his disposal. Now, he already has 18 basic attribute points, almost twice as many as the first copy world. The previous two times, Su Mu paid the most attention to body, and after entering the dungeon world, he followed the route of a warrior. This time, he intends to try Qi refining. Wouldn't it be nice to be a Qi refiner who flies and smashes magic spells? Musha. Just vulgar people. However, even if the attributes were doubled in the previous life and had six points of wisdom, Su Mu still couldn't understand Zuan's Henman's Qigong method. He thought of two possibilities. One is that the wisdom of six points still does not meet the requirements of qi refining. Another possibility is that Xuanzhen sect is a major sect, and the exercises are more difficult, and the requirements are higher than ordinary sects. In any case, Su Mu intends to be more wisdom in this life. After thinking about it for a while, he increased his wisdom to ten points in one breath. There are still eight points left to allocate. The physique can't be too low, too low may lead to premature death, or death. The number of lives should not be too low. If it is too low, there may be no chance to connect to the chirifying method. After thinking for a while, Su Mu decided on his final method of adding points. Host, Su Mu. Body, 3. Wisdom, 10. Life, 5. Basic attribute points have been allocated and the copy world has been automatically generated. Three talents can be carried, please choose. After adding points, the dungeon world was generated, and ten new talents appeared in front of Su Mu. Respectively. Insight, Comprehension 5. 
Injury, easy to get sick. Peach blossom, lots of marriage. Remnant soul, missing a soul at random. Hungry and thirsty, X desire is strong, it is difficult to control it. Crazy demon, burning vitality, triple combat power before death. Bad luck, bad luck is repeated, and the probability of things developing in a bad direction is greatly increased. Empty and clean, the spiritual platform is clear and bright, and the mind is firm. Learning speed increased by 10%. Enchanted, after the age of 12, there is a random epiphany once a year, and there is a 30% probability of going crazy when you have an epiphany. More children, more blessings, the probability of pregnancy and multiple births increases by 300%, the more children, the better the luck. The talent this time, the overall quality has taken a new level. Among them, hungry and thirsty, empty purity, and more children and more happiness are all cyan talents. An enchanted is a blue talent that is one level higher. The best part is that so many of these talents are marked with specific effects. There is no need to try it like the beginning, the effect is unknown, and it can only be guessed. Since he was going to take the path of a chi refiner this time, after thinking for a while, Su Mu chose the three talents of insight, Kong Jing, and enchanted demon. Su Mu knew that there was basically no possibility of a customs clearance. Therefore, the first generation of the new dungeon world is basically based on exploration, and it is enough to seek stability. Those talents that are a little more evil, do not need to bring them for the time being. Of these three talents, Kong Jing is a cyan talent, and Enchanted is a blue talent. The effects are very powerful. The only grey-white talent is Insight, which can add five points of comprehension. Body, Intelligence, and Life are the three major attributes. Below this, many small attributes are also subdivided. For example, body includes subdivided attributes such as health, martial arts talent, and lifespan. Insight this talent is designed to increase comprehension. It can increase five points of comprehension, and the effect is not weaker than some cyan talents, and it should be helpful for qi refining. So Sumo brought it with him. As for other talents that look good, don't worry. In the next few lifetimes, Su Mu will find a chance to bring it and try it out. After confirming everything, Su Mu entered the new copy world. The simulation starts. Host, Su Mu. Body, 3. Wisdom, 10. Life, 5. Talent, Ling Tai Qingming, Insight, Enchantment, Kindness, Resentment. Item, None. With the final confirmation interface, Su Mu's consciousness fell into a blur. Daqian, Yujo. On the back mountain of Yuntai town, two little boys were gathering together and whispering, as if they were discussing something elusive. One of them was wearing a Taoist robe and was a little Taoist boy. The other person is dressed in fancy clothes and has an extraordinary temperament, which should be the young master of the family. Xiao Minjiwezi, have you seen this box of dragon beard cakes? You tell me everything your master taught, and it's yours. Moreover, I will invite you to eat a box of dragon beard cakes every month in the future, until three years. Look, how is it? Su Mu smiled and looked at the little Taoist boy named Minji Weizi in front of him, his voice full of temptation. It has been seven years since I came to this world. This time, Su Mu actually returned to the Xinqing period. The year before the apocalypse was Xinqing. Emperor Qin was wise and miraculous, made great efforts to govern, and managed the generals very well. However, he died young and died after ruling for 53 years. In this world where there are Qi refiners and martial artists, emperors generally live to be a hundred years old, and there are also some who are 120 or 30 years old. Died as early as Emperor Qin. Yes, but not many. Shenqin lasted for 53 years, and after that, Emperor Tianqi ascended the throne. In this life, Su Mu was born in the 24th year of Shenqin. It has been nearly 60 years since he was born in reality. The real world was born in the 30th year of the apocalypse. Coincidentally, the place where Su Mu was born was precisely the Yuntai town he just passed by. That is where the three demon slayers performed their missions. At this time, Yuntai town was much more prosperous than decades later. 
and the family where Su Mu was born is the home of the richest man in Yuntai town. In this life, his mother died early, but his father was alive and well, just a little older. Since he was a child at an old age, Father Su loved Su Mu so much that he can't wait to pluck off the stars from the sky and give them to him. This family background made Su Mu a little puzzled. Five o'clock life, will it be so good? He vaguely felt that there was something tricky about it. The life at four o'clock in the last life, the birth seemed miserable, but it was actually past. Although both parents died, they were abandoned in the chaos. However, he was adopted by a group of caring cooks. The atmosphere of the military camp is also good, and the environment for growing up is not bad. This kind of birth looks bad on the surface, but is actually decent. Is that possible, this life is just the opposite. It seems that he was born into a very good family, but there is actually some hidden danger. This was just a guess by Su Mu, he didn't think much about it, and he would know everything after going through it once. After an Ainan grew up to the age of six, Su Mu began to think about cultivation. In martial arts, he no longer wanted to. At three o'clock, it is very good to grow up healthy and healthy, and you should pay more attention to exercise on weekdays. Although Su Mu is very powerful in software, his martial arts are not weaker than those of congenital warriors. But the hardware is too bad, and the body and martial arts talent can't keep up at all. He tried to practice for a while. For half a month, I haven't even entered the skin refining realm. This speed is really disappointing. After that, Su Mu completely gave up practicing martial arts and began to think about how to become a chi refiner. Different from martial artists, the number of chi refiners is much smaller, and inheritance is very rare. Fortunately, there is a Feiyun temple on the high mountain behind Yuntai town. There are several Taoist priests living in it, and they rarely go down the mountain on weekdays, focusing on cultivation. After Su Mu went there once, after seeing each other, he was sure that these Taoists had real skills. Regardless of the level of cultivation, in short, it is right to be a qi refiner. Su Mu didn't choose either, and turned to go home and asked his father to prepare the apprenticeship ceremony, ready to enter the Feiyun temple and become a lay disciple. Father Su spoiled his son, and when he learned of his thoughts, he acted immediately and prepared a generous gift. Who knows that the spectator of Fayungwen does not know what to do? A person who is very kind and talkative on weekdays. As soon as he talked about accepting his disciples, his expression suddenly changed, and he refused to accept Su Mu as his disciple. They even blasted their father and son out. So, there is this thing today. Minjiwazi, this little Taoist boy, is eight years old this year, one year older than Su Mu. But in terms of Xinxing, it is completely incomparable. He looked at the half-opened and half-covered box of dragon beard cakes, as if he was looking at a beautiful woman with her half-beard. But Minji Weizi didn't agree immediately, and her face was a little tangled. Su Mu lowered his voice and said quietly. Don't worry, only you and I know about this matter, and heaven and earth know it. Your master, you are right and won't know. As long as you promise, I will add a bunch of candied haws every month. Hearing this, Minjiwazi's expression became even more tangled, but she still did not agree. Seeing this, Sumu said proudly. Add a box of candied fruit every month, from Wuxiang Zai. The things in his house, you have eaten, that taste. Tsk Tisk. In order to deceive Ming Yuezi, Su Mu put in a little effort. After getting to know this little boy, I first invited him to eat snacks for half a month. All kinds of hello. Then suddenly it was cut off for him, and he had nothing to eat. There is a saying, I could have endured the darkness if I had never seen the light. Minjiwazi, who grew up in a Taoist temple since childhood, ate rough food for eight years. How could he ever see such a battle? To be able to provoke him until now and not let go, is already an excellent concentration. Hearing that Su Mu said to add a box of candied fruit every month, the little Taoist couldn't hold back any longer. Success, deal. He sucked in his saliva and timidly agreed. Obviously, he is still afraid of his master. But that greed has overwhelmed the fear of the master. When Yen Su Mu's face showed a wicked smile. Children, you are so deceiving. Ah. 
No, it's cute. Su Mu's path of qi refining and cultivation began with sugar-coated cannonballs. 83. Fei Yin Guan is just a small sect, far from being compared with Xuanzhen sect and Tiani sect. The name of this qi refining school is very simple and rude, it is called Flying Cloud Breathing Method. After getting it from Minji Weizi, Su Mu studied it carefully. While researching, the two talents of insight and Kong Jing lighted up at the same time, and they obviously started to play a role. With the help of these two talents, Su Mu's brain is very clear and his comprehension has greatly increased. It took half a day to understand the content at the beginning. Then he practiced according to the method described in the flying cloud breathing method. In fact, Su Mu has a better Qigong method in his hands. It is the core practice Qigong method of Zhuan's Henman obtained from Lu Yuqing in the previous life. But that Qigong method is too profound and profound. Without being taught, Su Mu cannot cultivate. From this, it can be seen that Lu Yuqing, who can cultivate on his own without being taught, is indeed a genius of Qi refining. No wonder both Taoist Zishan and Qing Shuzi wanted to accept her as a disciple. The flying cloud breathing method is relative to the simple Qigong method. There are various breathing methods and matching methods recorded in it, which made Su Mu a bit of a headache. What kind of breath regulation, full breath, red breath, deep breath, forward and reverse breathing, etc. must be integrated and matched with each other to conform to their own breath. Quite complicated. The most important thing is the little teacher of Su Mu, who is not very good. After all, Minji Weizi is just a little Taoist boy, and there is nothing to teach him. After getting the flying cloud breathing technique, Su Mu was self-taught. Fortunately, his qi refining talent is not low in this life, and the ten points of wisdom played a role. After successfully sensing and absorbing the spiritual energy, Su Mu took a good look at his body. He discovered that the most powerful of his five internal organs was the kidney. The kidney belongs to water, so Su Mu decided to cultivate the water qi in the five qi first. People, always give play to their strengths first. For the next two years, Su Mu worked hard every day. Absorb water from the heaven and earth, and store it in the kidneys. This makes him more energetic. The whole person exudes an indescribable unique atmosphere, and the girls will feel stronger. However, the early combat power of qi refiners is far inferior to that of warriors. After two years of training, although Su Mu's spirit has become more condensed, his combat power has not improved much. One of the reasons is that Su Mu does not have a complete inheritance. He can't learn supernatural powers and spells, and he won't be able to use methods such as Gu Gu poison. But more, it was because the qi refiners were really weak in the early stage. A qi refiner like Su Mu, who has not yet cultivated his qi, is still in the learning stage in the sect of the eight classics, and it is far from the time when he will go into the world on his own. However, Su Mu is not in a hurry. He has a very good family in his life and is a young master who has no worries about food and clothing. You can take your time. Moreover, under the blessing of the two talents Insight and Kong Jing, Su Mu's qi refining talent is considered to be in the middle and top. After waiting for another three years, after turning twelve years old, the talent of Enchanted will start to play a role. Enchanted, after the age of twelve, there is a random epiphany once a year, and there is a thirty percent probability of going crazy when you have an epiphany. This talent was the first blue talent Su Mu saw. The effect is very strong, after the age of twelve, I have an epiphany every year. It's just that there is a thirty percent probability of going crazy, and it will be crazy sooner or later. If there are no side effects, the level of this talent is only one level higher. But even with a lot of risk, it's very powerful. Crazy or not, I'll talk about it later. On this day, Su Mu finished his practice. He glanced outside and frowned slightly. Outside, it was raining lightly. Although it is not big, it does not mean to stop in the slightest. In the past half month, Yuntai Town did not know what to do, it rained all day long. Fortunately, the next, otherwise I am afraid that there will be a flood. The drought in the previous life, the flood in this life. Not so unlucky. But to be honest, Sumu really likes rainy days. 
At present, he has only cultivated the aura of the water movement of the kidneys, and is naturally close to the rain. It's just that the continuous light rain always made him feel a little weird. Woo da woo air, accompany me out for a walk. Yes. Su Mu gave an order, and two tall and strong servants guarded his side. There was also a twelve, or thirteen-year-old handsome maid who held up an oil paper umbrella for him. I have to say, the young master of a rich family is cool. Even if it is just the richest man in a small town, it is very good. Wu De Wu Er, these two slaves, both have the strength of third-rate warriors, and were raised by the Su family since childhood. With the two of them guarding, it is basically possible to walk sideways in such a small place. What's more, Su Mu's family also enshrined a first-class warrior with injuries. With such a person sitting at home, the Su family is even more daring to provoke in Yuntai town. If Su Mu was a villain, he would be domineering and mischievous in Yuntai town. As long as he doesn't cause something too outrageous, his father can handle it. In the government, the Su family is also related. However, Su Mu is obviously not that boring and childish person. On weekdays, Su Mu and the townspeople get along pretty well, and with the talent of kindness, it is even more endearing. The whole Yuntai town knew that the Su family had a good-looking young master who was polite and personable. No, as soon as Su Mu went out, the townspeople greeted him. He responded with a smile, without the slightest impatience. In the drizzle, the four of them walked all the way. Walking and walking, I came to a green tile alley. In this rainy day, there is quite a mood. This road Sumu often walks, and there is a pharmacy at the other end of the alley. He often grabs some tonics there, and prepares a self-made prescription to beat the body. Although I can't practice martial arts in this life, my body is still stronger. After all, there are only three points of body. In addition, the owner of the drugstore has a daughter who is three years older than Sumu, who is twelve this year. He is very cute and has a lively temperament. He is a pistachio-like character. Su Mu liked her very much, and she would chat with her every time she went to get medicine. It's not a love between men and women, but a love of encountering cute and interesting things. I haven't seen you for a while, that little girl must have prepared a few lame jokes waiting to be told to me. Thinking of this, Su Mu smiled dumbly and walked leisurely into the alley. But just halfway there, his expression suddenly changed. Su Mu smelled a faint smell of blood. After qi refining, Su Mu's five senses became much sharper, and he noticed the difference earlier than the two third-rate warriors around him. Master, what's the matter? Seeing that Su Mu suddenly stopped, Wu Da asked suspiciously, and the other two also looked at him. There is a smell, and there may be a fatality at the other end of the alley. Su Mu's eyes were cold, but calm. If there is no such thing as a moth in the dungeon world, then it is really a moth. Wu Da and Wu Er looked at each other in disbelief. As warriors, they didn't notice the difference. How did this young master find out the problem? Although there were doubts in their hearts, as servants, they naturally wouldn't refute anything, and they speeded up with Su Mu and walked out of the alley. As soon as they walked out, the expressions of Wu Da and Wu Er changed. Because, they also smelled a smell. Very thin, but there is. The place where this smell came out was the pharmacy that Su Mu often went to. Master, let me have a look first. Be careful. Wu Da took a step forward and prepared to check it out by himself. Su Mu didn't show any signs of success, nodded and agreed. Seeing this, Wu Da took out a sharp waist knife and walked cautiously towards the pharmacy. Who knew that not long after he entered, there was a terrified scream from inside. It's the voice of Wu Da. Hearing this voice, Wu Er couldn't sit still. The two of them are brothers, and they have grown up together since childhood, and they have an excellent relationship. Master. Although eager, Wu Er did not act privately, but looked at Su Mu anxiously. Su Mu knew what he meant, and said with a very fast speed. Hong Ying stay here, Wu Er, you and I go in and have a look. Under Su Mu's order, the maid who held the umbrella for him stayed where he was, and he and Wu Er rushed into the back of the pharmacy. Not long after they walked in, 
what the two of them saw was a shriveled corpse with a terrifyingly twisted face. The blood and essence of the whole body was sucked dry, and the death was miserable. This method of death is not done by zombies. This corpse has not only absorbed most of the blood and essence, but also has no trace of essence left. I don't know what kind of monster did it. After Su Mu carefully identified it, he could barely tell that the corpse belonged to the owner of the drugstore. Further back, I saw a smaller corpse. Looking at the clothes on her body, it was the daughter of the drugstore owner. The once cute and lively girl has now changed beyond recognition and died tragically at home. This scene made Wu Er very frightened, and at the same time even more timid. He strode inside and finally saw Wu Da's figure. Wu Da is not dead yet, but it is in a very strange state. I saw his face terrified and his whole body trembling constantly. But he didn't move, as if possessed by magic. The most terrifying thing is that several twisted and wriggling tentacles plunged into his body, as if absorbing his blood essence. A look of death appeared on Wu Da's face. If it goes on like this, it will not take half an hour for him to become a mummified corpse. Big Brother Seeing this scene, Wu Er was shocked and angry, and hurried forward. But just two steps away, the whole person was stunned for a moment, and then he screamed in horror, as if he saw something extremely terrifying. After a scream, Wu Er, like Wu Da, stood frozen in place, unable to move. A few greasy and disgusting tentacles emerged from the ground and climbed up his ankles. And Wu Er did not resist at all. Like a lamb to be slaughtered. With just a face-to-face -face effort, Su Mu's two guards were instantly restrained. And that mysterious and terrifying monster didn't let Su Mu's plan go. The next moment, Su Mu felt his head dizzy, and the scene in his eyes twisted strangely. Obviously, the demon had attacked him. 84. In the face of the monster's attack, the battle-hardened Su Mu did not panic at all. Although there is no serious inheritance, he asked his father to search everywhere, and still found some low-level Taoism. In addition, I also cheated from Minjuezi. In exchange for a few. As soon as the hallucination appeared in front of him, Su Mu hurriedly recited the Qingxin Mantra, and with the talent of Qingming, he blocked the first wave of the unknown monster's illusion attack. The scene in front of him returned to normal. But even without the illusion, Su Mu's feet still drilled out several wet and greasy tentacles, wrapping around him like a poisonous snake. Su Mu immediately retreated, taking out a red talisman while choking. I saw that the talisman automatically burned. Su Mu choked again, and the flame turned into a ferocious fire snake, killing those hideous and disgusting tentacles. Fire snake strangling, powerful. These tentacle-like things seem to be afraid of fire, and immediately retreat and curl up when they touch the fire. Constantly twisting, it seems very painful. Su Mu just made it, it was the fire dragon spell. It's just that he cultivates the water spirit energy, and his cultivation base is not high. Therefore, it is necessary to cooperate with the Tao talisman to be able to use this magical power reluctantly. And the power is low, the fire dragon spell becomes the fire snake spell. But it was obviously enough to deal with the monster in front of him. Seeing the good effect, Su Mu struck while the iron was hot, and another fire dragon spell was cast. Under the fire snake's attack, those tentacles were even more painful, twisting and shrinking to the ground. Su Mu's crisis was lifted. But Wu Da and Wu Er are still in a dangerous situation. Su Mu couldn't directly use the fire dragon spell to burn the tentacles on their bodies, so he could only use other methods. A pure heart is like water, and clear water is your heart. Concentrate. Su Mu loudly recited the Qingxin art, trying to condense the consciousness of Wu Da and Wu Er, and wake them up. After reciting it three times in a row, Wu Da and Wu Er shivered and suddenly woke up from their hallucinations. It's not too soon to get rid of the monsters on your body. Su Mu shouted again. The two woke up like a dream, and pulled out the tentacles on their faces in horror. These tentacles don't know what kind of monsters they are, except for illusions, the intensity is not high, and the third-rate warriors are enough to use violence to remove them when they are awake. Of course, injuries are inevitable. After those tentacles separated from Wu Da Wu Er, 
Su Mu hit him with another fire dragon spell. Under the strangulation of the fire snake, these tentacles retreated and retreated into the soil. Everything was back to normal again. If it weren't for the two shriveled corpses left behind, who would have thought that this place was attacked by demons? Young, young master, what the was that one just now? Wu Da looked pale and asked with lingering fears. Just now, when he walked into the backyard of the pharmacy, a flower suddenly appeared in front of him. The next moment, he actually fell into the ten thousand snake cave. Countless poisonous snakes gnawed at his body, and even drilled into his body from his seven orifices. Such a terrifying situation frightened Wu Da, and his mind became a pot of porridge. It wasn't until I vaguely heard Su Mu's recitation of the pure heart secret art that he woke up. It is also a loss that he is young, strong, and a third-rate martial artist. After being sucked by the demon, he was only a little weak and did not hurt the root. After a period of time, you can recover to seven, seven, eight, eight. It's a monster. But what kind of monster it is, I don't know. Su Mu's face darkened slightly. Although the demon's strength was ordinary, he always had an ominous premonition. Simulation of disasters in the world, none of which is easy. Otherwise, Su Mu would not have died so many times before. Hearing this, Wu Er said in surprise. Master, how do you know this? Also, the fire dragon you used just now is so powerful. Recalling the scene just now, Wu Da and Wu Er were shocked with a hint of happiness. They always thought that their little boy sitting cross-legged every day was just a form. Unexpectedly, there is a real ability. If it wasn't for Su Mu today, both of them would have to explain it here, and neither of them would survive. Some small tricks are not worth mentioning. Su Mu did not explain much on this. After the crisis was lifted, he immediately sent the two guards to the hospital and asked them to report the case, and called the town's arresting fast. Soon, the pharmacy was closed. The two withered and ferocious corpses were placed in front of a crowd of catching fast. As the head arrester of Yuntai Town, Zhang Shichong is a second-rate martial artist with rich experience in fighting and solving cases. It's unpleasant. It's a pity that people in their forties have no chance to move forward. Master Su, did you discover these two corpses? Zhang Shichong asked Su Mu with a serious face, and he didn't seem to be in a good mood. Su Mu nodded and said. Yes. I wanted to come to the pharmacy to get some medicine, but I saw this scene. The Zhou family and their daughters in the pharmacy were all eliminated. Zhang Shichong frowned, paused and then asked. Master Su's two guards seem to be injured a little bit. Could it be that? Have you seen the murderer? Yes, we met. A tentacled monster. Then how did you repel this kind of demon? Are you guarded by two third-rate warriors? Ask this, Zhang Shichong narrowed his eyes slightly. From his expression, Su Mu saw a trace of doubt. With a move in his heart, he immediately understood. This Zhang Shichong obviously has some information and knows that ordinary third-rate warriors are not the opponents of that monster. Hence the question. After thinking about this, Su Mu decided to get some information from him. Under the gazes of many catching fasts, Su Mu smiled lightly and said. I have been interested in Taoism since I was a child. After practicing for a few years, it came in handy today. As he said, Su Mu Fa decided to pinch, and a stream of water vapor appeared out of thin air, lingering at his fingertips. After a few circles, he pointed to a small pebble underground. The water vapor swished and froze the small stone into a lump of ice. Su Muxialu made Zhang Shichong's group of catchers stunned. They obviously did not expect that this young master from a wealthy family still has such abilities. After being surprised, the eyes of the crowd looking at Su Mu all changed. Su Mubin is extraordinary, speaks and acts very well, and doesn't look like a child. At this time, he showed his skill in manual art. Treating him as an ordinary child in this way would really be a problem for his brain. Zhang Shichong sighed. I didn't expect young Master Su to have such a means at such a young age. That kid from my family. Hey, let's not talk about it. After seeing the change in the attitude of the crowd, Su Mu said. 
Zhang Zhao Tu, if you have any information, you can tell me. I have practiced qi refining for several years, and I still have some understanding of demons and ghosts. Maybe it can give you some ideas for solving the case. Su Mubin had no intention of revealing his cultivation. But if you don't show your hands, how can you get information from Zhang Shichong? A head arrester will not disclose case information to a child. Especially in this case, the pharmacy was closed immediately, which obviously means to block the news. However, a child who knows Taoism is different. Hearing Su Mu's question, Zhang Shichong hesitated. But thinking of the hand Su Mu had just revealed and his record in repelling demons, he told the information he had. It turned out that this was not the first mummification case in Yuntai Town. More than half a month ago, on the day it rained in Yuntai Town, the first mummification case happened. The one who died was a single widower. Zhang Shichong is an old headhunter, and at a glance, he can see that this method of death is not done by humans. After some investigation, no useful clues were found, let alone the murderer. In desperation, he could only block the news first, and then send someone to the Demon Suppression Division for help. Finally, strengthen manpower and patrol day and night. However, the Demon Slayer from the Demon Suppression Division is not so easy to invite, and will not be able to come for a while. And the usual catching fast, there is no threat to the monster, and patrolling is useless. For the next half month, the rain kept falling, and people kept dying. The second time the demon eliminated, it was seven days apart. The third killing was five days apart. The fourth murder, three days apart. This is the fifth time, and there is no gap. Yesterday, at the home of an arrestee who died tragically, he was sucked into a mummified corpse, with no essence and blood. Yes, the deceased was an old catcher and a third-rate warrior. So Zhang Shichong knew that ordinary third-rate warriors couldn't stop the demon at all. The most terrible thing is that the demon actually committed the crime again today. There is no gap in between. This made Zhang Shichong feel an extremely ominous premonition in his heart. The frequency of this monster's murder is getting higher and higher. If this goes on, who knows what will happen. After hearing this, Su Mu's heart sank slightly. The continuous rain in Yuntai town for more than half a month seems to be related to the monster. If that's true, it's hard to do. The demons that can affect the celestial phenomena are absolutely terrifying existences. It's just that the weird tentacles he just drove away weren't very strong. Could there be something hidden in this? Su Mu kept thinking, but couldn't think of a reason. The information given by Zhang Shichong is very limited, and it is impossible to infer what the devil is. Master Su, what kind of monster do you think is causing this mess? Seeing Su Mu's thoughtful expression, Zhang Shichong waited for a while, and finally couldn't help but ask. Su Mu said helplessly. There is too little information to infer. But I have a way to get more useful information. I can use spiritism to summon the spirits of Zhou's father and daughter, and ask them. Hearing this, the surrounding hunters widened their eyes, revealing a little panic and fear in their eyes. Calling. Soul calling. You can do this too. Before he knew it, Zhang Shichong used an honorific to Su Mu. In fact, Zhang Shichong's strength will not be weaker than Su Mu, and his chances of winning are greatly increased after getting close. But in the eyes of most people, as long as there is some relationship with ghosts and gods, it will make people feel in awe. As soon as he heard that Su Mu knew how to summon spirits, the attitude of those who did not know much about qi refining and Taoism changed again. This time it turned straight into awe. Meeting. Spirituality is actually not a clever method. My practice is shallow, and I can only recall the remnants of those who died within half an hour, and they may be incomplete. Su Mu didn't put on any pretense, and directly stated his abilities. After qi refining, Su Mu has a deeper understanding of the human soul. A complete person with three souls and seven souls. The three souls are heaven, earth, and destiny, each performing its own duties. The seven souls are joy, anger, sadness, fear, love, hatred, and desire, and each has its own function. It's just that some people's three souls are too weak to hold down their seven souls. 
such people are often irritable, difficult to control emotions, or some desires. In addition to the first time, there are various problems. In short, if the three souls and seven souls are not in harmony, problems will arise. Problems vary from big to small. Although there are three souls and seven souls, there are no legendary places such as the underworld and the underworld in this world. Reincarnation is one of the duties of heaven. After a person dies, the three souls and seven bodies are separated from the body, each scattered, and fall into the heaven and earth. In the process of gestation, the fetus will automatically absorb the three souls and seven souls that are separated from the heaven and the earth to form a new soul and a new life. This process is a bit like rain. From cloud to rain, from rain to air, and from air to cloud, the cycle continues. Thus, it is reincarnation. Therefore, there is no afterlife after death. After death, the three souls and seven souls are scattered everywhere, and there is no such person anymore. Some people with great luck, two or three of the three souls and seven souls come from the same individual, will obtain some previous life memory fragments. But it's only a fragment of memory. As for the situation where the three souls and seven souls have not changed at all, and the world has gone around in circles and returned to the same body, it is not impossible, but the probability is so low that it can be ignored. There may not be one in millions of people. And this kind of person has too many burdens, can't tell the difference between the past and the present, and often has no good end. Back to the present. The Zhou family's father and daughter in the pharmacy had only died not long ago, and the separation and scattering of their souls was not serious. They can be summoned back by the magic of conjuration. You might get some useful information. Su Mu said he would do it. He didn't mess up the messy ceremonies, just took out a conjuring flag and cast it with a conjuring spell. A spirit spell full of strange breath sounded. Soon, a gust of wind blew in the backyard of the pharmacy. Coupled with the light rain, Zhang Shichong and his party suddenly got goosebumps. I don't know if it was cold, but Yu Yu reading was still frightened. After a while, two vague shadows gradually emerged and became clearer and clearer under the call of the spiritual charm. In the end, it turned into the appearance of Zhou's parents. This scene made the hunters on the scene take a deep breath. This young master of the Su family really knows how to summon spirits. 85. After the remnants of Zhou's father and daughter appeared, their faces were sluggish. Su Mu's way of doing things is too shallow, and the three souls and seven souls only recruited half of them back, so naturally they can't expect them to be smart. After you died, did you see anything special or a picture? And After the conjuration was successful, Su Mu asked a few simple questions. That unknown demon not only absorbs blood essence, but also absorbs essence. Those crippled souls that were not summoned might also be eaten by the demon. Whether they were summoned or not had nothing to do with Su Mu's ability. If this is the case, there will be a certain induction between the souls. Sure enough, after some inquiry, Su Mu got an important piece of information. The remnants of Zhou's father and daughter were in a daze, and they seemed to see an incomparably huge tree. A giant tree twisted like a dragon and spiraling upwards. It was this strange tree that devoured part of their souls. After saying this, the remnants of Zhou's father and daughter couldn't hold on any longer, and they were scattered in the sky and the earth. Big tree. Big tree. Zhang Zhao Tu, is there such a huge tree near Yuntai town? Su Mu muttered to himself twice, but couldn't think of a reason, so he asked Zhang Shichong next to him. Ah! Uh, big! Big tree! We don't seem to have one here. Su Mu's question awakened Zhang Shichong. Obviously, the scene just now shocked him a little. Aren't there huge trees? Hearing this, Su Mu frowned slightly and pondered. Speaking of which, those wet, greasy and disgusting tentacles were indeed a bit like tree roots. In line with the tree demon's identity. But there are no big trees near Yuntai town. How huge a tree root does it take to cross the invisible distance to attack the townspeople of Yuntai town? Su Mu prefers that the tree demon is near or even inside Yuntai town, but they didn't find it. Thinking of this, Su Mu said to Zhang Shichong. 
Zhang Zhao Tu, about the identity of the demon, the only thing I can think of right now is the tree demon. Perhaps you can search around Yuntai town to see if you can find anything. This. Well, I'll send someone to look for it recently. Hearing this, Zhang Shichong hesitated, but finally agreed. The surrounding area of Yuntai town is open and there are not many trees. Only the hill behind the town has some trees. But there is no particularly prominent tree. By the way, Zhang Jukui, you can contact the Taoist priests of Feiyin Temple, maybe they can give some help. Su Mu added another sentence, as if remembering something. Hearing this, Zhang Shichong sighed and said. After the first mummification case, I wanted to find those Taoist priests for help. It's just that they sealed off the top of the mountain and said they were in retreat. I walked for a long time and I was still spinning in the fog. I couldn't get in or get out. In the end, it was given to me by a little Taoist priest as big as you. Hearing this, Su Mu frowned slightly and noticed something was wrong. No wonder he hadn't seen Minji Weizi recently. It turned out that Fai Yungwen closed the mountain. But a month ago, Su Mu had met with Minji Weizi, indicating that the mountain was not closed at that time. Why did they close the mummification case as soon as it happened? Could it be that there is some connection between Fai Yungwen and that demon? It shouldn't be. Although Fai Yungwen is only a small sect, it has also been passed down for hundreds of years, and it is a serious monk. How could it be related to demons? Su Mu was a little confused. After parting with Zhang Shichong, he left, came to the back of the town, and climbed up the mountain. When I climbed to the mountainside, I saw the top of the mountain surrounded by clouds and mist, and I couldn't see the inside. This is obviously not a normal cloud, but a maze. Su Mu didn't know how to play, so he couldn't fight hard. He observed it outside, found a hidden corner and blew a whistle. A peculiar bird chirping swayed around. This is the code for the connection between Su Mu and Minji Weizi. As soon as the whistle blew before, Minji Weizi, who had gained a lot of weight, would run over and wait for Su Mu to feed her. But this time, Su Mu didn't see him after waiting for a long time. It seems that something happened to Fai Yungwen. Su Mu's mood was slightly down, and he could only return without success. It rained continuously for the next few days. The sky in the entire Yuntai town was overcast, and it seemed that something was brewing. The atmosphere is very depressing. The only good news is that after that day, the tentacle demon did not appear again, and the mummification case came to an end temporarily. But the sense of uncertainty in Su Mu's heart is getting heavier and heavier. One night for half a month, Su Mu was cultivating in a house. He sat cross-legged, breathing in and out constantly, absorbing the aura of water movement between heaven and earth. Your talent is really good. After Su Mu finished practicing, a tired voice suddenly came from beside him when he was about to open his eyes. Who? Su Mu was startled, and immediately looked at the place where the sound came from. I saw that there was a middle-aged Taoist priest in his house, with a Zhou Jing appearance and a somewhat tall figure. But at this moment, his face was exhausted to the extreme, and his expression was haggard. Su Mu recognized this Taoist priest. He was Minji Weizi's master, Ying Yuzi, and one of the core figures of Fai Yungwen. This person's sudden visit surprised Su Mu. Has he exposed the fact that he secretly learned Fai Yungwen to practice Qigong? What is the purpose of Ying Yuzi coming here? Also, Su Mu suspects that there is some connection between Fai Yungwen and the demon who is suspected to be a tree demon. If this is really the case, the Taoist priests of Feiyin Temple are all dangerous people. At this moment, Su Mu thought about a lot, but his expression has recovered. In Yuko saw his performance in his eyes and nodded with satisfaction. I have a good talent for cultivation, and I have an excellent temperament. Facing such a sudden change, I immediately regained my composure and began to think about countermeasures. If it was before, such a good seedling like you, it would be too late for us in Fai Yungwen to rush to collect it. It's just now. Hey! Ying Yuzi let out a long sigh, her face miserable. His words made Su Mu suspicious. He originally thought that Yu Koing was here to ask for guilt, or that there was some hidden secret. Anyway, it won't be a good thing. 
but now it seems that he has no intention of blaming Su Mu for stealing learning. After a pause, Su Mu tentatively asked in Yuzi. Master, what happened on Feiyin Temple? Also, a demon appeared in Yuntai town recently. It seems to be a tree demon. Do you know about this? Hearing this, Ing Yuzi's expression froze, and she said solemnly. You don't need to ask more about these things. I came to you this time for only one thing, to continue the inheritance of Fai Youngwen. As soon as these words came out, Su Mu's heart immediately clucked. What is said? Why does it sound like a last word? Could it be that something big happened to Feiyun? Su Mu opened his mouth and wanted to ask something else, but Ing Yuzi didn't give him a chance, and directly pointed out the problems he had in his cultivation. You have the strongest kidneys, so it's not wrong to cultivate the aura of water first. But. After Ing Yuko started preaching, Su Mu immediately shut up and listened intently. Refining qi alone is like learning the theory of relativity without foundation. The difficulty is too great. Although Su Mu's qi refining talent is good in this life, there are two other talents with bonus effects. However, it is still a bit difficult to cultivate on your own without no one to teach you. I always feel that in some places, my cultivation is not good, and there are hidden dangers. This time, with the help of a senior, Su Mu immediately madly absorbed the knowledge of qi refining like a sponge absorbing water. That night, In Yuko preached all night long. In the first half of the night, Su Mu has been listening carefully. In the second half of the night, he started to ask some questions and got answers one by one. When it was dawn, Su Mu felt suddenly enlightened, and even had a feeling that he was about to break through. Thank you sir. After the sermon was over, Su Mu solemnly stood up and bowed to Ing Yuzi. Ing Yuko didn't waste time, she immediately took out a few quaint books and handed them to Su Mu. These are the exercises and magical powers at the core of my Fei Ying Guan, as well as some classics related to formations and talismans. I will teach them all to you today. Remember, from today onwards, you have to stay on the top floor of your attic for 12 hours a day. I set up a formation on that floor, and staying in it can prevent the invasion of demons. Don't try to escape from Yuntai town, don't. After a very serious exhortation, Ing Yuzi's expression became even more sluggish, with a bit of despair in her eyes. In the future, no one will teach you, you can only rely on yourself. If you are lucky enough to survive, you will be the only direct descendant of Fei Yungwen. I hope that the inheritance of our Fei Yingguan will not be cut off. After speaking, Ing Yuko got up and was about to leave. Seeing this, Su Mu hurriedly stopped it. Master, please wait. You said so much in one breath, and I still don't fully understand it. Can you tell me what happened? What Ing Yuko said just now was similar to explaining the aftermath, revealing a huge amount of information, but she didn't explain it clearly. Su Mu, who vaguely sensed what was going to happen next, was shocked and hoped to get more accurate information. He hated the Riddler the most, but he didn't want to play like that. But Yuko Ing didn't stop for a moment. It's time, you have to go. Remember, you must hide in the top floor of the attic. After leaving two sentences, Ing Yuko's figure disappeared from Su Mu's room. Looking at the direction he left, Su Mu felt horrified and chills all over. Listening to the meaning of Ing Yuzi's words, Fei Yun Guan seems to be dying. The one who will perish together is Yun Tai Town. An unknown disaster is coming quietly. Su Mu only knows one thing and doesn't know the other. This feeling made him very uncomfortable. It seems that the people who have been out of town recently have never come back. I didn't think much about it before, but now hearing Ying Yuko say this, something is really wrong. Could it be? That all those people have an accident? The more Su Mu thought about it, the more shocked he became. He hurriedly left the room and ran to the attic at home. There is a small attic in the Su family's house, with a total of four floors. After walking to the top floor, Su Mu really found a formation here. After a little exploration, you can feel the turbulent aura and the looming runes. Although he couldn't pass the formation, Su Mu could also feel that the strength of this formation was not weak. Is this the safe house that Ayuko prepared for me? But what happened to make him so pessimistic? 
a series of events made Su Mu's mood heavier. After pondering for a while, Su Mu took action. He first ordered his servants to hide a large amount of food on the top floor of the attic. Then he found Zhang Shichong and asked him about leaving Yuntai Town. Sure enough, in the last month, the people who left Yuntai Town never came back. If it weren't for the small population flow in Yuntai Town I'm afraid something big would have happened long ago. After asking, Su Mu personally went to the edge of the town. As soon as he approached, the back of his neck felt a chill, and a sense of crisis surged up. Su Mu didn't dare to move forward, so he could only go back home. The things that Ng Yuzi said were confirmed one by one, which made Su Mu feel more and more bad. The disaster of extinction is about to strike, but he has no way to deal with it, and he doesn't even know what is about to happen. This feeling is very painful. Powerless pain. That night, Su Mu told his old father about this. Father Su was dumbfounded, but he still chose to trust Su Mu. After that, Su Mu and Su's father stayed on the top floor of the attic and never went out again. The top floor of the attic is not big enough to accommodate too many people. Su Mu could only bring his father in this lifetime with him. As for the others. Just ask for more happiness. In the following days, the rain in Yuntai town became heavier and heavier, and the sky was terrifyingly gloomy. The dark sky seemed to collapse. Some townspeople sensed something was wrong and fled. But Su Mu knew that Yuntai town had been trapped by a mysterious force. Anyone who tries to escape will face death. They are like prey in a cage, just waiting for the hunter to appear and announce their death. Finally, seven days later, the day has come. 86. The rain in Yuntai town has been falling for more than a month, and it is getting heavier and heavier. It stands to reason that the town is also flooded. But in fact, the water level in the ponds and creeks in Yuntai town did not increase at all. I don't know where the rain has gone. On this day, Su Mu was practicing on the top floor of the attic. Since that night, Ying Yuzi taught him the magical powers and Taoism of Fai Yungwen, and he has been practicing diligently. Su Mu only hopes to have the power to protect himself in the coming disaster. In addition, three days ago, Su Mu cultivated the water movement aura to perfection. Water grows wood, so the next thing he cultivates is wood movement aura. After three days of practice, Su Mu felt that his vitality had increased a lot, and his energy to practice was even stronger. But today, Father Su, who never disturbed his practice, suddenly shouted excitedly. The rain has stopped, the rain has finally stopped. Father Su shouted happily at first, but his expression froze without laughing. The rain stopped, but then something like catkins fell in the sky. Large, large, like blizzard. Son, what the is going on here? The rain just stopped, why is it snowing again? Father Su's old face was full of sadness. Recently, the atmosphere in Yuntai town is extremely strange, as long as you are not blind, you can feel that something is wrong here. Not to mention that Father Su still unconditionally believes in his precious son. Yuntai town, the catastrophe is coming. Hearing this, Su Mu stopped cultivating and walked to the window. Outside, the white flocks got bigger and bigger. The ground and roof soon turned white. It felt like a swirling snow. But Su Mu didn't have the heart to appreciate the snow scene. This strange change made him very uneasy. Tuck tuck tuck. At this moment, there was a sudden knock on the door outside the attic. In the past few days, Su Mu and his old father lived on the top floor, eating, drinking and Lhasa were all settled here, and they never went out. Of course, the service of servants is indispensable. Master, young master, it's time to eat. Along with the knock on the door, there was the voice of a maid. Hearing this movement, Father Su didn't think much, and walked forward to open the door. But he was stopped by Su Mu. Wait. Don't open the door. Su Mu stood in front of the door, his face slightly darkened. Huh. Son, what happened? Father Su was at a loss, not knowing what went wrong. Su Mu said in a deep voice. Why did the servants let us open the door when they brought us meals? You knocked on the door, but haven't you opened the door yet? Hearing this, 
Father Su suddenly felt a chill hit, making his stamina chill. Son, son, what do you mean, there is something wrong with this person outside, outside? Father Su asked tremblingly. Not sure, but it's always good to be cautious. Su Mu vaguely felt that there was something wrong with the people from the outer door, but he didn't dare to confirm it 100%. But what happened next made his premonition come true. Tuck tuck tuck. Master, young master, it's time to eat. The same knocks, the same shouts. There is almost no change, and there is a rigid mechanical feeling. Su Mu and Su's father stared at the attic door without moving. After a few breaths, the same voice sounded again. But this time, the voice became distorted and weird. Tuck tuck tuck. Master, young master, it's time to eat. Su Mu and Su's father still didn't answer. This time, the one outside the door couldn't stand it anymore. Boom. After a while, a huge force slammed into the door of the attic, making a loud noise. The loud crash made Father Su step back several steps, his eyes horrified. But after being attacked, mysterious runes appeared in the interior of the room, intertwined and entwined all around. Like a golden net, it consolidates the room. Outside the door, Julie kept pounding, as if to smash this ordinary wooden door. But under the protection of the formation, the wooden door does not move at all. The safe house that Inuzi specially built for Su Mu is truly extraordinary. Open the door. Open the door. In the continuous collision, a twisted and hoarse frantic scream sounded outside the door. Father Su was horrified to hear it. This sound is not something a human can make at all. Demon. Absolutely a monster. What frightened him even more was that, as the impact became more and more violent, the wooden door was knocked open by a crack. In the crack of the door, there was a bloodshot eye that was wide open to the limit. The eyes are full of madness. Su Mu frowned slightly and was ready to make a move. But the next moment, a golden light lit up on the formation. The wooden door slammed shut, and the crazy eye was pinched and exploded. A pool of red and green slime splashed out and made a shishi sound when it landed on the ground. Then, the weird roar disappeared. The outside world finally quieted down. Father Su slumped on the ground, panting heavily, his forehead covered in cold sweat. Obviously, the terrifying scene just now caused him a lot of stimulation. Su Mu hurriedly helped him to the chair, patted his back to help him calm down, and comforted. It's okay, Dad, we have the formation set up by Daoist Fa Yungwen, and we won't be able to break it for a while. Father Su took a few deep breaths and asked in a trembling voice. What about after half an hour? Hearing this, Su Mu was silent. He still doesn't know what happened in Yuntai town or what the hidden demon is. This feeling is very uncomfortable. Just then, there was another cry for help outside the door. Master, Master, save me. Master, save me. The sound went from far to near, and soon came to the door. Hong Ying. Su Mu frowned slightly. He heard that the person calling for help was his personal maid, Hong Ying. But in this situation, how could he dare to open the door? Who knows if there are people or ghosts outside the door? But what Su Mu didn't expect was that Hong Ying, who had a terrified face, actually pushed open the door and rushed in. But halfway through, he was stopped by the golden formation net. She tried her best, but she could only move forward a little, as if she was stuck in a quagmire. Behind Hong Ying, more than a dozen humanoid monsters with distorted faces and not resembling humans chased after them. Looking at the clothes, it was obvious that they were all servants of the Su family. Only now, they are no longer human. Seeing these half-human, half-demon monsters eliminate Hong Ying, Su Mu frowned, and finally chose to shoot. As soon as he pinched it, a fire snake several meters long condensed out, killing the weirdo behind Hong Ying. After being instructed by Yin Yuzi, Su Mu's cultivation level has increased a lot, and he no longer needs the assistance of talisman to cast the fire dragon spell. With a bang, the dozen or so weirdos were repelled by the fire snake for more than 10 meters. Decent scorched, but not wiped out. She was struggling to stand up, as if she wanted to continue chasing and killing Hong Ying. 
Fortunately, taking advantage of this time, Hong Ying finally passed through the golden circle and entered the house. As soon as she came in, Hong Ying knelt on the ground and retched. In the end, a ball of white fluffy was spit out, which looked a lot like the kind of snowflake that fell outside. The weird thing is that this white fluffy thing looks like a living thing. After being spit out, it stretched out one after another slender tentacles and crawled towards Hong Ying. As if to return to her body again. Seeing this, Su Mu hurriedly pulled Hong Ying aside, and then burned it out with a fire dragon spell. When the white fluffy things on the outside were all burned to ashes, a thumb-sized bead was exposed, which looked a bit like the seeds of flowers, plants and trees. This strange discovery made Su Mu frown. What's this? Master. Woohoo. I thought I wouldn't be able to see you anymore. After recovering, Hong Ying slumped on the ground, hugging Su Mu's leg and burst into tears. While crying, she told what she had just experienced. After the strange heavy snow fell, the people around her fell into madness one by one, and terrifying mutations appeared on their bodies. Hong Ying also felt that something had got into her body, trying to change her. But for some reason, Hong Ying can still maintain herself and her sanity. When she encountered such a terrible thing, her first thought was to ask Su Mu for help. Although Su Mu is two or three years younger than Hong Ying, in Hong Ying's heart, her young master is a master. No, she is saved now. But Su Mu knew very well that it was not him who saved Hong Ying. According to Hong Ying's description, the heavy snow outside should be some kind of magical power of demons, which can pollute, control and change human beings. But for some reason, Hong Ying was not controlled. When entering the house, the array detected the changes in her body, so she blocked it. But since Hong Ying is not a demon, the blocking force is not strong. Finally, Hong Ying squeezed in. At the same time, with the help of the formation, the demons in the body were expelled. That is, the thing that looks a lot like a seed. Dryad. Seed. The connection between the two made Su Mu think a lot. No wondering Yuzi left in a hurry before finishing her words that day. It is very likely that he had been parasitized by demons at that time, and there was not much time left. If he did not leave, something terrible might happen. I just don't know how many people are still alive in Yuntai town after this heavy snow. Master, look out the window. As Su Mu was thinking about it, Hong Ying suddenly shouted in horror. Hearing this, Su Mu immediately leaned over to the window and looked out. With just one look, his eyes widened involuntarily, and there was a hint of horror in his eyes. At this time, the Su family's house was actually full of people. Densely crowded together, not a single gap is left. Among them, there are men and women, old and young, all of them are the townspeople of Yuntai town. But at this time, their faces were dull and distorted, all raised their heads and stared at the top floor of the attic. Those empty and weird eyes people who look at it feel hairy. Looking further out, there are more people. It was so dark that it was impossible to see the head. These monsters, who do not know whether they are human or ghosts, all came towards the Su family compound like zombies. To be precise, it was coming to Su Mu and the others. Looking at this situation, the people in Yuntai town are almost dead. In a heavy snow, Yuntai town was almost slaughtered. Under the surging tide of corpses, many people fell to the ground. Descendants stepped on the corpses of their predecessors, constantly stacking them up. Su Mu watched helplessly as the crowd under the attic built a human ladder and quickly spread upwards. 87. Master, what should I do with this? Watching the strange crowd continue to rise, Hong Ying was so frightened that her face turned pale. It felt like it was about to be swallowed up. Suffocating. Father Su was also terrified and at a loss. Only Su Mu remained calm and comforted. Don't panic we have the protection of the formation here. It's okay. After a few people's conversations, the corpse tide has already piled up on the top floor of the attic. Snapped. A humanoid monster with a twisted face was lying on the window staring at Su Mu and the others. Quick. Come out and join us and become a family with us. Quick. The monster was sticking to the window, 
and a strange smile appeared on its deformed face. Su Mu looked directly at it and asked coldly. What kind of monster are you? After slaughtering a town, aren't you afraid that the masters of the human race will eliminate you? The monster ignored Su Mu, just kept repeating that sentence. Join us. Join us. Its voice became distorted and frantic over and over again, slapping the windows desperately. And over time, more and more hands are slapping the windows. I saw that the windows were all surrounded by monsters. They stretched out countless twisted and deformed hands and slapped the windows frantically. The entire window was covered, and no gap was revealed. The huge movement frightened Hong Ying and Father Su again. Fortunately, the golden formation net immediately emerged, blocking all attacks from the outside. Seeing that the attack was ineffective, the corpse tied outside changed again. Su Mu could clearly see that those bodies were quickly merging together. It didn't take long for countless individual human bodies to fuse into a huge humanoid monster that was so ugly and evil. Like a giant. It stood in front of the attic, lying on the window, a giant eye leaned over, staring at the three Su Mu inside. It can be seen that this giant eye is made up of countless normal people's eyeballs. When staring at the three of Su Mu, the eyeballs and the giant eyes twisted in disorder and frantically. There were endless vicious gazes in every eyeball, as if they were going to devour Su Mu and the three of them alive. Do not. To be more precise, he wanted the three of Su Mu to merge with them. Dad, go and rest. Leave the matter here to me. Don't worry, with me, everything will be fine. This scene was quite a shock to the mind, Su Mu hurriedly stood in front of his father and persuaded him to go back to rest. Father Su also knew that staying here would only be a disservice. Hearing this, he nodded, retreated to the depths of the attic, and turned his back on the bed. Looks like he doesn't care about those things anymore. However, his body was still trembling slightly. It seemed that he couldn't calm down at all. The formation set up by Ng Yuzi is quite amazing. It can block the attack from the outside, but it will not affect the shot of the person inside. Seeing the disgusting giant eyes keep blocking the window, Su Mu couldn't bear it. As soon as he choked, a fire dragon curse was thrown away. The fiery fire snake snaked out, bombarding the big eyes, making a shishi roasting sound. But Su Mu saw that every eyeball was covered with a light green film, blocking this magical power. As soon as it was hit, the giant eyes hardly responded, still staring at Su Mu and the others and made countless chaotic and disordered voices, as if there were thousands of people talking at the same time. Open the window. Quickly open the window. Save. Save me. I. I'm in so much pain. Master Su, hurry up and join us. Eliminate. I'm going to eliminate you. Open up your belly and dig out your heart and lungs. Hee hee. Hee hee. Ascension, this is the right way to ascend. Eternal life, this is eternal life. Countless messy distorted voices gathered together and sounded non-stop. It's just mental pollution. Upon closer inspection, Su Mu could hear that some of the voices came from acquaintances he knew, all of whom were residents of Yuntai town. Only now, they have become this ghost look. The humanoid giants outside did nothing but look at them with a giant eye but the golden formation net keeps lighting up. Obviously, Su Mu and the others are being attacked in waves. Fortunately, the formation set up by Ng Yuzi blocked all these invisible attacks. Otherwise, the three of Su Mu would not survive until now. But this is not the way to go, we must fight back. Thinking of this, Su Mu took out a bronze gossip mirror from his arms. This gossip mirror is a magic weapon that Su's father helped him to find, and it has the ability to strengthen the magical power of Taoism. The only pity is that this gossip mirror is a defective product, and it will be seriously damaged every time it is used. It is estimated that after seven or eight times of use, it will be scrapped. Sumo couldn't be saved before, but now I have to take it out. Wind, fire, thunder and lightning. Break. Sumo Faju moved and cast the four gods charm. 
This is one of the magical powers that Inyuzi passed on to him, and it is a very powerful Tao technique. But his cultivation time was too short, and under normal circumstances, he could only watch it happily. But now with the blessing of the Bagua mirror, this is not necessarily the case. Su Mu used his magical powers on the Bagua mirror, and a four-color entangled light shot into it. With the submersion of the Four Gods mantra, the gossip bronze mirror brightened, and it seemed that something was brewing. When it reaches the limit, it is like a scorching sun. Seeing this, Sumu felt that he was holding the gossip bronze mirror and aimed at the giant eye outside the window. The next moment, a four-colored light that was twice as thick burst out from the bronze mirror, rushing towards the giant eye. For a time, the spiritual energy was agitated, and the space shook. The four-colored light silently hit the giant eye, and there was no unnecessary movement. But soon, the eyeballs on the giant eyes burst one by one, splashing red and green disgusting mucus. The crazy and disorderly ravings also turned into screams. Ah! In the screams, the humanoid giant began to disintegrate, and the layers of collapse scattered to the ground, and became the single appearance before. After the disintegration, the demonized townspeople still covered their eyes and rolled on the ground in pain. It looks like they won't be attacking Su Mu and the others for a while. Seeing this, Su Mu breathed a sigh of relief, and his tense nerves finally relaxed for a moment. As for Hong Ying on the side, she was already slumped on the ground covered in cold sweat. Only by hugging Su Mu's thighs tightly would she feel a sense of security. I, I knew that the young master would definitely be able to do it. Yu Yu. Hong Ying, who survived the catastrophe, hugged Su Mu's thigh and cried, her snot and tears all rubbing against his trousers. Su Mu didn't have time to appease the little maid, so she left her to look after her father first. Su Mu's father in this life is over fifty years old and has gained some weight. In the case of not practicing martial arts or qi, this age is not too young. Fortunately, Father Su was fine, but was frightened and needed to rest for a while. After settling down on his father, Su Mu frowned and looked at Hong Ying. He didn't intend to let other people in here. The top floor of the attic is neither large nor small. Except for some necessary furniture, the rest of the place is stuffed with food. Su Mu didn't know how long the disaster outside would last, so he could only stockpile as much food as possible. Having experienced famine, he knows the importance of food better than anyone. After the heavy snow fell and the mutation began, Hong Ying fled all the way here, and Su Mu couldn't easily throw her out. But her joining means that one more person needs to consume food. This is not good news. Master. I, I am very capable, you can let me do anything. Don't throw me out. Hong Ying served by Su Mu's side for many years, vaguely guessing what he was thinking, she knelt on the ground and cried. Facing Hong Ying's cry, Su Mu's expression did not change in the slightest. He sat in a chair and said coldly. Come here and let me check your body. The others were polluted and manipulated by that unknown demon. Only Hong Ying insisted on running here, and finally expelled the strange seed with the help of the formation. So Su Mu felt that her physique should be a little special. I have to check first to see what role Hong Ying can play, and then consider whether to keep her. What? Hearing this, Hong Ying was stunned for a moment, and then her pretty face turned red. She glanced at Father Su, who was already asleep, gritted her teeth and seemed to have made up her mind. Afterwards, Hong Ying took off her clothes and walked toward Su Mu, who was slow. Her legs seemed to weigh thousands of pounds. A pretty face blushed like a ripe persimmon, as if it was about to overflow with honey. But what greeted her was indeed a slightly suspicious question from Su Mu. What are you doing? What are you taking off? Hearing this, Hong Ying, who was just about to take off her last robe, was stunned, and said timidly. Master, don't you want to check your body? The word check was emphasized by her. Hearing this, Su Mu was speechless for a while. Although he is taller and more mature than his peers, he is only nine years old. What was this little girl thinking about? What a punishment! It seems that Hong Ying usually read some messy book secretly. Get dressed. Hurry up. Seeing Hong Ying staying where she was, Su Mu gave a low drink impatiently. 
The little girl was so frightened that she quickly put on her clothes and walked toward Sumu at a faster pace. She seems to understand the meaning of the young master wrong. Thinking of this, Hong Ying's complexion turned even redder, and she was ashamed to dig a hole in the ground to get in. What a shame! Fortunately, there are not many living people in Yuntai town, otherwise it would be shameful to see people. Su Mu ignored Hong Ying's thoughts. When she came to her side, she grabbed her hand, put the spiritual energy into her body, and probed carefully. Whether you have the talent to practice martial arts is easier to tell. Qi and blood, body type, limb coordination ability, etc. are relatively intuitive. But the talent of qi refining is difficult to distinguish. First, it is necessary to carefully examine a person's body with aura in order to roughly measure his specific talent. The second is that there are too few people with talent for qi refining, and the probability of winning the lottery is too low. Of course, there are also some magical tools and talismans used to detect talents. But those things are relatively precious, and only large-scale sects will have them. Fayungwen does not exist. The aura released by Su Mu traveled all over Hong Ying's body, carefully sensing the aura in her body. After some inspection, Su Mu's expression was a little surprised. Hong Ying's heart is very strong, and there is a hidden fire inside before she can cultivate. No wonder that strange seed failed to parasitize her smoothly. It seems that this little maid, Hong Ying, also has the talent to refine qi, and she is in the middle of the top. 88. After detecting that Hong Ying has a talent for cultivation, Su Mu decided to keep her. In the following time, Su Mu began to teach Hong Ying the method of qi refining in his spare time. It is also known as Fei Yun Guan's Fei Yun breathing method. Hong Ying and Su Mu are different, she started to practice from the fire spirit aura. After all, she was born with such an advantage. The strange heavy snow in Yuntai town continued for seven days. It was very abrupt to say stop after seven days. The traces on the ground also disappeared. As if nothing had happened. Su Mu saw these changes in his eyes, and his heart was cold. He knew that when the snow stopped, people died. Except for the three of them in the entire Yuntai town, I am afraid that there will be no living people. The meaning of snowing is gone, and naturally it stops. What's even weirder is that after the snow stopped, all the townspeople who were polluted and mutated all returned to their previous appearances. Farming and working every day, just like before, just like an ordinary people. But Su Mu knew that these were all illusions. Every once in a while, these mutated townspeople will show their terrifying true colors and besiege the small attic where they are. The scene of being besieged by hundreds of monsters makes it difficult to sleep and eat, and you will be awakened by nightmares when you fall asleep. Su Mu was okay, but Hong Ying and Su's father couldn't stand the pressure. Especially Father Su, who has always been pampered. Besieged by demons, he can only move in this small attic. Such an environment made him wilt and grow old at a speed visible to the naked eye. The spirit is getting worse and worse. In this regard, Su Mu has no choice but to try his best to ease him. But the effect is not great. Let's talk about Hong Ying. In addition to the method of refining qi, Su Mu also taught her the classics of Fai Yungwen's formation. Qi cultivators have many different development paths and can learn various methods. Just the right way, there are talismans, Taoism, formations, kanji, fortune-telling, utensil repair, and so on. There are more left-handed ones. Gu poison, refining corpses, refining souls, inviting gods, and controlling ghosts, there are countless strange and evil methods. Su Mu is currently concentrating on cultivating the magical powers of Taoism, and by the way, he will learn how to make talismans. Others, there is no time to study. But as the monsters attacked again and again, the formation created by An Yuzi obviously began to weaken. If no measures are taken, this safe house will not last long. So, Su Mu told Hong Ying the truth and asked her to study the formation. You don't want to be a master of formation, but at least you have the ability to repair attic formations. After learning that she would decide how long they would live, Hong Ying worked hard to cultivate the formation, and she made rapid progress. Under the threat of death, 
Hongying burst into unprecedented potential. A month later, she began to try to repair the formation, and achieved certain results. Time flies, and soon another month has passed. Su Mu, Hong Ying and Su's father have been in this small attic for more than two months. With the improvement of his cultivation, Su Mu began to try fasting, eating as little as possible to save his rations. Although Hong Ying's cultivation base is not as good as Su Mu, she also learns to eat as little as possible like him. Father Su couldn't do that. He was born into a wealthy family, and after taking over the family business, he carried it forward. After living for more than fifty years, I have long been used to eating big fish, big meat, and delicacies from mountains and seas, and I really can't adapt to the hard life. And Father Su's body shape is there, and it's not enough to eat less. After all, he was just an ordinary person. But just eating enough is still torture for him. After two months, Father Su's body and spirit have reached the limit. On this day, Su Mu finished his practice, but he did not see his father. Suddenly, he felt a vague sense of foreboding. Sure enough, Su Mu found the hanged body of his father in the innermost room of the attic, with a note in his hand. Su Mu sighed with mixed feelings, put down his body, took the note and read it. Son, I've had enough of this hard time, so I won't accompany you anymore. But you have to live well. You are the only seed of our Su family, and you are the one who will do great things in the future. Also, if you don't have enough food to eat later, you can put Hong Ying. Dad, I believe you all understand. Anyway, you must live on. If both of you can leave Yuntai Town alive, get married quickly and have a big fat boy to continue the incense for our Su family. Live well. Live well. After reading the messy note, Su Mu sighed. Su's father hanged himself. First, he really couldn't bear this horrible life, which was worse than jail time. On the other hand, he wanted to leave more food for his precious son, Su Mu. In his eyes, nothing is more precious than Su Mu's life. His own life is not comparable, and Hong Ying's life is even less comparable. In order to prevent himself from consuming food in vain, he chose to cut himself off. Su Mu put the note close to him, and then began to think about what to do with his father's body. It is obviously impossible to go to earth for safety, and they can't get out. As for throwing it out. That's even more impossible. Who knows what the monsters will do with this body. After thinking about it, Su Mu only thought of cremation. Dad, I'm sorry. Although this is not in line with your concept, this is the only way to deal with your funeral. Su Mu pleaded guilty, and then cast the Vulcan charm to cremate his father's body. After being cremated, the ashes were placed in a jade bottle and placed in a high place in the attic for worship. After Father Su died, only Su Mu and Hong Ying were left. Trapped in such a small space and faced with such a dangerous situation. It stands to reason that the two should stick to each other and their relationship will heat up quickly. But Su Mu is calm and tenacious like a rock. Even in this situation, he still maintained absolute calm, and while he was cultivating hard, he also urged Hong Ying to cultivate well. If she relaxes a little, she will be severely scolded by Su Mu. Another month passed, and seven or eight demon slayers came to Yuntai Town. At this time, it had been half a year since Zhang Shichong, the catcher, sent a request for help. The day lilies are cold. These monster slayers entered Yuntai Town unknowingly and found nothing unusual. The worst thing is that they were invited into the Su family compound. The demon also didn't know where to conjure up a master Su and became the head of the Su family. Of course, there is also a fake hematoxylin. Master Su hosted a banquet for the demon slayers. A table of feasts, full of delicacies from mountains and seas. The few demon slayers were running around, hungry and tired. I ate and drank without thinking too much, so unhappy. In the attic, Su Mu used the sky eye technique to see this scene and shook helplessly. Obviously, these demon slayers are not good enough. You can't even see the true face of the monster, let alone deal with the monster. They are destined to die here. Sure enough, after three rounds of wine and five flavors of dishes, a sumptuous banquet revealed its true colors. It's actually full of rotten meat, rotten bones and sour soup. 
Seeing this situation, the monster slayers turned pale in shock. How could they not know that they were trapped in the devil's cave? But it was too late at this time, and a large number of demons had already gathered around. In a few screams, none of the seven or eight monster slayers were left, and they all died on the spot. After learning of this situation, Hong Ying was very sad. Su Mu didn't count on these monster slayers from the beginning, so naturally he couldn't be disappointed. But Hong Ying didn't think so. She thought that these flamboyant demon slayers were the saviors. In the end, before he came to save them, he took it in by himself. This blow made Hong Ying's later cultivation more concentrated. She gradually realized that if she wanted to survive, she still had to rely on herself. Spring to winter to another spring. Time flies by like a white horse. In a blink of an eye, three years have passed. In the past three years, both Su Mu and Hong Ying have grown a lot. Not only the body, but the cultivation base has grown even more. Su Mu has cultivated the water spirit aura and the wood spirit spirit to the small perfection realm, and is already cultivating the fire spirit spirit. At the age of twelve, the five Qi refine the second. This is already a little genius. More importantly, on his twelfth birthday, the talent of Enchanted was finally activated. Su Mu had a smooth epiphany and did not become enchanted. The first epiphany greatly increased his mastery of Taoism and magical powers, and his strength increased greatly. Taking the fire dragon spell as an example, it has evolved from the small fire snake before to the fire dragon. The power has been increased by at least ten times. As for Hong Ying, she has cultivated the fire spiritual qi to perfection and is already cultivating the earth spiritual qi. At the same time, she is also quite accomplished in formation. Without Hong Ying's tinkering, this great formation in the attic wouldn't last three years. But. Three years is basically the limit. They can't take it anymore. Although Su Mu and Hong Ying live frugally, the grain reserves are almost bottoming out. More importantly, although Hong Ying has been tinkering. But under the attack of the demons day after day, this great formation is on the verge of collapse. Su Mu estimated that if he could last three times at most, he would be attacked by the demon. They must have planned ahead. On this day, Su Mu found Hong Ying after her practice. Get ready, three days later, we'll go out. Since you can't hold it anymore, then go out and fight to the death. Hearing this, Hong Ying trembled, but her eyes gradually became firmer. Yes. Young master. In three years, this little girl who was afraid of death has become tenacious. For the next three days, Su Mu and Hong Ying recharged their batteries, just waiting for the last desperate fight. In fact, Su Mu knew very well that with the strength of the two of them, the possibility of killing Yuntai Town was almost zero. But sitting still is not Su Mu's style. If you want to die, you have to die standing up. But what Su Mu didn't expect was that Yuntai Town suddenly broke into two people on the second day of the countdown. In the past three years, many people have strayed into Yuntai Town one after another, and the end is a dead word. But these two people, after Su Mu glanced at it from a distance, he noticed the extraordinary. One of them has a majestic figure and a majestic appearance. He has a long beard and carries five long swords on his back. Gu Panjian was murderous, and he frowned. It looks like a big killer. The other is the opposite of his temperament. He is dressed in a white Taoist robe, has a refined temperament, and has a beautiful face. This person is not like a Taoist priest, but more like a suave young man. The two walk together, wandering aimlessly in Yuntai town, like ordinary tourists. It was not until the appearance of an old woman that the style of painting changed. Two nobles okay, let's buy something from the old woman. There is a little grandson waiting to be raised at home. An old woman with a hunched body and a pitiful face stopped in front of the two and tried her best to sell the candied hus she was carrying. Seeing this, the big bearded man grinned and said. Okay, then I'll be fine. Saying that, he grabbed the candied haws on top of the old woman's head. But when his palm was about to touch the candied haws, he suddenly turned back and grabbed the old woman's head. Crack. The big man's movements were as fast as lightning. In the next instant, a puddle of blood splashed out. 
The old woman's head was ripped off by him. It even brought out a spine. The big man was still grinning, but the smile was cold to the core. While holding the head of the old woman, he looked around, his smile became more and more hideous. Who else wants me to do well? 89. I have a demon emulator. The street used to be crowded and lively. But the action of the bearded man made the entire Yuntai town quiet in an instant, and it was dead silent. On the street, all the pedestrians stopped and turned their heads to stare at him. Those pair of empty and strange eyes make people feel chills in their hearts. But this bearded man is no ordinary person. Not afraid at all, he threw off the old woman's head, looked around and said with a sneer. A monster is a monster, and a person is a person. What are you pretending to be? You still don't show the original form to Lousy. As he spoke, the old woman's headless corpse twitched suddenly, crawling away like a spider. But the bearded man responded very quickly. He flew and stepped on it, pressing down with great force. The headless corpse of the old woman was directly exploded and turned into a pool of blood. This time, it's dead. The Taoist man in white next to the bearded man looked at a drop of red and green liquid splashed on his clothes, and said with a bit of complaint. Brother Zhuga, can't you be more restrained? Every time I act with you, my Taoist robe will suffer. Said, the white robed Taoist shook his head helplessly. At the same time, he reached out and stroked, and the stains on the white robe disappeared. Hearing this, Zhuga Hongtu raised his head and laughed. Ha ha ha. I'm used to it. After being a butcher for twenty years, I changed my career and became a monster slayer. The habit of doing it can't be changed. Brother Yun, bear with me. The two were trapped in the devil's cave, surrounded by many. But without the slightest panic, he chatted there on his own. Such an attitude seemed to annoy the demons that the townspeople had transformed into. I saw pedestrians on the street twist and mutate one after another, turning into terrifying human-shaped ghosts, and slaying the two with their teeth and claws. That's right, it looks much more comfortable. Seeing this, Juga Hongtu laughed wickedly. With a pinch of his sword tactic, a long sword behind him flew out with a zheng and landed in his hands. Go! Juga Hongtu quickly brushed his on the edge of the sword and performed a Taoist technique. Randomly, a raging fire was ignited on this long sword and it seemed that it could wipe out the demons. This seemingly fierce-looking big-cheeked man is actually a rare double cultivator. Taking into account both martial arts and qi refining, and the cultivation base on both sides is very high. Evil demons, die. Zhuge Hongtu shouted angrily, holding the flame sword and smashed into the numerous demons. With a sword in his hand, it was a red sword light that was more than ten meters long. Everything along the way was blocked and cut off. Zhuge Hongtu is like killing a god, beheading the demons transformed by these townspeople is like cutting leeks. Freehand brushwork, crop after crop quickly harvested. In the face of such murderous people, these demons have no resistance at all. After a while, the monsters on the street were cleaned up. The shredded demon corpses and the red-green slime all over the floor are very disgusting. These demon fragments originally showed signs of re-merging together. But the white-robed Taoist didn't know what Tao technique he used. A breeze blew out, and the pieces that were just about to be fused were scattered all over the floor. No more movement. After the battle, Zhuge Hongtu's body was stained with the rotten flesh and blood of a lot of demons, and there were many on his head and face. It stands to reason that this situation can be completely avoided with his cultivation. But he doesn't seem to care, and instead enjoys it. These little monsters really don't deserve to be eliminated. Zhuge Hongtu wiped his face, shook off the disgusting red green mucus, and walked towards the white robed Taoist. On the contrary, the white robed Taoist was spotless, with no stains on his body. Obviously, he used some means to maintain his own cleanliness. Seeing Zhuge Hongtu walking towards him, the white-robed Taoist silently took a step back and replied, Dot. They are all poor people who have been polluted and alienated, and naturally they don't have much strength. But don't be careless. Don't forget, according to my divination, this Yuntai town has a life-and-death catastrophe for you and me. 
I have spent the vast sea and sky, but I can't get through. Life and death are unpredictable. Speaking of this, the face of the white-robed Taoist showed a bit of seriousness. Hearing this, Zhuge Hongtu grabbed his beard and squinted his eyes and said. You said, with the strength of the two of us, this world can go. Is there any existence that can make us fall into the catastrophe of life and death? Hearing this, Taoist Bai Pao became more serious, and he said solemnly. Don't underestimate the heroes of the world. Even if it's not a world of great contention, there are still a lot of great people hiding in the world. Have you forgotten how you were cleaned up when you first met me? It's not too arrogant, or it wouldn't be so embarrassing. When Bai Pao Taoist talked about the embarrassing thing, Zhuge Hongtu scratched his head and smiled, saying. Don't say this, don't say this. I believe you can't do it. I'll listen to you from now on. Tell me what to do next. Hearing this, Taoist Bai Pao's expression softened slightly. He pinched his fingers and said lightly. We don't have to do anything, just stay where we are. After a while, someone came to tell us what happened in this town. Is that so? Then I'll take a break. Zhuge Hongtu knew that his companion was good at divination. Hearing this, he went straight to the ground, found a fairly complete monster corpse as a pillow, and took a nap with Erlang's legs crossed and his eyes closed. I have to say that this powerful demon slayer is very unusual. On the other side, after seeing Zhuge Hongtu showing his mighty power and slaughtering like a melon in a vegetable, Su Mu's eyes lit up. He saw hope to live. Although it doesn't matter if you die a few times in the dungeon world, it is worth dying. The first time to explore a copy, naturally the more information you get, the better. But now Su Mu doesn't even know what the monster that is making trouble in Yuntai Town is, so he can only guess that it might be a tree monster. This will not work. He has to continue to live and collect more information so that he can plan for the subsequent rebirth. Two powerful masters have come up from the town. As long as you meet them, you can survive. Hong Ying, it looks like we're going to go out ahead of time. Su Mu told Hong Ying what he saw with the sky eye technique. Hearing this, Hong Ying was extremely excited. Her desire to survive was much stronger than Su Mu. Hearing that, he immediately agreed. As long as Su Mu gives an order, the two will eliminate. After unifying their opinions, Su Mu and Hong Ying packed up and prepared, and then left the top floor of the attic. After several years, the two of them finally embraced the outside world again. This feeling makes me want to cry. But Su Mu and Hong Ying didn't have time to sigh. Yuntai Town is not only the monsters on the street. As soon as the two of them came out, several townspeople immediately slaughtered them, and in the process of slaughtering, they showed a real terrifying appearance. Fortunately, Su Mu and Hong Ying are not what they used to be. In three years, their cultivation base has skyrocketed and their strength has greatly increased. There is no pressure to deal with a few alienated monsters. Su Mufa decided to pinch, and a fire dragon condensed out, galloping to eliminate the alienated townspeople. Three years ago, he still performed the fire snake curse, and now he can finally be called a fire dragon. At least it has to be a dragon. The Taoist fire dragon roared back, and the beasts that came over were blasted out one by one, scorched all over. However, the vitality of these polluted and alienated townspeople is extremely tenacious. Su Mu couldn't eliminate them easily, nor did he think about killing them. Su Mu's purpose is very simple, that is, to break out of the siege and make a path. Su Mu drove the fire dragon, roaring to clear the way ahead. The blocking demons were blasted out one after another, their bodies scorched. Not being able to come back for a while will cause trouble for Su Mu. Hong Ying performed Taoism and guarded the rear to prevent sneak attack by demons. The two rushed to eliminate with all their strength, and quickly ran to the place where the two masters were. But the further forward, the more alienated townspeople were surrounded and eliminated, and they surrounded them like zombies. These evildoers bully the soft and fear the hard. After being slaughtered by Zhuge Hongtu and Bai Pao Daoist, he didn't dare to provoke them again, and they all stayed far away. But seeing Su Mu and Hong Ying come out, they all rushed up, wanting to eliminate them. There are more and more monsters ahead, 
at least 40 or 50, and Su Mu's fire dragon curse is almost unbearable. Most of the spiritual energy in his body has been consumed, and it is not enough to support it any longer. Fortunately, Su Mu had long thought of this situation and made corresponding preparations. Time to show their cards. It's time, Hong Ying. Su Mu shouted loudly. Hong Ying understood, and immediately took out a blanket full of spells from her arms. Rise. The reading method was pinched, and the blanket supported her and flew up. Master. Hong Ying, who was flying in the air, stretched out a hand to Su Mu and shouted anxiously. At the same time, dozens of alienated townspeople eliminated Su Mu at the same time. It seems to devour his flesh and blood, leaving him forever. At this moment, the situation is extremely critical. Burst. Su Mu was calm and heavy, and with a low voice, he controlled the fire dragon to fly around him to the outside. After expanding to a certain extent, it burst open, blasting all the monsters around. Taking advantage of this time, Su Mu grabbed Hong Ying's hand and jumped onto the flying carpet. When he left the attic, Su Mu thought that it might be difficult to pass on the ground, so he couldn't break out of the siege smoothly. So I painted a floating spell on a blanket and temporarily upgraded it to a flying carpet. However, the material of this blanket is ordinary, and it cannot withstand the power of aura and spells for a long time. Can only barely be regarded as a one-time magic weapon. After flying into the sky, the crisis was not lifted. Not long after Su Mu and Hong Ying flew out, the sky in Yuntai town darkened. It was still daytime just now, and a few breaths turned into night. It's still a dark night where you can't see your fingers. In the dark sky, large tracks of dark clouds were accumulating. And there was a sudden gust of wind and thunder. It seems that some kind of terrible disaster is about to come. On the ground, the demons raised their heads and looked at Su Mu and Hong Ying with strange and empty eyes, as if they were waiting for their deaths. This picture is heart-wrenching. Quick! Fly there! Su Mu pointed in the direction of Zhuge Hongtu and Taoist Bai Pao, and calmly commanded. The two of them worked together to inject spiritual energy into the flying carpet with all their might. All the spells on the flying carpet are lit up, and they have been pushed to the limit. Quick! Quick! Hong Ying urged nervously in her heart. But they are still not fast enough. Su Mu was shocked to see that the clouds in the sky of Yuntai town gradually melted away, surging into turbulent black water. It felt as if a vast ocean was overturned on top of their heads and was sinking rapidly. This situation seems to be falling apart. It brings an unparalleled sense of oppression and suffocation. Boom! In the sky, the black water surged and smashed towards Su Mu and Hong Ying with unparalleled momentum. At this time, they were still ten miles away from Zhuge Hongtu and Taoist Bai Pao. In the sky, they can already be seen. Senior. Help. At the critical moment, Su Mu called out for help. On the other side, Zhuge Hongtu and Bai Pao Taoist also saw them. Ha! Huh. Didn't you say that the town has been invaded by demons for several years? Why are there still people alive? Zhuge Hongtu, who was lying on the ground, raised his head, Yu Yu reading looked a little surprised. As for the white-robed Taoist, he already knew the existence of Su Mu and Hong Ying. Wen Yan just smiled and did not speak. He stood with his hands behind his back, calmly facing Wang Yang, who was about to fall in the sky, with the air of a master. Seeing this, Zhuge Hongtu pouted and said helplessly. Brother Yun, don't pretend to be compulsive. Hurry up and save those two young people. They might know something. Zhuge Hongtu is a martial artist, but he has nothing to do in the face of this turbulent ocean. Of course he could withstand this magic trick himself, but he couldn't save Su Mu and Hong Ying ten miles away. However, the friend next to him is unfathomable and can definitely save Su Mu and Hong Ying. Hearing this, the white-robed Taoist said calmly, dot. Don't worry, let this magic trick fly for a while. 90. Before coming to Yuntai town, Taoist Bai Pao calculated a hexagram for himself and Zhuge Hongtu. During this trip to Yuntai town, they will experience a catastrophe of life and death. Once you get over it, 
you will be able to open up the sea and sky, and you will be able to cultivate a smooth road all the way. But if you can't get through this catastrophe, I'm afraid that life and death will be eliminated. Therefore, Taoist Bai Pao is very cautious, and he must be careful in every step before he dares to go out. Right now, this sea of sky is the first time the demon hidden in Yuntai town has attacked. Daoist Bai Pao wanted to take this opportunity to obtain more information and intelligence. But after some calculations, nothing came out. It seems that someone has deliberately blinded the information of the demon. The white-robed Taoist only saw a fog. How could this be? Could it be that there are some masters hidden behind the monster in Yuntai town? Daoist Bai Pao's fortune-telling ability is extremely strong, and the means to deceive him is absolutely extraordinary. It must have come from the hands of an expert. Thinking of this, Taoist Bai Pao's heart became a little heavier, and his face was a little dignified. This Yuntai town is not easy. At this moment, Wang Yang, who was upside down on the heads of Su Mu and Hong Ying, was descending rapidly. Huge waves. Infinite power. As if the sky collapsed. Hong Ying was already frightened. She slumped on the flying carpet, staring blankly at the turbulent sea above her head, she didn't even control the flying carpet. Su Mu sighed helplessly, thinking that this life is probably the only way to go here. He even began to wonder if he would change his talents in the next life. But at this critical moment, Taoist Bai Pao finally made his move. He stretched out his hand and grabbed it in the void, and suddenly a white jade Buddha dust appeared in his hand. The whole body of this Buddha dust is pure white and flawless, overflowing with light. At a glance, you know that it is not ordinary. Open the sky. The Taoist Bai Pao choked with one hand and waved the Buddha dust with the other. In an instant, thousands of strands of Buddha dust fluttered. It grows and spreads at an astonishing rate. In the blink of an eye, it turned into a giant white jade sword that was dozens of miles long and slashed into the sky. Boom! In the sky, huge waves gushed and black water splashed everywhere. The Black Sea, which was so high in the sky, was cut in half abruptly. In the cracks that were split, the rays of light were revealed, lighting up this dim world. With the deepening of the white jade giant sword, the upside-down Wang Yang made a real roar. The whole sky is shaking. Break! The Taoist priest in white robe made another slap, and hundreds of purple talismans flew out of his sleeves and submerged into the gradually collapsing ocean. Immediately, the entire expanse of ocean gushed up. This is really done by Fen Tian and Zhu Hai together. Under the two great magical powers, the sea of the sky could no longer support it, and it began to collapse little by little. But when it collapsed, the fragments still smashed to the ground. This fall, even if it is only 1% of the power, it is not something that mortals can bear. However, Taoist Bai Pao had long expected this scene. He took out a tattered cloth bag and threw it into the sky after the operation. The endless sea water seemed to be pulled, rushing towards the cloth bag. This cloth bag is only half the size of a human, but it seems to be endlessly engulfing the sea water. There was no sign of being full. Half an hour later, the ocean in the sky was completely swallowed up, leaving nothing left. The sun once again appeared over Yuntai town. This terrifying magic trick was broken by the white-robed Taoist. This Taoist priest looks young, but his Taoism is terrifying. Su Mu was very shocked. This white-robed Taoist doesn't know the origin, and his cultivation is even more profound than Qing Shuzi. And the difference is not small. But anyway, they are now saved. After being rescued, Su Mu controlled the flying carpet to continue flying towards Zhuge Hongtu and Taoist Bai Pao. But when it flew two or three miles away from them, the flying carpet was scrapped. After all, it is an ordinary blanket, and it is not qualified to become a magic weapon. Moreover, the methods of Su Mu and Hong Ying were too rough. Helpless, Su Mu could only hold Hong Ying, who was frightened to the point of being paralyzed, and used a floating spell to glide in front of the two masters. Thanks to the two seniors for helping each other. After seeing Zhuge Hongtu and Taoist Bai Pao, Su Mu bowed and thanked him solemnly. Zhuge Hongtu, who had stood up earlier, stepped aside and clucked his ears and said casually. 
I didn't make a move. If you want to thank him, thank him. Hearing this, Su Mu said seriously. How can we not thank the seniors? If it wasn't for the fierceness of the seniors, the frightened monsters didn't dare to attack with all their strength, and we were afraid that we wouldn't be able to eliminate their heavy siege. Hearing this, Juga Hongtu was very happy. Looking at how young you are, how can you talk like that? What a little man. Okay, I don't need to say more good things, I just cover you behind. Thank you, senior. Hearing this, a smile appeared on Su Mu's face. Isn't that what he was waiting for? Afterwards, Zhuge Hongtu looked at Su Mu seriously and asked. Boy, who is your master? It's not bad to have cultivated to this level at this age. In the eyes of the Taoist priests in Faiyangwen, Su Mu's situation is a rare genius. But Zhuge Hongtu is not an extraordinary person, he has seen a lot, and he has seen countless so-called geniuses. In his opinion, Su Mu can only be regarded as a good talent. That's all. But Su Mu's next sentence changed the face of the bearded man. Without a master, I cultivate it on my own. If I have to say something, a senior once preached for me all night. What? No master. Is this true? Zhuge Hongtu was a little surprised, and looked at Su Mu again. At the age of twelve, Su Mu, the water and wood energy are small, and it is not bad. But if you cultivate to this level without being taught, it will be different. As for the so-called speaking for one night, such words were directly ignored by Zhuge Hongtu. One night, does it count as a master? It's amazing to learn this level by yourself. Don't dare to deceive senior, my name is Su Mu, yes. Su Mu revealed his own background and the process of cultivation. Not only Zhuge Hongtu, but even the white-robed Taoist looked at him more. The two of them never thought that they would meet a piece of fine jade like Su Mu in this ghost place. Not only is he extremely talented, but he is also tenacious. Under the circumstances of the demon slaughtering town, he stayed in a formation for three years. And he is still cultivating and improving his strength. After seeing them appear, he decisively broke out of the siege and moved closer to them. Finally rescued. This child, whether it is talent or character, is excellent. He is a good seedling who cultivates qi and cultivates Tao. In fact, Su Mu knew that his qi refining talent was not perfect. The wisdom at 10 o'clock is not low, but it is definitely not high. However, Su Mu has other means. With the help of these three talents, he has greatly increased his cultivation speed, and he has reached the threshold of genius. Two seniors, I don't know what you have to do when you come to Yuntai Town. Maybe I can provide some information. Su Mu didn't bother with talent, but instead asked him about the origins of the two. Zhuge Hongtu and Daoist Bai Pao heard the meaning of Su Mu's words, and after smiling, they did not hide it, clarifying their origin and purpose. Zhuge Hongtu is from the Demon Suppression Division, and he is a demon slayer with the name of Tianzi. The demon slayers are divided into three grades, heaven, earth, and human. To be precise, there is a fourth one, Wu Ping. The status is almost equivalent to being an intern. The Yuan Jihu, Meng Yao and the old drunk that Su Mu met in the main world were human-level demon slayers. And there are only four demon slayers with the name Tianzi. Zhuge Hongtu is one of them, which shows how strong he is. In addition, Su Mu always felt that the name Zhuge Hongtu sounded familiar, but he couldn't remember where he heard it for a while. I can only give up and stop thinking about it. As for the white-robed Taoist, he was a wandering Taoist. His name is Yun Qin Kong, and he comes from a mysterious sect. This cheerifying school has always been single-handed, and its name is unknown, but it has a very deep background. Both of them are incredibly powerful. They are the strongest group of people in the world. Zhuge Hongtu has both martial arts and double cultivation, and his achievements are very high. He is known as the number one swordsman in Kyushu and is a top martial arts master. At the same time, the cultivation of qi is good, and the five qi have been cultivated to the state of perfect unity, that is, the five qi chaoyuan. It's just that Sanhua hasn't condensed yet, and it's a little bit closer to perfecting qi. However, Zhuge Hongtu focused on martial arts, supplemented by Taoism. 
this is more in line with his fighting style. As for Yun Qin Kong. With such a powerful means, he has naturally cultivated to the realm of qi refining great perfection. This man has great powers and powerful methods. It is the strongest qi refiner that Su Mu has ever seen. Although he looks like he is in his early twenties, he is actually not a few years younger than Su Mu's father in this life. In recent years, Yun Qin Kong has begun to try to enter the realm of the unity of heaven and man, attacking the gods. However, this realm is too mysterious and obscure, and he has not yet realized the opportunity to enter the door. As for why you came to Yuntai Town, the reason is very simple. A group of demon slayers died before, so Yuntai Town attracted the attention of the town magician. After some investigation, the town demon division found out that this is a place of great murder. Non-celestial monster slayers are not allowed to enter easily. But there are so many things that Tianziho Monster Slayer has to deal with, so he can't take care of Yuntai Town for a while. It was not until some time ago that Juga Hong to freed up his hands and prepared to go to Yuntai Town to investigate. The one who should be eliminated is the one who should be eliminated. Sweep down this hellish place. But before departure, Yun Qin Kong, who had always seen the head of the dragon but never saw its tail, suddenly found him. It turned out that when he was cultivating one day, Yun Qin Kong suddenly had a whim, and had a premonition that a catastrophe of life and death was approaching. This catastrophe will affect the direction of the rest of his life. For this, Yun Qin Kong made a special calculation. The hexagram shows that this catastrophe is the life and death catastrophe shared by him and Zhuge Hongtu, and it is in Yuntai Town. So, these two best friends went to Yuntai Town together to deal with the catastrophe of life and death. After listening to the two of them, Su Mu was secretly shocked. Originally thought that with the blessing of these two masters, the next thing would be much simpler. Unexpectedly, the two of them went to Yuntai Town to die. Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu are so powerful, how terrifying should they face the death calamity? Wouldn't it be a monster on the level of a red dragon centipede again? Thinking of this, Su Mu has a huge headache. As the parties involved, Zhuge Hongtu and Yun Qin Kong were very calm. After the two sides communicated, Zhuge Hongtu said to Yun Qin Kong. Brother Yun, haven't you been looking for an apprentice? What do you think of this kid? Yun Qin Kong shook his head and spit out two words lightly. Not enough. Hearing this, Zhuge Hongtu was very happy. Ha! You don't want this, I didn't rob it. Having said that, he turned to look at Su Mu, patted his shoulder and said. Boy, you're very good, and you'll mess with me in the future. When I destroy the evil spirits in Yuntai Town and break the calamity, I'll take you back to the town demon division. Hearing this, Su Mu smiled casually, trying her best to show some happiness. Back to the town magic department. Whether we can get out of this Yuntai Town is still a question. Of course, Su Mu would not say these words. He said to the two of them. Two seniors, there is a Feiyun temple on the back mountain of Yuntai Town. I suspect that the evildoer is inseparable from the Feiyun temple, and maybe it is hidden in the Taoist temple. Then what are you waiting for? Let's go and see. Zhuge Hongtu waved his hand, and the group of four walked towards the back mountain of Yuntai Town. 91. Yuntai Town is built on a mountain, and the mountain it relies on is not tall. It has a more common name, Yunfeng Mountain. Under the leadership of Su Mu, a group of four came to the foot of Yunfeng Mountain. I saw that this mountain, less than a thousand meters high, was shrouded in clouds and mist, and the scenery on the mountain was dreamlike and unreal. Yun Qin Kong stared at it for a while, then said lightly. Where do these hills come from so many clouds and mists? If something goes wrong, there must be demons. We didn't come to the wrong place. Zhuge Hongtu stroked his beard and said casually. Then what are you waiting for, let's go up to see the two brothers. Facing the so-called catastrophe of life and death, Zhuge Hongtu didn't care. In other words, he is full of confidence in his own strength. Hearing this, Yun Qin Kong did not answer, but turned to Su Mu and Hong Ying and asked. What about the two of you? Are you going to go up the mountain with us, or stay here? Su Mu replied without hesitation. 
Naturally, I went up the mountain with the two seniors. The two of us stay here, I'm afraid we will be swallowed up by those alienated townspeople. Yun Qin Kong glanced behind. I saw that the place two or three miles away from them was full of alienated townspeople with ferocious expressions. They are crowded together, a piece of darkness. These demons are afraid of the tyrannical strength of Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu, and dare not approach. But if Su Mu and Hong Ying parted with them, it would be hard to say what happened. Thinking of this, Yun Qin Kong nodded and said. All right then, the two of you will go up the mountain with us. But be careful. If you encounter a major disaster, I may not be able to take care of you. At that time, it's all up to you. Unlike Zhuge Hongtu, Yun Qin Kong, as a Taoist, takes life and death very seriously. So Su Mu was vaccinated in advance to prepare him mentally. Boy understands. Su Mu had already anticipated this, and nodded to indicate that he knew. After unifying their opinions, the four of them walked up the mountain. As soon as they entered the mountain, everyone was enveloped in thick clouds and mist. Looking back, the way you came has disappeared. If you want to go down the mountain, I'm afraid it's not that easy. Yun Qin Kong frowned and said. The demon in the mountains is soaring to the sky, it is indeed a big demon. I just don't know what to do. Yun Qin Kong is accustomed to the prophetic ability brought by fortune telling. At this time, being shielded from magical powers, I was somewhat uncomfortable, so I could only explore and guess little by little. It doesn't matter what kind of monster he is, just eliminate him when he sees it, how easy it is. Having said that, Zhuge Hongtu took out the jug and took a sip of wine, then spit it out violently. Ha! Huh. In the heat wave, a fire dragon with a length of more than ten meters rushed out, sweeping away all the surrounding clouds. A magnanimous road appeared in front of everyone, leading directly to the top of the mountain. Looking up, I could vaguely see a Taoist temple covered with vines. It is Fayungwen. Walk. Zhuge Hongtu did not trace any ink, he broke through the maze, found a path, and then strode forward. Seeing this, the three of Su Mu followed closely behind him. I was careful along the way, but nothing special happened. It wasn't until he was about to reach the top of the mountain that there was a change. In the white mist, a familiar and unfamiliar voice rang out from Su Mu. Master Xiaomu, have you come to bring me food again? Who? There was a fierce light in Zhuge Hongtu's eyes, and he looked in the direction from which the voice came. After entering the Yunfeng mountain filled with demonic energy, their perception ability decreased a lot. At the same time, because the person who came here is too weak, otherwise they could have been discovered earlier. After looking at the person who spoke, Su Mu showed a look of surprise. A few dozen meters away from them, stood a chubby little Taoist boy, about ten years old, with a cute appearance. This little Taoist boy is Minji Weizi. Master Xiaomu, have you come to bring me food again? I'm hungry. Minji Weizi looked at Su Mu with a pleading look, and at the same time walked towards him slowly. Su Mu looked up and down Minji Weizi and sighed. It's been three years, and your appearance hasn't changed at all. Yes, Minji Weizi at this time is exactly the same as three years ago, she hasn't grown up even half. From this alone, it can be seen that he is definitely not a normal person. I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Give me something to eat, I want to eat. As she was talking, Minji Weizi's complexion suddenly turned hideous, her speed suddenly increased, and she rushed toward Su Mu with a swipe. Looking for death. Seeing this, Zhuge Hongtu raised his brows, drew his sword and slashed. The red sword light swept out, and Minji Weizi's body that flew into the air was slashed and burst open. Flesh and blood flew, revealing the inner appearance of Minji Weizi's body. His bones were actually replaced by twisted russet branches, he was no longer alive. If you look closely, you will find that a tentacle-like branch is linked to his back, extending all the way into the interior of Feiyun Temple. Hungry. I'm hungry. Although there was no flesh and blood, as the branches twisted and grew, a larger monster appeared in front of everyone. This monster is not Minji Weizi at all. Flesh and blood is just its disguise, and it is only now that it has revealed its true form. Whispering, 
This tree man seems to be the monster that continues to eliminate Su Mu and the others. It grew dozens of vines all over its body, weaving into a large net full of barbs, and it seemed to catch them all. At the same time, a lot of catkin-like things spewed out of his mouth, flying toward Su Mu and the others. This thing is exactly the thing that was similar to snowflakes and stayed in Yuntai town for several days and nights. Suspected to have the ability to eliminate parasites. Let me try. Yun Qin Kong stopped Zhuge Hongtu, who was about to shoot, and with a pinch, a spark popped out of his fingers. This Martian particle is only a little bigger than dust. But when it landed on the tree-like demon, it immediately ignited a raging fire, turning it into a burning man. Ah! In an instant, the heavy snow melted away and the tree net broke. The demon also burst into flames and let out a shrill and strange roar. The surrounding clouds rushed towards it, as if they wanted to help put out the fire. But this is not an ordinary flame at all, how can it be extinguished so easily? During the screaming, the demon struggled to rush towards Su Mu and the others, as if he was going to hurt people. But within a few steps, they all turned to ashes. Not a little bit left. The branch connected behind it abandoned it and shrank back to the Feiyin view at a very fast speed. The real big demon has yet to show up. After easily killing a demon, Yun Qingkong's complexion did not change in the slightest. He analyzed. This is also a puppet controlled by a demon, but it's more advanced. The curse of this place should be in that Taoist view. Saying that, Yun Qing Kong looked up at Fei Yun on the top of the mountain with sharp eyes. What is the catastrophe of their life and death? Could it be the demon hidden in that Taoist temple? Yun Qing Kong was full of emotions. After getting rid of the demon blocking the road, the four continued on their way, and soon came to the outside of Fei Yun Guan. This Taoist temple is covered with all kinds of vines, and the original appearance can no longer be seen. There was a vaguely eerie and gloomy aura that made people daunting. Just as Zhuge Hongtu was about to step forward and push the door to enter, the door of Fai Yungwen opened automatically. Who is presumptuous in my Fai Yungwen? With a low shout, more than a dozen Taoists flew out one after another, and after landing, they looked at the four people outside the Taoist temple coldly. One of them, Su Mu recognized. It was Ying Yuzi who had preached to him. At this time, Yuko Ying's demeanor was completely different from before. The reason is already obvious. He is no longer alive. Aren't you annoying? I've already eliminated you at the door, why are you still following me? I'll die for it all. Zhuge Hongtu impatiently drew his sword and rushed forward, his body was full of anger, and his killing intent was Lane Ran. This celestial monster slayer is a real reckless man. But as a top martial arts master with a high level of refining qi, he has the qualifications to go all the way. In the face of Zhuge Hongtu's sword move, the dozen or so demon puppets were unable to maintain their human form, and they all revealed their original shapes and fought with him. These puppets are obviously one level higher than those mutated townspeople, and their strength is much stronger. Su Mu estimated that they probably had the combat power of congenital warriors. A dozen of them joined hands and cooperated with some weird magic techniques, which was enough to fight against the warriors in the early stage of the master. But in front of Zhuge Hongtu, he was still too weak to be seen. This bearded man's swordsmanship is extremely ferocious, and he pours his anger like he doesn't want money, and any random sword has amazing power. Between the sword energy, the grass and gravel flew around. Even the Feiyun Temple and the mountain were cut with several huge gaps that were more than ten meters long. As for the dozen or so tree-like demon puppets, they were all chopped into pieces within ten breaths. The sharp sword energy was deep inside them, destroying all life. Let these demons have no chance of recovery. After the battle, Zhuge Hongtu threw it at will, and the broad sword flew into the scabbard. Seems to be spiritual. He took a few steps forward and smashed the gate of Fai Yungwen with a bang, and even the walls on both sides collapsed. Go, go in and see what kind of evildoer has the ability to become our life and death catastrophe. Zhuge Hongtu didn't stop, and walked towards Fai Yungwen while talking. Seeing this, Yun Qing Kong helplessly shook his head, and immediately followed. This is a catastrophe of life and death. 
why doesn't this reckless guy care? In the back, Su Mu and Hong Ying looked at each other and followed closely behind. The two are so different in temperament, and I don't know how they became friends. The Feiyin Temple in the past was not a sect, but it has been passed down for hundreds of years. An unknown disaster completely destroyed Fai Yungwen. All the people in the Taoist Temple have become puppets of demons, and they cannot rest in peace after death. Looking back now, the people in Fai Yungwen seem to have already noticed something wrong. Not accepting Su Mu as a disciple, nine times out of ten, he has already smelled the danger and is unwilling to involve others. Later, Ying Yuzi went down the mountain and passed all the classics to Su Mu, which was really a helpless move. At that time, Yuko Ying should have been parasitized by demons. Reluctantly bought a night of time, all of which was used to preach to Su Mu, unable to explain what happened in the Taoist temple in detail. Once a riddle man. Su Mu walked in the broken Feiyin temple, and when he recalled this, he couldn't help feeling a little emotional. In this world, too many people have disappeared without a sound, not even a splash of water. In the end, it's still not strong enough. If there were such powerful strengths as Zhuge Hongtu and Yun Qing Kong, he would have to jump twice no matter what. However, this is the place where they ushered in the catastrophe of life and death, and I don't know if they can survive it safely. While thinking about it, Su Mu followed behind the two masters. Suddenly, a loud noise came from behind Fai Yungwen. In the sound of the explosion, piles of stones and walls flew upside down. Countless twisted and meandering branches erupted from the smoke and swept in all directions. It's terrifying to show his teeth and claws. At the moment of the change, Zhuge Hongtu and Yun Qing Kong reacted. The two of them flew in the sky, and at the same time they didn't forget Su Mu and Hong Ying. Yun Qing Kong used a magical power to bring them into the air. Su Mu, who was suspended in the air, looked down and saw a giant tree demon with countless branches and dancing wildly emerging from the Feiyun Temple. This tree demon is hideously ugly and terrifying. Countless branches twisted and spread, looking like tentacles, very strange. The astonishing demonic energy rushed out layer upon layer like an ocean wave, attacking the surroundings. Su Mu's prediction was right. Hidden in Yuntai Town is a terrifying and powerful tree demon. At this time, the entire Feiyun Temple has been crushed into ruins by its branches and demonic energy. And these branches are still spreading, killing Su Mu and the others. Ha! Huh. Dragon Blood Wood? How did it become like this? Seeing the tree demon queen, Yun Qing Kong was a little surprised. The dragon's blood tree is a kind of high-quality spiritual tree. Legend has it that it was born from bathing in dragon blood, and it is very spiritual. This kind of spiritual tree is relatively rare. The dragon's blood tree in Fai Yungwen, five adults with thick trunks could not hug it, it is definitely hundreds of years old. Even thousands of years. Perhaps the founder of Feiyun Temple saw this dragon's blood tree and established the Taoist Temple here. Because the dragon's blood tree of this age already possesses certain Taoism and spirituality. There are many benefits to practicing beside it. But how did a good spiritual tree become like this? It even harmed a town with thousands of people. Yun Qing Kong was a little puzzled, and had a vague premonition. All of this is somewhat counterintuitive. Before Yun Qing Kong could figure it out, the demonized dragon blood would had already used a demon technique. The tree demon seemed to be going mad, constantly shaking its demonic energy in extending its branches. Countless dancing branches gathered together and quickly turned into a dozen ferocious pythons, killing the four of them. At the same time, heavy snow fell in the sky, swept into a storm and flew towards them. Seeing this, Zhuge Hongtu smiled instead of startled. Ha ha ha! You dare to be my life and death catastrophe with this little bit of morality? It's a joke. The strength of this tree demon is very powerful, and ordinary martial arts masters are not opponents at all. Even the top martial arts masters may lose if they are not careful. But in front of Zhuge Hongtu and Minji Weizi, the two masters, they can only be regarded as a bit of a threat, far from being a catastrophe of life and death. The tree demon appeared, but Zhuge Hongtu was relieved. But Yun Qing Kong on the side frowned slightly. 
the hexagram shows that the fate of him and Zhuge Hongtu was in this Yuntai town. Although this tree demon is strong, it still cannot reach the level of life and death catastrophe. Could it be that there are other crises? What is hiding in Yuntai town? Yun Qin Kong couldn't think of an answer for a while. As for Zhuge Hongtu, he had already flown to eliminate him. I don't know what magical power he used, but he actually grew two more arms. And his size has skyrocketed by a point, and he was already strong and turned into a little giant like a diamond. Combined with four arms, it is a four-armed vitra. Zhuge Hongtu holds a divine sword in each hand. And on each divine sword, there is a different light shining. They are red, yellow, blue, and blue. Su Mu sensed the power of the five elements from above. Red is fire, yellow is earth, green is wood, and blue is water. The only thing missing is gold. Thinking of this, Su Mu looked behind Zhuge Hongtu. Of the five divine swords, only the middle one was not drawn. Think of it as the last gold. It seems that Zhuge Hongtu has not used his full strength. The strength of this reckless man is unfathomable. Su Mu pondered these skills, Zhuge Hongtu had already strangled with more than a dozen giant pythons transformed by the tree demon. One person and one monster dodge and move in the air, fighting fiercely and fiercely. Each of these giant pythons, which are condensed from branches and vines, is a hundred meters long, with infinite strength and can continue to regenerate. From time to time, a dark green foul-smelling liquid was shot out, which seemed to be highly poisonous. But Juga Hongtu, a tyrannical man, is even more ferocious than a demon. The four divine swords in his hands danced wildly, and the four-colored sword beam swayed. The dozens of giant pythons that were eliminated were flying with flesh and blood, roaring again and again, and retreating. As for the storm that fell from the sky, it was handled by Yun Qin Kong. With a flick of his Buddha dust, thousands of mountains of spiritual light passed by, blocking the storm and disintegrating it layer by layer. That relaxed and freehand attitude shows the demeanor of a master. Although Yun Qin Kong made fewer shots, his strength seemed to be higher than Zhuge Hongtu. At this level of battle, Su Mu's mind was shocked when he saw it. These two are so powerful. A single person is enough to compete with the drought. As for the specific outcome, Su Mu didn't see enough, so it's not easy to draw conclusions. I don't know that he has to go through a few more simulated worlds before he can have such strength. Half an hour later, the battle at the top of the mountain came to an end. Even if it has the ability to regenerate, it is limited and cannot be reborn without limit. After being beheaded and chopped up many times, the dozen or so bluish-brown giant monster pythons finally couldn't stand it anymore. It can no longer be remodeled, and it has fallen into a pile of debris. Seeing this, Juga Hongtu laughed loudly. The space of laughter oscillated, shaking away the soaring demonic energy on the top of the mountain. Then, he cloned and eliminated the tree demon body, intending to end all this. The so-called catastrophe of life and death should also end. But right at this moment, the mutation started again. The beautiful Yunfeng mountain actually moved. With a loud bang, the entire Yunfeng mountain rose from the ground. An unparalleled mighty force swung out, sending Zhuge Hongtu flying out. Su Mu, Hong Ying and Yun Qin Kong, who were a little further away, were also forced to retreat several miles away. Then, the four of them saw an astonishing scene. The Yunfeng mountain that rose up from the ground actually fled to the distance as if it had long feet. This mountain, run away. 92. This tree demon walks very deep. Not only is the tree big, but its roots are deep. The densely packed tree roots spread all over Yunfeng Mountain and penetrated deeply into it. Even some parts of Yuntai Town were eroded by tree roots. This former dragon's blood tree, with a thousand years of age, has long been rooted in this land. After the demonization, the tentacle-like roots have grown deeper. Perhaps because Zhuge Hongtu and Yun Qin Kong were too powerful, this tree demon felt a great threat. It actually took Yunfeng Mountain under it, rose up from the ground, and fled to the mountains behind Yuntai Town. This action made the earth tremble and the roar continued, like a dragon turning over. That scene was very shocking. 
Seeing this scene, Zhuge Hongtu was stunned for a moment, and then flew after him without even thinking about it. Wait! Don't rush to chase! Seeing this, Yun Qingkong immediately blocked it. But Zhuge Hongtu didn't listen to him, he hurriedly left two words and continued to chase. This tree demon can move mountains, and is very good at the magic trick. When it escapes into the continuous mountains, where will it go to find it? Don't hesitate. Cut it off and break the catastrophe of life and death. From now on, you and I can soar to the sky. Find the great way. Listening to Zhuge Hongtu's voice, and then looking at his figure that was quickly leaving, Yun Qing Kong sighed and could only helplessly follow. As for Su Mu and Hong Ying, they were also brought by his side. The tree demon moved along the mountain, sparks and lightning all the way, and rushed into the depths of the mountain. I don't know how many boulders and beasts were smashed along the way, leaving a mess. Zhuge Hongtu followed closely behind, cutting out a sword from time to time. But the tree demon retracted into the mountain, using the mountain as a shield. It couldn't break through its defenses for a while. Yun Qing Kong followed behind Zhuge Hongtu. Vaguely, he seemed to smell a dangerous aura. Yun Qing Kong felt uneasy, and immediately pinched his fingers to make calculations, but he couldn't figure out anything. Only intuition is warning him. Going forward, as long as there is danger. Zhuge Mangfu, can't chase anymore. This place is very fierce, back quickly. After another thirty or fifty miles away, the ominous premonition in Yun Qingkong's heart grew stronger. He shouted loudly and tried to stop Zhuge Hongtu, but got no response. Zhuge Hongtu was frantically chasing down the tree demon, and he chopped half of a good cloud mountain to pieces. It can be seen from this that Zhuge Hongtu, the celestial monster slayer, is so fierce. But Yun Qing Kong didn't feel relieved, instead he felt more and more bad. Zhuge Hongtu looks like a reckless man, but in reality there are subtleties. When fists can solve the problem, he is too lazy to use his brain. But in this situation, it is obvious to be careful. How could Zhuge Hongtu, who had always followed his advice in the past, ignored his warning? This is very wrong. Thinking of this, Yun Qing Kong unleashed his magical powers, opened his eyes between his eyebrows, and looked at Zhuge Hongtu. I saw that Zhuge Hongtu, in addition to his own qi and aura, was also covered with a faint scarlet color. This power does not belong to him at all. It doesn't belong to that tree demon, it's not just someone's means. Under the influence of this aura, Zhuge Hongtu's killing intent soared, and he was distracted for a while, and his mind was full of only killing. After discovering this, Yun Qingkong's expression was extremely solemn. Now that things have developed to this point, it is certain that in addition to the tree demon, Yun Tai Town has an unknown enemy lurking in the dark. If you keep chasing like this, you will most likely fall into its trap. But if Shuga Hongtu is ignored, the two will be separated. Maybe this is also the purpose of the enemy hidden in the dark, wanting to destroy them all. To go or to stay, this is a deadly question. From an emotional point of view, Yun Qing Kong is reluctant to leave friends. From a rational point of view, separation from Zhuge Hongtu is not a good choice. The two of them work together, and the usual ambush couldn't help them. As for that aura, even if Yun Qing Kong didn't act, it wouldn't affect Zhuge Hongtu for long. He has a strong mind and will soon wake up. After some very quick thinking, Yun Qing Kong decided to continue to catch up and let Zhuge Hongtu wake up first. But at this moment, a mutation appeared. Boom! With a loud noise, the Yunfeng mountain under the tree demon suddenly burst open, and countless pieces of gravel and soil flew out. Zhuge Hongtu, who followed closely behind, was blown away by a huge force. The rubble that burst open did not fly away randomly. Instead, they gathered together, re-aggregated into ten pieces, and continued to fly in all directions. Finally landed on the top of ten peaks. These ten peaks just surrounded Zhuge Hongtu and Yun Qing Kong in the middle. A battle was vaguely formed. Seeing this scene, Yun Qing Kong opened his eyes violently, with a hint of horror in his eyes, and blurted out an exclamation. Ten desolate gods and demons. Not good. The mountains here are endless, and the mountains are stacked on top of each other. 
After entering, Yun Qing Kong has been carefully observing the surroundings, for fear of being ambushed. After all, what he was about to face this time was a catastrophe of life and death, so he didn't dare to be careless. Along the way, Yun Qing Kong didn't notice anything unusual. Until then, did Jin know where the sense of crisis came from? The Ten Peaks were originally unremarkable, no big deal. But after adding these ten boulders with strong demonic energy, or the fragments of the mountain, they were immediately connected by air and machine, forming a whole. Condensed into one of the legendary ancient ferocious formations, the great array of ten desolate gods. Those ten boulders played the role of the finishing touch. Very ingenious. The people who set up this formation have profound Taoism, deep thoughts, and superb means. It is a very formidable opponent. He had already preset everything in order to introduce Yun Qing Kong and Zhuge Hongtu into the trap. Thinking about it a little more, the real target of the enemy in the dark is most likely Zhuge Hongtu. Yun Qing Kong was just incidental. As a monster slayer with a celestial name, he has the duty and obligation to deal with some monsters that ordinary monster slayers can't deal with. For example, this tree demon in Yuntai Town. There are very few monster slayers of the Tianziho, and a little calculation can ensure that this time it is Zhuge Hongtu, not someone else. Moreover, it was Zhuge Hongtu who was confused, and Yun Qing Kong was not plotted. In an instant, Yun Qing Kong thought a lot. But no matter what, he will never sit still. Move the mountains. Yun Qing Kong shouted with a dignified expression, and spiritual energy surged all over his body. I saw that he threw away the white jade Buddha dust in his hand, and thousands of strands were flying and intertwined. He even pulled up the mountain under his feet abruptly, and smashed it at one of the eyes of one of the great formations of the ten desolate gods with a terrifying momentum. Those ten peaks are all eyes. As long as one of them is destroyed before the formation is activated, this legendary fierce formation can be broken. But, how can things be so simple? Thousands of strands of white jade Buddha dust dragged one mountain and smashed it towards another mountain like a trend. This scene was extremely shocking, and it was beyond the imagination of ordinary people for Qi refiners. In the eyes of ordinary people, the so-called moving mountains and seas is just an illusion. But Yun Qing Kong can really sit down to this point. This way of doing, can be said to be profound. But when the two mountains were about to collide, a red shadow emerged. I saw a huge red centipede suddenly crawling out of the mountain that was the formation I. This monstrous monster looks like a ferocious beast in ancient myths, and its head is bigger than an ordinary house. This incomparably huge centipede spits out its mouth, and endless flames pour out, turning into a sea of fire and wrapping the smashing mountain, refining it like alchemy. The great mountain, which had the power of ten thousand equals, stopped in an instant and sank in the sea of fire. Not an inch. Seeing this scene, Yun Qing Kong couldn't help beating wildly, and his sense of crisis went straight to the Baihui point above his head. This enemy hidden in the dark is actually a terrifying giant centipede. A giant monster of this level might have already given birth to spiritual wisdom. Combined with the traps he stepped under, I am afraid that he has also learned Taoism and formation techniques, and is more proficient in human nature. When did Dagon appear such a giant monster? Although he was shocked, Yun Qing Kong did not stop his magical powers. As soon as he made a decisive pinch, the white jade Buddha's light flashed, and his power increased again. Thousands of strands of force exerted their strength, trying to urge the mountains to break through the sea of fire, destroying the great formation of the ten desolate gods. But the red centipede was so demonic, whether it was Taoism, magic or wisdom, it was much higher than that tree demon. The sea of fire that it transformed into was like an endless purgatory, trapping the mountain tightly. Yun Qing Kong couldn't help this giant centipede monster, one person and one monster froze in place. With the passage of time, thousands of strands of white jade Buddha dust kept collapsing. Yun Qing Kong's face is ugly, he is gradually falling into the disadvantage. Seeing this scene, Su Mu's eyes widened and he looked shocked. Isn't this centipede the real Purdue, the great master of the country decades later? In the previous dungeon, Su Mu encountered this giant monster, but he did not expect to encounter this dungeon again. 
this guy is really haunted. However, the red dragon centipede at this time was completely different from what Su Mu had seen twice before. At this point in time, the red dragon centipede did not have the slightest dragon energy on his body, and his body was full of fierce and demonic energy. At first glance, it is a fierce and unparalleled monster. Who would have thought that such a ferocious and ferocious monster would become a master of the country and a real Purdue with a hypocritical and compassionate face in a few decades? The difference between these two images is too great. In the middle, what happened? 93. While Su Mu was thinking wildly, the great array of ten desolate gods had already started. Ten mountain peaks, one by one, spewed out terrifying evil spirits. The suffocating chi shot straight into the sky and pierced the sky. At this time, Juga Hongtu had woken up. His mind is actually very stable. But the red dragon centipede used unknown means to plot Juga Hongtu in advance, which made him temporarily slaughtered by the desire to occupy his mind. As soon as the crisis appeared, he immediately woke up. Will you dare? Seeing this scene, Juga Hongtu's eyes were split. He let go of the tree demon, five divine swords flew out, merged into one and turned into a giant sword with a door width, and slashed at the red dragon centipede with one sword at a distance of more than ten miles. Endless astral chi is then integrated into the power of the five elements, turning into a five-color sword light and flying out. Endless power. At this time, the red dragon centipede was competing with Yun Qing Kong. Although he has the upper hand, it is difficult to free up his hands to deal with Zhuge Hongtu's full-strength sword. If it was an upright battle, Yun Qing Kong and Zhuge Hongtu would join forces to suppress the Red Dragon Centipede in this dungeon world. But this evildoer has been planning for a long time, how can it fight with them in an upright manner? This sword light is really powerful. But, it's too late. The next moment, the ten evil spirits soaring to the sky echoed each other. The earth roared, and the ten desolate divine demon formation was completely activated. It's dark. Su Mu was watching the battle from the sidelines, watching with excitement. But after the fierce formation was activated, he was also affected. In an instant, Su Mu was plunged into endless darkness and lost all light. To be precise, it wasn't that it was dark, but that he lost his vision. After Su Mu sensed it, he found that what he had lost was not only his vision, but all his senses. He can't even feel the existence of his own body. It was as if the soul had been drawn out into an endless void. At the last moment, Su Mu vaguely saw countless blood-red eyes open in the sky, staring at him coldly. But it closed immediately, leaving nothing but endless nothingness. What's going on? What about my body? Su Mu was a little surprised. The enemy's means were so powerful that Su Mu didn't even know what was going on. He could not perceive the existence of his own body, let alone spiritual energy. But it doesn't seem to be dead, otherwise it's time to return to the standby space. Su Mu was stunned. In this way, his consciousness rises and falls in the needless nothingness, seemingly endless. In this state, the concept of time is lost. I don't know how long it took but a light suddenly appeared in front of Su Mu's eyes. His spirit was shocked, and the whole person was excited. If it weren't for Su Mu's tenacity, and because of the talent of Big Dream, he was trapped in his body for eighteen years. The ups and downs in nothingness are enough to drive him crazy. Fortunately, Su Mu has finally come to an end, at least he no longer has to be with the endless nothingness. With that in mind, he carefully observed what appeared in front of him. Trees, weeds, small animals, birds, and a Taoist temple full of vines. Everything seems so familiar. This is. The summit of Cloud Summit. The crumbling top of the cloud, for some reason, has returned to its original state. Even the Feiyun temple is still the same as before. What he saw in front of him made Su Mu suddenly startled and thought of a possibility. He tried his best to control his body, but he could only reluctantly turn his head back. Su Mu saw that a strange tentacle-like branch was linked behind him, leading to the interior of Feiyun Temple. Once again, he has no life, and is already a dead person. Su Mu's guess was right. He died and became the puppet of the Dryad. 
but unlike ordinary puppets, Sumu still retains the last trace of sanity. Gain some autonomy at critical moments. But for Su Mu, the cost is huge. Just turning around, Su Mu consumed all his strength, and his consciousness fell into nothingness again. If you really want to count, he has only 1% of his control over his body at most. But Su Mu did not choose to end himself, but chose to linger on and live. He wanted to see what would happen next. What happened in Yuntai town was strange everywhere. Su Mu was full of questions at this time. Are Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu dead? Why did the Red Dragon Centipede trouble the two of them? How did the Red Dragon Centipede blend into the palace and become a national teacher? If everything in Yuntai Town is a trap set up by Qilong Centipede, just to take down Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu. Now, what is the significance of Yuntai Town's existence? Why deliberately restore it to the way it was before? One question after another troubled Su Mu. Su Mu has a vague hunch that the scourge of the Dagon building in reality may have been buried several decades ago today. This copy hides a big secret. Time passes day by day. Su Mu became one of the puppets controlled by the tree demon, and only woke up after a long time. Most of the other time, he was recharging his batteries in case he needed to struggle. I don't know how long it has been so undisturbed, Yuntai Town is still the same Yuntai Town. During this period, many people came, but they all gave their lives easily. The Red Dragon Centipede didn't even need to show up. On this day, the days that have remained the same have finally ushered in a change. In a daze, Su Mu sensed that someone had come to Yunding Peak and was walking towards the top of the mountain. To be able to come here, it means that killing those alienated townspeople is considered a small strength. So Su Mu went online again, gained vision, and wanted to see who was coming. Between the clouds and mist, a team of men and horses came out. The leader was a dignified young man full of extravagance. Wearing the standard costume of the monster slayer, he is quite handsome in black. It's just that the young man looked sad, as if he was troubled by something troubled. Beside this young man, there are more than twenty demon slayers guarding him. But after a glance, Su Mu silently shook his head in his heart. The strength of these people is not bad. The strongest person stood beside the young man, a Midguru martial artist. In other places, this kind of cultivation has been able to sweep one side. But in the Devil's Cave in Yuntai Town, it's not enough to watch. Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu have disappeared, and it is useless for ordinary martial arts masters to come. Not to mention those warriors in the innate and acquired realms, as well as a few Qi refiners with ordinary Taoism. But the next conversation of the team made Su Mu stunned. The martial arts master who stood beside the young man respectfully said to him. His Royal Highness, according to the investigation of the subordinates, it is very likely that the hideout is ahead of the evildoer. You don't come forward, let me handle it later. The handsome young man had a solemn expression and frowned, and said worriedly. Zhuge Hongtu is the only person I can rely on now. If he's gone. I'm afraid I'll be alive for a few days. Who else in this palace looks down on me, the fifth prince who has no foundation? Hearing this, the martial arts master hurriedly comforted. Don't worry, your highness, Lord Juga's cultivation is incomparably high, and he is a rare powerhouse in the world, so nothing will happen. Probably. Just stuck somewhere. The martial arts master himself didn't quite believe what he said. If it's really okay, why has there been no news for so long? But no matter what, you have to live to see people and die to see corpses. The dignified monster slayer can't just disappear like this. This time, they have mobilized all the forces that can be mobilized, just to find Zhuge Hongtu. This is the last fight. No I'll go too. If Zhuge Hongtu really falls here, I will die with him, and I will die in the hands of my brothers and sisters. Having said that, the young man who claimed to be the fifth prince just followed the demon slayers. Seeing this, the master sighed. He silently guarded the young man behind him and eliminated them to Fai Youngwen together. As everyone knows, their conversation shocked Su Mu's heart. Although he didn't know much about the Dagon royal family, Su Mu still knew that the current emperor of Dagon was the fifth prince. 
In other words, this young man with a sad face and ready to give his life will become the most honorable emperor in the future. At the same time, he is also the emperor who pushed Dagon into the abyss with one hand. 94. If Su Mu remembers correctly, the name of the future emperor was Li Mingtai. At this time, he was only a young man in his early twenties. Confused and even pessimistic about the future. Surrounded by more than twenty demon slayers, the fifth prince cautiously walked towards Faiyungwen. The Faiyungwen, which was covered with vines, was dead silent, just like his current life. Suddenly, a translucent figure jumped out and flew towards the fifth prince. Protect your highness. There are monsters, be careful of it. Eh. Wandering soul. The martial arts master was startled, but after taking a closer look, he found that what flew out was just a wandering soul. The so-called wandering spirits are the lowest level ghosts, whose strengths are so low that they can be ignored. When the sun shines and the cold wind blows, it will collapse. And this wandering soul is Su Mu. He was eliminated by the tree demon, his essence was sucked dry, and he became the puppet of the enchanting evildoer. Only a trace of sanity remains, very weak. At this time, in order to get rid of the bondage, Su Mu's remaining soul left the body and turned into a ghost. But because of its own deficit, it only turned into the weakest wandering soul. The strength is similar to the child bone he transformed into for the first time, and it is vulnerable to a single blow. But that's enough. Because Su Mu does not need to have much strength now, he only needs to communicate with the fifth prince. Su Mu floated to a place twenty meters away from the fifth prince and stopped. He was afraid that if he went further, he would be eliminated by those demon slayers. I was a town resident of Yuntai town and was eliminated by the evil spirits here. I know some of the information you want. But I also have some questions I want to ask you, and we will exchange each question one by one. Is it possible? In order to prevent being slashed with a knife, Su Mu hurriedly stated his purpose. Seeing him speak, those demon slayers all look surprised. A low-level wandering soul has wisdom, this is something they have never seen before. Haven't even heard of it. But only surprised. After being stunned for a while, the martial arts master said murderously. You are a little wandering soul, what qualifications do you have to negotiate with us? Aren't you afraid that I will cut you with a knife? Hearing this, Sumu sneered with disdain. I've already died once, what else is there to be afraid of? In this state, even if no one touches me, I won't be around for long. Think about it, even strong people like Zhuge Hongtu and Yun Qin Kong are trapped here, not to mention you rotten fish and rotten shrimp. Eliminate me, you can't get any information, you can only rush in and die in vain. You. As a martial arts master, it was the first time he was called a stinky fish and a rotten shrimp, and he couldn't help being furious. However, before the furious master could make a move, the fifth prince, Li Mingtai, came out and stopped in front of him, and said to Su Mu. I agree to your terms, but can I ask first? At this time, Li Mingtai was very reasonable, and he didn't look like a fool in the future. Can. Su Mu looked at the emperor who would influence the fate of the country in the future, and nodded in agreement. The first question, are there any demons in this Taoist temple? If so, what kind of demons are they? Li Mingtai is very thief, and combines the two problems as one problem. Su Mu didn't care about this, and replied directly. Yes, there is a tree demon in Faiyungwen. This evildoer has a profound way of doing things and is extremely powerful. It's impossible for all of you together to last a stick of incense under its hands. Just breaking in like this is no different from being sent to death. Su Mu didn't talk nonsense. With the way of the tree demon, it is indeed possible to easily destroy this group of people. But history tells Su Mu that the fifth prince, Li Mingtai, not only did not die in this demon slaying operation, but also became a new emperor in the future. This is the weirdest thing ever. Nobody knows what happened. But only Su Mu knew that. Hearing these words, the expressions of those demon slayers were extremely difficult to see. However, no one backed away. Before they could think about it, Su Mu continued. I answered your question, then it's up to me to ask. 
you came here, can someone drive you, or secretly push you? Su Mu wanted to know why Li Mingtai, a dignified prince, took a huge risk to come to this devil's cave. This is somewhat unreasonable. Hearing this, Li Mingtai smiled bitterly. He heard the meaning of Su Mu's words, which made his smile more bitter. No one asked me to come, I came by myself. Zhuge Hongtu is my only support. Without him, I won't be able to live for a few days. Later, Li Mingtai talked about his life experience. Almost everyone knows these things at this point in time, and they are the talk of the city in Yanjing. But after a few decades, it was a secret, and few people knew about it. Hematoxylin is one of the most. It turned out that Li Mingtai's mother was born extremely humble and died when he was 11 or 12 years old. That's all. The most terrible thing is that Li Mingtai is quite intelligent and is loved by Emperor Xinqing. Combining the two will eliminate you. Li Mingtai, who has no background and power but is deeply loved by his father, has become a thorn in the eyes of other brothers and a thorn in the flesh. Many people want to take his life all the time. Especially the fourth prince and the seventh prince, brothers who share the same father and mother, have not dealt with Li Mingtai since childhood, and now they are full of killing intent towards him. Emperor Xinqing was fine when he was in the palace, and no one dared to make trouble under his nose. However, Emperor Xinqing spent many years fighting abroad, and would not return to the palace for several years at every turn. This makes Li Mingtai's situation very dangerous. Fortunately, he has a support. That is the Tianzi No. One monster slayer, Zhuge Hongtu. Zhuge Hongtu, formerly known as Zhuge Tu, was a butcher who roamed the market. Although he showed some talent in martial arts, his family was poor and could not practice martial arts well. The first twenty years of Zhuge Tu's life were basically wasted in the slaughterhouse. Fortunately, he and Li Mingtai's mother have known each other since childhood, and they are a bit like childhood sweethearts. After Li Mingtai's mother entered the palace, she helped Zhuge Tu. Change his name to Zhuge Hongtu, and let him have an excellent martial arts training environment with abundant resources. Zhuge Hongtu is indeed a rare top genius in the world. Buried for more than twenty years, it grows wildly and savagely in the spring. His cultivation level climbed steadily, and he soon showed his head. Later, Zhuge Hongtu joined the Demon Suppression Division. Resume credit, promotion is fast. Maybe it's because of worries, maybe it's because of martial arts. Zhuge Hongtu never married and was alone. After Li Mingtai's mother died, he took great care of Li Mingtai. Treat yourself like your own son. Li Mingtai also called him uncle in private, and the relationship between the two was extremely close. With Zhuge Hongtu covering him, those who harbor malice cannot attack him. But now, Zhuge Hongtu has been missing for a whole year. If it wasn't for Emperor Xinqing's cultivation in the palace in the past year, Li Mingtai's little life would have been lost long ago. Emperor Xinqing is about to go north to fight. Until then, no one will be able to protect Li Mingtai. This time, when he came to Yuntai town, the fifth prince had already made up his mind to die. Zhuge Hongtu, who had been missing for a year, was basically like a dead person in their hearts. But even if there is a glimmer of hope, Li Mingtai has to go. Anyway, they are all going to die, it is better to fight before they die. Li Mingtai would rather die in the hands of demons than in the hands of those so-called brothers and sisters. He, hate. It can be seen that Li Mingtai suppressed too many things in his heart. When Su Mu asked this question, he seemed to open a chatterbox, crackling about his own experience. And poured bitter water, and his face was bleak. In this trip, Li Mingtai has the determination to die. The twenty or so people around him were also Zhuge Hongtu and his most loyal subordinates, and they were willing to accompany him on this journey even though they knew the danger was extremely dangerous. This is his life-threatening fight. I answered your question, now it's mine. Second question, Uncle Zhuge. Has he died in the hands of that tree demon? Li Mingtai also found that he said too much, and after suppressing his emotions, he asked a little nervously. The answer to this question is about his life and death. Zhuge Hongtu didn't die in the hands of the tree demon, he. Halfway through, Su Mu's translucent body that was floating in the air suddenly trembled, 
and then began to collapse. The wandering soul he transformed into was too weak, and it didn't take long for him to usher in the end of his life. How is he? How is Uncle Zhuga? Say it, say it. Seeing this scene, Li Mingtai first stayed in disbelief, and then shouted anxiously. But Su Mu couldn't hold on anymore. A gust of breeze blew, and the afterimage of the wandering soul completely disintegrated, leaving no trace. It was as if the world had never been in the future. The first generation of Su Mu in the new copy is over. End of this simulation. Rating, F. Dungeon completion rate, 26%. Points earned, 35. Comment, your short life is only 12 years, but it is not easy to survive for 3 years in a land where demons are rampant. Please keep up the good work. Hint, if the completion rate is less than 90%, the copy is not completed and cannot be left. The next moment, Sumu returned to the white standby space. He rubbed his eyebrows and thought quickly in his mind. From a historical perspective, Li Mingtai, the fifth prince, survived this seemingly mortal action and became the next emperor of Dagon. Still a big. And the red dragon centipede became a great master of the country, constantly absorbing the luck of the great master, trying to transform into a dragon. From this point of view, the target of Qilong centipede may not be Zhuge Hongtu. It is Li Mingtai behind Zhuge Hongtu. This monster is so treacherous. It used Yuntai Town as bait to catch Zhuge Hongtu. Using Zhuge Hongtu as bait, Li Mingtai was caught. Layers of fishing, the picture is very big. In the future, Li Mingtai, who has no background and no power, can successfully inherit the throne, maybe it is this evildoer who made it happen. In this way, the Red Dragon Centipede can achieve its own goal and use a country's spirit to transport and raise a monster. In this way, it is not that the country will perish, but there must be evil spirits. But the evil spirits and chaos, the country will perish? Su Mu pondered this while holding his chin. The above are all his preliminary guesses and cannot be completely certain. If you want to know all the truth, you have to explore the copy again. After the first life, Su Mu obtained a lot of information, but there are still many questions that have not been answered. The biggest question is whether Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu are dead. Not even dead. If he dies. The final boss of this dungeon world can't be that red dragon centipede, right? That vicious giant monster he can't deal with it. Thinking of this, Su Mu had a headache. But not too distressed, anyway, the final answer will emerge in the simulation again and again. Still thinking about how to live in the next life. Thinking of this, Su Mu's eyes flashed, and he opened the talent panel and picked it up. After wandering around the ten talents, I finally settled on the talent of more children, more blessings. More children, more blessings, the probability of pregnancy and multiple births increases by 300%, the more children, the better the luck cyan talent. This talent is very interesting. If you don't choose, you will betray the good intentions of the system. It seems that in the next life, Su Mu will have to change his way of life. 95. In fact, when he first saw the ten talents, Su Mu thought of a combination method. It's just that he didn't understand the situation of the new copy, so he didn't have that choice. Instead, a more stable carrying scheme was replaced. According to Su Mu's idea, he should carry peach blossom, hungry and thirst, enchanted demon and more children and more happiness. Among them, the blue talent enchanted is the main one. Enchanted, after the age of 12, there is a random epiphany once a year, and there is a 30% probability of going crazy blue talent. This talent is extremely powerful. In the last life, Sumu only had an epiphany once, and his strength has improved a lot. It felt as if he had opened a link to gain experience, and his strength soared as soon as he rubbed. Very refreshing. If it comes a few more times, is it worth it? It's just that the side effects of this talent are too great, and the probability is very high. 30% chance of being crazy, just once. If you come 7 or 8 times, you are almost 100% hit. At this time, it is necessary to have more children and more blessings to play a role. More children, more blessings, 
the probability of pregnancy and multiple births increases by 300%, the more children, the better the luck cyan talent. This cyan talent is related to luck. As long as there are more babies, the luck is better. Enchanted of more children and more happiness is a perfect match. As for peach blossom and hungry and thirsty, they are naturally used in conjunction with multiple sons, more blessings. Peach blossom, lots of marriages gray talent. Hungry and thirsty, X desire is strong and difficult to control cyan talent. Choose from these four talents. As long as there is enough time, Sumu may be able to cultivate to the great perfection of qi refining. Not to mention that it is comparable to Yun Qin Kong, it must have the cultivation of Zishan Taoist. However, the system stipulates that only three talents can be carried at a time, and it is impossible to bring all four of them. After thinking for a while, Su Mu decided to give up carrying Peach Blossom. With his young master Su's appearance, appearance, temperament and charm. If you really have an idea, don't you bring your own Peach Blossom? You have your own talent, why do you need it? Abandoned. Soon, Su Mu finalized the talents that he will carry in the next life, namely hungry and thirst, many children and blessings and enchanted demon. But he did not directly enter the copy like this. The dragon's blood tree would explode and demonize when Su Mu was nine years old, and then the entire Yuntai town would be destroyed. Time is too short, not enough. You know, enchanted will not be available until Su Mu's twelfth birthday. And according to this talent, he has to become a biological baby, and it takes time to develop well. How to delay the time of dragon blood with demonization and massacre is a big problem. What should I do if I encounter a problem? Enter the system store. Su Mu rummaged through the system store for a while and found what he needed. Bing Qing spiritual liquid, eliminate negative forces such as demon energy and death energy, and maintain the purity of life. A small bottle of ice blue liquid cost Su Mu a full 100 points, which made his heart aches. But as long as you can create some development time for him, it's worth it. After everything was ready, Su Mu entered the dungeon world again. The simulation starts. Body, 3. Wisdom, 10. Life, 5. Talents, Ling Tai Ching Ming, many sons and more blessings, magic, kindness, resentment. Item, ice clear spiritual liquid. The things in front of him quickly blurred, and Su Mu started a new life. In this life, Su Mu doesn't need to coax Minji Weizi, a little Taoist boy. He has memorized all the various Qigong methods and magical powers in Fai Yungwen, and he just needs to learn slowly. However, without Kong Jing and insight, Su Mu's training speed in the early stage dropped a lot. In this life, he began to practice Qi at the age of six. Although early, the progress is slow. It is estimated that before the age of 12, it will not be stronger than the previous life. Su Mu is not in a hurry. When he is 12 years old, he will be able to enter the open mode when the blue talent demonization is activated. At the age of 7, when Su Mu and his father went to Feiyin Temple to worship, they took the opportunity to find an opportunity to sneak into the rear of the Taoist Temple. It is the dragon's blood tree that is blocked here. Su Mu guessed right, at this time this spiritual tree has already started to demonize. The tree trunk is full of demonic energy, exuding a terrifying evil intent. If no one interferes, this spiritual tree will be completely demonized in two years, become the minions of the red dragon centipede, and slaughter the entire Yuntai town. In this life, Su Mu wants to change this process. He took out the ice clear spirit liquid that he had bought for 100 points and poured it all down on the root of the dragon's blood tree. The spiritual liquid was injected, and the demonic energy on the trunk of the dragon's blood tree trembled, and then all dissipated. This spiritual wood has regained its former miraculous and peacefulness, exuding a faint aura. If this dragon's blood tree was demonized because of an accident, this bottle of elixir is enough to make it back to normal, and it will never be demonized again. But all of this was done deliberately, and it was the Qilong centipede who was behind the scenes. After it finds something different, it will definitely make another shot to demonize the dragon blood wood. Su Mu didn't know how much time the ice clear spirit liquid bought for 100 points would buy him. 
I can only do my best, and obey the destiny. In the same year, the Su family moved to a city closest to Yuntai town at the strong request of Su Mu. Although the foundation is in Yuntai town, Father Su is very fond of Su Mu, relying on this precious son for almost everything. Moving is a good option. As a result, even if Long Sui Mu suddenly demonized Tuzhen, it would not affect Su Mu for a while. He can practice with peace of mind. Gu Tuo. Time flies, two years have passed in a flash. This year, Su Mu is nine years old. The ice clear spirit liquid played its due role. Dragon blood wood is not demonized, let alone slaughtered. Of course, the crisis has not been eliminated and is still brewing. Let's talk about Sumo. Although he is not young, he is much taller than his peers. Three years of chi refining has made his temperament extraordinary, which makes people feel inexplicably liked. Not to mention that he still has the talent of kindness. In addition to cultivating in this life, what Su Mu has done the most is flirting with girls. He basically knew all the women of marriageable age in the city. More importantly, these women's elders, Su Mu, are also familiar with each other, and they have an excellent relationship. He basically treated all the middle-aged women in the city as his mother-in-law and made him happy. This behavior made Su Mu not small in the city. Can't tell if it's a good reputation or a bad reputation. Say he's a playboy, but I don't see any female opponent he's scolding. On weekdays, he is polite, like a noble boy. And young. Say he has no other ideas, he even coaxed the girl's family. What does this mean? The dull but interesting days pass day by day. Time flies, three years later. The twelve-year-old Su Mu, who is more than seven feet tall, already looks like a youth. Although his physique is not high, Su Mu's self-prepared prescription, excellent diet, and six years of chi refining career have allowed his body to fully develop. In addition, the enchanted talent has finally been activated. The first epiphany, Su Mu's cultivation base greatly increased, and he successfully cultivated the water spirit and wood spirit to perfection. Here we need to focus on the talent of hungry and thirst. The role of this talent seems extremely unreasonable, but the talent of Cyan is not so simple. It has a hidden effect, which is to strengthen the kidneys. Su Mu's kidney is the strongest of the five internal organs. Otherwise, he would not have chosen to practice water movement aura first in his previous life. Who knew that after choosing the talent of hungry and thirst, Su Mu's kidneys became stronger by three points. Two small sun-like wastes, constantly exuding power. Make Su Mu practice the water movement aura to achieve twice the result with half the effort, and the progress is rapid. Otherwise, he would not have made such a rapid progress. After all, he lacked the two talents of insight and Kong Jing. On the day of his birthday, Su Mu Chuan used to practice. After the epiphany the next day, he found his father. Son, you retreated for a whole day yesterday, and dad didn't have time to celebrate your birthday. Come on, whatever gift you want, dad will satisfy you. Father Su looked at Su Mu with a smile, very doting. At an old age, he would be spoiled even if he gave birth to a waste, not to mention a smart, sensible and capable son like Su Mu. Dad, I want to get married. Su Mu directly put forward his own request. It's time to stack the lucky buffs of more children, more fortune. He's going to open a harem. He is going to have children. Ah. Uh, you want to get married? Hearing this, Father Su was shocked. A man who is a big man usually gets married after the age of 15. Su Mu was only 12 years old, so it was indeed a little early. But after taking a few glances at his son, Father Su did not object. After all, Su Mu doesn't look younger than a 15-year-old man, and he looks talented and handsome. Besides the family, the Su family is also a big family. Not the richest man in the city, but at least the top five. So if Su Muzhen wants to get married, it's not impossible, there are sure to be girls lining up to come. Thinking of this, Father Su said to Su Mu with a smile. Son, do you value the girl from that family? Tell my father, and my father will help you match. Su Mu coughed dryly and said. It doesn't matter who it is, 
but my son wants to marry one wife and three concubines, and marry four women at one go. By the way, Hong Ying is one of the three concubines. This little girl is not bad. Su Mu's so-called good means that his cultivation is good. After knowing in the previous life that her personal maid, Hong Ying, had the talent for qi refining, she naturally had to let her practice in this life. Now, Hong Ying is about to become two qi, which is not bad. As for why you want to marry four wives in one go. It's the same reason, stack up the lucky buffs of more children, more fortunes. Su Mu didn't know when the dragon blood wood would demonize and explode. So, the sooner the better. The more the better. If it weren't for the fear of being too shocking, Su Mu would have wanted to marry ten or eight in one breath and have him in a company. If time permits, Su Mu must carry forward the Su family and cultivate the next generation. At that time, Yu Yu reading WW. Bukanshu. Kong took the children and grandchildren to destroy the red dragon centipede together. It's exciting to think about. I just don't know if the time allows. Su Mu's words made Father Su stunned. His mouth was slightly open, but he didn't respond for a while. This son of my own is really different. 96. Son, it's not proper to have one wife and three concubines at the same time. Well, you marry a full-fledged wife first. Then take three concubines a month later, how about that? After being stunned for a while, Father Su came up with a more reasonable plan. Okay, listen to you. After thinking for a while, Su Mu nodded and agreed with his father's proposal. Some things really can't be rushed, and we still have to follow the steps. Okay. I'll go find a candidate for you now. Hearing this, Father Su excitedly took action, preparing to find a virtuous, virtuous and beautiful lady for his precious son. Dogons pay attention to etiquette when they get married, and they must not miss any of the six rituals, accepting adoption, asking for names, accepting G, accepting levies, inviting dates, and welcoming relatives. Fortunately, Su Mu doesn't have to worry about it, it's all handled by his father. Half a month later, the Su family compound was lit up with lights and full of friends. Today is Su Mu's great day. After going through all the procedures and dealing with the guests, Su Mu walked to the wedding room. It's funny, to this day, Su Mu still doesn't know what his bride looks like, and she also wears a red hijab when she gets married. Su Mu only knew that her name was Yuhan Mei, the daughter of a wealthy businessman in the city. She was 15 this year. It happened to be the age of a female junior, holding a golden brick. But at least she looks good, the big place is big and the small place is small. After getting closer, Su Mu saw the red candles in the bridal chamber flickering slightly, and the atmosphere was charming. This made him smile involuntarily. But when he walked to the door, Su Mu's smile suddenly froze. Through the window, he saw a bride wearing a phoenix cape sitting in front of the mirror, first lifting the red hijab, and then lifting his own face. Yes. The whole human skin was peeled off by her, revealing the bloody, hideous true face. This turned out to be an evil ghost with a bluish complexion and sharp teeth like a saw. I saw that after she took off the human skin, she carefully painted the human skin in front of the mirror with a color brush, as if she was painting. The man's skin is very beautiful. But the more this is the case, the more hideous and terrifying her face becomes. My old father is really unreliable. He said he found a good lady for me, but he found a skinny ghost. This scene is terrifying. If it were an ordinary person, he would have been scared to death and fled in a hurry. But who is Su Mu? He was not frightened, just a little speechless, while thinking about how to deal with the current situation. He rushed in and eliminated the female ghost, and then told his old husband. Your daughter is a ghost. I eliminated it yesterday. So, will his old husband report to the officials? Should, probably, maybe. Not. After all, he is doing the great deed of slaying demons and eradicating demons. Su Mu was distressed when a gentle call suddenly came from inside the house. Since Mr. Xiang has gone outside the house, why didn't he come in? Is it because he thinks the slave parents are ugly? Speaking of the back, there was a bit of a cry in his voice, which made people feel pity. 
Just hearing this voice, I thought she was a beautiful and charming lady. Sure enough, women who don't show their faces can't be trusted. Always be regarded as a skin ghost. Coming. Su Mu agreed, pushed the door and walked in. I saw a charming, charming and beautiful woman sitting by the window, looking at him with a shy smile. In a while, she has already put on the painting skin. Su Mu looked at his bride and pondered in her heart. Oops. Just thinking about it, the beautiful bride suddenly exclaimed. Then half of the face fell off, revealing a blood-drenched, hideous and terrifying face. This is really half pink and half skeleton. The huge gap makes this scene even more terrifying. This female ghost didn't have any intention of remedying it, she slumped and tilted her head to look at Sumu, a strange smile appeared on Yin Yang's face. Mr. Xiangong, do you mind the makeup of the slave's family? Gluck. Accompanied by a series of gloomy laughter, the doors and windows of the wedding room were suddenly opened, and a gloomy wind was blowing. That scene was terrifying. Anyone who sees it will panic and yell out haunted. But Su Mu calmly closed the doors and windows and sealed the spell. Then he turned to look at the female ghost and said seriously. To be honest, I'm still a little concerned. Well, I'll give you some time. You can touch up your makeup, and when we're done, let's continue with the bridal chamber. But you have to hurry up. As the saying goes, a spring night is worth a thousand dollars, so you can't waste any more time. Female ghost. The female ghost was stunned, this was different from what she thought. Just as he was stunned, Su Mu suddenly made a move. Whether it's killing or sleeping, surrender first. The Yin and Yang magic method, Zhen. Su Mu threw out a charm to suppress ghosts, and put it on the forehead of the female ghost. But when a talisman went down, he noticed something was wrong. This female ghost's breath doesn't look like an ordinary ghost, does it? It seems. A bit special. Just thinking about it, Su Mu saw the female ghost with a spell on her forehead winking at him, showing no sign of being suppressed. Now, it was Su Mu's turn to be stunned. Why is this spell useless? Before he could figure out what was going on, the female ghost opened her mouth and spit, and in an instant, the blue energy was confused and engulfed the entire room. Su Mu's eyes flashed, and he suddenly felt a weightless fall. This kind of feeling can make people feel at a loss and lose their sense of direction. Su Mu knew in his heart that this should be a magic spell. Break. Su Mu hurriedly recited the heart-clearing mantra, biting the tip of his tongue and spewing out a mouthful of blood. At the same time, he took out an ancient bronze sword and blindly stabbed in the direction of the female ghost. This ancient bronze sword was bought by Su Mu in an antique shop. Gouda. Although I don't know whose sword it is, this sword is very old, and it is full of evil spirits. After Su Mu's refining, this sword became a magic weapon, turning evil and miasmas. At this time, being taken out by him to deal with this female ghost is just perfect. With Su Mu's loud shout, a cloud of slightly golden blood mist spewed out. The blue miasma dissipated, revealing the original appearance of the wedding room. Su Mu's face was full of murderous intent, and he stabbed in the direction of the female ghost with a fierce sword. But when he was about to hit the sword, he suddenly stopped. Where is the hideous and terrifying painted ghost in front of me, it is a charming lady with a cold complexion and jade-like skin. Could it be that you put on the painting skin again? No. The pure heart mantra he cast just now can break the illusion and see through the essence of things. Could it be? Is this her true face? But why is she pretending to be a ghost to be scary? Su Mu was puzzled, but didn't give her a good face. Who are you? Su Mu Jian pointed at her fair neck and asked coldly. You. Are you a qi refiner? Yu Han Mei, who was wearing a phoenix cape, opened her mouth slightly and asked in disbelief. You don't care if I'm a qi cultivator. Who are you? Or. What is it? Come quickly, or don't blame me for being ruthless. Su Mu asked sharply. He used his qi watching technique to see the woman. Only, she has three points of popularity, three points of ghost aura, and three points of demonic aura. 
There is another 10%, which seems to be immortal, with a faint smell of thunder. Su Mu has never seen such a strange existence. What did you marry for yourself? His father is really good at picking people. I am indeed Yu Han Mei, but a few years ago, I experienced some weird things. Seeing that Su Mu was full of suffocation, Yu Han Mei didn't dare to write ink, and quickly told what happened to her. The bride that Su Mu married was indeed Yu Han Mei, the daughter of the wealthy businessman. But three years ago, she experienced a strange thing that made her what she is now. On that day, Yu Han Mei got rid of her maid and played alone in the suburbs. In the evening, I was lost in the woods, no matter how I walked, I couldn't get out. Seeing that the night was about to fall, a huge and terrifying fox demon suddenly emerged from the bushes and attacked her. Yu Han Mei is just an ordinary girl. Although she is a bit smart, how can she withstand the attack of monsters? In the blink of an eye, blood was blurred and he was dying. The internal organs were taken out. Unexpectedly, just as he was about to die, a purple divine lightning suddenly fell from the sky, slashing the demon fox to death. Even Yu Han Mei was bathed in the endless thunder, and all that caught his eye were blue and purple thunder. This blow made her lose consciousness. Woke up again and was already in bed at home. The amazing thing is that apart from being a little weak, Yu Han Mei is not in serious trouble. She clearly remembered that she was attacked by the fox demon, and even her stomach was broken. But when I woke up, I didn't have any wounds all over my body, everything was fine. It's amazing. According to Yu Han Mei's family, when she was not seen to return that evening, her father sent servants to search around. In the end, she was found unconscious in the woods, but there was no wound on her body. After sleeping for seven consecutive days, Yu Han Mei finally woke up. After a period of cultivation, Yu Han Mei returned to normal. And she began to suspect that what happened that evening was just a dream, or she encountered miasma in the woods and had hallucinations. But as time passed, Yu Han Mei gradually discovered that something was wrong with her body. She is human but not human, ghost but not ghost, demon but not demon. And also has some weird abilities. For example, the body is transparent and can pass through the wall. Another example is that the palm turns into a fox's claws, which is infinitely powerful. It can even grow a fox tail. The half-human, half-fox appearance looks a little cute after a few more glances. There are also some. Charming. Yu Han Mei was just an ordinary girl before and didn't understand this. She flipped through many books, but she still didn't know what happened to her. At the same time, he did not dare to ask others for fear of revealing his secrets and becoming a monster in the eyes of others. But Yu Han Mei can be sure that something is wrong with her body. Let's talk about the marriage between Su Mu and Yu Han Mei. As the so-called parents' life matchmaker's words. After the parents of both parties decided on the marriage, Yu Han Mei did not object. Because she knew that she would get married sooner or later, and that day would come sooner or later. However, Yu Han Mei found that she could not be in close contact with people for a long time. The two maidservants around her have been hurt before and have been weak for a long time. Yu Han Mei discovered this early, otherwise, if they stayed close to each other for a while, the body of the two maids still didn't know what would go wrong. In Yu Han Mei's state, she really can't be a virtuous wife. So she thought carefully. Decided to cast a spell on the wedding night, disguised as a painted ghost, to scare away Su Mu. Never thought that the young master in her eyes turned out to be a well-cultivated qi cultivator, and he won it for her right away. After listening to Yu Han Mei's remarks, Su Mu vaguely felt that her situation was somewhat familiar, as if she had seen it somewhere. Whether it is the dungeon world or the main world, Su Mu is constantly reading and studying. He has read a lot of various books, so he knows a lot of unpopular things. After recalling it for a while, Su Mu remembered it. He once recorded a kind of existence in a broken ancient book, which is somewhat similar to Yu Han Mei's situation. This kind of thing is called, God. 97. Some unlucky demons will encounter thunder tribulation. Thunder calamity has nothing to do with breakthrough and ascension. It is just a natural phenomenon that causes the heaven and the earth to shake by its own power. 
When the thunder tribulation falls, it occasionally affects ordinary people. 99% of people will be hacked to death on the spot. The power of thunder tribulation is no joke. But a very few lucky ones will reconstruct their bodies in a thunder tribulation and become a half-human, half-ghost thing, with some characteristics of both humans and ghosts. And because it is mixed with some thunder tribulation, it is called a ghost. Being affected by the thunder calamity is already an event with a very small probability. It is even a small probability among the small probabilities to be lucky enough to survive and become a ghost. The combination of the two makes ghosts extremely rare, and there are very few records. So after discovering the abnormality, Yuhanmei also tried to find out what happened to her, but she didn't get an answer. In addition, Yuhanmei's situation is a little more special. The fox demon that attacked her was eliminated in the thunder tribulation and died on the spot. But the essence of the fox demon seems to have been sucked by Yuhanmei, so she has a bit of a fox demon breath. In this way, Yuhanmei has become a human but not a human, a ghost but a ghost, a monster but not a demon. He has mastered some magic tricks and tricks, and at the same time, he has a ghostly energy, and ordinary people are not allowed to approach. If she has to say what kind of existence she is, Sumu thinks it should be a fox ghost. Heaven, heavenly fox ghost. Sumu told Yuhanmei what she knew, and she was shocked when she heard it. It seems that she can't be a human being in her life. Tianhu ghost possesses Yin Qi, ghost Qi, and demon Qi, and suddenly gains power, I don't know how to restrain it. In this case, you really can't be too intimate with mortals, otherwise it will affect the vitality of the other party. But can't you say it clearly? Use this method to scare me. Su Mu put away the ancient bronze sword, but still treated him coldly. Hearing this, Yu Hanmei raised her snow-white chin and said unconvinced, dot. How do I know you are a qi refiner? If you were a mortal, would you believe me if I told you this? Maybe I'm a mad woman. Yu Hanmei has a cold appearance and a sense of arrogance. This expression, like a cold and arrogant iceberg beauty, has a different kind of attraction. But how could Su Mu get used to her? If it was you, could you not be angry when you were so frightened by the newly married daughter-in-law? Hey! Are you right? I have to teach you a lesson today. If you don't have ten or eight children, I won't be named Su. Su Mu was annoyed. He grabbed Yu Hanmei's calf, took off his shoes to reveal a pair of jade feet, and threw them on the bed violently. Ah! You, what do you want to do? Yu Hanmei screamed, a little panic appeared on her cold and arrogant face. Why? We just got married today, what do you think we can do? Tonight, you have to pack up and obey. After all, Su Mu took off the bed curtain and got in. This night, the wind and rain did not stop. The two wandered in the clouds. Su Mu's kidneys are already quite strong, and under the influence of this talent, he is transformed into two little suns, emitting a steady stream of heat. But the undead knight is not something ordinary people can be. The lack of experience and experience during this period is also the road for outsiders. What I have to say can only be summed up in four character idioms. Knock the bone and the marrow. Knock the bone and the marrow. At noon the next day, a conversation between the two came from behind the curtain of the bed. Come. Not coming. That's it. It's noon, and I haven't slept yet. Who said last night that he would pack me up? Who was going to scare me away last night? In the end, it turned out to be a guest. No, 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 admit it. Hey! You little girl who is not afraid of death, do you know what is the strongest among my five internal organs? I have to let you down today. Father, mother, I'm hungry. Su Mu was about to get up and make a move when a small head suddenly came in from outside the curtain of the bed. It was actually a little girl, about three or four years old. The little face of the puff is so cute. Like a delicate porcelain doll. The little girl looked at Su Mu and Yu Hanmei with pitiful eyes, as if she was about to cry. Su Mu and Yu Hanmei looked at each other, and both could see the blankness and confusion in the other's eyes. Valley Samarium. It's only been a day since we got married, and we have a child. What speed is this? 
And this little girl's bloodline combines the breaths of Su Mu and Yu Han Mei, and it is indeed their own. To be precise, it was born last night. Wait a minute, let me think about it, let me think about it. Su Mu covered his forehead and thought desperately. The record of the ghost seems to be more than what he said last night, there are more later. After thinking for a while, Su Mu's eyes lit up and explained. I remembered. When the heavenly ghost and the human are combined, and the physical body and the spiritual body reach a perfect blending state at the same time, there is a chance to give birth to a son of God. This special life form is also called In Gizi, and there are other names. In Devil. Su Mubin wanted to call him that, but seeing the grievance on Xiaobu's face, he was so cute. After a pause, he changed his name. The Son of God is extraordinary, and can be born without being pregnant for ten months. And the growth rate is different from ordinary people, fast or slow, not consistent. The Son of God is extremely talented in both martial arts and qi refining. He also possesses certain demonic characteristics, so he is destined to be extraordinary. However, the probability of the birth of the Son of God is extremely low. Occasionally, ghosts and ghosts combine with humans, but they often fail to give birth to a Son of God in their entire life. This is a kind of existence that defies the way of heaven, so it is rare to see it in a hundred years. To put it bluntly, God's Son is too buggy, and the conditions for generation are extremely harsh, so it is extremely rare. But under the influence of this talent, as soon as Su Mu entered his soul, a son of was born on the first day of marriage. Thinking of this, Su Mu opened the personal panel that only he could see, and looked at this talent. Sure enough, this talent has already lit up. And a series of small numbers are also displayed below, 100. Seeing this, Su Mu took a deep breath. Normally, a child only adds one point. And a child can actually add 100 points, which is equivalent to giving birth to 100 ordinary babies. It was really lucky to meet you Han Mei. On the other hand, after learning that the little girl carved in pink and jade was indeed his child, Yu Hanmei hugged her lovingly, and the more she looked at it, the more she liked it. After teasing for a while, Yu Hanmei said to her. Let's go, let's go eat delicious food and ignore your stinky father. He's a bad guy, and he bullied your mother on the first day. With that said, Yu Hanmei got dressed and prepared to get some food for her daughter. Seeing this, Su Mu quietly breathed a sigh of relief. No matter how fierce the sun is, there will be times when it will set. You can't ask it to hang in the sky for twelve hours a day, right? Not to mention cloudy in rainy days. Knock the bone and the marrow. Knock the bone and the marrow. Su Mu held back the old scalper's tears, got up and followed behind the mother and daughter. The Son of God is indeed strange and extraordinary. When he was born, he looked like a three-year-old. If this matter spreads out, others won't believe it, but will talk nonsense. So Su Mu kept it a secret for the time being, and only told his father about it. As for the servants in the family, naturally they are all sealed up, and no one dares to go out and say nonsense. Yu Yu reading WW. Bukanshu. Calm. Seeing that the little granddaughter is so cute and extraordinary, the old man likes it very much. After some discussion, she named her Su Xiaoyu. In the following January, Su Mu cultivated every night, but did not give birth to a son of God. It seems that even with some help, the probability of the birth of the son of God is still too low. It takes more diligent farming. As for taking a concubine, Su Mu didn't think about it anymore. After all, a son of can hold 100 ordinary babies. But after learning about Su Mu's previous idea of marrying one wife and three concubines, Yu Hanmei brought her two personal maids into Su's house. These two personal maids grew up with Yu Hanmei, and to her they were like her own sisters. So Yu Hanmei also wanted them to have a good home. Su Mu thought again that he had promised Hong Ying to marry her as a concubine before, so it would be bad to release the pigeons. So he closed his eyes and heart, and married a third concubine. Now, it's been a rough day. Fortunately, Hong Ying and the others are just ordinary women, so they are not that difficult to deal with. Otherwise, Su Mu really can't stand it. Three years passed in a flash. 
In the past three years, Su Mu has devoted most of his energy to cultivation, and he has been cultivating day and night. On this day, Su Mu, who was absorbing spiritual energy, suddenly opened his eyes and looked extremely serious. Su Mu, who was always paying attention to Yuntai Town, found that a demonic energy soaring to the sky erupted from the back of Yuntai Town. After all, that dragon's blood tree is still demonized. 98. Now, Su Mu is 15 years old. In three years, he gave birth to many children. Hong Ying gave birth to a pair of quadruplets, and Yu Han Mei's pair of personal maids gave birth to a pair of triplets each. Exactly ten people. After all, they are mortals, and it takes ten months to conceive a child, so Su Mu only had the three concubines give birth once. And treat them well, not treating them badly in any way. But after Yu Han Mei gave birth to the Son of God, there were no such restrictions. The Son of God is more like a higher level life form, born in aura, without physical limitations. After three years of hard work, Yu Han Mei gave birth to ten sons of God. In just a few years, there have been twenty grandchildren and grandchildren, making Su's father unable to close his mouth with joy, boasting that Su Mu has a promising future and making incense for the Su family. Besides, the ten sons of God, they were all three or four years old. And it won't grow up, it will always remain in this state. But their talent for martial arts and qi refining is amazing. Under Su Mu's teaching, these ten gods, who have double cultivation in martial arts, have made rapid progress. In the past three years, they have all advanced to the innate warriors, and the five qi have also passed through the four qi. Su Mu felt that if they continued to practice like this, they would be able to cultivate to the realm of Zhuge Hongtu in ten years. This is indeed an incomparably terrifying cultivation speed. It's no wonder that the Son of God is a rare encounter in a hundred years. If it wasn't for Su Mu's talent to support him, he would have an epiphany once a year, and he would have been surpassed by his children long ago. In three years, Su Mu had an epiphany three times, and each time his evolution was greater. This feeling of hanging up is so refreshing. But it is also very dangerous. During the last epiphany, Su Mu's mind suddenly became disordered and his spiritual energy ran wild. There are signs of enchantment. But in the next second, everything suddenly returned to normal. Undoubtedly, the lucky buff played a role. I have to say, this talent is too important. If not, Su Mu would probably have gone insane, his spiritual energy had flowed backwards, and he had become a lunatic. Even hurting his own family. Fortunately, none of this happened. A total of four epiphanies made Su Mu cultivate to the realm of the unity of five qi. The five elements and five qi of his own small world have reached the small perfection state. This cultivation speed is very amazing. Without frequent epiphanies, Su Mu would have cultivated the three qi even if he died now. You know, the further you go, the harder it gets. Especially the step of unifying the five qi into one and achieving the consummation of one's own small world is extremely difficult. Some qi cultivators have been unable to advance an inch for 20 to 30 years, and the only difference is the slightest insight. Although progress has been rapid, the time is still too short. Su Mu is trying his best to cultivate the five qi, but Sanhua has never practiced it. Therefore, there is still a long way to go before the great perfection of qi refining. It's just that now, he doesn't have the time anymore. The demonic aura rising into the sky in Yuntai town shows that the Red Dragon Centipede's conspiracy has begun. Disaster, come. Master, what's wrong with you? Yu Han Mei, who was cultivating with Su Mu on the side, noticed the difference, and looked at him with a worried expression. As a fox ghost, Yu Han Mei is a very special existence. She has a huge power in her body, but she doesn't know how to use it. Under Su Mu's training in the past three years, Yu Han Mei has mastered her own strength, and her combat power is not much weaker than Su Mu. After training, Yu Han Mei has a better temperament. She looks like a high-flying fairy, with an arrogant and cold temperament, making people afraid to approach her. Of course, this does not include hematoxylin. Su Mu wrapped her arms around her slender waist and sighed with a complicated expression. A catastrophe is coming. 
I can stay out of it, but some forces won't allow it. How things will develop? I don't know. In theory, as long as he stays away from Yuntai Town, Su Mu can ignore what happens there. What kind of tree demon, Red Dragon Centipede, has nothing to do with him? But after going through the first two dungeon worlds, Su Mu found that as the number of reincarnations increased, his divine soul would be continuously weakened. The front was fine, but after the third time, the weakening became higher and higher. Exponential Growth Su Mu made an estimate, and felt that if he couldn't get through a dungeon after ten reincarnations, his divine soul might be wiped out. By that time, you will really be dead. So even if he knew that Yuntai Town was in danger, Su Mu had to run into it head on. If he does not solve the mystery of the dungeon and turns into a demon, he will be trapped in the dungeon world. This level, Su Mu must pass. I'll go with you. And our son and daughter. Although she didn't know what kind of difficulties Su Mu was facing, Yu Hanmei had a firm expression and was determined to accompany him to deal with it. It is good. Hearing this, Su Mu held Yu Hanmei's hand and felt a little warmer in her heart. At the same time, I couldn't help but think of another beautiful image. But right now, it's more important to deal with the business. Su Mu shook his head and stopped thinking about it. After a little warmth, Su Mu brought Yu Hanmei to the edge of Yuntai Town. From the outside, Yuntai Town is a peaceful scene, and the townspeople are busy with their own lives. But Su Mu knew that these were all illusions. He pulled out the ancient bronze sword, used his supernatural powers, and stroked the space on the edge of Yuntai Town. All I could hear was the sound of law, as if something had been scratched. Then the space split to both sides, revealing the true appearance of Yuntai Town. I saw that the sky in Yuntai Town was extremely dark and depressing. And the heavy snow fell madly. The townspeople were parasitized and alienated by this heavy snow in pain and struggle. In the end, it turned into a terrifying humanoid monster. If the alienation is a little slower, they will be overtaken by these demons and torn to pieces. Yuntai Town has turned into purgatory. Master, what the is going on here? Tanihu. Yu Hanmei, who was stunned by the tragic situation in Yuntai Town, was shocked. The people of a town were slaughtered by demons like this. After death, he will become a puppet of a demon, and he must not be reborn. These people cannot be saved. The Red Dragon Centipede just wanted to set a bait to attract Shuga Hongtu. Without Yuntai Town, there are Fongtai Town and Yutei Town. Thinking of this, Su Mu said coldly. There is a tree demon in the back mountain of Yuntai Town. This demon is very deep and difficult to deal with. It's this monster who slaughtered the entire Yuntai Town and turned a good town into a devil's den. Su Mu didn't dare to say anything about the Red Dragon Centipede. Because in the main world, the eldest princess Li Lingyan once said that the national teacher's cultivation base is too high, and other people's comments will make him feel. Su Mu didn't know whether the Red Dragon Centipede at this time had such a high level of cultivation, so it's better not to say. Master, what should we do? Yu Hanmei looked angrily at the back mountain of Yuntai Town, wishing she could fight the tree demon now. Su Mu shook his head and said solemnly. The time has not come, just wait. With us alone, we are far from being the opponent of that evildoer. Su Mu's plan in this life is very simple. He planned to gather his strength to help Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu take down the tree demon ahead of schedule. In this way, these two masters will not be introduced into the great formation of the ten desolate gods. Maybe we can join forces to eliminate that red dragon centipede. If all goes well, he doesn't seem to turn into a demon. Will it go so smoothly? Su Mu was a little uneasy. Hearing what he said, Yu Hanmei took a deep breath and temporarily suppressed the anger in her heart. Although she is different from ordinary women, she still believes in Su Mu's judgment and decision making. The two stepped into a maze on the edge of Yuntai Town, as if outsiders had accidentally eliminated themselves. Afterwards, he returned home and waited while cultivating. After this incident, their cultivation became even harder. Only for the day when we will face off against demons in the future. In the last life, 
after three years, Zhuge Hongtu had time to deal with the Devil's Cave in Yuntai Town. But the timeline of this life has changed. Only a year later, Yun Qingkong and Zhuge Hongtu appeared outside Yuntai Town. Su Mu had already sent someone to keep an eye on it, and he also kept an eye on it. So as soon as these two people appeared, he knew immediately and chased after them. Two seniors, please stay. Before Yun Qingkong and Zhuge Hongtu entered Yuntai Town, Su Mu hurried over and stopped them. And, there is a large group of people behind him. They are Yu Hanmei and the Ten Sons of God. As the so-called father and son soldiers in battle. In this life, Su Mu wants to bring his family to fight against the demons. These sons and daughters of his look cute and cute, but they are actually stronger than each other. Who are you? Zhuge Hongtu stopped, raised his eyebrows and asked Su Mu. Just this action is full of murderous aura. Thinking of the behavior of this heavenly demon slayer, Su Mu didn't dare to write ink, and said his intentions bluntly. I used to be a town resident of this Yuntai town, and I moved out a few years ago, so I got away with it. But seeing the tragic deaths of all the villagers in the village, I am very sad and angry. I just hate that my cultivation is not enough and I can't avenge them. I saw the two seniors walking in the direction of Yuntai town today. I think they must have come to eradicate this devil's cave, right? I also asked the two seniors not to despise me for being weak and weak, and take us to get rid of the demon together. My family, young and old, can be of some help. In order to fool Yun Qingkong and Zhuge Hongtu with him, Su Mu made a generous speech, and he was moved by what he said. But Zhuge Hongtu's expression did not change at all, instead he was a little impatient. In his opinion, what kind of demon is just a slashing thing, where do you need help from others? On the contrary, Yun Qingkong, who has always been less talkative, lit up, looking at the ten dolls carved in pink and jade beside Su Mu, and asked in disbelief. Aren't your ten children all in devils? Yes, this is my wife, the ghost of Tianhu. I was lucky and gave birth to ten sons. Sigh. Hearing this, Yun Qingkong, who had always been calm, took a deep breath. With his eyesight, he could see the true identities of the ten dolls around Su Mu at first glance, but he was a little afraid to confirm. What kind of luck is this to give birth to ten sons in a row? Yun Qingkong looked up and down at Su Mu, wanting to see what was unusual about him, but couldn't tell. Could it be that this handsome young man has special abilities in that respect? After thinking for a while, Yun Qingkong said. Seeing that your cultivation base is not weak, if you have an idea, come with us into Yuntai town. Remember, this place is dangerous, be careful. Don't let your ten children be damaged in such a place. Their future achievements will be amazing. In the end, Yun Qingkong's eyes showed a little strangeness. God's son's talent is so amazing that few people can't be jealous. However, since the son of God is extremely rare, ordinary people have never heard of it, let alone seen it. Yun Qingkong has lived for more than fifty years, and this is the first time he has seen it. After seeing it, it really lived up to its reputation. If it is something against the sky. Senior, don't worry, we know what we know, and we will never hold back. Seeing Yun Qingkong agree, Su Mu smiled gratefully at him. Then he took his wife and children and followed behind Yun Qingkong and Zhuge Hongtu. In this life, drag your family and bring your mouth to recruit demons. 99. The sky in Yuntai Town is grey, and a demonic aura is entrenched in the air. Of course, only Qi refiners with certain Taoism can see this. In the eyes of ordinary people, Yuntai Town is sunny and pleasant. The townspeople were all smiling and busy with their own affairs. But a closer look reveals that the smiles on everyone's faces are very similar, stiff and uncoordinated. Demon, demon, demon. All are demons. It seems that there is no one alive in this ghost place. No wonder my subordinates are all damaged here. Zhuge Hongtu's expression was murderous, and he couldn't bear it any longer. Yun Qingkong, who knew his temperament, quickly advised. Don't be in a hurry. Don't forget, this is the place where we should be robbed. Life and death, don't be careless. Let's wait and see, and see if the hidden monster will show its legs. 
Under Yun Qingkong's persuasion, Zhuge Hongtu temporarily suppressed his killing intent. The group wandered around the town to investigate the situation. As for the big family of Sumu, it's more like they came out for a spring outing. A young couple with a very high value, with ten cute and obedient cute babies, looked left and right in the town. Especially the ten cute babies under Su Mu's knees are very curious about Yuntai town. Those who touched it everywhere, and those who scurried away, were very naughty. However, if you underestimate these cute babies because of this, you will only suffer a big loss. Don't forget, they are all sons of God. These ten cute babies grew up together, and under the education of Su Mu, the old father, they are very good at fighting together. When ten people join forces, ordinary martial arts masters have to avoid their edge. Moreover, they are not human, but they are not ghosts, and they are both martial arts practitioners. It is far more difficult to deal with than imagined. Whether it is force or intelligence, these ten cute babies under Su Mu's knees are all very tall, and their cute appearance must not be deceived. Even the character is different from the appearance. Dad, look there. As the eldest, Su Xiaoyu jumped to Su Mu's face, pulled his trousers and pointed to a place. Su Mu turned her head and saw that it was an old grandma who was standing on the street selling candied haws. Of course, she was disguised by a demon. Looking at the appearance of this demon, it seems that it is the one whose head was screwed off by Zhuge Hongtu in the previous life. What? Do you want to eat candied haws? You can't eat anything here. When you get out of town, Dad will buy it for you. Su Mu picked up the little cute baby and persuaded her carefully. There is no normal food in this ghost town. Nothing is edible. But what Su Mu didn't expect was that Su Xiaoyu pursed her lips and said in disgust. Hey that candied fruit is black and rotten, it's disgusting, I don't want to eat it. As a child of God, she saw through the illusion at a glance. The next sentence was her real purpose. I think that monster's head is very funny. It's round and round like a ball. Dad, can you take it off for me to play with? Hearing this, several other gods also gathered around Sumu, looked at him with pitiful eyes, and pleaded. Dad, I want to play, I want to play too. Sumu. Sumu has a black line on his head and is very speechless. What kind of did you give birth to? The children of others are playing with some small toys at this age. Well, they are actually thinking of playing with the head of a demon. What's so funny about a demon's head? Is that a serious toy? Su Mu was a little speechless, but Zhuge Hongtu, who was beside him, laughed out loud. Ha ha ha. The little dolls have ambition and courage, and they suit my appetite. I'll get you some demon heads later. Maybe it's fate. As soon as Zhuge Hongtu finished speaking, the demon disguised as a grandmother selling candied haws came over to them. It perfectly explains how the word seeking death is written. A few nobles, please do it, buy something from the old woman. There is a little grandson waiting to be raised at home. It's almost the same line from the previous life. And the feedback given by Zhuge Hongtu is not bad either. I saw that he shot like electricity, and he struck the tiger's claw and grabbed the head of the demon. Ho ho! A puddle of blood spattered out. The old woman's head was torn off by Zhuge Hongtu, and a piece of spine was brought out from behind. But this time, he didn't throw away the head. Instead, he asked Su Xiaoyu in Su Mu's arms. Little baby, do you want this head? Aha! Su Xiaoyu nodded again and again, with light in her eyes, she almost reached out to borrow it. Seeing this, Su Mu was a little helpless, but he didn't stop it. These ten of his children were born magical, not mortal. They are destined to be different. If you look at these ten cute babies with the eyes of ordinary people, you will be wrong. Seeing this, Zhuge Hongtu laughed and threw the head with the spine to Su Xiaoyu. This cute little cute baby grabbed the back of the spine and played with the demon head like a yo yo. There was a giggling laughter in his mouth, and he looked extremely happy. If you ignore the appearance of the monster's head, this is a rather warm picture. The childishness of the Son of God is indeed different from that of mortals. After one died, the other townspeople stopped disguising and rushed up with ghastly expressions on their faces. 
Sister Bu. But who is Juga Hongtu? A proper fierce god. Seeing this, he was not surprised but delighted, laughed and rushed into the demons, killing seven in and seven out with a knife in one hand. For a while, blood and flesh flew, and the limbs danced wildly. The picture is extremely brutal. Senior, be careful, these demons may be poisonous. In the last life, Juga Hongtu's desire to eliminate was magnified, which led to finally entering the trap of the red dragon centipede. Thinking of this, Su Mu loudly reminded. Juga Hongtu is not really a fool without a head. Hearing this, he paid a little attention, and no longer touched the stumps of those demons. After some slaughter, the ground was covered with corpses. Those alienated townspeople have been eliminated and dare not go forward, they all fled to other parts of the town and hid. It's boring, it just started, why did you escape? Juga Hongtu twisted his neck, and it seemed that he wasn't enjoying himself. Afterwards, he thought of something, he picked nine large and complete demon heads, dragged them down and gave them to Su Mu's nine remaining children. This rough man with a beard seems to like children quite a bit, and he smiles more than usual when facing cute babies. It's just that the rough man's way of liking is a bit special. Fortunately, these children of Su Mu are not ordinary people. They are very happy after receiving the gifts, and they are holding them in their hands. The heads of the ten demons were whirling around like windmills. If this scene is encountered at night, I'm afraid it will frighten others to death. A group of cute babies were playing when a monster suddenly fell from the restaurant beside them and landed in front of them. Seeing this, the ten cute babies surrounding him couldn't help but get angry. I actually scare my parents, watch the fight. After all, the ten cute babies shot together, waving the head hammer in their hands to eliminate the demon. Where is this demon being the opponent of these ten sons of God? He was smashed by the heads of the demons connected to the spine, and it was directly smashed into flesh. It wasn't until all the scum was left that the ten cute babies relieved their anger and returned to Su Mu's side. Yu Han Mei, who was on the side, covered her mouth and snickered, looking at Su Mu and the children with eyes full of love. When we get rid of the demons here, our family will be able to live happily. Yu Han Mei set up one where no one knew, and enjoyed the future life. Then, the group got busy again. After carefully surveying Yuntai town, everyone followed the demonic energy to the Yunfeng mountain behind the town. It's still a ghostly atmosphere. It was still cloudy. The difference is that Su Mu already knew the footsteps of the demons on the mountain in advance. Two seniors, I came here to investigate. Hidden on this mountain is a tree demon with a deep sense of Taoism. Although it's not the opponent of the two seniors, this monstrous tree has deep roots and is already very integrated with Yunfeng Mountain. If it is lost in the future, I am afraid it will use the mountain as a shield and take the opportunity to escape. Although this evildoer can't escape the palms of the two seniors, it will be more troublesome if he really escapes. Why don't we step down the big formation first, seal the possibility of the tree demon escaping, and then go up the mountain to get rid of the demon? Su Mu's remarks were well founded, and both Yun Qing Kong and Zhuge Hongtu pondered. Did you really investigate? Are you sure this monster is as you said? After thinking for a while, Yun Qing Kong raised his own question. Certainly. Su Mu replied without hesitation. The reason why he didn't talk about the red dragon centipede was because the source of information couldn't explain it. But with his current strength, it is still possible to investigate the tree demon, and it will not arouse the suspicion of Yun Qing Kong and Zhuge Hongtu. Seeing that he was so sure, Yun Qing Kong and Zhuge Hongtu basically believed it. After all, Su Mu had no reason to lie to them. Young people are not bad, pay attention. Let's step down the formation first, so that the evildoer has nowhere to escape, and force it to have a good fight with me. However, what formation should be arranged? Having said that, Zhuge Hongtu looked at Yun Qing Kong and Su Mu. Although he cultivates qi, he only cultivates supernatural powers, and nothing else. So I don't know anything about the battle method. The younger generation is not talented, so he created his own formation which should be able to cope with the current situation. During the year that Yun Qing Kong and Zhuge Hongtu arrived, Su Mu had another epiphany. 
With this epiphany, he did not improve his cultivation realm, nor did he comprehend new magical powers. Instead, according to his own wishes, he created a formation. Su Mu named this formation the Suiyuan Suachi Formation. This array has two functions. First, block the ley line so that the tree demon has no chance to move the mountain and escape. Second, gather the spirit energy in the formation and inject it into the eyes of the formation. Only the Su Mu family can use this formation. Because this formation needs ten sons of God as the bases. After all, they are his own children, so it is impossible for Su Mu to put them in real danger. Before coming, he had already thought about it. The ten gods set up a great formation of sustenance and chi outside the battlefield, and then transmitted their power to Su Mu, who was the eye of the formation. In this way, they can help without any danger. As for Yu Han Mei, she can act as a free agent on the field and adapt to her needs. More importantly, protect ten children. Before he came, Su Mu had already made an agreement with Yu Han Mei. Once there was a change, he would run away with ten babies. Find a good place to practice for more than ten or twenty years, and come back to avenge him when his strength grows stronger. Afterwards, Su Mu and Yun Ching Kong chatted, and told the master about the Sua Yuan Sua Qi formation he created. As for Zhuge Hongtu, he was scratching his head and scratching his head, but he couldn't understand it at all. 100. This array is wonderful. Did you really create it yourself? After learning about Su Mu's self-created Sua Yuan Qi array, Yun Qing Kong was very surprised. He didn't expect that this little Qi cultivator, who had no teacher's sect and no serious inheritance, would have such a high talent in formation. Although the applicability of this Sua Yuan Duo Qi formation is very poor, only their family can use it. But it is indeed incomparably mysterious, and non-formation masters cannot create it. How did Yun Qing Kong know that this formation was actually created when Su Mu was on the hook? Naturally I created it myself. After all, besides our family, who else would create this formation? Su Mu explained a little, then smiled humbly. But in front of the seniors, these are just trails. Compared with seniors, I'm still far behind. By the way, this formation requires a lot of precious materials. I couldn't get it all together, I wonder if you have these things, senior. Hearing this, Yun Ching Kong rummaged through his sleeves without saying a word. He seems to have cultivated a magical power similar to the universe in his sleeve. I don't know how many things are hidden in a small sleeve. After a lot of searching, Yun Ching Kong prepared all the materials needed for Sua Yuan Duo Qi formation and handed it to Su Mu. You see if there is still something missing, just tell me what is missing. Yun Qing Kong was very generous, and he gathered all the materials for Su Mu in one breath. Some of them are precious. Such as the blood of the colorful deer. Su Mu has been looking for this thing for a long time, but he can't even find a shadow. Thank you senior. Su Mu took the pile of materials and thanked him. Yun Qing Kong shook his head and said. Thank you for what? These are all things outside the body, and slaying demons and eliminating demons is the most important. I really want to thank you, and I thank you too. Don't say too much, hurry up and set up the formation. Hearing this, Su Mu nodded and said nothing more, and started to set up the formation. Suo Yuan grabbed his energy and made a great formation, with ten cute babies as his base. Su Mu scattered them all over the foot of Yunfeng Mountain and arranged them in a mysterious position and draw spells at the feet of ten cute babies, accompanied by array materials. And Su Mu himself is a formation I. When the last spell fell on him, the Suoyu and Duichi formation was formed. In an instant, eleven forces gathered on Su Mu's body, causing his cultivation to soar. Among these eleven forces, ten came from ten cute babies. These powers are equivalent to being temporarily borrowed from them and will not harm them. And only Su Mu, who is the father of the Son of God, has the qualifications to become an I. As for the last force, it was the spiritual energy of heaven and earth in the great formation. The presence of monsters makes the spiritual energy of this place thin. But something is better than nothing, better than nothing. After some blessings, Su Mu's mana at this time is no longer weaker than Daoist Zishan, and even slightly stronger. 
It's just that Taoism and magical powers are worse than those of Zishan Taoist. But no matter what, Su Mu is finally the strength of the first battle. Han Mei, you can just wait on the mountainside later, you don't need to participate in the battle. If the situation is not right, take the children and go first, remember to use those divine amulet. Before the war started, Su Mu finally warned his wife. Hearing this, Yu Han Mei was full of reluctance. She really wanted to fight side by side with Su Mu, to slay demons and slay demons together. But after a pause, he could only helplessly nod it. After all, this is what they said at home. The meaning of Xiangong cannot be violated. On the other side, Zhuge Hongtu looked at Su Mu and said with admiration. You're good boy. The mana has increased so much all of a sudden, that formation does have some ways. When the demons here are eliminated, you can go back to the town of demons with me, and I will give you the name of Dang Dang. In the future, I can become the head of the town magic department, and then I will help the fifth prince to the top. By that time, you will be a monster slayer. Ha ha ha. Having said that, Juga Hongtu laughed out loud. But Su Mu couldn't smile at all. Su Mu had the urge to eliminate the fifth princely Ming Tai after he took the throne. In other words, the dungeon world cannot change reality and history, otherwise Su Mu would definitely have to eliminate Li Mingtai. Of course, these thoughts can only be hidden in the heart. Otherwise, Zhuge Hongtu, who regards Li Mingtai as his nephew, will definitely turn his back on him. In addition to Zhuge Hongtu, Yun Qingkong also cast an approving look at Su Mu. The formation is good, let's go up the mountain. It is good. After a simple conversation, the three were ready to go up the mountain. But just as they were about to leave, the sun suddenly flashed in the sky. I saw that the halo of the scorching sun continued to expand, and finally split into three suns. Seeing this scene, Yun Qingkong couldn't help but be overjoyed. It's Sanyang Fenchen. Our luck is also very good. Just as we were about to get rid of the demon, something like this happened. God help me too. The three suns burning the sky is a celestial phenomenon that has always been extremely rare. But there are not really three suns. Gu choke. But the breath of the scorching sun was too violent, distorting the space and creating the illusion of three suns hanging high at the same time. This kind of vision will make the world's young energy skyrocket, and greatly suppress the fighting power of evil spirits such as demons, demons and charms. The weaker ones will even be directly roasted to death. This is great news for Su Mu and others who are about to fight the demon. Ha ha ha. It seems that God doesn't want the two of us to die in some catastrophe. No, the old man came out to help us in person. Zhuge Hongtu grinned and seemed to be in a good mood. Only Su Mu knew that this was not a coincidence, nor that God was helping them. But he was lucky. Under the lucky buff of the talent multiple sons, more fortunes, Su Mu's luck in recent years is basically full. It is very common to pick up money three or five times on the street. Often the money spent on the street market has not been picked up yet. The monster that fell from the restaurant just now. Originally, he wanted to sneak attack on Su Mu and the others, but he didn't want to slip and fall off inexplicably. And now, just as they were about to fight, the vision of Sanyang burning Tian appeared. It's so coincidental. With luck, you can really do whatever you want. After the laughter, Su Mu, Yun Qingkong, and Zhuge Hongtu climbed to the top of the mountain against the scorching sun. This scorching dazzling sunshine, they can't stand the scorching, let alone those monsters and monsters. The alienated townspeople in Yuntai town hid one after another. There were a few who didn't dodge in time, and even screamed in pain from the burning sun. Let's talk about Yunfeng Mountain. Originally, the mountain was filled with a thick demonic fog, which made it difficult to distinguish the direction, and it was very easy to get lost in it. If you want to go up the mountain, you need some rear end. But at this time, the three suns illuminated, and most of the demon fog dissipated. The three of them came to the top of the mountain unimpeded, and saw the Feiyun view full of vines. My Qi refining technique was learned here. It's a pity that the Taoist priests here have already been parasitized by the tree demon, and none of them can be saved. Su Mu sighed. 
It's no big deal, people die eventually. From the day I was a demon slayer, I was ready to be eliminated by demons. It's good to have someone come to collect their corpses. Zhuge Hongtu looked at the Taoist temple indifferently. Listening to his tone, it seems that life and death have been underestimated. Just as the three of them observed the monstrous Feiyun temple, the door of the Taoist temple opened with a creak. Accompanied by a gust of gloomy wind, more than a dozen Taoists with strange breaths and pale faces floated out one after another. The Taoist leader was the former master of Feiyun Guan. He stared at the three of Su Mu and shouted sharply. Who is in my flying clouds watching, putting, putting? Hiss, hiss, hiss. The first half of the sentence is also good. Speaking of which, the old-fashioned subject of Fa Yungwen is like a stuck machine. The voice became shrill and muffled, with constant pauses, and it was almost impossible to hear what he was saying. That's all, it's hard to finish a sentence. Lao Guanju's body was suddenly like a broken building block, and with a crashing sound, all kinds of rotten and smelly organs were scattered on the ground, revealing the vine behind him that was controlling him. This. Yun Qingkong was stunned. He could see that these Taoists were all puppets controlled by the tree demon. These puppets are controlled by the tree demon personally, and their level is one level higher than that of the alienated townspeople, and their combat power is naturally much stronger. Never thought that before a sentence was finished, the inexplicable aura became disordered, and the corpse collapsed. Not to mention Yun Qin Kong, Su Mu, who knew the reason, couldn't help but be stunned. Lucky buff, so fierce. If you fight with people, the enemy will not draw a knife and stab himself at once, right? Of course, the lucky buff is not invincible. The stronger the enemy you face, the weaker the effect of this buff will be. Good luck is good luck, but if there is no strength foundation to support, luck is useless. After all, it has not reached the level of bad luck. When Su Mu thought about this, Zhuge Hongtu impatiently drew his sword and eliminated the Taoist puppets. The two things he likes to do most in his life are slaughtering pigs and cattle, and slaying demons and slaying demons. Just have to work hard. He doesn't like chirping and tucking fights. I saw this big bearded man holding a big sword with raging flames, rushing back and forth among the group of demons, like a bull. Zhuge Hongtu's sword moves opened and closed, and the red sword glow swept across. The demon puppets controlled by the tree demon were far from his opponents. In this life, under the lucky buff of Su Mu, unexpected situations continue to occur and there are three suns burning the sky. The combat power has dropped by at least 50%. Therefore, Zhuge Hongtu did not spend much time, and very easily cleared all the Taoist puppets. It's not happy at all. Come out to me. This time, after sweeping away those puppets, Zhuge Hongtu, who was so excited, shouted and flew into the air and slashed it with a sword. This sword, with amazing power, powerfully smashes Huashan Mountain. The huge sword light slashed fiercely on the Faiyungwen. The entire Feiyun temple was turned into ruins in a roar, and the rubble flew around in troubled times. Immediately afterwards, countless twisted branches burst out from the ruins like tentacles, killing the three of them. Dryad, appeared. 101. Good come. Seeing the tree demon appear, Zhuge Hongtu grinned, revealing a sinister sneer. Immediately holding two broad swords, he eliminated it. Like the previous life, Yun Qing Kong did not directly take action, but was in charge of the formation. On the other hand, Su Mu, in order to become familiar with his own strength, also joined the battle. The branches and leaves of the dryad spread wildly and congeal. In an instant, it turned into a dozen ferocious pythons that were 100 meters long and eliminated them. But Su Mu could clearly feel that the tree demon's aura was much weaker than in the previous life. Even with these more than a dozen giant pythons, it was two points weaker. Needless to say, I also know that the strength of this tree demon was weakened by the vision of Sanyang burning Tian. Fire and Thunder Curse Thinking of this, Su Mu was not slow to take action. I saw that he continued to pinch, and three sturdy thunders condensed out and smashed at the tree demon. Vaguely seen, there were also a few strands of purple flames. Powerful. 
This thunder method is one of the most powerful supernatural powers that Su Mu has mastered, and it can only be used arbitrarily with the blessing of Sua Yuan Duo Qi formation. Usually, this thunder technique can consume nearly half of his spiritual energy. A few loud bangs. The three fire thunders hit a giant python's head at the same time, directly shattering most of its head. The power of the fire and thunder curse is indeed possible. Of course, this tree demon is not so easy to deal with. In the blink of an eye, the giant python that was smashed to pieces returned to its original state, roaring and killing Su Mu. This regeneration ability is very terrifying. However, for Zhuge Hongtu, this ability would make him feel good in battle. In the battle with the Dryad, he is the absolute main force. It can be said to be able to carry, fight and output. He alone blocked the attacks of more than a dozen vine pythons, otherwise they would eliminate the two people behind. This reckless man was dodging and moving in the air, constantly rushing back and forth. The giant pythons were chopped to pieces by him, and then congealed again. Chop again, and then recoagulate. It didn't take a moment for this process to be repeated a dozen times. After a while, the giant pythons transformed by the tree demons were not enough. The recovery speed is getting slower and slower. As for Su Mu, he took this opportunity to use all the magical powers he had learned before to turn on the tree demon. He had overcome the addiction of being a magistrate, and he could also help Zhuge Hongtu relieve some pressure. However, he shouldn't need it. It may be that the tree demon in this life has been weakened. This time, Zhuge Hongtu didn't even use the magical powers of his four arms, far from using his full strength. With the addition of Su Mu and the suppression of Sanyang Fenchen, the tree demon in this world will be defeated faster. Not only did it take a quarter of an hour, but the dozen or so pale green giant pythons collapsed with a roar, turning into twisted branches and shrinking back again. Afterwards, before Zhuge Hongtu could eliminate the tree demon's body, Yunfeng Mountain shook violently. The huge force separated from the ley lines spurted out, sending Su Mu and Zhuge Hongtu flying out. As for Yun Qin Kong, it flew far away from the beginning and was not affected. This mutation made the eyes of both Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu light up. Could it be that the young man really said that this tree demon is going to move the mountain and escape? As soon as this idea appeared in their minds, Yunfeng Mountain rose from the ground. Then came a huge roar. The whole area was shaking, as if a big earthquake had occurred. Seeing this scene, Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu no longer doubted. This tree demon actually really wanted to move the mountain and escape. That young man is so smart, he actually deduced the idea of this monstrosity. Are people with better waists wiser? Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu didn't know that Su Mu had lived a new life, and thought that he had deduced from various signs. While the two were thinking wildly, Yunfeng Mountain rose from the ground under the control of the tree demon, trying to escape. But in the next moment, there was only a humming sound. Ten huge translucent chains emerged, bound to Yunfeng Mountain, and locked it in place. These ten chains are connected to the earth veins, with the help of infinite earth energy. Even though the tree demon tree has deep roots and astonishing behavior, it can't break free. This is the power of the Sua Yuan Qi Array. This is the strength of the Su Mu family. At this moment, Su Mu turned into a family warrior. Zhuge Hongtu, who was beside him, couldn't help laughing when he saw that the tree demon failed to escape. Evil, now where do you run to? Give me your life. In order to prevent the knight from dreaming, Zhuge Hongtu finally used his forearm's supernatural powers. I saw that each of his four sturdy and powerful arms was holding a divine sword, and the four-color sword light swept out, illuminating the sky. The tree demon should have sensed the danger, and immediately gave up escaping, all indented inside the mountain. Zhuge Hongtu had long expected this situation. Before swinging the sword, he made a plan to open the mountain first, and eliminate the demons later. One after another, sword lights of dozens of meters long swept out continuously, slashing on Yunfeng Mountain. For a while, there was a constant roar, and the boulders and plants flew around. This mountain is being quickly split by Zhuge Hongtu. Vaguely, Su Mu saw some pale green bloodstains flowing out of the mountain, not sure if it was the bloodstain of the tree demon. 
But the battle scene was too chaotic, he couldn't see it clearly, and he had no chance to intervene in the battle. If it is not separated from the ley lines, the tree demon still has a chance to escape. But now that Yunfeng Mountain has been separated from the ley lines, this escape method no longer works. If this goes on, this mountain will be flattened by Zhuge Hongtu within half an hour at most. That tree demon, there is nowhere to escape. Gu Kuo. The situation seems to be one-sided. But neither Yun Qingkong nor Su Mu relaxed their vigilance. Su Mu clearly knew that the Red Dragon Centipede was the real mastermind behind the scenes, and the tree demon was only its bait. As for Yun Qingkong, he simply felt that life and death would not be so simple. Sure enough, when the tree demon was about to be dug up and chopped to death by Zhuge Hongtu, the sky species suddenly changed. Originally, the three suns burned the sky, and the sky was bright. But for some reason, a huge dark cloud suddenly appeared. This group of dark clouds seemed to be endless, quickly spreading out, covering the entire sky of Yuntai Town. Yuntai Town, which was originally bright and dignified, suddenly fell into endless darkness. And the dark clouds are still sinking, swallowing Yuntai Town like a pocket. This magic trick is amazing. Be careful. There is a big demon showing up. Yun Qin Kong raised his head and looked into the sky with a solemn expression. He kept counting in his hands, but he couldn't come up with anything. But even if he can't figure out anything, Yun Qin Kong knows that the demons that can affect the celestial phenomena are definitely not simple. When the mutation struck, even Zhuge Hongtu stopped, showing a rare dignified expression. This breath. Even he was shocked. When everyone was startled, a strange voice, neither Yin nor Yang, sounded between heaven and earth. A good plan was ruined by an ant. I. Hate it. This strange sound is very uncomfortable for those who hear it. Decades later, Qilong Centipede, who became a national teacher, has developed a good voice and a top-notch voice actor. But now, its voice can no longer be described as unpleasant. It's like a magic sound filling my ears, a mental attack. Su Mu looked up in the air. He knew that the ants in the mouth of the giant demon was him. After the sound ended, the dark clouds rolled and a kilometer-long giant centipede was exposed. That look is ferocious and terrifying, extremely terrifying. As soon as the giant monster appeared, Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu couldn't help but gasp. The two have been slaying demons and slaying demons for decades, but they have never seen such a huge demon. Haven't even seen it half as big. What is the origin of this demon? However, Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu are both the top powerhouses in the world, although they are not afraid. Zhuge Hongtu shouted. Don't panic. Although this enchanting cast a spell to block Sanyang from burning the sky, it will definitely consume a part of his energy, and he will not be able to use 100% of his combat power. If you and I join forces, there is still a chance to suppress it, and no matter how bad it is, we can repel it. Hearing this, Yun Qin Kong held the white jade Buddha dust and said solemnly. It turns out that this is the catastrophe of our life and death. Such a giant monster is rare in the world. Today, if you and I eliminate it, you will be able to clear the clouds and see the sun, and your cultivation will go to the next level. While speaking, Zhuge Hongtu flew to Yun Qin Kong's side and fought side by side with him. The fifth divine sword had also been drawn out, and he was holding it in his mouth. Obviously, Zhuge Hongtu is ready to fight with all his strength. From the perspective of the situation, the Red Dragon Centipede still has the upper hand, with at least a 60% chance of winning. But this big demon didn't take action directly. You all have to stay. After making a strange cry, the Red Dragon Centipede opened its mouth and took a breath. The tree demon hiding in Yinfeng Mountain had no resistance, was sucked out and flew towards its hideous big mouth. Seeing this scene, Yun Qin Kong seemed to be thinking of something, his face suddenly changed, and he shouted. Hurry up and stop this centipede. Don't let it swallow that tree demon. While speaking, Yun Fengshan shook the white jade Buddha dust, and thousands of strands flew out, trying to stop the tree demon and prevent the red dragon centipede from swallowing it. Although I don't know why, Zhuge Hongtu did not hesitate to combine his five swords and slash with all his strength. 
A sword beam of nearly 100 meters condensed out, tearing apart the space and heading straight for the big mouth of the red dragon centipede. But the red dragon centipede is not a living target, let them attack. The giant monster's open mouth of blood spurted out endless ghosts of fire, turning into a sea of fire to block the attacks of Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu. As for the thunder and fire spell that Su Mu cast, it was ignored by the red dragon centipede. This magical power smashed into its metal carapace glowing with red light, splashing a small spark. In this regard, Su Mu is also very helpless. Even with the blessing of the Sua Yuan Duo Qi formation, his strength is still too weak in front of this giant monster. What Su Mu can do is to prevent Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu from ambush and fall into the killing formation designed in advance by Qi Long Centipede. In this way, a fairly fair fighting environment can be created for them. This is Su Mu's great contribution next, we have to look at Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu. But the situation was not as good as Su Mu imagined. Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu failed to stop the red dragon centipede, and it devoured the tree demon smoothly. The hugely twisted tree demon with thousands of branches was like a lump of noodles, chewed up by the red dragon centipede. A shrill neigh could be heard vaguely, which seemed to be a scream from a tree demon. Seeing this, Yun Qin Kong's face was very ugly. This tree demon is transformed by dragon blood wood. It is said that the dragon blood wood was born after being stained with dragon blood, and there is a bit of dragon energy in it. This centipede essence swallows this tree demon, and it can absorb a trace of dragon energy in it. Zhuge Hongtu was startled and hurriedly asked. What do you mean? This monster turned into a dragon? It's still a long way from transforming into a dragon, but its strength will definitely go further. That tree demon is probably the food reserve of this centipede spirit, just for this moment. When Yun Qin Kong was talking to Zhuge Hongtu, the red dragon centipede had already refined that trace of dragon energy. An even more terrifying aura permeated this place where you can't see your fingers. 102. In the darkness, two large fireballs like the sun hung high in the air. Su Mu knew that this was not the sun at all, but the two big eyes of the red dragon centipede. In addition to the pair of eyes on its head, the back of the red dragon centipede is densely populated with a large number of small eyes, there are hundreds of them. When these dense small eyes are opened, they are like stars in the sky, each emitting light. But the glowing green light made people feel extremely inappropriate. Being close together is even more numb. I want to vomit. Oh um. A strange sound rang out. Afterwards, the hundreds of small eyes on the back of the red dragon centipede projected all the light, shrouding Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu. The power is amazing. I don't know what magic trick it is. After swallowing the dragon blood wood, the monster's strength increased a little, and he fought with Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu. As for Su Mu, it was ignored. In the eyes of the red dragon centipede, Su Mu was too weak to pose any threat to it. And you can't escape even if you run away, and it's not too late to clean up. The only thing that is fortunate is that Yu Hanmei at the foot of the mountain noticed something strange the moment the demon cloud appeared. She escaped in time with ten cute babies, and was not trapped by the black sky. The Sua Yuan Duo Qi formation also collapsed, and without the blessing, Su Mu would be even weaker. Become an ant that the red dragon centipede can ignore. In the sky, two people and a demon have already fought together. In the extreme darkness, dazzling sword lights flashed from time to time, as well as various magical powers and magic tricks. The terrifying aura continued to spread around. Only by hiding in Yunfeng Mountain, which was devoured by tree demons, could Su Mu not be affected. Otherwise, Su Mu can't bear the aftermath of their fight. Master. Master. While hiding, Su Mu suddenly heard an anxious shouting from outside. It's Yu Hanmei's voice. After sending the ten children away, she turned back. However, he was blocked by the dark sky and could not enter it, so he could only shout outside. The red dragon centipede, who was also at a loss, was fighting against the two masters, Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu, and had no time to pay attention to her. Otherwise, Yu Hanmei can be included with a single thought. But at that time, it was really the husband and wife who returned the home. 
let's go with the child. Haoshin practice, one day you'll be strong enough to help me take revenge. Taking advantage of the Qilong centipede's lack of time to control their efforts, Su Mu loudly responded to Yu Hanmei's call. Master, I want to come in and save you. Save what? Let's go, if you don't go, you won't even have a chance to avenge me. No. I'm not leaving. If you don't leave, I'll leave you. Hurry up. I. Go away. You you. After Su Mu's sharp drink, Yu Hanmei's crying voice gradually faded away. Su Mu rubbed his eyebrows with some headache. He always felt as if he had heard of this scene somewhere. Correct. When Bai Nyangzi was suppressed into Leifeng Pagoda, Su Xian seemed to be so desperate. However, when it came to Su Mu, he turned a corner and was suppressed and became a husband rather than a lady. What kind of tragic drama is this? Thinking of this, Su Mu gave a wry smile. On the other side, the battle between Yun Qin Kong, Zhuge Hongtu, and Qilong Centipede became more intense. The dark environment made it difficult for Su Mu to see clearly. I can only feel the terrifying waves of astral qi, demon qi, and spiritual qi constantly emitting, wreaking havoc in this small world. The supernatural powers, magic arts and martial arts they displayed were also more terrifying than each other. The space in the dark sky is messed up, which can be called heaven and earth shattering. Of course, only in this small space. I don't know how long the battle lasted. Both sides were damaged, and their breath was slightly weakened. Suddenly, a large opening was torn open in the pitch black sky, revealing a huge scarlet hole. There are jagged fangs densely distributed on the upper and lower sides of this huge hole, which is very terrifying. Taking a closer look, what kind of giant hole is this? It is clearly the mouth of the red dragon centipede. Give it to me. With a sharp scream, the scarlet dragon centipede's mouth came from a terrifying suction force, and the surrounding space was slightly distorted. Despite the desperate struggle, Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu still flew towards its mouth uncontrollably. The repeated battles made both of them exhausted. In the face of the scarlet dragon centipede swallowing the sky, Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu could no longer stop it. As for Su Mu, he was even more powerless to resist. Although he was the furthest away, he was the first to be swallowed by the red dragon centipede. After being swallowed, Su Mu came to a strange space. It was still pitch black here, and I couldn't see anything clearly. But there was a weird mucus all around him, which made him feel like he was in a quagmire. Not only the body, but also the spiritual energy was sealed. Can't move at all. After a while, two more people came here. Although he couldn't see anything, Su Mu knew that the people who came were Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu. Two seniors, where is this place? Is that centipede's belly? Su Mu asked loudly. Yes and no. This is a small space that the monster opened up in his belly, for people to use. This place is full of dead energy, and if an ordinary person is swallowed, all the energy will be drained in an instant. Even if it is a qi refiner and a martial artist, if the cultivation base is not enough, they will not be able to live for long. Hearing Yun Qin Kong's explanation, Su Mu's heart sank. No wonder he felt that his vitality was constantly fading away, and his body was rapidly weakening. Originally it was sucked away by the red dragon centipede. After a short pause, Yun Qin Kong said again. But that's not enough to eliminate us. It's okay to stay for a year or a half. As for you. Go. Saying that, a ray of light flew out from Yun Qin Kong's body and fell on top of Su Mu's head, enveloping him. With the blessing of this light, Su Mu immediately felt a lot more comfortable, and the feeling of constant weakness eased a lot. I can only help you here. As for how long you can endure it, it's up to you. Remember, stick to the spiritual platform and don't let it go. After helping Su Mu, Yun Qin Kong gave another warning. Approaching, Su Mu heard Zhuge Hongtu's cold snort. Gu Zong. Humph. In the battle just now, the centipede spirit didn't get any advantage. I guess they want to use this method to grind us to death. It's not afraid of bursting its belly and disturbing its inner palace. Hearing this, 
Yun Chin Kong said. This is a small space, and it will not affect itself. If there is a real risk of being broken, the centipede will definitely throw us out ahead of time. So, don't fantasize about hitting it hard from the inside. Zhuge Hongtu's breathing stagnated, and he asked again. Then what should we do? Although it's okay to fight for three or five years. But it must be a dead word if it continues to waste. As far as the centipede spirit's way of life is concerned, it will not be a problem to live another three to five hundred years. We can't use it up. Yun Qin Kong comforted. It's not that bad. Here we are, we can also compete with the centipede spirit. It can't relax, it must always consume energy to suppress us, otherwise it will be rushed out by us. It's not just us, but it. In addition, we can also think of other methods, maybe we can eliminate them in advance. But this is the enchanting territory. It can definitely hear our voices. Let's communicate with our spiritual sense. It is good. After Zhuge Hongtu agreed, the two stopped talking. Su Mu knew that these two masters must be communicating with their divine senses. He didn't do enough Taoism, so naturally he couldn't participate. Although he didn't know what Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu were discussing, Su Mu didn't stop thinking. Without his presence, the two would be ambushed by the red dragon and centipede, and the tree demon would not have to die. But with the strength of Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu, even if they were caught in an ambush, it would not be so easy to die. A year later, the fifth prince, Li Ming Tai, who had nowhere to go, brought people to ask for help and entered this devil's cave. Normally, he would definitely die. But Li Ming Tai did not die, but became the next emperor of Dagon. What exactly happened in this? What the did the red dragon centipede do to become the national teacher of Dagon? Some kind of deal. Su Mu couldn't understand many of the problems in between, so he could only wait quietly for the development of the situation. Falling into this, Su Mu almost lost the concept of time. About a year later, Su Mu's vitality lost 80%, and he was extremely weak. If it goes on like this, in half a year at most, his life and death will disappear. Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu are very strong, and their breath is not too weak. From time to time, he was making a fuss in this space, and the centipede spirits who were doing it could not be at peace, so he had to devote his energy to suppressing them. The two sides are at a stalemate like this. On this day, Zhuge Hongtu, who had been quiet for a long time, suddenly moved. Sword Formation With this loud shout, five divine swords flew out, forming a five-element sword formation. The five-element sword formation released rays of light, illuminating the surroundings and breaking up the mucus that trapped them. Brother Yun, today is the day to break out of the siege. We will act according to the plan. Zhuge Hongtu flew out and shouted at Yun Qin Kong. Okay. Follow the plan. Yun Qin Kong responded with a sound, the white Taoist robe automatically lit up without wind, and then a series of mysterious spells lit up. Squeeze out all the mysterious and cold demonic energy around you. Follow me. I have found a flaw, and I will be able to break it. Zhuge Hongtu set up a sword formation and flew to a place. In the end, he did not forget to explain to Su Mu. Seeing this, Su Mu knew that the two must have planned it in private, which is why this action was taken. Could it be that the day of breaking the game is today? Thinking of this, he was shocked, and quickly followed behind the two of them. This is it, attack. Zhuge Hongtu pointed to one place and controlled the five element sword formation to eliminate it. Yun Qin Kong didn't hesitate, the Taoist robe on his body was full of magic power, and all kinds of divine communications came in his hands, constantly blasting towards that place. Wind, fire, thunder, lightning, civil engineering, gold and water, all kinds of Taoism and spells are bombarded indiscriminately. In the bursts of roars, that space actually tore a hole, and a faint light could be seen. It's done. Seeing this, Yun Qin Kong was overjoyed. You go out first. Perhaps seeing that Su Mu was too weak, Yun Qin Kong first threw him out after tearing open the space crack. Afterwards, he and Zhuge Hongtu flew out in tandem. Seeing that Yun Qin Kong had already flown to the edge of the exit, 
there was a muffled groan from behind. He turned his head and saw that Juga Hongtu's face was pale, and a wisp of blood spilled from the corner of his mouth. Brother Juga, what happened to you, Yu Yu reading? Seeing this, Yun Qingkong was shocked, and immediately flew back to support him. No, it's fine. I got a little injury, no problem. Halfway through speaking, Juga Hongtu, who seemed a little weak just now, suddenly lit up his eyes, and a ruthless look flashed in his eyes. He threw a ferocious punch and hit the unsuspecting Yin Qin Kong. It's not over yet. After hitting his good brother badly with one punch, Juga Hongtu immediately hit back and kicked Yin Qin Kong down, falling into the endless abyss. The surprise attack that completely exceeded expectations caused Yun Qin Kong to be severely injured, spitting out blood and falling into the darkness. His unbelievable face was gradually engulfed by darkness. No more sound. Brother Yun, I'm sorry. I have. My difficulties. Zhuge Hongtu stopped in place for a second, his expression extremely complicated. There is shame, unwillingness, and pain. But more than that, it is resolute. Soon, Zhuge Hongtu flew towards the exit and left here. A person's heart goes to the light and falls into hell. One's heart is drawn to the darkness and ascends to heaven. It wasn't until the last moment that Yun Qin Kong understood. His catastrophe of life and death is not in Yuntai town or on the Qilong centipede. But on Zhuge Hongtu. This catastrophe is difficult to overcome. 103. Back in time a few days ago. The Qilong centipede approached Zhuge Hongtu and communicated with a voice that only the two of them could reach. Zhuge Hongtu, the fifth prince, Li Mingtai, is in my hands. Mingtai. Why did he come here? What do you want to do? Ha! The Jinma division has been in the business for decades, can't you figure this out? Without you, how could Li Mingtai live? He can only desperately try to save his good uncle. What the do you want? In some respects, Zhuge Hongtu is indeed not smart enough. But he could see that the Red Dragon Centipede seemed to have some purpose. Otherwise, I wouldn't tell him this. Deal. I want to make a deal with you. What deal? Zhuge Hongtu asked coldly. He has been a demon slayer for twenty to thirty years, and he has beheaded demons who do not know the charm of demons, but he has never made a deal with demons. In Zhuge Hongtu's eyes, demons are cattle, sheep, pigs and dogs, born to be slaughtered, so who is worthy to negotiate a deal with him? But at this time, Li Mingtai was in the opponent's hands. He is the only person in the world that Zhuge Hongtu misses. Whether it's because of the relationship between the two, or to fulfill Li Mingtai's mother's request before she died. Zhuge Hongtu couldn't even watch Li Mingtai die in front of him. It's very simple. I will let you and Li Mingtai go, and help him ascend to the throne. With your and my help, why can't he be a great cause? And what I need is just the seed of a national teacher. The Red Dragon Centipede's strange voice is full of temptation. But how could Zhuge Hongtu easily believe in a demon? He asked back. You want to steal the Great Gan National Movement into a dragon? What a big ambition! But how can I trust a demon? Hearing this, the Qilong centipede let out a few weird laughs, as if he had long expected that Zhuge Hongtu would ask such a question. In the darkness, a ball the size of a fist flew into Zhuge Hongtu's arms, and he subconsciously grabbed it in his hand. This is my demon pill, and it's in your hands now. What? Zhuge Hongtu was stunned for a while holding the huge demon pill. He did not expect that the red dragon centipede would hand over its demon pill to him so easily. You know, destroying the demon pill can't eliminate the red dragon centipede. But it will definitely cause great damage to its road and serious injuries. At first, Juga Hongtu even suspected that it was a fake demon pill. But after repeated tests, he was 100% sure that this was indeed the demon pill of the red dragon centipede. This monster, how dare it! Aren't you afraid that I will directly destroy your demon pill? Juga Hongtu's mind was a little confused. He didn't know how this evildoer was going. Hearing this, the Qilong centipede laughed again. All of Zhuge Hongtu's reactions seemed to be what he expected. I just heard the deep-thinking giant monster say coldly, dot. 
Afraid, why not? But as long as you dare to do this, I will sacrifice everything to die with you. I don't dare to say anything else, but then Li Mingtai decided to die. Are you going to bet with me? Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Hearing the strange smile of the red dragon centipede, Zhuge Hongtu's expression was very ugly. He clearly held the opponent's demon pill, but he felt that he was being suppressed everywhere, and he felt like he was being pinched. Why? Is it worth taking the risk? As long as I disregard Li Mingtai's life and death and crush this demon pill, you will most likely be eliminated by me and Brother Yun. You. Aren't you afraid? Zhuge Hongtu gritted his teeth and asked. But the red dragon centipede understood. When he said this, his subtext was already obvious. Zhuge Hongtu will never do this. Why? Of course it's to transform into a dragon. I'm afraid, of course I'm afraid. Hundreds of years of ignorance and hundreds of years of hard work have brought us where we are today. How can we not be afraid? But as long as you can transform into a dragon, no matter how big the risk is, it's worth it. Dragon, dragon, dragon. I. Want. Transform. Dragon. The voice of the red dragon centipede roared wildly in Zhuge Hongtu's mind. At this moment, Zhuge Hongtu suddenly felt a trace of fear. Let him fall into an ice cave and feel cold all over. When he fought with the red dragon centipede, he had no fear. After being swallowed into the belly of the demon and trapped for a full year, he still had no fear. Not a trace. But for a moment, after feeling the crazy obsession of this giant monster. Zhuge Hongtu, I am afraid. In order to transform into a dragon, this monster can ignore everything, ignore everything. If you don't agree to its deal, the ghost knows what will happen. Li Mingtai's fate. Where will it go? Seeing that Zhuge Hongtu did not speak, the voice of the red dragon centipede returned to calm, and continued. Now, you already have my handle in your hand. And I still need a handle from you. In this way, the two sides can establish initial trust, and the transaction can continue. Zhuge Hongtu was silent for a moment and asked. What kind of handle do you need from me? Gu Tzu. Jie Jie. What would happen if you let the world know that you eliminated your best friend? This should be a useful handle. You. Hearing this, Zhuge Hongtu widened his eyes, and there was a hint of shock and fear in his eyes. You're right. I need you, eliminate Yun Qin Kong. Between Li Mingtai and Yun Qin Kong, only one can live. Give your answer within a quarter of an hour, or I will eliminate Li Mingtai, and everyone will die together. Ha ha ha. Silence. Deathly silence. Zhuge Hongtu gritted his teeth, unable to utter a single word. Time passed by, and his heart seemed to be grasped by an invisible big hand, almost unable to beat. At the last second before the end of the quarter of an hour, Zhuge Hongtu finally spoke. His throat seemed to be muffled, and the sound he made was extremely difficult. I. I want Ming Tai to live. Ha ha. As soon as the voice fell, the wild laughter of the red dragon centipede rang out in Zhuge Hongtu's mind. Okay, very good. Next, as long as you do as I say. Our deal is done. Wait a minute, you just. Recalling the conversation with the red dragon centipede the day before, Zhuge Hongtu still felt a little suffocated. His heart was like a boulder pressed against him, making him breathless. On the other side, Su Mu, who saw the whole process, was stunned. Originally thought that after killing them, Yun Qing Kong and Zhuge Hongtu could join forces to fight the centipede again. Who knew that Zhuge Hongtu actually pushed Yun Qing Kong into the abyss himself? Why did he do this? In the end what happened? Combining all kinds of information, Su Mu thought frantically. Uncle Tu. As soon as he escaped, a young man was thrown in front of Zhuge Hongtu. After seeing Zhuge Hongtu, he couldn't help crying, and his face was full of horror. This person is Li Mingtai. And the monster slayers around him have all been eliminated by the red dragon centipede. It's okay, it's okay. With me here, no one can hurt you. Zhuge Hongtu gave a few words of comfort, 
then turned to look at Su Mu, his eyes full of murderous intent. The Red Dragon Centipede has already shown its sincerity. The transaction between the two parties has now become effective. And Su Mu, became the superfluous person. Su Mu looked at Zhuge Hongtu and Li Mingtai, and at the huge centipede crawling on the ground not far away, and he understood everything. He sighed and said. Can you really believe the words of demons? You. You don't look like someone who would betray your brothers and friends. Hearing this, a trace of pain flashed across Zhuge Hongtu's face. He touched the demon pill that was hidden close to him, and said solemnly. Believe it or not. I. Have no choice. You can go in peace. I will take good care of your wife and children. If Ming Tai becomes emperor one day, they will enjoy inexhaustible glory and wealth. Having said that, Zhuge Hongtu drew his sword. As the only witness, Su Mu must die. This point, Su Mu himself is very clear. Seeing this, he sighed helplessly, and casually sat cross-legged on the ground. In front of Zhuge Hongtu and the Qilong centipede, he had no chance of escaping. There is no other way but to wait for death. Zhuge Hongtu didn't use any ink, he swung out a sword at a distance of more than ten meters in the next instant, a bloodline appeared on Su Mu's neck. Blood splattered, and his head rolled down. He died. This should have ended. But just after Su Mu died, the sky changed again. Originally, the three suns burned the sky, and the world was bright. But now, the three suns quickly overlapped and returned to their normal appearance. Afterwards, dark clouds covered, a black line appeared on the sun, and it was rapidly expanding. Tengu eating the sun. Zhuge Hongtu had an unbelievable look on his face, he could hardly believe it in his own eyes. Whether it is the three suns burning the sky or the Tengu eating the sun, they are extremely rare celestial phenomena. It's nothing to show up alone. But I have never heard of these two celestial phenomena appearing one after the other. Not once. Because the three suns burning heaven's Tengu eating sun is two completely opposite visions. One great yang and one great yin. Conflicts with each other, how did they appear one after the other? But such an unreasonable thing is happening right now in front of their eyes. If Su Mu was still alive, he would have to give them a whole sentence though you understand the gold content of adding ten gods. But he's dead and can't say anything. But for Su Mu. Death often means that everything has just begun. Tengu eats the sun, and the Yin Qi is surging. An unjustly deceased soul is about to descend into the world in a terrifying manner. 104. Uncle Tu, this. What's going on? Tengu eats the sun, the sky is dark. On Su Mu's headless corpse, gusts of yin wind rolled up, entwining black qi. There seems to be something terrifying that is condensing. Li Mingtai, whose cultivation base was not high, immediately felt the real chill, and shrank behind Zhuge Hongtu in fear. Maybe it's about cheating the corpse. Don't be afraid, Uncle Tu will protect you. Although he was a qi refiner, Zhuge Hongtu only cultivated supernatural powers and knew nothing about others. If Yun Qin Kong was here, he would definitely see what was going on, and there would be a corresponding suppression method. It's a pity that the extraordinary Taoist man in white will never appear in the world again. Thinking of this, Zhuge Hongtu's heart throbbed. This person died of betrayal, and he harbors resentment. It also coincides with the day when the Tengu eats, and the Yin is in full swing. He's going to turn into a ghost. After seeing this scene, Qilong Centipede, not far away, explained it casually, but didn't mean to help. In its view, a newly born ghost cannot harm Zhuge Hongtu and Li Mingtai at all. I'll just eliminate the newborn ghost at will. At this moment, Qilong Centipede is still immersed in the joy of the deal. It has even seen the sight of itself stealing the fortune of the country and turning into a dragon smoothly. Not only that, he can also become a national teacher admired by thousands of people, and be worshipped by the world. What kind of beautiful scene would that be? Yes, it is him. Not it. Change your life, that's today. When the red dragon centipede was immersed in fantasy, Juga Hongtu found that something seemed wrong. 
One after another black evil spirits appeared, constantly circling Ning Liang, intertwining and expanding on Su Mu's headless corpse. In the blink of an eye, a behemoth was born from it. This is a three-meter tall ghost with blue face and fangs. If you look closely, you will find that his appearance is somewhat similar to Su Mu. This specter was suspended in the air, with a pair of eyes full of resentment staring at Zhuge Hongtu and Li Mingtai behind him. Su Mu. Zhuge Hongtu asked in surprise. It's me. I'm here to ask for my life. A grin appeared on Su Mu's hideous ghost face, killing intent Ling Ran. Originally, even if he could transform into a ghost, he would only be an ordinary kid. But Su Mu was full of luck, and even the celestial phenomena cooperated when he died. It's quite a good way of doing things, making his soul much stronger than ordinary people. In addition to eating the sun with the Tengu, Su Mu gathered a lot of Yin Qi and turned into a giant ghost. Su Mu didn't know much about this kind of ghost. But that powerful feeling told him that Jusha ghost is definitely not weak. However, Su Mu knew in his heart that after turning into a giant ghost, he was still no match for Zhuge Hongtu and Qilong Centipede. These two guys are too scary. Fortunately, Su Mu never thought of killing Zhuge Hongtu or Qilong Centipede. His target is Li Mingtai behind Zhuge Hongtu. This is the only person he can eliminate. After saying the word suspension, Su Mu turned into a Yin wind and flew towards Zhuge Hongtu. Seeing this, Zhuge Hongtu pushed Li Mingtai behind him, preparing to slay demons and exorcise demons. He spurted a mouthful of blood to the sword in his hand, and the sword immediately burst into flames. This sword can eliminate people, and it can cut ghosts even more. Now that he has done it, Zhuge Hongtu will no longer regret it. Today, he wants to keep Su Mu from having a supernatural life. Chirp. Chirp. Su Mu rode the Yin wind and made bursts of piercing ghost howls. The black energy in his hand condensed, turned into a triangular fork, and stabbed at Zhuge Hongtu. Seeing this, Zhuge Hongtu was not afraid at all, and waved his sword to meet him. A powerful red sword light flew out, and it cut Su Mu from it as if cutting tofu. The Yin fork in his hand was also chopped in two, and it was useless. Zhuge Hongtu should have breathed a sigh of relief. But he saw a wicked smile on Su Mu's face that was split open. It seems that something has been achieved. Zhuge Hongtu was startled, and suddenly seemed to have thought of something. He hurriedly looked back. I saw a few wisps of Yin swept around behind him from the ground while he was swinging this sword, and came to Li Mingtai. Do not. Zhuge Hongtu's eyes were about to split, and he let out a roar. Although he is not afraid of demons and demons, his understanding of these evil things is far less than that of Yun Qingkong. In a head-to-head -head fight, 100 evil spirits, Zhuge Hongtu, can also be cut. But he couldn't protect the weak Li Mingtai perfectly. These few strands of Yin Qi were like light and electricity, and in the blink of an eye, they penetrated into Li Mingtai's body from his seven orifices. In the next instant, Li Mingtai's face showed a livid color. Uncle Tu, save me. Save me. Li Mingtai, who noticed something was wrong, screamed in horror and stretched out a hand to Zhuge Hongtu in an attempt to rescue him. But as soon as he took a step forward, his vitality was gone, and his body froze in place. The whole person seemed to have been pressed the pause button, and life stopped at this moment. At the same time, a translucent grimace covered Li Mingtai's face, showing a mocking smile at Zhuge Hongtu. It is exactly what Su Mu looks like. The strength of the Jusha ghost is at least between the innate and the master. Can't beat Zhuge Hongtu and Qilong Centipede, but killing a Li Mingtai is still very simple, similar to killing an ant. Ah ah ah. Seeing Li Mingtai's death, Zhuge Hongtu was almost crazy. He frantically swung his sword toward Su Mu's grimace, but stopped before hitting him. Because, Su Mu's grimace was attached to Li Mingtai's body. With this sword down, Li Mingtai's body will also be gone. I don't know if it was because of forcibly stopping the sword move or something. After Zhuge Hongtu was in place, his face turned pale for a while, and then he raised his head and spat out a mouthful of blood, his expression was very sluggish. Not only Zhuge Hongtu, but the red dragon centipede was about to go crazy after seeing this scene. 
It has been planned for so long and planned so much. It seems that the most critical first step has been successfully taken. But just started, Li Mingtai died. Glutinous rice. Died inexplicably. As soon as Li Mingtai died, the deal between Qilong Centipede and Zhuge Hongtu collapsed instantly. Its wish to become a dragon has also become a bubble. Everything is over. The red dragon centipede was extremely furious, and after roaring, it spit out a cloud of blazing flames, killing it at Su Mu. But Zhuge Hongtu's knife had actually cut off Su Mu Jiuqing's vitality. After killing Li Mingtai, Su Mu quickly collapsed automatically. The Qilong centipede's mouth of red flames burned Li Mingtai's corpse so that not even the was left. Now, Zhuge Hongtu went completely crazy. It's you, it's all you monster. No, I have nothing left. You die for me. Zhuge Hongtu roared and crushed the demon pill of the red dragon centipede, and then flew to eliminate it. The demon pill shattered, and the red dragon centipede was shocked all over, and its breath was greatly damaged. But it is stronger than Zhuge Hongtu, and after the demon pill is broken, it still has the power to fight. The last scene Su Mu saw before his consciousness dissipated was that one person and one demon fell into a frantic death fight. They are all crazy. The corner of Su Mu's mouth couldn't help but evoke a sneer. Random, annihilation. In the standby space, a cheerful smile appeared on Su Mu's face. Although he still died in the end, he eliminated Li Mingtai before he died, putting Zhuge Hongtu and Qilong Centipede in a death battle. The two things they cherished most were destroyed by Su Mu, almost crazy. Isn't it just hurting each other? Come on. Who was Su Mu afraid of? Speaking of which, Su Mu had a good impression of Zhuge Hongtu before. Who knew that this guy with thick eyebrows and big eyes would actually betray his companions? And betrayed so thoroughly. It's really too up. Although in the last life, I learned about his relationship with Zhuge Hongtu from Li Mingtai. But Su Mu didn't expect the bond between the two of them to be so deep, even deeper than some father-son relationships. The Red Dragon Centipede should have used Li Mingtai to threaten Zhuge Hongtu. If there is no interference from Su Mu, the development of the matter should be that Zhuge Hongtu betrayed Yun Qin Kong and eliminated him. Then one person and one demon made a deal, and later successfully helped Li Mingtai win the throne. This, I am afraid, is the real history. Thinking of this, Su Mu has an indescribable feeling in his heart. What he experienced just now will affect the life and death of hundreds of millions of people. If you follow Su Mu's approach. When Li Mingtai died, Zhuge Hongtu and Qilong Centipede fought to the death, and they might die together. In this way, the situation of the end of the dynasty may not appear in the future. It's a pity that what happened in the copy world will not change the history of the main world. What is the copy world? A completely virtual world. After more than ten reincarnations, Su Mu was convinced that the dungeon world was not fake, but real. Can't affect history, is it a parallel world? Su Mu shook his head and put these temporarily unresolved things behind him. The question he needs to think about most now is how to survive this dungeon. First of all, you can't let things develop to the last step. Once Zhuge Hongtu and Qilong Centipede reached a deal, everything was over. This giant monster must be eliminated before this. But just relying on Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu is still a bit worse. Su Mu must contribute. How should I do it? The whole point of being extremely poisonous on the dragon blood would? No, the red dragon centipede itself is a top poison. Even if there is something that can poison it, it is extremely precious, and it is definitely not something that Su Mu can afford. How many more years of delay? After an incident in Long Suimu, the red dragon centipede must stare at it tightly, I'm afraid it won't be able to hold back. Yu Yu reading. How many more children will He Yu Han may have? Ten is basically the limit, and the luck in the previous life was good enough, but it was still useless. To deal with a big monster like the Red Dragon Centipede, luck alone is not enough, and strength is the foundation. Of course, the luck of the sky-defying level is another matter. It's a pity that Su Mu couldn't reach it. To be able to marry this celestial fox ghost as a lady, is already the ultimate. 
and many more. Su Mu's eyes suddenly lit up. Yu Han Mei. Heavenly Fox Ghost. Yes. This lady of Su Mu is a fox ghost. The unexpectedly falling thunder robbery eliminated the demon fox, recasting Yu Han Mei's soul. Make her a very special existence. Like a human but not a human, like a ghost but not a ghost. But the strength is not weak at all, even stronger than Su Mu. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to escape in time with ten cute babies when the red dragon centipede came. A fox ghost created by a fox demon can reach this level. Then what if? It was a red dragon centipede that was hacked by the thunder. Is it him who was recast the soul? Thinking of this, Su Mu's eyes brightened. He may have found a solution. 105. The so-called celestial ghost is a kind of existence that is affected by the thunder calamity but survives by luck, and can reconstruct the body and soul. And it will transform into different ghosts according to different situations. What Yu Hanmei transformed into was the heavenly fox ghost. She has the characteristics of a human, a ghost, and a fox demon, and after gradually mastering her own power, she is quite powerful. Ghosts are extremely rare, and everyone is super lucky. Su Mu's plan was simple. Induced thunder, smashed the red dragon centipede, and smashed himself by the way. Then, he can use the power scattered by the red dragon centipede to be reborn in nirvana in the sky and become a dragon and ghost. If this plan is told to others, they will definitely regard Su Mu as a lunatic. A hopeless lunatic. Because this plan is too taken for granted. Do it a thousand times, and you may not succeed once. You need to have the luck against the sky to make everything develop according to the path you envision. Coincidentally, in this dungeon world, what Sumu lacks the most is luck. But it's not just luck, it's not that simple. Sumu has to attract the thunder, and it must be a thunder with amazing power. The strength of the red dragon centipede is too powerful. The kilometer's body, winding like a mountain range, is extremely powerful. Ordinary thunder, the red dragon centipede is too lazy to take care of it, and even its carapace can't be broken. Gotta be tough. Thinking of this, Su Mu opened the system mall and began to search for what he needed. After several previous accumulations, he already has more than 600 points. There's a lot of savings, it's time to take it out. After searching for more than half an hour, Su Mu finally bought what he needed. A lightning array, 300 points. A thunderbolt, 200 points. The role of the two is to use a certain probability to trigger a thunder calamity. When combined with each other, the probability of causing thunder tribulation is higher. And after the success, the power of the thunder tribulation will be very strong. In the case of a lot of luck, this probability can basically be regarded as 100%. Good luck, it's so capricious. After the key props were selected, the remaining nearly 200 points, Su Mu, did not remain. The third life is very likely to be his last life in this dungeon world, and the opportunity to clear the customs is just around the corner. Stud up. First of all, Su Mu buys a bottle of 100 points of ice clear liquid. Without this kind of spiritual liquid to delay the time of Dragon Blood Woods demonization, he can't make full use of the effect of multiple suns, more blessings. There is also no way to use Enchanted Demon to have a few more epiphanies and improve strength. So Bing Qin Ling liquid is a must. With the remaining 60 points, Su Mu bought a Ghost Yuan Dan worth 50. It is a kind of elixir that can enhance the power of ghosts, and is generally used by ghost masters. After some consumption, Su Mu almost spent all the points. This time, he is bound to win. As for talent, Su Mu didn't think of a better way to carry it, so he didn't change one. It's still multiple children, more happiness, enchanted, and hungry and thirsty. With everything ready, he entered the simulation world again. The simulation starts. Talent, many sons and more blessings, hunger and thirst, obsession, kindness, resentment. Items, ice clear spirit liquid, thunder falling talisman, ghost yuan dan, lightning array full set. The full set of arrays includes the materials required for the array to be arranged. The third world is on. 
According to Su Mu's conception, the development route of this life is similar to that of the previous life as a whole. But there is one key difference. That is, Su Mu has to arrange the lightning formation. This array, after being arranged, can increase the probability of the carrier causing thunder tribulation. In other words, if you want it to take effect, you have to place it on the red dragon centipede. Almost no one can do this. Unless the red dragon centipede has a broken brain, it will be at the mercy of others. But Sumu can save the country by curve. According to the development of the previous life, if Yun Qing Kong and Zhuge Hongtu cannot be introduced into the prearranged formation, the red dragon centipede will devour the demonized dragon blood wood to enhance its own strength. In this case, Su Mu can arrange the lightning array on the dragon blood wood. Although the thunder tribulation caused by it will be relatively weak, the power should be almost enough with the blessing of the thunder falling talisman. However, even if the lightning array was arranged on the dragon blood wood, Su Mu was unable to complete it. Before the age of nine, he must pour the ice clear liquid on the dragon blood wood to delay its demonization time. After this incident, the Qilong centipede will definitely be more attentive to the dragon blood wood to prevent further accidents. After that, there is no need to think about the arrangement of the formation, there is definitely no chance. But before the age of nine, Su Mu's mana was low, and he was unable to set up this rather complicated formation by himself. So, he had to find someone to help. Su Mu positioned the target person at Yun Qing Kong. In my last life, I was trapped in the abdomen of a centipede. Su Mu slammed and asked where Yun Qing Kong was before he came to Yun Tai Town and where he was cultivating. Gu Yu. In this life, Su Mu can try to find this expert in advance and let him call him his help. At the age of six, Su Mu asked the Su family to move out of Yun Tai Town. Then he asked his old father to send someone to him to a mountain thousands of miles away from Yun Tai Town. This mountain is called Lingfeng Mountain with its peak soaring into the clouds and immortal air fluttering. It's not ordinary at a glance. Under the of a group of servants, Su Mu came to the middle of the mountain. But at this point, there is no way to move on. No matter how they went, everyone was spinning in place, and it seemed that it would never be possible to climb to the top of the mountain. Su Mu knew that there must be a maze, and it was a high-level maze. Not to mention that he has just started cultivating, even a well-trained qi cultivator may not be able to break this formation. After all, Yun Qing Kong is the strongest qi refiner he has ever seen. Come down and wait for me at the foot of the mountain. Su Mu gave an order, and the servant said yes. Soon, he was the only one left on the mountainside. Su Mu cleared his throat and shouted at the top of the mountain. Senior Yun, please come out and see me. This junior has something important to tell me. Senior Yun, please come out and see me. This junior has something important to tell me. Cloud. Little baby, how do you know that I am here to cultivate? Just when he was about to shout for the third time, a slightly puzzled and curious voice came from Su Mu's voice. Su Mu turned around and saw that it was Yun Qing Kong, who was dressed in a white robe and had an extraordinary temperament. Seeing the master, Su Mu breathed a sigh of relief. He was afraid that if he could not find Yun Qing Kong, it would really be over, and all plans would come to nothing. But as long as Yun Qing Kong can be found, isn't the rest just? Persuading him. This matter, Su Mu is good at. Su Mu, who looked like a child, gave Yun Qing Kong a serious salute and said seriously. It wasn't anyone else who told me, it was you, senior. It's impossible, I never told anyone I was here. Yun Qing Kong raised his brows, becoming more and more curious. The child in front of him made him feel like he couldn't see through. It's not that the cultivation base can't see through, but the words and deeds can't see through. It's hard to imagine that a six- or seven-year-old child can talk freely and fearlessly in front of him. Hearing this, Su Mu continued. You didn't tell me now. But you will tell me in the future. And I am from the future. The purpose of my coming here is to join forces with Senior to solve a catastrophe that will devastate Kyushu. Yun Qing Kong was a little stunned when he heard Su Mu's mysterious and mysterious words. Future. Now. You. Know what's going to happen in the future. 
If it is an ordinary person, this kind of rhetoric cannot be accepted in a short period of time. Nine times out of ten, Su Mu will be regarded as a urchin full of nonsense. But Yun Qing Kong has a profound cultivation base, knows some things that ordinary people don't understand, and has also realized some profound and mysterious Taoism. His vision is not comparable to ordinary people. So although there were some surprises and doubts, Yun Qing Kong did not drive away Su Mu, but asked seriously. Yes. In a few years, Senior will usher in a catastrophe of life and death. It's a pity that you couldn't survive this disaster. Speaking of this, Su Mu sighed slightly. Betrayed by best friends and fall into the abyss. Su Mu couldn't imagine how desperate and painful Yun Qing Kong was before his death. Such an expert should not end up like this. Life and death catastrophe. Hearing this, Yun Qing Kong's expression turned solemn, and his trust in Su Mu increased a bit. Because over the past few years, he has vaguely had such a hunch. And it's getting clearer. It's just that it's not yet time to calculate the relevant information. If you do see the future, can you tell me what exactly happened? Yun Qing Kong decided to let Su Mu talk about what happened in the future. Then, through the content of Su Mu, we can judge the truth and falsehood. No problem. Three years later, you and Zhuge Hongtu, the famous demon slayer of the town demon division, will go to Yuntai town together. Su Mu explained in detail. The version of the story is that of the second generation. With Su Mu's narration, Yun Qing Kong's complexion became more and more solemn. Because the Yun Qing Kong in Su Mu's story is exactly the same as his temperament, and his reactions to different things are completely in line with his intentions and some magical powers and spells he used, the details are perfect. Does this child really come from the future? Yun Qing Kong muttered in his heart. After suffering for a year, you finally joined forces with Zhuge Hongtu, and opened a gap in the space in the belly of the red dragon centipede. An exit. Senior, you choose to send me out first, and then leave. But when you were about to get out of trouble, Zhuge Hongtu suddenly shot at you. You didn't double, you were severely injured and fell into the endless abyss. This is the catastrophe you have to face, Senior. At the end of the story, Su Mu quietly observed Yun Qing Kong's reaction. In fact, he also hesitated whether to tell Yun Qing Kong about Zhuge Hongtu's betrayal. But after thinking about it again and again, he still said it. 106. Hearing that Zhuge Hongtu betrayed him, Yun Qing Kong's eyes flashed and his face darkened. But there was no drastic reaction. This made Su Mu secretly praise. Cultivation is not only about strength, but also mind. The same is true for qi refiners. Yun Qing Kong's qi raising kung fu is indeed a master. This is going to change for ordinary people, and it is estimated that he has been scolded by the angry. Call. After a moment of silence, Yun Qing Kong let out a turbid breath and said with a complicated expression. I believe you. Let me guess, did the centipede spirit use the fifth prince as a hostage to force brother Zhuge to do so? I guessed it, right? Seeing that Yun Qing Kong believed in himself and was not angry, Su Mu also felt relieved. He said. Yes. That centipede spirit wants to devour the dragon energy of the country's fortunes, so as to transform it into a dragon. So I made a deal with Zhuge Hongtu. It will support Li Mingtai to ascend to the throne. After Li Mingtai becomes emperor, he will be established as a national teacher. In this way, he can steal the real dragon of luck. In order to gain Zhuge Hongtu's trust, Qilong Centipede even gave him his demon pill. And what Zhuge Hongtu has to do is to eliminate you, so that the Qilong Centipede has a handle on him. Hearing this, Yun Qing Kong looked horrified and sighed. This evildoer, such a deep calculation, such a cruel heart. If it really makes it a great national teacher, wouldn't it be a waste of life? In this Kyushu world, how many people should have died directly or indirectly at its hands? This monster must be eliminated. Su Mu nodded and agreed. If there is no variable like me, then the centipede spirit has indeed succeeded. Decades of hard work. The people are struggling, and the building will collapse. 
Countless Lemean people died tragically in various disasters, and the ground is full of grievances and bones. And the source of all this is the Red Dragon Centipede. This monster must be eliminated. Speaking of this, Su Mu couldn't help thinking of the famine in Jizhou that he experienced in the first two copies. In that catastrophe alone, millions of civilians died. This man-made disaster, in the final analysis, is also due to the fact that the inner worries of Dagon have not been lifted. After all, Yun Qin Kong thought of Zhuge Hongtu again. In this matter, he has an inescapable responsibility. Brother Zhuge is too obsessed with some personal relationships. Such obsessions have troubled his life. Without these troubles, he can be called a hero. Yun Qin Kong sighed, and it seemed that he didn't blame Zhuge Hongtu too much. Because of a relationship when he was young, Zhuge Hongtu never married. Just by looking at this, you can see how stubborn he is. Such people are often prone to make big mistakes. Tell me, what do you need me to do when you come to me now? Yun Qin Kong restrained his emotions, lowered his head and asked Su Mu. He knew that Su Mu was definitely not just here to tip him off. I want to set up a lightning formation on that dragon's blood tree. When the red dragon centipede swallows this dragon's blood tree, the lightning formation will be transferred to its body. Then cooperate with the thunder falling talisman to lead down the thunder to eliminate it. Even if you can't eliminate it, you can still inflict heavy damage. Hearing this, Yun Qin Kong asked curiously. Thunder Array, Thunder Falling Talisman. Why haven't I heard of these two things? Somo explained. Both of these are used to trigger thunder robbery, and the applicability is very small, so not many people know about it. After all, who wants to give themselves a thunderstorm when they have nothing to do? With that said, Su Mu handed Yun Qin Kong the diagram of the lightning formation and all the required materials. Yun Qin Kong is very deep, and there is a lot of research on the formation method. After looking at it a few times, I couldn't help but admire it. This formation is very ingenious. It can achieve the effect of triggering thunder calamity by changing the target's aura fluctuations. But the formation is not 100% effective. Even if it is arranged, the success rate of causing thunder tribulation is estimated to be less than half. Do you really want to put hope on this? Su Mu explained again. Relax, senior, my luck is not bad. Half chance is enough. Hearing this, Yun Qin Kong no longer questioned, and observed the diagram of the lightning formation and said. Since you have said so, then it's up to you. But this thunder formation can be improved a little more. Give me a month, and I will strengthen it. Thank you senior. Su Mu is overjoyed. If the lightning array can be stronger, it is naturally the best. Eliminate that red dragon centipede. Are you waiting for me on Lingfeng Mountain or at the foot of the mountain? Yun Qin Kong asked Su Mu. On the mountain. Su Mu chose the former without hesitation. Lingfeng Mountain is a blessed place, and the spiritual energy is much more abundant than ordinary places. There are many benefits of practicing here for a month. Hearing this, Yun Qin Kong didn't say anything more and went up the mountain with Su Mu. He also helped Su Mu to fold a paper crane, informing the servants at the foot of the mountain that he didn't need to wait for him any longer, and he could just go back first. Su Mu told Yun Qin Kong what would happen in the future, which was the greatest help for him. Knowing the catastrophe of life and death in advance is too important and critical. It is the grace of regeneration. As for the lightning formation, the thunderbolt, etc. Yun Qin Kong didn't take it too seriously. But Su Mu insisted that it was not impossible for him to do a little favor. After all, Su Mu helped him more. A month later, Yun Qin Kong doubled the lightning formation and added the materials that needed to be added. Then, he set up a flying boat and flew back to Yuntai town with Su Mu. After those domestic servants came back alone, they were scolded so badly by him that they almost beat him to death. If Su Mu hadn't written a letter to him specially, he would have sent someone to find Su Mu. After appeasing his old father, Su Mu kept going and sneaked into Feiyun Temple with Yun Qin Kong. With the master of Yun Qin Kong, they entered Fayungwen, a place like no one. You don't need to care about Ing Yuko, Mingyueko, and others. No way, 
the gap in cultivation is too big. Valley Nightmare Sure enough, it's dragon blood wood. A good spiritual wood has been ruined like this. The invisible Yun Qing Kong stood in front of the twisted and mutated dragon blood wood, with a very sad expression. After a sigh, according to the previous plan, Yun Qing Kong took out various materials and placed an enhanced version of the lightning array on the dragon blood wood, and hid the aura of the formation. Afterwards, Su Mu poured the ice clear spirit liquid on the dragon blood wood to ease its demonization. In this way, it can be delayed for a few more years, giving Su Mu some time to develop. As for the people in Fayungwen, they have already been parasitized by demons. They are not saved. There are also people from Yuntai town. Yun Qing Kong wanted to save him, but couldn't. Once the grass is stunned, the giant monster like the red dragon centipede can't be found, let alone suppressed. In this world, the most thing is helplessness. Ender Security Law After everything was arranged, Su Mu returned to his home, and Yun Qing Kong also flew back to Lingfeng Mountain. In the process of getting along with the two, neither Su Mu nor Yun Qing Kong mentioned the matter of accepting apprentices or apprentices. The sect of Yun Qing Kong is called Qi Sect. This sect is very mysterious. Su Mu obviously couldn't meet Qi Zong's requirements for accepting disciples. At most, he could only ask Yun Qing Kong to give some pointers or two when he practiced the Fei Yun Guan Gong technique. Having said that, the single line of Qi Zong has been passed down for thousands of years without breaking the inheritance. It is enough to see how powerful the strength of each generation of descendants is. It's a pity that the Qi sect in the main world has disappeared in the torrent of history. The next few years, Su Mu basically spent in cultivation. Occasionally go to Lingfeng Mountain and let Yun Qing Kong, a master of the Tao, give some pointers, and the cultivation base has improved a lot faster than the previous life. At the age of twelve, Su Mu once again proposed to his father to marry a daughter-in-law, and named Yu Hanmei by name. In this life, he does not plan to marry more. Yu Hanmei alone is enough. In the last life, Su Mu was busy with various things. Although there is no shortage of material, but the care for the three concubines is not too much. In that case, it is better to marry only one wife. On the wedding day, Yu Hanmei still tried to scare Su Mu away with the trick of painting the skin just like the previous life. As a result, Su Mu was thrown onto the bed on the spot, and she cleaned up after a while, until she stopped crying and calling her mother. The stronger the cultivation base, the better. After the marriage, Su Mu did not stay at home anymore. He took Yu Hanmei and the husband and wife traveled all over Dagon. The current situation is completely different from what it will be decades later. Too powerful. Not to mention that everyone lives and works in peace and contentment, at least there is no problem with food and clothing, and they will not be starved to death. It is considered that the country is prosperous and the people are strong. After coming to this world, whether it is the main world or the simulated world, Su Mu's activities are not very large. This was his first time traveling the world. Along the way, Su Mu saw a lot, heard a lot, and learned viciousness oh. While gaining knowledge, I have gained a little more insight into the various things in this world. This feeling can only be experienced by experiencing it in person. This experience is quite precious to Su Mu. Three years later, Su Mu and Yu Hanmei returned to the Su family. And brought back ten lovely grandsons and granddaughters for the old man of the Su family. Father Su was very happy about the return of his precious son, and he couldn't stop laughing when he saw these grandchildren. It is said that the Sumo is much more prosperous and promising. This made Su Mu a little speechless. What is the prospect of having children? If you put so much on the earth, you can directly declare bankruptcy. How many houses do I need to prepare? Scared to think about it. After three years of travel and four epiphanies, Su Mu has cultivated to the realm of five Qi Chaoyuan. Although the realm is the same as the previous life, the spiritual energy in his body is 30% more than the previous life. This is naturally the credit of Yun Qing Kong. The expert's guidance made Su Mu avoid many detours and improve his cultivation. After returning home, he began to recharge his batteries and waited for the opening of the event. 
Su Mu specifically told Yun Qing Kong not to tell Zhuge Hongtu about the future. Su Mu was afraid that if Zhuge Hongtu, a reckless man, knew about it, he would change the subsequent development of this matter, thus creating a lot of uncertainty. What he needs now is for things to follow the development of the previous life. The script has been arranged, just waiting to go step by step. In this regard, Yun Qing Kong also expressed his approval. Yun Qing Kong would not blame Zhuge Hongtu for what he did not do. But be sure to take precautions. Su Mu waited for half a year. This time, the time for the demonization of Dragon Blood Wood was actually delayed by five months. This variable made Su Mu feel a little uneasy in his heart. He looked at the demonic aura rising into the sky above Yuntai Town from a distance, and frowned. What went wrong? How can there be variables? Su Mu couldn't think of an answer for a while. On the other side, the Dragon Blood Wood has been completely demonized, and Yuntai Town has also been transformed into a demon cave. Su Mu could only follow the original plan to arrange a simple maze around Yuntai Town to prevent outsiders from breaking in. Then, he went home again and waited. This time, we are waiting for the arrival of Yun Qing Kong and Zhuge Hongtu. Time flies. A year later, Yun Qing Kong and Zhuge Hongtu came to the vicinity of Yuntai Town, ready to destroy this magic cave. Su Mu knew that the day had come for him to transform into a dragon and a ghost. The big play is about to be staged, success or failure is here. The only thing that made him a little uneasy was the previous variable. Hope everything goes well. With that in mind, Su Mu took Yu Hanmei and ten cute babies and moved towards Yun Qing Kong and Zhuge Hongtu. 107. Next, the development of things is almost exactly the same as in the previous life. Su Mu took Yu Hanmei and ten cute babies to meet Yun Qing Kong and Zhuge Hongtu, and then the group entered Yuntai Town together. After slaughtering the little demon empress, everyone locked onto Yunfeng Mountain at the back of the town and came to the foot of the mountain together. Along the way, ten cute babies happily waved the demon heads in their hands, like an outing. In the last life, Su Mu's wife and daughter escaped safely. In this life, Su Mu and Yu Hanmei spoiled what might happen in advance. I believe that they can leave more safely and will not be hurt. At the foot of the mountain is where they parted. The ten cute babies set up a great formation of Suoyuan and Qi at the foot of the mountain, and Yu Hanmei was responsible for forming the formation for them. Su Mu, Yun Qing Kong, and Zhuge Hongtu went up the mountain together and came to the abandoned Feiyin Temple. When it was about to fight the tree demon, the vision of Sanyang burning Tian reappeared. The three rounds of scorching sun release endless energy, suppressing all evil spirits. Under the suppression of these visions, the tree demon was even less an opponent of Zhuge Hongtu, and was quickly beaten and retreated, trying to escape according to the plan. But like the previous life, the Sua Yuan Qi Dao array played a role in a timely manner. Ten transparent giant chains trapped Yunfeng Mountain, making it impossible for the tree demon to escape. When the tree demon was about to be beheaded by Zhuge Hongtu, the demon cloud came. Endless darkness enveloped them. Yu Hanmei, who was spoiled in advance, was very surprised. She didn't know why her husband could calculate everything. But no matter what she thought, Yu Hanmei fled with ten cute babies at the first time without being affected. In this life, Su Mu had appeased Yu Hanmei in advance, telling her that she would be fine. So Yu Hanmei didn't worry too much, and waited quietly for him to return with ten babies at home. In the black sky, a huge red dragon centipede was entrenched in the air, looking down at Yun Qing Kong, Zhuge Hongtu, and Su Mu. Sanyang Fenchen suppressed some of its strength. So the giant monster said nothing, swallowed the demonized dragon blood wood in one bite to strengthen itself. Make sure nothing goes wrong. Yun Qing Kong knew what was hidden in this dragon blood tree, so he didn't stop it. After all, the enhanced version of the lightning array was arranged by him and covered his breath. But Zhuge Hongtu did not know this. Seeing this, he held a sword in four arms, trying to stop the red dragon centipede from swallowing the dragon blood wood. But he was about to make a move, but the whole person suddenly froze in place. A variable that no one thought of appeared. When swallowing the dragon blood wood, the red dragon centipede spit out a bubble and floated near it. 
There was a person standing in the bubble, and it was actually the fifth prince, Li Mingtai. If you want him to die, you do it. The red dragon centipede said coldly, and then ignored Juga Hongtu and devoured the dragon blood wood on its own. It seems that not only he will do it at all. Seeing Li Mingtai beside the red dragon centipede, Juga Hongtu's eyes were split, and he shouted. It's impossible. He's fake. The five princes are in the palace, no matter how strong you are, you mustn't kidnap people from the palace. Impossible, absolutely impossible. Juga Hongtu said it was fake, but his hands had stopped, and there was a hint of panic in his eyes. Obviously, his heart was not so firm. This shocking change made Su Mu feel bad. What's going on? Shouldn't this Li Mingtai come to Yuntai town in a year? Why was he captured by the Red Dragon Centipede now? The script is wrong. Was it something he did that caused the butterfly effect and caused the variability? When Su Mu thought about it, the Red Dragon Centipede gave a strange laugh, and a strange and cold voice reverberated in this space again. Who said the noble fifth prince was captured by me? He came with me voluntarily. After the Red Dragon Centipede finished speaking, Li Mingtai stood in the bubble and shouted at Chuga Hongtu. Uncle Tu, please, help me. Help me. I. I want to sit on the throne. I want to be the emperor of the big gun. I don't want, I don't want to be bullied again. Hearing Li Mingtai's words, the three people present basically understood what was going on. It must be that the Red Dragon Centipede used the throne as a temptation to make Li Mingtai obedient. Come here with it again, and force Juga Hongtu to win over him. Seeing Li Mingtai's cooperation, Qilong Centipede couldn't help but let out a strange laugh and continued. Juga Hongtu, what I want is the position of national teacher. Only by sending our noble fifth prince to the throne, can I become a national teacher. So, you can absolutely trust me. Hearing this, Juga Hongtu cursed. Bah! I've eliminated hundreds of monsters, and I've never heard that the monsters are credible. Quickly let go of Li Mingtai, otherwise. How about otherwise? What can you do to me? What can I do? The red dragon centipede roughly interrupted Juga Hongtu's words, and the giant insect's eyes flashed fiercely. At the same time, the hundreds of small eyes behind them also opened one after another, shooting out strange rays of light. Killing intent is evident. The scarlet dragon centipede stretched out a giant blade-like foot, placed it on the bubble where Li Mingtai was, and said to Zhuge Hongtu, dot. Give you two choices. One, cooperate with me and send the fifth prince to the throne. After the completion of the matter, you can make me a great cadre national teacher, and you don't need any real power. Second, I will eliminate him now, and then fight to the death with you. Li Mingtai was used by Qilong Centipede as a bargaining chip to threaten Zhuge Hongtu. But he did not panic in the slightest, instead showing a morbid longing look. Why didn't he know that once Zhuge Hongtu did not agree to cooperate with the Red Dragon Centipede, he would die tragically on the spot. But Li Mingtai wanted to use his own life to persecute Zhuge Hongtu. He has seen the means of the Red Dragon Centipede. As long as Juga Hongtu joins forces with this giant monster, Li Mingtai feels that he is at least 70% sure that he can ascend to the supreme throne. He doesn't want to live the life of the day and night that he had before. He's going to be at the top. With the passage of time, the advantages of the Red Dragon Centipede have deepened a little bit. When he saw that he was about to pierce Li Mingtai's body, Juga Hongtu finally panicked. Wait, wait. If I work with you, what about the two of them? Saying that, Zhuge Hongtu looked at Yun Qin Kong and Su Mu. Especially Yun Qin Kong, Zhuge Hongtu looked at him with some guilt, and he didn't even dare to look at him. Seeing this, Yun Qin Kong sighed in his heart. Zhuge Hongtu still made the most wrong choice. As long as it doesn't affect our transactions, I can let them go. But. Can you vouch for that? The voice of the Red Dragon Centipede sounded neither Yin nor Yang hiding a trace of murderous intent. Zhuge Hongtu and Li Mingtai have their own weaknesses. Those who have weaknesses are easy to fiddle with. But the Red Dragon Centipede was not sure to control Yun Qin Kong. Gu Hui. This Taoist is very pure. 
even if Yun Qin Kong agreed to cooperate with it, it would not be relieved. Therefore, in the Red Dragon Centipede, it is the best choice to get rid of Yun Qin Kong. As for Su Mu, it was ignored by the Red Dragon Centipede once again. Such ants, what are they doing? The Qi Long Centipede kicked the ball to Zhuge Hongtu. Zhuge Hongtu gritted his teeth and looked at Yun Qin Kong. Yun, brother Yun, I. Zhuge Hongtu's mouth moved slightly, but he didn't know how to start. The two of them slayed countless demons and eliminated demons, and they have always been incompatible with demons. At this time, Zhuge Hongtu was asked to persuade Yun Qin Kong to obey the demon, or even take refuge in the demon. He couldn't say it like that. Seeing Zhuge Hongtu's appearance, Yun Qin Kong felt an indescribable discomfort in his heart. Zhuge Hongtu was originally a Kuanpeng who could travel around Kyushu and conquer the world. But the wings that were broken by the word love fell into the quagmire and were covered in filth. How could Yun Qin Kong not feel sorry for this? But he didn't forget the business. Yun Qin Kong quietly cast a look at Su Mu, who nodded slightly in response. Although there are variables, they can only bite the bullet. Ants can also bite. Under the gaze of Qilong Centipede and Zhuge Hongtu, Yun Qin Kong suddenly laughed. It's very interesting to change the world like this. If the three of us cooperate, wouldn't it be a sure bet that these five princes will be sent to the throne? So. So die for me, you monster. Move mountains. Yun Qin Kong suddenly changed the conversation, and Fa Ju used a magical power to use it. This change made Zhuge Hongtu's complexion extremely difficult to see. She stood there for a while, not knowing what to do. But the Qilong centipede never believed in Yun Qin Kong and was always on guard against him. Seeing that the Taoist man in white used his supernatural powers and pulled up a big mountain and smashed it towards it, he calmly urged the hundred-eyed demon light to counterattack. The demon light emitted from the hundreds of small eyes on the back of the red dragon centipede is extremely powerful. Layer by layer cut that mountain. It will disappear without waiting for it to hit. But the next moment, Yun Qingkong's ultimate move came again. The white jade Buddha dust in his hand turned into thousands of threads, and strangled the sky and covered the earth to the red dragon centipede, as if to smash it. The red dragon centipede responded calmly. It opened its mouth and spit, and instantly the sea of fire spread, protecting the whole body and blocking the thousands of threads. Yun Qin Kong did not stop for a moment, and used his magical powers again. Five Element Spell He patted the pocket on his waist, and countless spells flew out like birds, forming a huge five-element array, covering the top of the head of the red dragon centipede. Then, the five-color divine light blasted out and eliminated the giant monster. The red dragon centipede is really strong and terrifying. Yun Qin Kong blasted out his magical powers three times in a row, but he was still able to deal with it calmly. I saw a large group of blue-black poisonous smoke spewing out of it. Immediately after leaving the body, they formed a group of ferocious ghost soldiers, roaring and killing the five-element array above their heads. As soon as these poisonous fog ghost soldiers touched the five-color divine light, they were smashed to pieces. But the poisonous fumes inside the red dragon centipede seemed to be endless, constantly spewing out, even forming an army of ghost soldiers. These ghost soldiers lined up in an army formation and attacked the five elements formation with overwhelming momentum. It was amazing. Under the wave after wave of offensive, the five-color divine light gradually dimmed, no longer the initial power. And the number of ghost soldiers has not decreased but increased. This person and one demon are all the top powerhouses in the world, and the Taoism is deeper than the other. Their constant fighting skills shattered this small world. Without the help of Zhuge Hongtu, Yun Qin Kong seemed a bit struggling. Fortunately, he knew from Su Muna what would happen today, and prepared many Taoist talismans and instruments in advance. It will not be defeated for a while. While the two sides were fighting fiercely, Su Mu quietly flew above the tail of the Red Dragon Centipede. The Red Dragon Centipede is a kilometer long, and it is difficult to take care of all parts of its body during fierce battles. More importantly, this evildoer never took Su Mu in his eyes and regarded him as an ant. From Qilong Centipede's point of view, 
even if such an ant lay down and beat him for a hundred years, he wouldn't be able to hurt himself in the slightest. An ant crawled on you, would you care? Will you find out the first time? Su Mu took advantage of this, flew to the back of the Qilong centipede, and carefully took out a piece of talisman paper glowing with blue light. Good luck, look after me again. Su Mu held the thunder falling talisman in one hand and the jade pendant hanging from his neck in the other, and kissed it. This pendant is engraved with the appearance of their family of twelve. It is the source of Su Mu's luck. Go. After praying for a while, Su Mu poured all the spiritual energy into the thunder falling talisman, and then stubbornly stuck it on the body of the red dragon centipede. Snapped. When the thunder falling talisman was in place, a strange force swayed and spread on the body of the Qilong centipede. At the same time, it also awakened the lightning formation that it had swallowed before. One symbol echoed each other, and a strange force made chaos in the body of the red dragon centipede. What? How dare you mess with my spiritual energy? The red dragon centipede finally found out that something was wrong. One of the eyes on its back looked at Sumu, and at the same time a beam of demonic light was emitted. Shu. This demonic light easily penetrated Su Mu's body, making him instantly enter a state of near death. But Su Mu's face showed a wild laugh. More sons and more blessings he was not disappointed. The plan was successful. In the sky, a terrifying thunder sounded. The dark sky that the red dragon centipede used to trap Su Mu and others was torn apart in an instant. And this is just the breath before the thunder tribulation comes. Thunder, thunder robbery. At this moment, Qilong Centipede has no time to take care of Su Mu and Yun Qin Kong. It raised its head the size of a house and looked up to the sky its giant eyes were full of disbelief. Scarlet Dragon Centipede never thought of it, but it was slightly altered by the fluctuation of spiritual energy, how could it lead to thunder tribulation? How can there be such a coincidence in the world? Is it too bad luck? These thoughts of the red dragon centipede were generated in an instant. Because in the next moment, a ten meter thick purple thunder ripped apart the space and roared towards it. At this moment, only this dazzling blue purple is left in the world. 108. This purple thunder slammed down hard, but was blocked by the red dragon centipede propped up by the sea of fire. But, this is just the beginning. The so-called thunder tribulation is the resonance between the energy of heaven and earth and the energy of the individual, and the echo of the big world to the small world. The weak are incapable of causing thunder calamities. Therefore, the more powerful the existence, the more terrifying the thunder calamity caused. There is no doubt that the red dragon centipede is an amazing monster. At this moment, the sky above the scarlet dragon centipede was dark, and you could vaguely see the rolling thunder swaying around like a snake. The entire sky sank for several points, as if to crush everything below. This overwhelming anger is terrifying. The first purple thunderbolt just fell, and more than a dozen thicker and darker thunderbolts smashed at the giant monster. There is almost no pause. This sea of fire around the red dragon centipede is both offensive and defensive, and its defense is amazing. As strong as the cloud and the sky, it cannot be broken for a while. But these dozens of angry thunders smashed down, and the power was extremely terrifying. It actually forcibly tore a huge gap in the sea of fire, so that the thunder robbery can directly reach the body of the red dragon centipede. And this is just the second wave of Lei Jia's offensive. Su Mu couldn't see what happened next. The third wave of thunder robbery shattered the sea of fire, and slammed into the huge and tyrannical monster body of the red dragon centipede. The hematoxylin on it was naturally affected. The endless power of thunder shreds Su Mu, and all he sees is dazzling purple. Other than that, nothing else. In an instant, Su Mu could not feel the existence of his own body. But his consciousness did not die, instead he swam in the thunderous ocean, as if to merge with it. This is a very mysterious feeling. I don't understand, I don't understand. Su Mu knew that his luck had taken effect again. This is a sign of becoming a ghost. But the fifth prince, Li Mingtai, did not have such good luck. He was also beside the red dragon centipede, and was also affected by the thunder tribulation. 
but the aftermath of the second wave of thunder robbery crushed him into nothingness, leaving no scum of death. Seeing this scene, Zhuge Hongtu was stunned for a moment, and then fell into madness. No. Ming Tai, Ming Tai. No. Zhuge Hongtu roared frantically, and even wanted to rush into Lei Jia to save Li Ming Tai. But Li Ming Tai's body was gone, and even his soul was annihilated. Immortal Daoyuo can't save him even if he comes. This behavior of Zhuge Hongtu is tantamount to sending death, and it is a meaningless death. The appearance of this close friend made Yun Qin Kong unbearable. He sighed secretly and waved the white jade Buddha dust to forcibly hold him back. Before the thunder tribulation came, Yun Qin Kong hurriedly stopped fighting with the red dragon centipede and avoided far away. He had not expected Su Mu's plan to succeed. Who would have known that luck was so good that it actually led to a thunder tribulation? Next, just wait for Lei Jia to show his power. Yun Qin Kong has seen thunder tribulation, but he has never seen such a terrifying thunder tribulation. After this robbery, the centipede will be severely disabled even if it doesn't die. As soon as Zhuge Hongtu was pulled by Yun Qin Kong, the third wave of thunder tribulation came. This wave of purple thunder is already dozens of meters thick, with a slightly infiltrating black color, exuding an aura of annihilation. Seeing this scene, Zhuge Hongtu knelt on the ground with despair on his face, his heart was already dead. He understands that Li Mingtai no longer exists. Not even a trace of the remnant remains. At the same time, the thunder tribulation became more and more ferocious. That roar, as if it was the roar of Thor, was shocking. One after another, the thunder slammed down, drowning the huge monster body of the red dragon centipede. Its thousand-meter-long demon body was trapped in a purple-black thunder prison, with nowhere to escape. The thunder light raged and rolled. The red dragon centipede in the thunder prison struggled frantically, its huge and powerful monster body twisted and wreaked havoc everywhere. Indistinctly, the shrill, angry scream of the centipede could be heard. But it was covered up by the roar of thunder, and it was not very real to hear. Under the double ravages of thunder tribulation and red dragon centipede, Yuntai town was reduced to ruins. All the little monsters in the town died without a place to be buried. This once prosperous town has nothing left. In the distance, Yun Qin Kong looked at this scene solemnly, with awe in his eyes. The mighty power possessed by nature is not comparable to manpower. Even if he has cultivated to this level, he must always remain in awe and never get carried away. Heaven does not exist, but it is everywhere. The law of the operation of all things is the way of heaven. While the red dragon centipede was struggling in pain, Su Mu's soul was reborn in the Sea of Thunder. After the thunder robbery fell, Su Mu, like Li Ming Tai, was instantly torn apart by his body and soul. But Su Mu's broken soul did not dissipate, nor was he attacked by thunder tribulation again. The fragments of his soul seemed to be contained by the thunder robbery, roaming in the thunderous ocean like a fish, constantly absorbing the power scattered by the thunder and the red dragon centipede. This terrifying thunder robbery shattered the demon body of the red dragon centipede, causing its flesh and strength to disintegrate everywhere. Some of them were absorbed by Su Mu. At this moment, he is reshaping his soul little by little, evolving in the direction of the heavenly dragon and ghost. This is Nirvana. It is rebirth. The waves of thunder were fiercer than waves, as if they were endlessly smashing at the red dragon centipede. Yun Qin Kong in the distance was already numb. Such destructive power is truly terrifying. After half an hour, the thunder tribulation finally ended. The dark clouds in the sky gradually dissipated, and a trace of sunlight came out from the clouds. This world has finally returned to normal. Under the thunder calamity, Yuntai town was razed to the ground. The once prosperous town was left in ruins, extremely dilapidated. On the ruins lay the thousand-meter-long demon body of the red dragon centipede. It's just that the once tyrannical monster body has now become tattered and broken everywhere. In the most serious place, the red dragon centipede was almost smashed by the waist, which was terrifying. It was lying on the ground, without the slightest movement, nor the slightest sense of vitality. This fierce and mighty monster seems to have died in the thunder tribulation. Su Mu. Su Mu. 
Yun Qin Kong didn't care about the centipede spirit that had no breath, but called out Su Mu's name loudly. According to Su Mu's plan, he will absorb the power of the red dragon centipede in thunder tribulation, rebirth in nirvana in the midst of destruction, and transform into a heavenly dragon and ghost. Yun Qin Kong is not optimistic about this crazy plan at all, and feels that it is sending death. But Su Mu insisted on doing this, and he was not easy to stop him. Yun Qin Kong can only come to find him when everything is over. Su Mu. Su Mu. Su. Shouting and shouting, Yun Qin Kong suddenly saw a huge light group flying out of the ruins. Then the light dissipated, revealing a translucent existence curled up in a ball. Looking at that appearance, it looks like a red centipede, and it also looks like a red dragon. He quickly stretched out his body, and it turned out to be a hundred meters long. Although this length is far less than the red dragon centipede, its appearance is closer to the form of a dragon than it is. In addition, there was a little thunder light flashing on his body, and there was a bit of agility and grandeur in the strange breath. This existence is like a dragon but not a dragon, and a centipede is not a centipede. The breath is not the same as that of the red dragon centipede, but it is a bit like hematoxylin. Is it? Yun Qin Kong was startled and tried to ask. Su Mu, is it yours? After Yun Qin Kong asked this, the huge translucent centipede quickly shrank and finally turned into a human appearance. Not Su Mu, who else could it be? It's me. Senior, I succeeded. There was a hint of excitement and joy in Su Mu's voice. Layers of arrangement and super good luck made him successfully incarnate into a dragon and ghost. At this time, Su Mu felt an unprecedented power. And this is the power of the soul, not the pure body, which is different from the previous two demon forms. A mysterious power entrenched in his body, which seemed to have infinite magical effects. It's just that Su Mu has just turned into a dragon and ghost, and has not yet mastered his own power. It is estimated that it will take a period of familiarity, or a few rounds of battles, to master the full power of Tian Longui. It's you, it's you who eliminated Ming Tai. I'm going to eliminate you. When Su Mu was excited, a voice full of killing intent came from the side. The person who spoke was the almost crazy Zhuge Hongtu. Recalling what Su Mu had done before, as well as his conversation with Yun Qin Kong. Zhuge Hongtu finally understood that the thunder tribulation of the red dragon centipede was deliberately induced by them. Li Mingtai died in the thunder tribulation. That Su Mu is the murderer. You give me death. Death. Zhuge Hongtu's eyes were crimson, and he roared with blood, and danced wildly with swords in his four arms. His whole body turned into a ray of blood, piercing the sky and killing Su Mu. Not good. Zhuge Hongtu does not hesitate to burn blood essence to improve his combat power, he is already a madman. Go away, I'll stop him. Seeing Zhuge Hongtu's appearance, Yun Qin Kong turned pale in shock and regretted going to save him just now. Perhaps, letting Zhuge Hongtu accompany Li Mingtai into death is his best end. Thank you senior. Hearing this, Su Mu thanked him and withdrew to the rear. Although incarnated as a heavenly dragon ghost, Su Mu did not perfectly master his own power. Moreover, Zhuge Hongtu was the top powerhouse in the world. At this time, he became mad regardless, and his combat power was approaching the of war. Even if Su Mu mastered the power of Tian Longui, it would be difficult for him to fight head to head with a powerhouse of this level. Approaching him only absorbed a small part of the power diffused by the Qilong centipede when it died, but not all. Su Mu self-assessed and felt that Tian Longui should have the strength of a top martial arts master. And there are many changes and various means. Make up for his lack of soul. When we return to the main world, the three bodies of bone, flesh, and soul will be one, and we should be able to reach a whole new realm. Thinking of this, Su Mu had some expectations in his heart. On the other side, Yun Qin Kong and Zhuge Hongtu were already fighting together. In the face of Zhuge Hongtu, who is burning blood and is completely crazy. Yun Qin Kong did not choose to fight him recklessly, but used various Taoist techniques and supernatural powers to delay him. As long as he delays for a while, Zhuge Hongtu, who burns blood essence, will automatically lose. 
Therefore, although from the perspective of the situation, Yun Qing Kong was severely suppressed by Zhuge Hongtu, and he retreated again and again after being eliminated by various violent sword moves. Even the Taoist talismans and instruments displayed by Yun Qing Kong were chopped into pieces by Zhuge Hongtu one after another. But in fact, every second of time passed, Yun Qing Kong's odds of winning increased by one point. Even if Zhuge Hongtu burns blood, he will not be able to win Yun Qing Kong who wants to delay in a short time. The comprehensive strength of this Taoist man in white is stronger than that of Zhuge Hongtu. After half an hour, Zhuge Hongtu's offensive gradually weakened. Yun Qing Kong could feel that his blood was declining. This is the best time to fight back. Yun Qing Kong looked at Zhuge Hongtu, who looked like a madman with disheveled hair, and couldn't help but sighed, and issued an exhortation for the last time. Brother Zhuge, stop. The fifth prince, Li Mingtai, is dead, don't be obsessed. You are you, he is him. Even if he dies, you have to live well. When Yen Zhuge Hongtu's crazy eyes showed a trace of clarity, he smiled bitterly and said. When his mother died, I lost most of my life. Only every time I see his face, which is very similar to his mother's, can I feel the meaning of my life. Now, Ming Tai is also dead. What's the point of my life? At this point, Zhuge Hongtu also knew that he had no chance to eliminate Su Mu to avenge Li Ming Tai. There was already a hint of despair and self-defeating in the words. Hearing this, Yun Qing Kong looked complicated and opened his mouth to say something. But don't want to, sudden change. The broken demon body that had been crawling on the ground for a while, suddenly moved. I saw the back of the red dragon centipede cracked open, and a small centipede essence flew out, opening its mouth and biting towards Yun Qing Kong. That red dragon centipede didn't die. 109. The life force of the world-shattering giant monster, the Red Dragon Centipede, is too tenacious, and it actually survived the Thunder Calamity. This evildoer kept silent, and after a long time of gaining momentum, he finally found this opportunity and launched a surprise attack on Yun Qing Kong. At this point in time, it was Yun Qing Kong's weak period. Most of the spiritual power in his body was consumed, and various Taoist talismans were consumed in the previous battle, and Zhuge Hongtu's mind was restrained. The Red Dragon Centipede is going to take advantage of this opportunity to eliminate Yun Qing Kong. Senior be careful. Seeing this scene, Su Mu hurried to help. He changed his body, turned into a giant monster that looked like a dragon but not a dragon, and a centipede but not a centipede, and eliminated the Red Dragon Centipede. Although the Scarlet Dragon Centipede did not die, its strength was greatly damaged by the bombardment of Lei Jia, and he was seriously injured. After shelling and rebirth, it was more than half smaller than before, only more than 300 meters long. Su Mu is 100 meters long, but he is not a centipede, but a ghost. He has the power of the Red Dragon Centipede in his body, and the power of Thunder Tribulation. Might as well fight it. It is really invincible, but also delay for a while. If Yun Qing Kong is really eliminated by Zhuge Hongtu and Qilong Centipede, it will be his turn next. It's time to face the Red Dragon Centipede head on. Before the Scarlet Dragon Centipede succeeded in its sneak attack, Su Mu slammed into it and knocked it out. Let the Thunder Robbery eliminate me, and steal my power. Boy, you should be damned. You deserve to die for your sins. The Red Dragon Centipede was furious and turned to eliminate Su Mu. The evildoer originally wanted to eliminate the more threatening Yun Qing Kong first, but was interrupted by Su Mu. New hatred and old hatred erupted at the same time, causing it to directly slaughter Su Mu in a frenzy. Su Mu was not afraid at all, lightning flashed from his 100 meter long body, and he faced the Red Dragon Centipede head on. The two behemoths fought and slaughtered frantically in the ruins, and the ground was shaking. Although Su Mu was smaller, he did not fully grasp his own power. But he has just been born and is at his peak, like the rising sun. What's more, Su Mu also has the power of thunder to protect his body. This is one of the most feared powers of ordinary demons. The Red Dragon Centipede is just the opposite. Although he survived, Lei Jia left him seriously injured and his strength was greatly reduced. 
Even if he abandoned the previous demon body with Jean Chan's shelling method, it was still difficult to conceal his weakness. Otherwise, why should it hold back and wait until the right time to attack Yin Qing Kong? In the end, it's still not strong enough. At this time, the Red Dragon Centipede's combat power is less than 10% of its peak. At the beginning, Su Mu was pressed and beaten by the Red Dragon Centipede, and only had the ability to defend. But over time, he gradually mastered his power. From time to time, a thunder light is released, a cloud of fire is spit out, and there are back and forth fights with the Red Dragon Centipede, which is no longer a passive defense. This feeling is so wonderful. Although he was still at a disadvantage, Sumu recklessly swayed the tyrannical power in his body, so he was so happy. I saw a flash of lightning all over his body, forcing the Qilong centipede back a hundred meters. Then another large poisonous mist sprayed on its head, and the enraged monster screamed. What's more infuriating than the enemy stealing your power and using it against you? I'm going to eliminate you. I'm going to eliminate you. The red dragon centipede roared frantically, but he still couldn't defeat Su Mu in a short period of time, let alone behead him. It's about to be mad at Su Mu. What was once an inconspicuous ant turned it into what it is now. Not only did he lose the opportunity to sneak into the palace to steal the national destiny, but he couldn't even keep his previous cultivation. But now, it was seriously injured and couldn't even take down the ant it used to be. Everything was destroyed by Su Mu. Thinking of this, the Red Dragon Centipede was almost mad with anger, but it could only be incompetent. This is the powerlessness it has never had before. On the other hand, the battle between Yin Qing Kong and Zhuge Hongtu has come to an end. Knowing that he had no chance to take revenge, Zhuge Hongtu chose to eliminate himself after burning his blood. Before he died, he only let out a mournful and miserable smile, and did not leave any last words. A generation of celestial beheading monsters has fallen. Seeing this, Qilong Centipede was shocked and angry. But it was too weak at this time. The Sumac alone can hold it back. If Yun Qing Kong and Su Mu join forces, it will really die here. Thinking of this, Qilong Centipede could only humiliately suppress the anger in his heart, opened his mouth and spit out a sea of flames, forcing Su Mu back and trying to escape. But Su Mu has seen through the evildoer's intentions, so how can he let it escape easily? Leave me alone. Su Mu swallowed the ghost Yuan Dan purchased for 50 points, and his strength increased a little in a short time. His 100 meter long body was filled with thunder, and he forcibly broke through the sea of fire to eliminate the red dragon centipede. After approaching, Su Mu opened his mouth and bit on the tail of the red dragon centipede. Ow! The red dragon centipede screamed in pain and was in a state of embarrassment. It flicked its tail and tried to throw Su Mu away, but it was unsuccessful. Seeing that Yun Qing Kong was already flying towards them, the scarlet dragon centipede did not dare to delay, and flicked its tail again. But this time, it wasn't to fling Su Mu, but to disconnect his tail. Under the crisis of life and death, the red dragon centipede chose to survive by docking its tail. There is no doubt that this is an extremely humiliating way to survive for a monster like it. But it is helpless. After getting rid of Sumu, Qilong Centipede did not dare to stay for a moment. It hurriedly used the earth escape technique to burrow into the ground, and it disappeared without a trace after a while, and even its breath could not be detected. Sumu didn't chase anymore. While devouring the broken tail left by the red dragon centipede, he said. It's a pity, I didn't eliminate this monster, it escaped really fast. The monster body of the red dragon centipede contains enormous abilities, and it is an excellent tonic for Su Mu. Of course, ordinary people are not qualified to enjoy this tonic, and if you touch it, it will be corroded by the poison and die. Yun Qing Kong came to Su Mu's side, looked into the distance and said. No problem. After this time, the evildoer's way of doing things has been greatly damaged, and his strength is not 1 in 10. It is estimated that he will not come out to make trouble again in a hundred years. During its recuperation period, if it is discovered by me or other experts, it will be very difficult to protect itself. Thanks to you for being able to force such a big monster into this situation. Without you, it led to the thunder calamity, 
and finally forced it to cut its tail to survive. Why is it so embarrassed? It is estimated that this centipede has not been as miserable as it is today for hundreds of years. Saying that, Yun Chin Kong looked at Su Mu with a look of amazement. He clearly remembered that when Su Mu found him, he was only a six-year-old child. It was such a child who came up with an almost impossible plan to defeat a demon king-level red dragon centipede. All of this seems so incredible. If it wasn't for the personal experience, Yun Chin Kong wouldn't even believe that all of this really happened. This guy is not immortal. Without the help of seniors, how could my plan succeed? Thanks to the seniors, it's almost the same. Su Mu humbled himself, and at the same time devoured the severed tail of the red dragon centipede. Then he changed his body and changed back from the 100 meter long dragon and ghost form back to the human form again. Su Mu felt the surging power in his body, and at the same time looked at the ruins under his feet, and said with emotion. If it weren't for this battle today, after decades of hard work, there will be such dilapidated places everywhere. It's a pity. Hey. Su Mu didn't say the last half of the sentence. What he wanted to say was, it's a pity that the history of the main world will not change because of this. The national teacher is still the national teacher. The dwarf is still the dwarf. Dagon is still the dynasty that has entered the collapse step by step. As for Zhuge Hongtu and Yun Qin Kong, their fates should be diametrically opposed. In the main world, Zhuge Hongtu has a high probability not to die, and his strength is definitely stronger. There is a high probability that you have advanced to the realm of the of war. The eldest princess Li Lingyan once said that there are people in Yanjing city who can deal with the red dragon centipede who became the national teacher, but they are also the people of her father. I think there must be Zhuge Hongtu. As for Yun Qin Kong, without Su Mu's intervention, he would fall into the abyss under the betrayal of Zhuge Hongtu, and the end would be miserable. Nine times out of ten, love will die in endless pain. Thinking of this, Su Mu looked at the Taoist man in fluttering white clothes and extraordinary temperament beside him with a complicated expression. Senior, find an apprentice when you have the chance, don't be too picky. Looking for an apprentice is like looking for a wife. All the good girls are robbed by others. If you can't survive this catastrophe this time, and are eliminated by Zhuge Hongtu and the Qilong centipede, won't Qi Zong cut off the inheritance? Hearing this, Yun Qin Kong, who was wiping off the stains on his robe, said casually. Death? I don't die so easily. If, as you said, Zhuge Hongtu betrayed me and plunged me into the abyss of the monster, then I have indeed failed to survive the calamity. But I'm definitely not going to die, at least not any time soon. Do you know what Qi Zong's strongest ability is? Save your life. The Qi sect has been passed down for more than a thousand years, and the first thing each generation of descendants must learn is the ability to save lives. Otherwise, how could Qi Zong be passed down to this day? Hearing this, Su Mu was stunned. Senior, what do you mean, even if things develop to the worst stage, you can survive? Naturally. It's not a problem to live for a hundred years. It's hard to say whether you can get out of trouble. But as long as you live there is hope. Isn't it? Yun Qin Kong smiled freely and continued to clean up his Taoist robe. This master seems to be a bit clean. Su Mu fell into deep thought. Yun Qin Kong would not deceive him in such a place. Since the Daoist in white has such a strong life-saving ability, is there any kind of ability? He is still alive in the main world. If so, Su Mu might be able to do something. With these thoughts in mind, Su Mu swept the battlefield. There are a lot of good things in the belongings of a famous monster slayer, and they can't be wasted. Seeing this, Yun Qin Kong sighed and did not stop it. After Su Mu touched the body, he buried Zhuge Hongtu's body here. The tombstone is nameless, leaving only one line, lost heartless. 110. After the war, Su Mu and Yun Qin Kong went their separate ways. Yun Qin Kong in this world has successfully survived the catastrophe of life and death, and the future is limitless. After transcending the calamity, he had already vaguely had some insights. Prepare to try the unity of man and nature after returning to the peak state, and impact the realm of gods. As for Su Mu, 
he successfully transformed into a heavenly dragon ghost and achieved the clearance conditions. Like the previous instance, Su Mu did not choose to leave this world immediately, but went home to reunite with his wife and daughter. For the next month, Su Mu didn't do other things, and didn't even practice. He devoted all his time to spending time with his family. He handed over all the relics of Zhuge Hongtu to Yu Han Mei. But no matter what, the day to leave has finally come. When they parted, Yu Han Mei and the ten cute babies had tears in their eyes, looking like they were about to cry. Xiang Gong, can you not leave us? Daddy, don't go. Daddy. Woohoo. Facing Yu Han Mei's inquiry in Memoir's cry, Su Mu sighed and said helplessly. I'm going to another world, I'm sorry for you, but. I don't have a choice. You are good at training, as long as your strength is strong enough, you can still meet one day. Take good care of yourself. Leaving the orphans and widows and running away, Su Mu felt like a big scumbag. But he has no choice but to hope to meet again one day. Under the reluctant gaze of his wife, daughter and father, Su Mu gradually disappeared into this world as a phantom. A tear fell from Yu Hanmei's eyes. End of this simulation. Rating, D. Dungeon Completion, 94. 8%. Points earned, 2000. Comment, you defeated a giant monster, changed history, and allowed countless people of Limin to survive. Dungeon Completion Reward 1, you can choose one of 10 random talents to be permanently cured, which will be automatically carried in future dungeons. Dungeon Completion Reward 2, congratulations on getting the monster template, Tian Longui. Hint, if your points exceed 1000 points, open the secondary mall. After regaining consciousness again, Su Mu has returned to the main world. There was no time, he was still in the ruined temple outside Yuntai town. Su Mu looked at the waning moon in the sky and couldn't help sighing. Parting is always so bitter, but he has nothing to do. This is the reason why Su Mu was reluctant to have too much interaction with the characters in the dungeon world at first. But as things develop, it is often involuntary. They will always be travelers in each other's lives. After several reincarnations, Su Mu's Xinqing has become extremely powerful. He took a deep breath, restrained his chaotic emotions, and began to sort out the harvest this time. The first is to solidify talent. After thinking for a while, Su Mu decided to solidify Kong Jing. Empty and clean, the spiritual platform is clear and bright, and the mind is firm. Learning speed increased by 10%. This talent can play a role in which dungeon it is placed. It is also one of the three cyan talents in the last instance world. As for multiple suns, more fortunes and enchanted demons, which look good, there are too many restrictions. Let's talk about enchanted demon first. After this talent takes effect, he will have an epiphany once a year, and his cultivation and strength will be greatly improved each time he has an epiphany. It seems very good, but it will be turned on after the age of 12, and there is a 30% chance of going crazy every time you have an epiphany. 30% may not seem like much, but after a few more epiphanies, almost 100% will be hit. It is only practical if it is matched with high luck. As for more children, more blessings, the flaws are not small. Not every dungeon has a chance for Su Muen to get married and have children safely. For example, in the previous two dungeon worlds, multiple suns and more happiness was almost useless. There is simply no stable environment for Su Mu to raise the baby. In addition, this dungeon world was also able to use this talent to the limit thanks to the encounter with Yu Han Mei, who is a ghost. The lucky bonus of a child is equivalent to a hundred ordinary children. That is to say, if you want to have the kind of super luck in the last instance world, ordinary Wasumu has to give birth to a thousand. This is so outrageous, Su Mu can only say that there is nothing he can do. Unlike enchanted and multiple suns and more blessings, the effect of Kong Jing is not that amazing. But it is stable and can be used in almost any situation. This talent is very good. After solidifying his talent, Su Mu looked at the hint that he had never heard before. Hint, if your points exceed 1000 points, open the secondary mall. Secondary mall. What is this? 
Su Mu remembers how expensive things are in the system's mall, and he has seen those with 100,000 points and millions of points. Is there anything special about this secondary business? Out of curiosity, Su Mu opened the mall panel, and sure enough, he saw a secondary interface. After clicking in, he couldn't help being stunned. On the secondary mall interface, there is a striking notice. Items purchased on this interface can be used in the real world. Seeing this sentence, Su Mu was very surprised. There are countless good things in the system mall, but it can only be used in the copy world, which is a pity. But the things in this secondary mall can be used in the main world and act on the main body. This is really awesome. Su Mu happily flipped through the second tier mall, but his expression froze after two glances. No wonder it will only be opened after reaching 1000 points. The items in the secondary mall are ridiculously expensive. The same thing, the price is at least 10 times the ordinary mall. Originally looking at a lot of 2000 points, it suddenly became a bit pitiful. After thinking it over and over again, Su Mu purchased a 1000 point primary haircutting pill. This medicinal herb can improve Su Mu's talent for martial arts and qi refining. Of course, since it is a primary medicine pill, the effect is definitely limited. As for the remaining 1000 points, Su Mu didn't plan to move it, and planned to keep it for a rainy day. Who knows what kind of dungeon we'll go into next. If you don't have points at the critical moment and you can't buy the props you need, it will be difficult. In the last dungeon world, Su Mu finally relied on the Thunder Induction Formation and the Thunder Falling Talisman to complete the reversal. To sum up, if you have money in your hands, don't panic. After consuming 1000 points, Su Mu thought about it, and there was an extra medicinal pill in his hand. The portable space in the main world is the same as in the dungeon world. It will be opened after purchasing items, but it can only store things bought from the system store. Without hesitation, Su Mu swallowed the elementary haircutting and pulp washing pill in one gulp. Soon, the medicinal power rose from the lower abdomen, spread all over Su Mu's body, and began to improve his body's various talents. On the surface, Su Mu doesn't seem to need his own strong martial arts and qi cultivation. As long as he keeps getting new monster templates, he can keep getting stronger. But Su Mu always felt that this didn't seem very good. If possible, he still wants to improve the strength of his body, whether it is martial arts or chi. After half an hour, the medicinal power was absorbed. Su Mu only felt that his eyes and ears were clear, his entire blood vessels became much smoother, and his body felt light and airy. This feeling is quite refreshing. Su Mu's original talent is a bit poor, whether it is martial arts or chi refining, he is not very good. Now that he is finally stronger with the help of the primary haircutting and pulp washing pill, I believe that there should be no problem in cultivating an astral chi. After all the trivial matters are dealt with, it's time for the main event. It's time to check how powerful the monster template obtained this time is. Su Mu thought about it, and a phantom appeared in his body. The appearance of this translucent phantom is the same as Su Mu, it is his soul. This scene seems to be out of the body. When completely separated from the body, the soul floating above the body suddenly twisted and expanded, turning into a 100 meter long giant. At this time, Su Mu's soul looked both like a dragon and a bit like a giant centipede. The huge body stuffed this ruined temple to the brim, it was terrifying. Strange, I seem to have two souls. Su Mu sat cross-legged on the ground, looking a little puzzled. His original soul is still in the body, so the body can move normally. Tian Longui is like a new soul split from him. There is no primary or secondary between the two, they are all controlled by Su Mu, and they are all his souls. To be precise, it's not a twin soul. But one soul and two bodies. This doesn't seem to be a bad thing. If one soul is destroyed, there will be one left. Speaking of which, the skeleton and the flying zombie can be merged, so what about adding a dragon and ghost? If I can merge, how strong should I be? Thinking of this, Su Mu's eyes brightened. The strength of Tian Longui is comparable to that of top martial arts masters. It is stronger than the two monster templates of Bloody Skeleton and Fei Zong. 
the corpse demon formed by the fusion of the skeleton and the flying zombie can be equal to the strength of the dragon and ghost. It's just that their means are different, and their focus is also different. If you can combine the three monster templates of Blood Evil Skeleton, Flying Zombie, and Tian Longwei, will Su Mu have a chance to touch the threshold of the of war? Can the combination of bone, flesh, and soul produce miraculous changes? Thinking of this, Su Mu immediately took action. Roar. He roared and his body turned into a corpse. At the same time, one after another hideous bone spurs grew out and spread all over the body. The corpse and the bone fused smoothly. Incarnate in the form of a corpse monster. But there was a problem with Tian Longwei. Su Mu tried again and again but couldn't fuse the dragon and ghost surrounding him with the corpse form. Is there a problem? Or is it impossible to integrate? Su Mu frowned and thought, trying to find the problem. After a while, he had a flash of inspiration and thought of a possibility. Flying zombies are stronger than bloody skeletons. When the two are fused, the flying zombies are the main one, and the bloody skeletons are the second. Thus incarnated into a new form. But at this time, the strength of the corpse demon and the dragon ghost are on the same level, and the gap is very small. As a result, there is no primary and secondary distinction, and fusion cannot be performed. Thinking of this, Su Mu knew what to do. 111. Blast the corpse, open. Su Mu gave a low voice, and the corpse and demon body swelled, becoming even taller and hideous. The normal corpse demon form is two meters high. After the corpse explosion was turned on, it grew all the way to three. Five meters before it stopped. Almost reached the roof of this small broken temple. Corpse explosion is the ability to fly stiff, which can burst out more powerful power in a short period of time. After the corpse explosion was activated, the strength of the corpse demon increased a lot, barely suppressing the dragon and ghost. Receive. Su Mu snorted again. The 100 meter long Tian Longyu was continuously compressed by him until it shrank to 20 meters before it stopped. Melt. Under the control of Su Mu, the reduced heavenly dragon ghost wrapped around the body of the corpse and put his head on his right shoulder, staring coldly ahead. The bones are fused, and the dragon is haunted. This shape, this attitude, is extremely domineering. In games or comics, at least it has to be a big boss. At a glance, you know it's a very unpleasant kind. After the corpse explosion was activated, Su Mu finally fused the power of the three demon forms together, slightly reluctantly. This feeling is so wonderful. Is this the power of the of war? Su Mu's eyes are bright, and the momentum is amazing. After the fusion of the three monster forms of bone, flesh, and soul, his strength has reached a new level. In this state, Su Mu's combat power has surpassed that of the top martial arts masters. But whether it has reached the realm of the martial god, Su Mu can't say. He knows too little about this level. But no matter what, Su Mu has the power to deal with most of the troubles, at least it is close to the realm of the of war. The only problem is that it won't last long. Once the corpse explosion is over, the fusion state will automatically disintegrate. Therefore, the state of fusion of bones and souls cannot be used as a conventional method, and can only be regarded as a whole card. Perhaps when the strength becomes stronger in the future, the blood evil skeleton, the flying zombie, and the dragon and ghost can be more perfectly fused together, and a more powerful fighting force can be erupted. After the test, Su Mu was quite satisfied. He lifted the demon state and took back the dragon ghost. In the blink of an eye, Su Mu turned into that handsome boy who was harmless to humans and animals again, spending the night alone in this ruined temple. After processing the harvest of the last dungeon world, Su Mu began to think about what to do next. According to the previous plan, he will continue to travel far and seek to see if there is a suitable place to stay, so as to avoid this chaotic conflict. But after going through the last dungeon world, Su Mu didn't plan to do this anymore. When the monarch is in power and the evildoer is in power, how can there be a pure land in this world? Since you can't escape this turbulent vortex, you should simply immerse yourself in it. Use your own power to disrupt the world. Perhaps there is still a chance for true peace. 
Su Mu has already thought about it, and will go to Yuntai Town tomorrow to find out if there is any trace of Yun Qing Kong. If Yun Qing Kong is not dead, there is a high probability that he will be sealed somewhere. The possibility of Yuntai Town is not small. It would be great to find Yun Qing Kong and get rid of him. In the future, Su Mu will have a super powerful helper. Of course, the premise is that Yun Qing Kong is still alive and retains a certain strength. In addition, Su Mu intends to help the three demon slayers who are on a mission in Yuntai Town. He intends to take this opportunity to join the town demon division. Not for others, just to catch Zhuge Hongtu. At the beginning, Su Mu had a good impression of Zhuge Hongtu, and once surpassed Yun Qing Kong, who did not speak much. But with the follow-up in-death understanding, Su Mu found that this bearded man is a crazy critic, and his mind is extremely unsound in some aspects. Usually he is a normal person, as long as it involves the fifth prince, or the current emperor Tianqi. He's going to be in brain-dead mode. You can do anything stupid and outrageous. Dagon became what he is now, basically the pot of the three people, Qilong Senapid, Zhuge Hongtu and Li Mingtai. Zhuge Hongtu has absolutely inescapable responsibility. These two people and one demon are interdependent and jealous of each other, and their relationship is extremely complicated. Maybe they can find a way to let them eliminate each other and end the last crazy years of Dagon. The two are in a demon. The red dragon centipede is scheming and scheming, making it difficult to deal with. Apocalypse Emperor Li Mingtai has been missing all the year round, and the ghost knows where he is. The best left to start is Juga Hongtu. Relatively speaking, his brain is the dumbest, and he is also the person Su Mu has the most opportunity to come into contact with. Therefore, Su Mu set the target for him. To this end, first of all to join the town magic division. Of course, this is only a preliminary plan, and there may be changes in the future. After all, plans are dead, and people are alive. Su Mu closed his eyes and sat cross-legged, pondering the follow-up plans and plans, while recuperating. But late at night, he heard a strange whisper from outside. According to the trail, the man was resting in the ruined temple in front. Jie Jie Jie. Although this person is not a monster slayer, but walking with a monster slayer, he deserves to die. Not bad. Let's eliminate him first, and then slowly eliminate the three monster slayers. Yuntai Town, it's not a place where they can come. Eliminate him. Eliminate him. This low voice was full of resentment killing intent, and it was twisted and weird, not like human words. According to preliminary calculations, it is about a mile away from Su Mu. If it was before, he couldn't hear the movement from such a long distance. But at this time, Su Mu, Tianlong and Ghost are added, his soul is powerful, and his five senses are extremely sensitive. The whispers from a mile away sounded as if they were ringing in the ears, and they were very clear. Of course, even if Su Mu hadn't experienced the last instance, he hadn't heard this twisted and weird sound. He is not an ordinary demon that can be invaded. Now that I hear it, it can be arranged in advance. Su Mu thought about it, and the dragon and ghost left the body, entrenched on the top of the ruined temple, waiting for the arrival of the enemy. And he himself remained motionless, continuing to sit cross-legged and dozing. The waning moon is in the sky, and the stars are faint. We could vaguely see that three humanoid monsters were quietly approaching the ruined temple where Su Mu had settled. They are hideous and hideous. And crawled on the ground in a strange posture, like a lizard crawled to the front of the ruined temple, with green ghost eyes staring at Su Mu sitting cross-legged in the temple. Sizzle. It looks so tender. His blood smells sweet. Hey, hey, I didn't make this trip in vain. After getting close and making sure that Su Mu was here, the three demons were not afraid that he would escape, and they talked loudly. That twisted and weird voice is full of malice. Ordinary people see this scene, I am afraid that they will be frightened and. But Su Mu was still sitting cross-legged with his eyes closed, not moving, as if he was still in a deep sleep. This kid is really sleeping, let's do it directly. No. I like to see the horror on their faces before they die. Wake him up and do it again. Hey hey, good. A monster laughed, 
quickly climbed into the temple, and approached Su Mu. Ten meters. Five meters. Three meters. Seeing that the demon was about to climb up to Su Mu, a red light flashed quickly. Then the monster disappeared. The two monsters outside the door were just about to enter together, and they couldn't help but froze in place after seeing this scene. What's the matter? Why did it suddenly disappear? I don't know, I didn't see it clearly. There seemed to be a flash of red light. What red light? Why didn't I see it? Really? It's gone in a flash of red, soon. The two demons looked at each other, vaguely feeling that something was wrong. You. Go in and see. I'm not going. I'm going together. These two demons are obviously not low in intelligence, and they already know what fear is. Then don't go in, just eliminate that kid outside the door. Okay, let's do it together. The two demons discussed and settled on a strategy. They have already thought about it, if they can't eliminate the people in the temple, they will run away immediately. The two demons looked at each other, then opened their mouths and spit at the same time, and two fishy winds drifted toward Sumu. This kind of fishy wind, ordinary people are afraid that their bones will melt. But it was useless in the face of Sumu, and it automatically collapsed before reaching him. Not good. The idea is tricky, quickly withdraw. Seeing this, the two monsters let out a cry and turned to flee. But as soon as he turned around, he froze in place at the same time. A 100 meter long giant stood in front of them, leaving them nowhere to escape. This giant is shaped like a dragon and a giant centipede. The terrifying aura made the two demons tremble constantly, and they were extremely terrified. What a terrifying existence this is. More than a hundred times more ferocious than them. Compared with this one, how could they count as demons? The little sheep should be about the same. This will provoke the ancestors. Frightened, the two demons turned their heads and looked into the temple. I saw that the people in the temple had already opened their eyes and looked at them, their eyes were extremely cold. Rao. Shu. Just as the two demons were about to ask for mercy, their two long sword-like feet pierced through their bodies, destroying all life. The three demons who tried to harm Su Mu were easily eliminated by him. But Su Mu frowned slightly. The appearance and aura of these three demons made him feel a little familiar. Is it? Su Mu vaguely thought of something, and slashed the bodies of these monsters with the strong feet of the dragon and ghost. Sure enough, I found something like vines and seeds inside. These three monsters are actually the alienated townspeople that Su Mu met in Yuntai Town in the last dungeon world. That is, the puppet demon controlled by the tree demon. Su Mu's thoughts turned rapidly, and he quickly understood everything. In the history without his interference, Yun Qing Kong and Zhuge Hongtu would be led into the trap by the red dragon centipede. Therefore, the tree demon in Yuntai Town does not need to die, and those alienated townspeople can continue to exist. With the red dragon centipede's means and the power of Zhuge Hongtu, it is not difficult to cover up a town that has turned into a devil's cave. In this way, this magic cave has continued all the way to today, a full sixty or seventy years. Those alienated townspeople are all puppets controlled by tree demons, and they are low-level demons. After so many years, the strength of these low-level monsters has not increased much, but the wisdom has been opened. Unfortunately, puppets are puppets after all. Including the tree demon, it is just the puppet of the red dragon centipede. What happened tonight, Yu Yu reading WW. Bukanshu. Kong convinced Su Mu that the tree demon transformed by the dragon blood tree still exists, and it is in Yuntai town. In other words, the scarlet dragon centipede can increase its strength by swallowing the tree demon. Part of the power of Su Mu's heavenly dragon ghost comes from the red dragon centipede. Then can he also increase his strength by devouring the tree demon? Thinking of this, Su Mu felt that the trip to Yuntai town was even more necessary. If there are dates or not, hit two. Anyway, it won't eat a bad stomach. One twelve. The second day, noon. In a restaurant in Yuntai town, the three monster slayers Yuan Chuhu, Meng Yao, and the old drunk are discussing countermeasures. 
They are all herringbone slayers. Among them, Yuan Zhanhu and the old drunkard are about to be promoted. As long as the mission this time is completed, the two of them will be promoted to be the monster slayers when they go back. By then, Yuan Yanhu and the old alcoholic will be upgraded to a higher level in terms of status and welfare. Excited to think about it. But the problem is. This time the task doesn't seem to be that simple. They investigated all day, but found no clues. The monster slayer who disappeared in Yuntai town seemed to have evaporated from the world, leaving no trace. The three took advantage of the noon meal to review their findings of the day. Do you feel this town is weird? I feel something is wrong, but I can't tell. Meng Yao frowned and looked around, very alert. Nonsense, if there is no problem in this town, will the previous monster slayer disappear? Let's think about how to find the target. Yuan Yanhu took a sip of wine, with a little impatience in his tone. With just this mission, he will be able to accumulate enough credits to advance to the title of Demon Slayer. But when he came to the door, he encountered trouble, and his heart was somewhat anxious. It was an old alcoholic. He was in the same situation as Yuan Yanhu, but he drank the little wine without hesitation. As if everything that happened here had nothing to do with him. Yuan Yanhu couldn't bear it any longer, and asked him. Hey! Old alcoholic, did I say you're really in no hurry? We're just one last step away from promotion. Hearing this, the old alcoholic laughed and said nonchalantly. I'm so old, what's the rush? Whether it succeeds or not depends on the destiny. It's good to be alive. You old man. Hey! Yuan Yanhu was a little speechless, and he could only worry about it alone. Seeing this, Meng Yao comforted. Don't worry too much, after all, we're only here on the second day. After you've had enough to eat and drink, we'll just investigate slowly. Also, I think maybe go to the local mayor, he may be able to. Eh, isn't that Su Mu? As they were talking, Meng Yao suddenly saw a familiar figure walking towards them. It was Su Mu who parted with them yesterday. The strange thing is that it has only been a day, but Meng Yao vaguely feels that Su Mu seems to be a little different. How many are you eating? Su Mu walked in front of the three demon slayers, glanced at the food on the table, and smiled. The smile is a little weird, with a bit of teasing. Didn't you say you want to look elsewhere? Why did you come back? Yuan Yanhu took a bite of the dish and asked with some doubts. I got some information about Yuntai town by accident, so I came to you specially. Su Mu looked at the restaurant, and the smile on his face became more and more strange. This restaurant is very lively with people coming and going. Unfortunately, these are all illusions. Hearing this, Yuan Yanhu immediately regained his spirit and asked eagerly. What information? Come and listen. Hearing this, Su Mu laughed and said. No hurry, no hurry, I'll show you something good first. Heaven's eye, open. With a pinch, he cast a small spell at will. Although he only started qi refining last night, after all, Su Mu has cultivated to the realm of five qi chaoyuan in the dungeon world. Although the spiritual energy in the body is thin, it is still no problem to cast a few small spells. With a flick of Su Mu's finger, three auras entered the eyebrows of Yuan Chuhu, Meng Yao, and the old drunk. After the aura disappeared, their eyes were darkened. When I regained my vision again, a touch of grey appeared in my vision, and I could see something unusual. It happened that at this moment, a shop assistant walked over quickly with a pot of soup. This was the last dish they ordered at this table. Hey hey! Here comes the chicken soup. The pot of chicken soup held by the shop boy is bright and attractive, and it looks very good. But the three people whose eyes were opened saw another scene. Chicken soup is really fine. But this shop boy is a rotten, hideous monster. The corners of its mouth were wide open, and the long black cyan saliva was continuously dripping into the chicken soup in the form of filaments. What's worse, as he trot all the way, a rotten eyeball on the demon's face fell off and just rolled into the chicken soup. Guests, please take your time. The demon put the pot of chicken soup with a lot of good ingredients on the table, turned around and left with a grin. Yuan Yanhu looked at the contaminated chicken soup, 
and then looked at the dish that was covered with some contamination. His face turned blue, and he wanted to vomit. Among the three, the old alcoholic didn't even take a sip of the dish, and only drank the wine he brought. Meng Yao vaguely felt that something was wrong in Yuntai town, and didn't eat much. Only Yuan Jianhu has a large appetite on weekdays, and he had already eaten a lot of dishes in that moment. Thinking of this, he almost spit it out. Damn demon, dare to tease me. Can Yuan Yanhu bear this violent temper? He took an antidote and suppressed the urge to vomit. Then he kicked over the table, jumped up and drew the knife to chop at the monster who delivered the chicken soup. The strength of these alienated townspeople in Yuntai town is low and weak. On average, they only have the strength of second-rate warriors. How can they stop the furious innate warrior Yuan Chihu? His swordsmanship is fierce. With one knife, it directly split the demon into two halves from the beginning to the end. The corpse of Jian Shower after his death revealed the ugly and terrifying original form. This time, the three demon slayers no longer had any doubts, knowing that what Su Mu showed them was true. Let's do it together. Yuan Yanhu shouted loudly. Then the three demon slayers used their methods to fight the demons in the restaurant. Their strength is not bad, and they slaughtered all the demons in the restaurant in a short time. Gu Rong. But when they went out, all three of them were stunned. The perimeter of the restaurant is full of monsters, and you can't see the edge at a glance. Even though the strength of these monsters is very low, such a huge number still makes the scalp of Yuan Yanhu and the three numb. Damn it! This town is a devil's den, and there is no one alive. Brothers, what should I do? Yuan Yanhu asked the other two. What else can I do, just bite the bullet and go out, one can live is one. Anyway, on the first day of becoming a monster slayer, I thought that one day I would die at the hands of the monster. Meng Yao had a determined look on her face and was not afraid. At the juncture of life and death, this charming woman has a bit of pride. As for the old drunk, he silently took out the largest gourd around his waist, as if he was ready for a deadly battle. Don't panic, big guy, there is me. At this moment of crisis, Su Mu stood up. I saw him pinch the magic, and a fire dragon appeared, roaring and rushing towards the group of demons. With a loud bang, the flame splashed and the heat wave rolled. A large number of demons were blasted into slag, and they burst open one after another. This supernatural power of Su Mu, forcibly opened up a wide blood path, leading directly to the outside of the town. Good guy, so you are a master of qi refining. Seeing this scene, Yuan Yanhu was both surprised and happy. Although they knew that Su Mu had some strength when they were on the road, they never thought that he was so strong, and he was also a qi refiner. Meng Yao's eyes looking at Su Mu were also brilliant. Even the old alcoholic had a look of surprise on his face. At this critical juncture of life and death, Su Mu suddenly showed such a powerful strength, so that the three of them saw the hope of life, how could they not be excited? In fact, the move just now was not the power of the fire dragon mantra. Su Mu has only been practicing for a day, but he still can't display such a powerful supernatural power. The fire dragon curse is just a cover-up, the real power of this move comes from the heavenly dragon ghost. Stop gossip, the residents of this town are all demons, leave quickly. After a low drink, Su Mu led the way. I saw that he used some magical powers from time to time to eliminate the raging monsters. Yuan Chuhu, Meng Yao, and the old alcoholic followed closely behind him, destroying some demons that came from behind. Unconsciously, Su Mu has become the leader of this small group. Under his leadership, everyone difficulty out of Yuntai town. As a result, before I could catch my breath, I heard a loud noise from Yuntai town. Everyone looked back and saw a giant monster that looked like a centipede and a dragon in the town. This giant monster is huge, 100 meters long. Even though the terrifying momentum was separated by several miles, Yuan Chuhu, Meng Yao and the old drunkard were all icy cold. Looking at it from a distance, the three of them have the feeling that they have walked on the line of life and death. This is a powerful presence they have never seen before. Fortunately, the terrifying monster didn't chase them down, and after showing his face, it went silent again. 
The group hurriedly ran away desperately, and stopped to rest for a while after escaping without strength. Yuan Chuhu had lingering fears in his heart, and panted and said. There are still such terrifying monsters in this town, I'm afraid that the master is not its opponent. Fortunately, Brother Su Mu reminded me in time and saved my life. Otherwise, I can only stuff the giant monster's teeth with a hundred, it's too scary. Such a great favor, I can't repay it. Saying that, he cast a grateful look at Su Mu. Hearing this, Su Mu took out the jug of wine that the old alcoholic gave him when they parted, took a sip and said with a smile. If you say thank you, I'll talk about it later, and leave here first. It will be bad if the giant monster catches up. Meng Yao nodded repeatedly in agreement. Yes. Hurry back to Yanjing and report the situation here. The giant monster looked like a centipede just now, I remember the national teacher. Meng Yao didn't say anything later, but the three of them understood. The real national teacher Purdue did not conceal his true identity, and those who knew him basically knew what kind of existence he was. Speaking of this, the old alcoholic had a rare stern face and said very seriously. This matter in Yuntai town, I'm afraid it's not something we, the herringbone monster slayers, can handle. We can't even see through the various disguises in this town, and the deceived people go round and round. It's better to go back and report the situation here to the superiors and let them deal with it. Seeing that the three of them had reached an agreement, a faint smile appeared on Su Mu's face. Why did Su Mu deliberately let the heavenly dragon and ghost appear at the last moment? The purpose is to let the high-level officials of the town demon division know that a giant monster suspected of being a national teacher appeared in Yuntai town and eliminated a monster slayer. The three monster slayers who came to investigate also barely escaped with the help of his Su Mu. Otherwise, he will die in the hands of the centipede spirit. In this way, Su Mu can not only join the demon suppression division, but also throw a pot on the head of the national teacher, causing conflicts between the two parties as much as possible. This move kills two birds with one stone, wonderful. In fact, Su Mu's original plan was not like this. He originally planned to eliminate the tree demon in Yuntai town directly, to see if he could find Yunqing Kong. After some investigation, Nai he found that the strength of the tree demon had improved a little over the past few decades. You must know that this tree demon was originally a dragon blood tree with deep Taoism. The strength was very strong when he first turned into a demon, and now it is even more difficult to deal with after improving. Su Mu wasn't sure enough to take it down, so he didn't take action against it for the time being. However, Su Mu found the missing monster slayer. There was no accident, the monster slayer was completely dead. All that was left was a pile of broken bones, not even clothes. If it weren't for the waste card with a herringbone size, Su Mu would not be able to confirm his identity at all. Beside the pile of bones, Su Mu found a strange statue. This statue is somewhat like a deity used for worship, and consists of three main bodies. They are a circling centipede, an octopus with its teeth and claws, and a three-headed serpent roaring in the sky. Among them, the appearance of the centipede is very similar to the original form of the national teacher Purdue. This made Su Mu's eyes sink, and he instantly thought of a lot of things. But other than that, there doesn't seem to be anything magical about this statue, so I can only keep it for later research. 113. The three of Yuan Yan Hu didn't know that their unfinished task had been completed by Su Mu. Not only did Su Mu find the body of the missing demon slayer, he also found the person who wanted to something. However, this must not be discussed with them. One is that there is no way to explain how. The second is that the strange statue of Su Mu has to be kept. He always felt that there was some secret hidden in the statue, but he hadn't discovered it yet. After leaving Yuntai town, the four of them rushed back to Yanjing. The whole journey has been turbulent for several days, but just as he was about to enter the gate of Zhenmosi, he was stopped by a person with a cold face. When you come back empty-handed, did the mission fail? Or colluded with the demon? Also, who is this guy? How can he be qualified to enter the gate of the town demon division? Su Mu frowned and looked at the person who was speaking. I saw that this person was wearing a blood-colored coat, 
which was different from the dress of ordinary monster slayers. According to Su Mu's understanding, no matter what level of monster slayers are dressed in black, there are some differences in the details. Who is this guy? When Su Mu was puzzled, Yuan Yan Hu quickly handed over his hands and said politely. My lord, this mission is a little weird and very dangerous. We were eliminated only after nine deaths. How could we collude with the demon? As for this. His name is Su Mu, and he is the one whom the eldest princess asked us to escort. He is also a powerful Qi refiner. Thanks to him this time, we survived by luck. Hearing the words eldest princess, the man in blood immediately became much kinder toward Su Mu. Su Mu, right? You can go first. After nodding to Su Mu, he stared coldly at Yuan Yanhu, Meng Yao and the old drunkard, and said sullenly. The three of you, you are still stubborn when the task is not completed. Today, for the sake of little brother Su Mu, I will let you all go. But there's no next time, hum. After a cold snort, the talent threw his hand away, and the whole process was looking at people with his nostrils, and he was extremely reckless. Su Mu frowned and looked at the back of the man in blood leaving, and asked unhappily. What's the origin of this person? I haven't seen such a crazy thing in a long time. Hearing this, Yuan Yan Hu sighed and said. Hey! He's the executioner, and he is in charge of the inside of the Demon Suppression Division. And he's a close friend of the Commander-in-Chief, so he can't afford to offend him. It turned out that in addition to the Demon Slayer, there is another existence in the Suppression Division, the Executioner. The Executioner is not well known outside, but is notorious within the Town of Magic. Because the Executioner is designed to deal with his own family. The original purpose of the establishment was to eliminate the traitors within the Town Demon Division, or those who were bewitched by demons. Some demons have the ability to confuse people, and they will put the bewitched demon slayers back in the suppression division to achieve various ulterior motives. This kind of thing has happened several times, causing serious losses to the town demon division. So, the initial idea of having an executioner was a good one. But with the passage of time, with the decay of Dagon, the executioner gradually changed. It has become a father who rides on the head of the demon slayer and will give you a big hat if you disagree, and put you in the sky prison. Moreover, the executioners are all the confidants of the commander-in-chief. It is easy to do things backed by mountains, and ordinary monster slayers can't afford to offend them at all. Even look at their faces. What an embarrassment. After understanding this, Su Mu's eyes flashed slightly. The commander-in-chief is the nominal leader of the town demon division. The current commander-in-chief is a man named Hu Tianyu, who is said to be a powerful martial arts master. But if Shuga Hongtu hadn't died, the demon suppression division would still be under his control. The so-called commander-in-chief is just a puppet of a high-level point. In the imperial city, the Jinyui and the imperial forest army are all controlled by those princes and princesses. Only the most powerful Jinhua division, no one dared to interfere, has been firmly held in the hands of the old emperor. This may be related to Zhuge Hongtu. It's a pity that Zhuge Hongtu hides so deeply that he hasn't shown up for a long time. A monster slayer of Yuan Zhan whose level knew almost nothing about him, and he didn't even know that there was such a powerful presence in the demon suppression division. Thinking of the arrogant appearance of the executioner just now, Su Mu's eyes narrowed slightly, revealing a faint fierce light. I don't know if killing a few executioners and putting the blame on the national teacher can alert Zhuge Hongtu. Su Mu intends to find a chance to try. The first target should be the executioner just now. Without the hindrance of the Anmyoji, the four finally entered the interior of the town demon division. Yuan Chuhu, Meng Yao, and the old drunkard's boss were an old-fashioned demon slayer named Qin Wei. This person is nearly 70 years old, and the strength of the Grandmaster in the initial stage has no room for improvement. After listening to the three of them, the veteran demon slayer looked horrified and asked in a trembling voice. You said. I saw a giant monster that looked a bit like a dragon and a bit like a centipede. Yuan Yan Hu nodded and answered truthfully. Yes. The aura of that giant monster is extremely terrifying, and when I look at me from a distance, my whole body feels weak. 
I'm afraid, my lord, you are far from the opponent of that giant monster. Hearing this, Qin Wei's old face was wrinkled and his expression was solemn. He didn't speak for a long time and didn't know what he was thinking. After waiting for a while, Meng Yao couldn't bear it any longer and asked tentatively. Sir, I heard that the national teacher. Shut up. Meng Yao's words shocked Qin Wei, almost jumping up and covering her mouth. That existence is also something you can talk about. You must never say anything like that in the future. Qin Wei gave Meng Yao a stern warning, and reached out to wipe the cold sweat from his forehead. Yes. This subordinate is reckless. Meng Yao was startled by his attitude, and vaguely realized the seriousness of the problem. A warrior of Meng Yao's level has no idea what kind of existence the national teacher Purdue is. Their vision limited their imagination, and they couldn't imagine how terrifying this red dragon centipede would be. That is an existence that can eliminate them a hundred times in one breath. Don't worry about this matter anymore, I will report it to the superior and let them deal with it. As for this little brother, Su Mu, right? From today onwards, you are the herringbone slayer of our demon suppression division. After dealing with the previous incident, Qin Wei turned to look at Su Mu. Hearing this, Su Mu nodded helplessly. He didn't want to have anything to do with the eldest princess at first, and he could join the town magic department by his own ability. But whether it was the previous executioner or this demon slayer, they all identified him as the eldest princess Li Lingyan. Therefore, Su Mu easily joined the demon suppression division, and he didn't even need a decent assessment. And when it came up, it was the herringbone monster slayer, and it didn't go through the internship process at all. In this regard, Su Mu could only helplessly accept it. He doesn't want to eat soft rice, but there are always people who force him to feed him, and he is helpless too. After successfully joining the Jinma division and receiving the supporting materials, Su Mu and Yuan Yanhu separated, turned around and went to the Princess Chang's mansion to pick up Su Tsongwu's family of three. Seeing that Su Mu returned to Yanjing again, and did not mention stay away from right and wrong again. Li Lingyan smiled, but was not surprised. In her opinion, a character like Su Mu is destined to stir up the world. How could it be possible to live a idyllic life in seclusion? After Su Mu left, a small bug flew from Li Lingyan's shoulder and said solemnly beside her ear. His Royal Highness, this kid's strength seems to have improved again. When he walked towards me just now, I was uncontrollably terrified. This is terrifying. How long has it been? He's a monster. Hearing this, Li Lingyan was a little surprised. This inconspicuous little bug is her bodyguard, and her strength can rank in the top three under her command. Although he valued Su Mu very much, Li Lingyan didn't expect him to grow up so fast. It seems that I still underestimated him. It seems that the troubled times are really coming. Li Lingyan let out a long sigh, her expression extremely complicated. Every time in troubled times, there are all kinds of geniuses and all kinds of evildoers. In a chaotic world, the number of top masters will double, and some amazing characters will appear. For example, Bai Ji, the goddess of Valkyrie during the founding of the country hundreds of years ago, is one of the representatives. The troubled world is like an oven, refining hundreds of millions of people. I don't know how many creatures will die in it and become a pile of bones. But those who can survive and endure the experience often become the existence that the world needs to look up to. Therefore, the powerhouses in troubled times are multiplied. The appearance of such monsters as Su Mu can be seen as a disguised foreshadowing of the coming of troubled times. Thinking of this, Li Lingyan's mood became extremely complicated. After all, is it going to die? Su Mu didn't know that Li Lingyan had regarded him as a demon in troubled times. After returning home, he first rested for a few days, and then began to practice, advancing his martial arts cultivation and chirifying cultivation. In particular, the Broken River Knife technique issued by the Jinma Division has been carefully studied several times. The name of this swordsmanship is a bit dirty, but it is an excellent swordsmanship. It took Su Mu half a month to get started successfully, and she initially mastered the Broken River Knife technique. Next, it's time to take action. Although there is no definite news, 
after Yuan Yanhu and the others reported the situation in Yuntai Town, the atmosphere of the town demon division has obviously changed. The giant monster suspected of being a national teacher is dealing with the monster slayer. This news will inevitably affect the hearts of many people and cause discord between the two sides. However, that alone is not enough. Su Mu has to give them a shot. A fire that ignites their anger and provokes a fight between the two sides. 114. First, let's talk about the plot of the main world. The plot of the main world accounts for a small proportion, but it is very important to support the skeleton of this book. In the follow-up, I will do my best to write the story of the main world wonderfully and beautifully. After taking over the outline of the plot, I repeatedly scrutinized and polished it, just to write better, so today's update is less, and it was delayed for a while. In short, I hope the readers will be more patient, let me expand the content of the main world, and I should write about the wonderful things soon. In my setting, the subsequent plot of the main world will not lose to the dungeon world at all, it will be wonderful. Please believe me. Let's talk about the power system that many people are worried about. Some readers are worried that the protagonist will become stronger too fast, and there is a risk of jumping. Don't worry about this, I have already set it up. First of all, the protagonist's current strength is quite strong, but it is far from the peak. Secondly, in my setting, more powerhouses will be born in the chaotic world, and even some heaven-defying existences. Therefore, the follow-up power system will be raised as a whole. In fact, this is also true in reality. In the large-scale war, many new technologies were born, and the technological power exploded. Cough, far away. 115. The national teacher Pu Dujinren does not hold real power, and the only person in charge is the 20 or 30 fasting houses under his command called Jing and Jai. These fasting houses are distributed throughout the imperial city for believers to assemble and visit. The real Purdue himself lived in the Jing and Jai, which was the closest to the palace, so he could easily enter and leave the palace. Other places are managed by the Dao Tong under his command. Su Mu didn't know what purpose this centipede was doing with these things. But Su Mu knew that Ding would definitely not do useless things, and Jing and Jai would definitely have an effect on it. That night, Su Mu, wearing night clothes, sneaked into a Jing and Jai quietly. In the middle of the night, there were no ordinary believers in the Jai Yuan, only those Taoist boys under the command of the national teacher. I saw ten Taoist boys sitting cross-legged in the room, with their eyes closed and their heads lowered, reciting something in their mouths. The eerie tones combined with the dimly lit room looked a little eerie. Su Mu hid on the roof. After listening to it for a while, he was a little irritable, and seemed to be affected by the sound. And after observation, he did not find any secrets here. The only thing that was wrong was the Taoists below. That's right, if Jing Anjai has a secret that is particularly easy to find, it won't wait for me to come. Let's get rid of these Daotong first. The last time the blood moon was in the sky, Su Mu had seen two Taoist boys under the command of the national teachers. These Daotong looked stiff and sluggish, and their breath was cold and strange. You can tell at a glance that they are not human. Su Mu would never be soft-hearted in dealing with these inhumane things. Breaking the waves. Su Mu let out a low voice in his heart, he jumped down suddenly, and slashed fiercely from top to bottom. This knife is a trick in the broken river sword art. It's a pity that Su Mu has just cultivated to the realm of a first-class warrior, and his strength is limited, so he can't exert the full power of this sword technique. This is the result after he took the primary washing pill and strengthened his talent. Otherwise, I still don't know when I will be able to cultivate into a first-class martial artist. After Su Mu shot, the ten Taoist boys who were sent down immediately stopped chanting, opened their eyes, raised their heads, and looked at him with a strange look. Shu. In the next second, these Daotong eyeballs actually ejected. A blood-colored meridian-like thing is connected to the back, and it dances and strangles towards Su Mu. For a while, his eyes flew wildly and bloodlines danced wildly. It looks quite creepy. But the monsters Su Mu has seen are not one or two, and they have also eliminated the strangest. As the saying goes, the longer it is, the faster it will die. 
no matter what kind of monster he is, just cut him off with one knife. Break. Su Mu gave a low voice, condensed all the power on the long knife in his hand, and slashed down. The blade swept across, severing seven or eight bloodlines one after another. But at this point, all the power has been exhausted, and he is unable to deal with other bloodlines. And there were many tentacle-like things in the eye sockets of these Taoists, and they continued to strangle Su Mu. Although Su Mu slashed with his knife, he was unable to resist their siege. It was quickly wrapped up in layers by the blood-colored tentacles and hung in the air. Su Mu's martial arts cultivation has just entered the first class level, and he has not even cultivated his astral chi. Therefore, just relying on their own martial arts strength, it is still impossible to deal with these innocent Dao boys. But the battle just now was just a small test for Su Mu. Test his martial arts strength and the strength of these Dao boys. Now, the test is over. There was a sudden muffled sound in the layers of winding. The terrifying power shattered all the blood-colored tentacles growing in the eyes of those Dao Tong and turned them into blood. There was a look of surprise on the stiff faces of the ten Dao boys, apparently still a little wise. Under the gaze of these Taoist boys, a tall figure full of corpse aura came out in the air. It is Su Mu who is incarnated to fly stiff. Fun time is over, goodbye. Su Mu gave a wicked laugh, and then waved his knife again to perform wave-breaking slash. But this time, he made this move in the form of flying stiff. The same trick, but the power is vastly different from before. In the domineering, he swept away with a sharp knife, and chopped off at the ten Taoist boys. The fierce astral wind vibrated, and it seemed that even the space was about to be torn apart. The knife came and went quickly. The next second, the sword light dissipated. The ten Dao boys were all cut off and fell to the ground dead. These inhuman things, even if they are chopped into pieces, will not die. But Su Mu's knife not only cut off their bodies, but also destroyed all the vitality in their bodies. The only flaw is that for the first time, Su Mu used the sword technique in the form of flying stiff, and failed to perfectly control the power. The power of this knife overflowed a lot, cutting a gap of more than 10 meters in the wall of Jing and Zhai, shaking the foundation of the house. Seeing this house wobbly swayed, it seemed that it was about to collapse. Seeing this, Su Mu closed the knife and planned to leave. But after glancing at the corpses of those Dao Tong, he stopped, and his face couldn't help showing surprise. No matter how the demons disguise themselves, after death their power disintegrates and they reveal their true form. Gu Xian. But these Dao Tong children still look like seven or eight year old children after their death, without the slightest change. Something is wrong. Su Mu quickly stepped forward to check it out, and his face couldn't help gloomy. It turned out that these Dao Tong children were ordinary children. However, he was casted by someone, and the body and strength of various demons were integrated into his body. Mixed together into a weird monster. Someone has made these children into this inhuman appearance. Su Mu even saw a look of relief on the faces of these dead Dao Tong boys. Before they came, they must have lived in pain and struggle every day. Only as a puppet at the mercy of others. You can't help yourself, you don't even have the right to die. This technique is somewhat similar to animal creation, but the complexity is a hundred times higher, and it is impossible to use a slightly lower Taoism. You don't have to think about it to know that it must be the work of the real teacher Purdue. This is a big job, the devil is in charge. I borrowed your body today, and I hope that one day in the future, I can avenge you. Rest in peace. Su Mu sighed in his heart and flew out before Jing and Jai collapsed. There was a lot of noise in the collapse of the house, and it caught the attention of some people even in the middle of the night. Before the people came, Su Mu hurriedly left here and returned to his home. Next, he needs to wait for things to ferment. Then, according to the specific situation, start the next action. It was four watch that night, and it was not yet dawn. Two tall and thin figures appeared in front of the mostly collapsed Jing and Jai, with a gloomy breath. These were two tall, thin young women. Their faces were stiff and stiff, but their eyes were more agile than those of the Taoist boys. 
Wearing blue and white Taoist robes similar to those of the Taoist boys, they are obviously all under the command of the national teacher. The status of these two people is higher. They are the personal attendants of the national teacher Purdue Jinren. After receiving the news, they came here overnight to investigate the situation. After this, the two used various means to investigate. All ten Taoist boys died and were beheaded with one sword. Looking at his injuries, the enemy used the broken river knife technique by Jin Mosi. After killing ten people with one sword, the force of the sword did not decrease, and it easily shattered the wall behind and a protective formation on the wall. This person is very likely to be a grandmaster level warrior, and his identity is suspected to be a monster slayer. After some investigation and analysis, the two attendants looked at each other with shock. The expression on their rigid faces showed that they were already extremely shocked. A powerful being suspected of being a monster slayer attacked Jing Anjai, and the information contained in it was amazing. This matter is very big, hurry up and report to the national teacher. The two did not clean up the mess, and rushed back immediately after the preliminary investigation results. Things are moving in the direction Su Mu hoped. A few days later, Su Mu was the same as no one else, wearing the Monster Slayer's black battle uniform, and patrolling the Imperial City with Yuan Chuhu, Meng Yao, and the Old Drunkard. The Demon Slayers of the Town Demon Division are based on small groups, with a minimum of no less than three people. Su Mu naturally became teammates with Yuan Yanhu and the others. There is no task recently, they just need to patrol the Imperial City at will every few days. Normally, there will be no demons in the Imperial City. Therefore, it is called a tour, but it is actually a stroll. Life is easy. However, Yuan Yanhu's expression was not very good looking. The last mission failed, he and the old drunkard failed to get promoted, and they were still the monster slayers. This made Yuan Yanhu very depressed and in a bad mood. As for the old alcoholic, he still looks like he doesn't care about anything, drinking small sips of wine, feeling contented. Meng Yao, as usual, chatted with Su Mu for a while, and from time to time made a string of silver bell-like laughter. When he came to a remote place, the old alcoholic suddenly spoke. Have you heard that Jingyan Jai on Xinyan Street in the north of the city was torn up, and all the Taoists inside were beheaded. It is said. That person used the broken river knife technique. With one knife, all the Dao boys under the ten national teachers are gone. Hearing this, Yuan Hanhu was startled, the depressed look on his face disappeared, and he quickly asked. Where did you hear that? Is it true? Su Mu also pretended to be surprised and curious, and together with Meng Yao, turned to look at the old drunkard. Old man, I've been around for so many years I still know some people. If there is no accident, this news should be true. The old drinker has been in the town magic company for many years, and many teammates who used to have good relations have been in the high level. After thinking that this news came from the high level officials of the suppression magic division, Yuan Yen Hu couldn't help but take a deep breath. W what's the matter? I have seen those Taoist boys, they are neither human nor ghosts, but they are not weak. Eliminate ten people with one sword, is this at least a grandmaster? And the broken river knife technique is still used. Could it be an old-fashioned demon slayer? Even. Even the monster slayer of the Tianzi name. The more Yuan Yanhu thought about it, the more frightened he became, and cold sweat formed on his forehead. He smelled the storm coming. 116. Su Mu took the opportunity to take over the topic. He lowered his voice, pretending to be shocked, and asked the three beside him. Could it be that there is some secret plan above? Are you going to take action against the national teacher? Hearing this, the old drunkard looked solemn and said in a low voice. Be careful. This matter is still under investigation, so you can't make a rash statement. Although the Broken River Sword technique was created by a senior of the Town Demon Division, it has occasionally leaked out over the years, and some outsiders also know this sword technique. It's not that the Broken River Knife technique is a monster slayer, and there is no name written on the body. Yuan Yanhu frowned and grabbed his beard, and said tangled. Having said that, but that is a master level warrior. There are not many warriors of this level in the Imperial City. Master of Martial Arts, 
and also the Broken River Knife technique, it's hard for people not to think of our demon suppression division. Meng Yao added. Have you thought about it, the giant monster we saw in the last mission is very similar to the country. That one. It turned out that not long after he came back, a Jinyan Jai under his command was torn down. Could it be that they are taking revenge? Yuan Yanhu nodded and agreed. There is a possibility. But if the Zhen Mosi really turned against that person, I'm afraid something big will happen. The entire imperial city is restless. Meng Ya worried. What's more, there is no peace. I'm afraid that something big is going to happen. Seeing that the two of them were so worried, the old alcoholic raised his head and took a sip of wine, with a casual smile on his face again. I said this, old man, I just want you to pay attention to safety and stay away from Jinyin Jai. As for the other things, it's not something that us herringbone monster slayers can consider, let's be honest and patrol the streets. This life is free and happy, and everything flows eastward in ancient times. Live a day, count a day. Ha ha ha. After all, the old alcoholic walked forward with a big laugh, not discussing the matter. But Yuan Yanhu and Meng Yao were still worried. Seeing this, Su Mu asked them in a low voice. You said, if it was really done by the people from our town demon division, who would it be? Hearing this, Yuan Yanhu thought for a while and said. If you really want to guess, I think it may be the tyrant Qin Gang. He is a monster slayer with the name of the earth, and he was a master in the early stage of cultivation, specializing in swordsmanship. Also, he is about to be promoted. After accumulating two or three years of qualifications and merits, you will almost be able to become a monster slayer for Tianziho. Saying that, Yuan Yanhu showed a slightly envious look. Today's town demon division is not the same as it was decades ago. The current Tianziho monster slayer is far less valuable than it used to be. But no matter what, the Tianziho monster slayer is the absolute top of the Jinma division. Brother Yuan, can you tell me about that tyrant, Ching Gang? I haven't seen a master of this level before. Su Mu had a harmless smile on his face, as if he was very curious about this master of the demon suppression division, with a slightly adoring look on his face. Seeing this, Yuan Yanhu explained in detail. This monster slayer is a master at the early stage of cultivation, and there is still room for improvement. Others gave him the nickname Ba Dao, and he is brutal and domineering with one-handed swordsmanship. It is said. Su Mu listened carefully and took some characteristics of Ching Gang in his mind. Next time I go to the national teacher for trouble, I can rely on him in this direction. After Yuan Chuhu finished speaking, Su Mu pretended to be casual and asked. By the way, the executioner who troubled us last time, why haven't I seen him recently? Hearing this, Yuan Yanhu's face sank, and he said coldly. You mean Chao Bin, right? Humph. The executioner doesn't have a good thing. A few days ago, there was a demon slayer who was not doing well and was caught by them. These two days are busy raiding his home. If I can cultivate to the master of this group of bastards, I will eliminate them first. Yuan Yanhu had an angry look on his face, and it was obvious that he was often asked for trouble by the executioner on weekdays. Not only him, but the middle and lower level demon slayers in the demon suppression division hated the executioner very much. I can't wait to eliminate and then hurry up. Of course, the two sentences Yuan Yanhu said were just angry words. Although he is a congenital martial artist, his cultivation has not been refined for several years. Whether he can advance to become a martial arts master in this life is a question. Secondly, even if he successfully became a grandmaster, Yuan Yanhu would have nothing to do with those executioners. The strength of this group of wolves is not bad, and standing behind them is the commander-in-chief of the town demon division. Su Mu even suspected that the executioner was most likely a means by which Zhuge Hongtu controlled the demon suppression division. Chao Bin. Su Mu silently wrote down the executioner's name. The next target is him. A few people chatted while casually patrolling for a while. Nothing happened on the way, and they went home to sleep after the time. For the next few days, the imperial city was quiet. There was no conflict between the Zhen Mosi and the national teacher, 
and it seemed that nothing had happened. But Su Mu vaguely felt that the atmosphere of Jin Mosi was a little more dignified. Especially the high level, there is a bit of worry in the depths of their eyes, as if they are worried about something. Su Mu didn't expect this to make the two of them fight to the death. The plan has only just begun. After a few days, he figured out Chao Bin's execution officer's information and routine. It's almost time to get started. Three days later, Yanshun building. Chao Bin was surrounded by a bunch of Yingying and Yen Yen, enjoying himself. Yanshun Tower is a famous gold-selling cave in the Imperial City. Here, there is food, wine, and beauty. A few days ago, Chao Bin and the other executioners sent a demon slayer to prison, and by the way copied his home. The pockets are bulging, and today I will come here together to have a good time. Brothers, you guys are drinking. I can't beat my drinking power. I'm going to rest. Including Chao Bin, there were four people in the group. After drinking another glass of wine, Chao Bin stood up, hugged the two beautiful girls beside him, and pleaded guilty. Hearing this, the other three executioners showed wretched smiles, and only released Chao Bin after making fun of them. With the help of the two beauties, Chao Bin staggered towards the private room upstairs. Along the way, a pair of hands have not been honest, and they are rubbing around. Kind of impatient. Chao Bin didn't know that the next thing he had to face was death. After the three entered the room, Chao Bin went to the bed, closed his eyes and waited for the two beauties to serve him. But there is still no movement left and right. Just when I was a little impatient, I finally realized that someone was leaning on me. Chao Bin stretched out his hand to grab the person who came, and at the same time said with a wicked smile. Dare you make me wait so long, uncle, I have to make you unable to get out of bed tonight. After all, Chao Bin grabbed the person, but felt something was wrong. This feeling. Why is it so embarrassing? No matter how skinny the beauties are, they won't be so thin, right? Chao Bin, who noticed something was wrong, suddenly opened his eyes and glanced at the front and back, his color changed greatly. Where is the beauty he caught? It was clearly a terrifying blood-colored skeleton demon. This scene scared Chao Bin's heart and gallbladder to pieces, and he burst out in a swish of alcohol that turned into a cold sweat. The whole person woke up a lot in an instant. But it's too late now. A sharp pain spread from his arm all the way to his chest, and at the same time there was a sour bone cracking sound. The bones of Chao Bin's arm were twisted into a twist shape, and this twist spread all the way to the bones of the chest cavity. This drunkard was fatally wounded in an instant. This blood-colored skeleton demon is naturally Su Mu. In fact, Chao Bin's strength is not weak, he is a congenital warrior. In fact, every executioner's strength is not weak, otherwise it will not be in the eyes of the commander-in-chief. However, Chao Bin has been sparse on the battlefield for a long time and has long been addicted to wine. Under normal circumstances, one's combat power can only exert at most 30% to 50%. At the moment, this state is even more relaxed. Su Mu walked up to him, and he didn't realize it yet. It's a bit outrageous. The funniest thing is that Chao Bin actually took the initiative to touch Su Mu. You must know that the bone control ability of the blood evil skeleton can only exert 100% lethality after it comes into contact with the target. This guy Chao Bin is like hitting his gun. After being caught by him, Su Mu directly used the bone control ability of the skeleton. In an instant, all the bones of this person's upper body were destroyed. Under the heavy damage, Chao Bin's face was full of fear and pain, and his mouth was wide open as if he was about to scream. But before he could make a sound, Su Mu stretched out a bone claw and stabbed it down his throat into his abdomen. Then the bone claws split and turned into countless bone spurs that exploded at the same time, piercing every part of his body. Mm. Mm. Chao Bin's eyes were bursting, his seven orifices were bleeding, and he knelt down in front of Su Mu he sobbed and couldn't make a sound, his whole body twitched violently. Soon, Chao Bin's whole body was as soft as a puddle of mud and fell to the ground, without the slightest breath. All the bones in his body were sucked away by Su Mu. Without the bones, this is what it looks like. After killing Chao Bin, Su Mu planned to leave this place. 
Yanchun Tower is located in the most prosperous part of the imperial city. If there is a big noise, it may attract some experts. Although he is not afraid, it may affect his plan. Adding to the trouble. But when Su Mu was about to leave, the door was suddenly pushed open. Brother Chao, let's play together tonight, I. An executioner who came with Chao Bin hugged two beauties on the left and right, followed by another. Just rushed in like that. After entering the door, the man was dumbfounded. What did he see? The two women that Chao Bin took away passed out on the ground. As for Chao Bin himself, he was paralyzed into a ball like mud. Not only did it lose its vitality, but it also lost its human appearance. Standing next to Chao Bin's corpse, is a skeleton demon with a blood-colored body and a terrifying breath. This scene is terrifying. The executioner reacted extremely quickly, and woke up in less than a fifth of his breath. He grabbed the two women beside him and smashed it at Su Mu, and at the same time shouted and burst back. But Su Mu has always been hospitable, so how could someone come to visit and let him leave? This is so rude. We must keep him and treat him well. 117. With a wave of Su Mu's bone claws, the two women who were flying towards him were bounced out. Then the bone claws extended infinitely, catching the escaped executioner. The people who were enjoying themselves in the lobby of Yanchun building only heard a scream of fear, and then one person flew out in a hurry and fled outside. But halfway through the flight, a huge and ferocious bone claw attacked like a big net, grabbed the person at a faster speed, and dragged him back to a room. Then, there was a shrill scream. What? The entire Yanchun building suddenly became quiet, and after a few breaths, it became a mess, and a series of panic screams sounded. Demon, there are monsters. The person who was eliminated was an expert from the town demon division. He was all eliminated, run away. I saw a skeleton. It looks scary. Help. There are monsters here who have eliminated people, who will save us. This terrifying scene directly caused Yan Chunlu to be in chaos. The dignitaries and dignitaries from all walks of life fled outside in embarrassment and huddled together. In the chaos, some people were even trampled and seriously injured. Those with guards are better, but no one dares to turn back and collide with the monster. In the house, Su Mu eliminated the executioner he had captured, and devoured his bones in the same way. When he first incarnated into a skeleton, this monster template only had the combat power of a top-level innate warrior. But after repeated battles and swallowed the bones of several powerful warriors, Su Mu's skeleton body became taller and more ferocious, with a little bright color, it looked very extraordinary. After devouring the bones of the second executioner, the blood evil skeleton finally ushered in evolution, and its strength has risen to the initial stage of the master. However, Su Mu didn't have time to slowly realize that he had just gained strength. He sensed that there were several powerful breaths approaching him rapidly, and it would be no good to drag it on. Su Mu's figure melted into the darkness and disappeared without a trace. After the blood evil skeleton melts into the darkness, it can not only hide its figure, but also its aura. With the improvement of strength, Su Mu's ability to conceal is also stronger, and it is almost impossible to capture his traces. Su Mu left Yanchun building easily without much effort. After a while, several masters came to Yanchun Tower and rushed into the murder scene. It's Chao Bin and Shang Hua. One of the people who came was the boss of Yuan Yanhu, Meng Yao, and the old drunkard, the old-fashioned demon slayer Qin Wei. Seeing the tragically dead bodies of these two people, Qin Wei's old face was wrinkled, and his expression was full of worry. The other is a high-level figure in the Jinyui. He checked the two corpses for the first time, and then frowned and said. The two were eliminated with little ability to resist. The whole body was drained, and there was still a demonic energy on the corpse. It seems that the murderer is a demon. If I remember correctly, these two are the executioners in your demon suppression division, right? What strength? Innate warriors. With that said, the man looked at Qin Wei. Qin Wei nodded slightly, frowned and said. It's a congenital warrior, I didn't expect to be eliminated so easily. Although the combat power of the two of them is considered the last in the innate realm, 
but they can eliminate them so easily, their strength is definitely not lower than me, or even higher. When did such a monster appear in the Imperial City? Never heard of it. Hearing this, the senior of Genie Wei glanced in the direction of the Imperial Palace. Goka. It is estimated that such a powerful monster can only be found under the protection of the Imperial City. It seems that the water in this matter is very deep. Thinking of this, the senior Jinyui seemed to suddenly remember something and said to everyone. By the way, I still have a major case in my hands that has not been done, and I have to deal with it quickly. Everyone, I'll go ahead. After speaking, the man didn't stop at all, turned around and left the scene. The others followed closely behind, and they patted their butts and left for any reason. This matter most likely involves the national teacher. The water is too deep. When will I not slip now? In the blink of an eye, only Qin Wei and another demon slayer were left at the scene. When it comes to their own affairs, they cannot avoid it. The two looked at each other helplessly, and after sighing, they called the town demon division and protected the scene. About a quarter of an hour later, a demon slayer with a famous name arrived. This person's cultivation base in the middle stage of the master is much stronger than Qin Wei, and he is still much younger. The heavenly monster slayer first listened to the report of the two, and then investigated it himself, his face could not help gloomy. What a monster, what a monster! He gritted his teeth and looked in the direction of the palace angrily. Killing two executioners is no longer as simple as slapping the demon suppression in the face. Frankly speaking, this is a big deal. At the same time, the other two executioners who were not dead were also retrieved, and they knelt together in front of the monster slayer that day. The dirty things you four do on weekdays, I will not bother with you for now, and I will explain the information I know one by one, or I will send you to prison and let you accompany you when I go back. Those monster slayers that you threw into the prison before. Hearing this, the two executioners shivered with fright, and began to talk tremblingly. Sir, forgive me. It happened too suddenly, and we don't know much about it. Then Chao Bin went back to the house to rest first, and he died in a while. Shang Hua went to find him. After pushing the door, he probably found that something was wrong, and immediately fled. But the power of the demon is too strong. Shang Hua was caught halfway through escaping, and he also lost his life. I saw that it seemed to be a skeleton demon, full of blood and terrifying. The breath is very terrifying, and it is definitely not an ordinary ghost. Hearing this, the monster slayer frowned that day and said to himself. Blood-colored skeleton demon. Nine times out of ten, it's a skeleton. This kind of ghost has no wisdom, and even if it has the strength of a grandmaster, it cannot be fully enlightened. If no one was behind it, it would have been exposed. Behind this skeleton, someone must be controlling everything. Thinking of this, the heavenly demon slayer was shocked and angry. He had the same idea as the previous few people, and had identified the national teacher as the behind-the-scenes instigator. In his opinion, there is a master-level ghost hidden in the imperial city and instructing it, and only the real person of the national teacher Purdue has this strength. You are optimistic about the scene, don't let anyone in, I have to go back. After all, the monster slayer left in a hurry. After agreeing, Qin Wei and the other demon slayer looked at each other, and both saw the worry in the other's eyes. The sky of this imperial city is about to change. 118. The story of Yanchun Tower quickly spread in the imperial city. No way, there are too many witnesses. And most of them are dignitaries, it is difficult to completely seal. The death of the two executioners shocked the entire town of demons, and everyone became vigilant. The middle and lower level demon slayers like Yuan Chuhu and Meng Yao felt very happy after learning that Chao Bin died, but they were also worried about their own situation. If the skeleton demon was targeting them, they wouldn't be able to live either. Ghosts of this level are terrifying. The day after the incident, the town demon division took action. All the demon slayers who had no task at hand were sent out to search for the murderers of the two executioners, Chao Bin and Shang Hua. Su Mu is no exception. After receiving this task, his expression was a little strange. Is this me catching myself? 
The other three people in the same group were even more complicated than him, and they were more worried. Meng Yao sighed and said. Chao Bin and Shang Hua are both congenital warriors. Although they were hollowed out by the wine, they still have some fighting power. That ghost easily eliminated both of them in an instant. The strength is terrifying, we can't deal with it. This mission, Dai. Yuan Yan Hu also frowned and said worriedly. You're right. That ghost is a very ferocious type of skeleton demon, called the Blood Evil Skeleton. The one that appeared in the Yanchun Tower has at least the combat power of the Grandmaster's initial stage. Ghosts have all kinds of weird methods, which are far more difficult to deal with than ordinary warriors. If you are not careful, even an existence with strength higher than it will capsize in the gutter. Let us monster slayers look for it, isn't it a dead word if we really found it? Speaking of this, both of them looked a little depressed. The old alcoholic on the side comforted. Don't think the situation is as bad as you think. It is very likely that the skeleton is a member of that subordinate. How did we find it with our ability and ability? It's just an appearance. Hearing this, Meng Yao and Yuan Yanhu were both speechless. If the skeleton is really a monster under the command of the national teacher, wouldn't the situation be even worse? Maybe one day the Zhen Mosi and the national teacher will start a fight, and I don't know how many people will die in that case. How can an old alcoholic be so comforting? The old alcoholic also seemed to realize that what he said was wrong, he laughed and patted Su Mu next to him, and said. Don't panic, don't we still have a chi refiner here? Look, Su Mu's face is so calm, why are you not as good as a newcomer? If I really want to meet that skeleton, let's work together, and Su Mu will use Taoist magic to assist him, and he will definitely be able to escape safely. Are you right? Saying that, the old alcoholic looked at Su Mu, and blinked like an old urchin. Hearing this, Yuan Yanhu and Meng Yao heard the powerful supernatural power that Su Mu displayed in Yuntai Town, and could not help but look at Su Mu with hope. They didn't know much about Qi refiners, and they didn't know that the way Su Mu showed was still a long way from subduing the master level demon. But at this moment, he can only put hope on Su Mu. Under the gazes of the three, Su Mu pursed his lips and said seriously. Don't worry, everyone, if you really encounter that skeleton demon, we will work together to escape safely. Some of my Tao techniques still have a certain restraint against demons and monsters. Su Mu's remarks made everyone feel a lot better. This series of events that happened recently made the atmosphere of Zhenmosi suppressed to the extreme. There is a feeling that the mountains and the rain are coming and the wind is filling the building. I'm relieved with your words, brother. I'll invite you to Gulen tomorrow to listen to the music. Yuan Yanhu hooked Su Mu's shoulder, and his expression relaxed a lot. After hearing the second half of the sentence, Meng Yao rolled his eyes at him and said to Su Mu. Don't go to that kind of pickled place, if you want to listen to music, come to my house and I'll sing it to you. Meng Yao was five or six years older than Su Mu, and she was the most attractive and beautiful age for a woman. Moreover, she is charming, charming, and slender, and she is definitely a stunner. Yo! I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to marry, so I took the initiative to attack. Apart from listening to music, are there any more exciting activities? Gu Shi. Su Mu, let's say it. Yuan Yanhu looked at Su Mu teasingly and smiled ambiguous. But Su Mu just smiled calmly and said. I can't go to the bar with my brother. I've been busy practicing recently, and I don't have time to do anything else. Su Mu did not directly respond to Meng Yao's words, but the meaning was already obvious. This made Meng Yao's face flash a look of loss, but she quickly hid it. Seeing this, Su Mu shook his head slightly in his heart. If Meng Yao knew that he was a skeleton, I wonder if she would have the courage to invite him to listen to music at home. In the next few days, the forces sent by the town demon division searched the imperial city several times, but could not find any trace of the skeleton at all. This ghost seems to have evaporated from the world, leaving no trace. As a result, the high-level officials of Zhenhua Division were even more suspicious of the actions of the national teacher. In this imperial city, besides him, who else has such ability? However, Zhenmosi did not directly turn against the national teacher, 
and he did not know whether he was afraid or had other plans. Su Mu was not in a hurry and continued to implement the original plan step by step. He practiced every day, and then followed Yuan Chihu and the others to patrol around. At night, he transforms into a demon, moving around while being familiar with his own power. After a month of hard work, Su Mu has improved in all aspects. This gave him more confidence. One night a few days later, Su Mu once again destroyed a Jing in Jai. Not only did he eliminate all the demonized Dao Tong inside, but he also destroyed the building. Vaguely revealed a bit of revenge to vent their anger. And Su Mu also tried to make the traces he left closer to the monster slayer, Ching Gang, who is known as the Tyrant Knife. Su Mu made a lot of noise. On the second day, the news that another Jing and Jai had been destroyed spread in the imperial city, and it was even known to everyone in the suppression of demons. The atmosphere is more dignified. When the group of four went out for inspection, they naturally talked about it. When they arrived at a no man's land, Yuan Lan Hu lowered his voice and said, Dot. You said, which boss of the town demon division did this? I heard that the traces of the sword technique left are a bit like the tyrant sword Chin Gang. Could it be that I really guessed it right? Meng Yao took over the words and said. It's not impossible I heard that Chin Gang is short-tempered. It just so happens that the promotion to Tianzhou Monster Slayer failed some time ago, and I'm holding back a belly of fire. Hearing this, the old drunk hurriedly stopped. Don't talk nonsense. This is a major event that breaks the sky. How can you do it because of personal emotions? I just met the process this morning, and he didn't look very good. It is estimated that he was troubled by this matter. So, it's better not to say anything. Yuan Yanhu and Meng Yao thought it made sense, so they stopped mentioning the words Ba Dao Qing Gang and changed their words instead. No matter who it is, this person's strength is very strong anyway. I heard that after the last incident, Jing Gan's high in various places strengthened their defenses, but they were easily wiped out, and they couldn't even wait for support. Only such an expert can stand in this chaotic world. Having said that, Yuan Yan whose expression was somewhat yearning and worshipping. He hoped that he could also break through to the Grandmaster realm and become a decent master. In this way, Yuan Yan Hu doesn't need to accumulate any more credits, and he can be promoted to Demon Slayer. Let's not say anything else, you must pay attention to safety in the near future. Without two Jing and Jais in a row, who knows what kind of reaction the country will have over there. Once that person gets angry, the consequences will be unimaginable. A troubled autumn, a troubled autumn. The old alcoholic shook his head helplessly, his face heavy. During the recent period, the situation in the imperial city has been very frequent, and he was no longer in the mood to drink. Su Mu, who was beside him, didn't say much, only his eyes flickered slightly. From the attitudes of Yuan Yanhu and the others, we can see what kind of high pressure the Xunma division is in. This volcano is about to explode. 119. Night, Palace. In the huge hall of mental cultivation, there were only two people sitting and looking at each other, about twenty meters apart. The man at the top had an old face and a rotten aura, as if his life was going to die soon. The man below had a soft face, and he could not tell whether it was a man or a woman. Upon closer inspection, there is even a tingling feeling in the heart. After looking at each other for a while, the old man above spoke first. National teacher, you used my people to refine the medicine pill, but until now I haven't even seen what the medicine pill looks like. Hearing this, a strange smile appeared on the face of the man below, and replied. Since it's an elixir refined by the common people, how can you forget your majesty? I have already prepared it for you. As he said that, he waved his hand, and a fist-sized box flew towards the man above, or the emperor who was doing a lot of work. The box is open, and three translucent blood-colored medicinal pills are neatly placed inside. It exudes a faint scent, which is also mixed with a bit of blood. It smells disgusting. Humph. Emperor Tianchi snorted coldly, ignored the three blood-colored elixir, and continued to ask, Dot. National teacher, in your opinion, how many years of national luck does Dagon have? Hearing this, a strange smile appeared on the face of the national teacher Purdue, and said plainly. 
this is a secret, unpredictable. Maybe a hundred years, maybe. Just today. Who knows? Hearing this, Emperor Tianqi's expression became even more ugly. The two stared at each other and fell silent. After a while, Emperor Tianqi waved his hand tiredly, but said nothing. The national teacher understood, without salute, stood up and left floating. There was no scruples in the whole process. After the national teacher left, a person suddenly appeared beside Emperor Tianqi. This man is tall and majestic, with a full beard, and his eyes are full of light. If Su Mu is here, you can recognize at a glance that this person is Juga Hongtu. Uncle Tu, what's the matter with the rumors in the imperial city recently? Could it be that the Jinimo Si really has a fight with the national teacher? Li Mingtai looked tired and depressed. At this time, he has lived up to the youthful appearance of that time, and has become an old man on the verge of death. Anyway, if Su Mu saw Li Mingtai again, he would never recognize him at first glance. And Zhuge Hongtu, who was called Uncle Tu by Li Mingtai, has not changed in the slightest. Decades of years have left no traces on him. It can be seen that over the years, Zhuge Hongtu's martial arts must have improved a lot, otherwise he would not be so young. He looked at the direction Purdue was leaving, frowned, and said. Someone is making a mess, trying to provoke both of us. If he really shot, it wouldn't be the two executioners who died. It's me and. Your Majesty. After becoming a national teacher, the fierceness of the Red Dragon Centipede has subsided somewhat. But it just converges, not disappears. If this scheming evildoer doesn't make a move, it will be shocking when he makes a move. How could he go so far as to eliminate the executioner who was neither of the two grandmasters? But the commotion is very fierce, can you find the person who caused the trouble? Li Mingtai asked tiredly. For the time being, I found it in the future. This person has some means, but he didn't leave the slightest trace. It is very likely that an external force has infiltrated the imperial city and is preparing to disrupt the situation. A look of helplessness appeared on Zhuge Hongtu's face. He had already ordered to search with all his strength, but still no trace was found. Zhuge Hongtu would have begun to doubt him if he hadn't understood the character of the national teacher Pudu Jinren very well. Hearing this, Li Mingtai continued. External forces. Nothing more than those chaotic ministers and thieves. When Uncle Tu takes that step, one person can sweep the world. It's just that if you can't find that person now, I'm afraid it won't calm the situation. As he spoke, he looked at Juga Hongtu and asked with some hope. Uncle Tu, how long will it take you to take that step? Facing Li Mingtai's question, Juga Hongtu opened his mouth, sighed and said. The bottleneck doesn't mean to loosen at all, I'm just afraid. It's a long way off. This step is too difficult, too difficult. Hearing this, a look of fear appeared on Li Mingtai's old face. Uncle Tu, you said it last time. The centipede. The national teacher, has reached the final step. Gu Bang. Zhuge Hongtu gritted his teeth and nodded. Yes. Since a year ago, the guy's breath has become more and more wrong. I'm afraid that within three years, he will usher in the moment when he transforms into a dragon. The color of fear on Li Mingtai's face became more intense. He grabbed Zhuge Hongtu's sleeve and shouted. Uncle Tu, I don't want to die, I don't want to die yet. I just got a life-extending pill, I can still live, I can still live. Looking at Li Mingtai's unbearable appearance, think about the devastated Dagon and the current situation. Zhuge Hongtu's grief suddenly came from it, and the rough man who had never wet his eyes for decades almost couldn't hold back tears. His choice of the day. Really right? All this now. Zhuge Hongtu's mood was chaotic, but he quickly calmed down. He sighed, patted Li Mingtai on the shoulder, and said in a low voice. Don't worry, Uncle Tu is here, Uncle Tu is here. When he said this, Zhuge Hongtu suddenly remembered that white figure with extraordinary temperament. In a flick of a finger, decades have passed, and the world has changed. If it is really wrong, it can only be wrong all the way. Already, there is no turning back. Some things, after standing at a certain height, will be seen at a glance and clearly. 
Most of the middle and lower level demon slayers like Yuan Zhanhu believed those rumors, and really thought that the suppressing demon division had already fought with the national division. But in Zhuge Hongtu's view, this rumor is a bit ridiculous. Whether it is him or the national teacher, if you really want to deal with the other party, you can't have only these small means, like playing at home with a child. No matter how many demon slayers in Dao Tong died, it was irrelevant to the two of them, and they couldn't touch the root. But the thing is, the situation is at a very delicate stage right now. Li Ming Tai, Zhuge Hongtu, and Qi Long Centipede checked and balanced each other through factors such as strength and interests, and reached a delicate balance. But as long as the Red Dragon Centipede successfully transforms into a dragon, this balance will be broken. By then, if Zhuge Hongtu can't break through, then their uncle and nephew will be in danger. And now, it is the eve of the Red Dragon Centipede turning into a dragon. Therefore, the situation in the Imperial City has become extremely tense. Although the person in the dark or the provocation method of that force is a bit low level. But the situation is like a powder keg, it only takes a spark to ignite. No matter how small this low level provocation method is, it is enough to play the role of a Mars. Zhuge Hongtu knew that from top to bottom, everyone in the Xinma division was in danger and prepared for war at all times. Under such high pressure, the situation may get out of control one day. After all, the man in the dark is nothing, the real threat is still from the real person of the national teacher Purdue. Once it successfully transforms into a dragon, Dagon has no effect on him. But when the time comes, who will contain this giant monster? There is no need for provocation at all, and the real Purdue will completely lift thee and let go of himself. The demon pill in his hand, Yu Yu reading will also be useless. Thinking of this, Zhuge Hongtu's heart sank to the bottom. In his mind, the white figure with extraordinary temperament appeared again. If Yun Qingkong was still there, the situation might not be so bad. Even if it really turns into a dragon, Zhuge Hongtu has a helper. But now, looking around, no one can help him. The only one has been betrayed by him. Thinking of this, Zhuge Hongtu closed his eyes in pain. Or, it is because of this that I have been unable to break through for a long time. The inner demon is done. After all, the catastrophe of life and death was not over. Just when his mood was extremely complicated, Li Mingtai suddenly raised his old face, and tentatively asked Zhuge Hongtu with tears on his cheeks. Uncle Tu, those three medicinal pills. Hearing this, the blue veins on Zhuge Hongtu's forehead jumped. Both of them knew that these medicinal pills were made by real Purdue using countless people of the Imperial City on the night of the Blood Moon. It's okay to be powerless to stop it, but now I'm still thinking about taking it. Such a king. Zhuge Hongtu's iron fist clenched and loosened, loosened and clenched. After a few moments, he let out a helpless sigh. You can take it. One tablet is divided into ten equal parts. Take it once every seven days. Don't take too much, or you won't be able to bear the power of the medicine. As for the effect. Martial artists and qi refiners can improve their cultivation, and mortals can prolong their lives. Thank you Uncle Tu for the tip. Hearing the words prolong life, Li Ming Tai immediately smiled. He crawled over with both hands and feet, and put the three blood-colored medicinal pills into his arms, without caring about the countless ghosts floating above. This man-eating kung fu depends on the royal family. 120. In fact, Su Mu himself knew very well that those little tricks could not deceive Qilong Centipede and Zhuge Hongtu. But it doesn't matter, he's an atmosphere group. If there is no conflict between the two, it will be of little use to let others provoke them. But sometimes, all you need is an excuse to do it. Taking a 10,000 steps back, as long as he protects himself from being discovered, Su Mu's actions are beneficial and harmless. Just go out for a walk at night, and by the way, you can sharpen your cultivation and combat power. That night, Su Mu acted again. He came to a relatively remote Jing and Jai, but saw a person who hadn't shown up for a long time. Three Princes Su Mu hid on the roof, frowning and looking down. A man who looked a lot like the third prince was surrounded by twenty Taoist boys. He was reciting something in a strange tone, as if he was carrying out some kind of ritual. 
According to the eldest princess Li Lingyan, the third prince Li Hongxu has not appeared for a long time. Occasionally, he is also staying with the national teacher, and he doesn't know what the is going on. The last time Li Lingyan was deliberately arrested, she also wanted to lure him out. As a result, before Li Hongxu waited, he waited for Su Mu. In fact, Su Mu had already vaguely guessed what would happen to the third prince, Li Hongxu. He was apprenticed to the centipede, and he was also a disciple of the royal family. If you don't arrange him clearly, the real Purdue will not be a thousand-year-old fairy. The old emperor Li Mingtai did this, it is estimated that he sacrificed a son to appease the real person of Purdue. But Su Mu knew it was of no use at all. When I saw it at this time, the aura on the third prince was really wrong. Su Mu didn't know much about those messed up methods, so he couldn't figure out what happened to Li Hongxu. Anyway, he didn't look like a normal person. He has the intention to test, so as to collect more information related to the national teacher. So he hung his body upside down and slowly touched the top of Li Hongxu. As a result, before Su Mu could ask, Li Hongxu suddenly raised his head and looked at him with a livid look on his face. Intruder, die. Li Hongxu's mouth made a strange sound, and then he opened his mouth and spat out a jagged tongue and shot at Su Mu. With a muffled sound, Su Mu's head was pierced. This time, fast and violent. The serrated tongue is extremely sharp, and it also carries the breath of corrosion. Su Mu's mortal body, without the power to resist, was pierced through his head in an instant, and half of his face was destroyed. But Su Mu did not die. A strange smile appeared suddenly on the remaining half of his face. Interesting. While speaking, the flesh and blood on Su Mu's body quickly faded, turning into the form of a skeleton. The serrated tongue only pierced through Su Mu's flesh and blood, but not the bone. This time, it was like hitting the air. And he was pinched by Su Mu. In this situation, the third princely Hongxu was a little confused. It is estimated that he did not expect that Su Mu was more thoroughly demonized than him. It was this stunned effort that Su Mu grabbed his tongue and pulled him over. Then the arm turned into two huge blood-colored bone blades, and with a swipe, a cross was drawn, and it slashed towards Li Hongxu fiercely. Blood splattered, and four corpses fell to the ground. But Li Hongxu also didn't die, and the corpse quickly wriggled towards a point. And when merging, he continuously sucked the Dao Tong around him into his flesh and blood. These Taoist boys did not resist, and let Li Hongxu devour them. After a while, the handsome third prince turned into a puddle of mud-like meatballs. Disgusting, ugly. In the center of the huge body, a pair of twisted and deformed facial features can be vaguely seen. Die. You have to die. Li Hongxu roared, but his voice was a bit rigid, and he didn't look very smart. Su Mu did not give up on this, and asked with his upper and lower jaws closed one by one. Are you the third prince Li Hongxu? Or is it just a substitute? Die. You have to die. Su Mu's inquiry was not answered. The meatball monster surged up and devoured him. The overlapping layers of fleshy waves looked very disgusting, and there was an urge to hammer him. It's so ugly. Your demonization state, is it as handsome as mine? As he said that, Su Mu was covered in flesh and blood, and the corpse gas was billowing, and he instantly switched to a flying zombie form. Although this meatball monster looks disgusting, it is not bad to absorb so many Daodong strength, probably slightly worse than the blood evil skeleton. Gu Ting Su Mu wanted to fight quickly, so he switched to a more powerful form. He opened his mouth and spit out, and Black Corpse poisonous miasma rolled out, covering Li Hongxu's huge fleshy body like a dark cloud. The next moment, he heard his screams. Ah! Pain, pain! I I am going to eliminate you! Despite the screams, Li Hongxu still did not give up attacking and killing Su Mu, and continued to run towards him. Along the way, large groups of flesh and blood were corroded at a speed visible to the naked eye, turning into pools of rancid black water. Su Mu stood still, and when the meatball rolled in front of him, it was already a big circle, and his breath was much weaker. The strength gap between the two of them, or the two demons, is huge. 
Su Mu only used one magical power to make Li Hongxiu's flesh fester more than half. But he didn't stop, still killing Su Mu. Up to now, the fleshy demon that Li Hongxiu transformed has not shown any special abilities. This made Su Mu lose patience. He vaguely felt that this Li Hongxiu should be fake, very much like a failed experiment. I don't have time to waste with you, go in peace. A thought flashed in Su Mu's mind, and then the corpse chi surged and slapped it with a claw. The meatball that has shrunk by half is still more than four meters high. When Su Mu stepped down, he was immediately smashed into pieces, with no vitality at all. In fact, Su Mu can absorb the blood essence in this meatball. But when he thought that this thing was created by the national teacher, he did not dare to touch it. Who knows what the this is? Food poisoning is bad. After sweeping the Jing and Jai, Su Mu used the skeleton's forehead ability to melt into the darkness as usual, and returned to his home as quickly as possible. When he got home, Su Mu took off his night clothes and lay in bed ready to sleep. But just after lying down and closing his eyes for a while, he suddenly opened his eyes and sat up. Su Mu put his hand under the bed and quickly found an object. It is the statue of the three demons in one. At this moment, the part of the centipede suddenly lit up with a strange red light. How is this going? Su Mu vaguely felt that the statue exuded a strange aura, and it couldn't hide it. It seems to be calling and attracting something. Su Mu felt that something was wrong and planned to study it. But before he started, he was alarmed in his heart, and he sensed an unprecedented strong sense of crisis. There is an incomparably terrifying aura approaching him at an incredible speed. This breath is a red dragon centipede. This sudden situation made Su Mu's forehead shed a drop of cold sweat. But he calmed down instantly and began to think about countermeasures. Just run away. No. The speed of the giant monster is astonishingly fast. If it jumps in space, it is estimated that it will be able to reach it within a dozen breaths. Turn out a dragon and ghost to distract it. Neither. A few decades ago, the red dragon centipede was already extremely powerful, and the Tian Longui could only fight against the half dead it. It's been so long now. The red dragon centipede incarnates Dagon's national teacher, constantly stealing and devouring Dagon's national luck dragon energy. Who knows how strong it is now? Maybe one meeting will eliminate the dragon and the ghost, and it will not delay at all. Su Mu's thoughts flew, and in just a few breaths, countless thoughts flashed through, but all of them didn't work. Right now, it's a dead end. At this critical moment of life and death, a familiar voice sounded in Su Mu's mind. The death simulator is fully charged, and the new copy is ready, do you want to enter? Su Mu quickly chose to enter. In the next instant, he appeared in a white standby space, and got rid of the lock of that terrible aura. This made Su Mu Chang sigh of relief. Phew. It's safe for now, but we still have to face the giant monster after we go out. I don't know what this dungeon world is like. Can you give me some new abilities to solve this crisis? Thinking of this, Su Mu checked. 121. Basic attribute points, 23. Body. Wisdom. Life. Please allocate the basic attribute points, and a new copy will be automatically generated after the allocation is completed. Note, after the copy world is generated, it cannot be changed. After going through the last instance, Sumo gained 5 basic attribute points again. In the dungeon world with Lu Yuqing, he used Big Dream to push the body to 12 o'clock. That feeling is so refreshing. Martial arts practice is twice the result with half the effort, and it can be called rapid progress before Xientian, without any hindrance. Su Mu deduced that after the basic attribute point exceeds 10, there will be a small qualitative change. You can enter the level of little genius. Without 10 points of body, it is almost impossible to step into the realm of the master. If you want to steadily enter the master state and not be troubled by bottlenecks, the requirements are even higher. It is estimated that 15 or even 20 body is needed. If there is no threat from the red dragon centipede in the main world, this time Su Mu may play a little more exciting and directly increase his life to more than 15 points. 
because he has not tried to focus on the basic attribute of life. But now, Su Mu is facing a life and death crisis in the main world. He must make enough progress in this dungeon world to deal with the red dragon centipede that is about to be eliminated. So. Let's keep calm. After thinking about it, Su Mu decided to use a relatively moderate method of adding points this time, slightly preferring fate. Others, wait for the next copy of the world to talk about. After thinking about it, Su Mu quickly finished adding points. Body, 7. Wisdom, 6. Life, 10. Basic attribute points have been allocated, and the copy world has been automatically generated. Three talents can be carried, please choose. After adding points, a new dungeon world was generated, and ten new talents appeared in front of Su Mu. Respectively. Remaining life, life minus ten. Food supplement, what to eat to supplement what. Beast master, can drive beasts. Devil, demonize surrounding things. Magic fate, demon favorability 5. Fool, thinking ability reduced by 30%. Undying, the vitality is tenacious and extremely difficult to eliminate. Enhancement, specify to enhance the effect of a selected talent. Feast, flesh and blood are extremely delicious and unforgettable. Old and strong, all basic attributes won every year after the age of 100. This time, the overall quality of talent has been raised a notch again. Among the ten talents, there is only one white talent, which is the fool. The role of this talent is to make people stupid. Su Mu felt that if he chose this, he was stupid enough, and he didn't need to be stupid anymore. Of the remaining nine, there are two blue talents and seven cyan talents. The blue talents are enhancement and demon prospect. Those are two very interesting talents. Especially enhancement, which specifies to strengthen the effect of a selected talent. This is a very versatile and extremely useful ability. After the customs clearance, Su Mu is very likely to solidify this talent. The remaining seven cyan talents also have their own characteristics. For example, death, reduced the basic attribute of life by 10 points. This gave Su Mu an idea. What will happen if life drops to a negative number? It's a pity that Su Mu just added 10 points of life, and it returned to zero after the drop. This is a very embarrassing number, not up or down. Su Mu suspects that a life of zero might cause him to die at birth. So no choice for now. Plus, there's another talent that caught his eye. Feast, flesh and blood are extremely delicious and unforgettable. This talent appeared in the first instance world. Gu Zhang. Su Mu also chose, but the fart was useless. This time it appeared again, and it was upgraded to a cyan talent. The same talent, the higher the level, the stronger the effect. In other words, if Su Mu chooses this talent, his flesh and blood will become more delicious than in the first instance world. After carefully reading all ten talents, Su Mu made his own choice. The old rules, the first generation of the new dungeon world, emphasizes safety. He chose Food Tonic, Magic Fate and Immortal. One increases combat power, one increases vitality, and the other increases the favorability of demons. Useless for low-level demons, because low-level demons have almost no wisdom. However, powerful demons and demons are generally more ferocious, and I don't know how much a 5-point favorability point can play a role. Try it out first. After everything was ready, Su Mu entered the new world. Body, 7. Wisdom, 6. Life, 10. Talents, Food Tonic, Magic Fate, Immortality, Air Purity, Kindness, Resentment. Item, None. With the final confirmation interface, Su Mu's consciousness fell into darkness. Dagon, South China Sea. Five slightly worn warships formed a small fleet and galloped on the sea. On the largest ship, there was a little boy of six or seven years old lying on the side of the ship. He raised his eyes and looked into the distance, with a deep look in his eyes that did not match his age. Muwazi, why didn't you come to me to practice martial arts today? A swarthy, square-faced man grinned, strode toward the boy, and lay down beside him. This little boy is Su Mu. 
The basic attribute of life contains many things. Family background, fortune, etc. Sumu also thought that ten points of life would allow him to be born in an official family. Who knew he became the son of the pirate chief? Also, a group of internally unstable pirates. Su Mu did not look at the person beside him, and said calmly. If you want to see blood today, I won't practice. Hearing this, the black-faced man Luo Wu's expression changed. Mwazi, how did you know we were going to oppose? Your mother told you. Su Mu turned his head to the side and glanced at Luo Wu with the eyes of a fool, and said speechlessly. Even if I didn't know it before, I know it now. Which mother would tell her six-year-old son that your father and mother are going to fight to the death? Stay away and save yourself a lesson. You are so clever. I told you to practice martial arts and read more books, but you just don't listen. Hey! Saying that, Su Mu shook his head mindlessly and stopped looking at Nao Luo Wu. Luo Wu scratched his head embarrassedly, unable to utter a word from Su Mu Xuan, he could only laugh twice. Fortunately, it is not the first time that he has been despised by Su Mu, he is almost used to it. Good baby, I think you're stupid, Uncle Luo. Then let me ask you, why am I here this time? Luo Wu coughed a few times to cover up the infection, and backhandedly asked Su Mu a question. My mother sent you to take care of me and keep me safe. There will be chaos and accidents in the future. How do you know everything? D. Hearing this, Luo Wu looked surprised, looking at Su Mu as if he was looking at a monster. After that, he remembered something, lowered his head in frustration, and muttered. No wonder the eldest sister doesn't let me participate must think I'm stupid. Why can't my brain be enlightened? Hearing this, Su Mu comforted Luo Wu instead. Like a little adult, he stood on tiptoe and patted the black man's broad back, and said with relief. It's okay, it's okay. If you're stupid, be stupid. At least you have a good talent for martial arts. You won't become a useless person. Luo Wu. Are you so comforting? What? The two were chatting when a scream suddenly came from the cabin. Su Mu's eyes narrowed slightly, and there was a flash of light. The death battle between his parents has begun. 122. In this life, Su Mu has both parents. At least for now, it's hard to say after a while. His father's name was Su Heihu, a pirate chief. The old lady's name is Li Yakin, she used to be a good family girl, but was snatched by Su Heihu and became his wife. Although Li Yakin is a woman, she has good abilities in all aspects. After being forced to become a pirate, he quickly adapted to the new environment, and helped Su Heihu to make suggestions and made many contributions. Before Li Yakin joined, Su Heihu had only one battle breaking ship, two or three hundred people. After Li Yakin joined, in just eight years, the number of warships has expanded to five, and the number of warships has expanded to nearly 1,500. The largest main ship, the one at the foot of Su Mu, was snatched from the Fusang Navy. Known as the Flying Dragon, it has four floors up and down, a total length of 30 meters, and can accommodate up to 800 people. Now their group of pirates has become the strongest strength in the nearby sea area, which is terrifying. Among them, 80% of the credit was made by Su Mu's mother. However, as time passed, there was a rift between Li Yakin and Su Heihu. The two had no relationship at all. One is to take a fancy to the beauty of the other party, the other is to be forced from the thief. The turning point of their relationship was the disappearance of Li Yakin's beauty. Li Yakin was born in a scholarly family. But when he arrived at the den of thieves, he could only practice martial arts from scratch in order to protect himself. However, her talent for practicing martial arts is not bad, and she has made rapid progress. It's a pity that Li Yakin was too eager to succeed. Five years ago, something went wrong in martial arts training, and the originally slender and beautiful woman had tripled in size in a short period of time. She became a shrew with a big shoulder and a round waist. That appearance is much more ferocious than Su Heihu. After losing their beauty, the relationship between the two parties deteriorated sharply. Li Yakin and Su Heihu slowly changed from husband and wife to superior and superior. 
It is also thanks to Li Yakin for showing her own value and ability in the first three years. Otherwise, in all likelihood, Su Hei Hu will eliminate him and throw him into the sea to feed the fish after he becomes ugly. He's not a nostalgic person, not even a sentimental person. I haven't even looked at my son a few times, let alone father's love. After becoming superiors and subordinates, the relationship between the two continued to deteriorate. Su Hei Hu is the boss in name. But he was short-tempered and less capable. The worst thing is that he doesn't treat his subordinates kindly and often beats and scolds him. Li Yakin was the exact opposite. Except for his martial arts cultivation, everything else was much stronger than Su Hei Hu. After discovering that Li Yakin was threatening his own position, Su Hei Hu looked at her more and more fiercely, as if he wanted to get rid of it quickly. But Li Yakin's power is enough to protect herself, and she has been secretly accumulating power in recent years. Before she knew it, many people had already joined her. It's time for a showdown between the two sides. Through observation, Su Mu found that Li Yakin had already made the decision to strike first. I have been preparing for the past few days, and it is possible to do it at any time. Early this morning, when Su Mu saw Luo Wu surrounding him intentionally or unintentionally, he knew that it was time to change the sky. After the first scream sounded, a chaos broke out in the cabin. Shouting, shouting, and screaming. Li Yakin, you stinky, everything you have now is given by Lao Tzu. You actually rebel against me. I eliminated you, eliminated you. Oh. Idiot, even if you don't care about your destruction of my home, you don't deserve to be the boss. Die for my mother. Listening to this conversation, it was Su Mu's parents. Luo Wu originally wanted to take Su Mu away as Li Yakin ordered. But Su Mu's expression didn't change in the slightest, he just said too lazy to go and didn't move. Luo Wu always felt that the little doll Su Mu had a convincing temperament, so he did not force him. From Su Mu's point of view, Li Yakin's power has gained the upper hand, and it is still based on mental calculations and no intentions, and it is better to strike first. The result is not much to say. Su Hei Hu must be defeated. Speaking of Su Hei Hu, Su Mu only shook his head. His father in this life didn't give him the slightest care. If it wasn't for his cleverness, he would have been beaten many times. Gu Huan. Such an old man is worse than a stranger. Although Li Yakin looks rough and ugly, she still treats Su Mu very tenderly and takes care of him everywhere. So whether it is from a rational point of view or an emotional one, Su Mu feels that Li Yakin would be better off winning. And she will definitely win. After Li Yakin is in charge of this group of pirates, it should develop better in the future. This is also a good thing for Su Mu. After about half an hour, the movement in the cabin stopped. A huge woman with a round waist and a face full of flesh came out, holding a large knife in her hand, and her face was still stained with blood. Immediately behind her was a hawk-nosed big man with a gloomy complexion, holding a blood-thorned human head in his hand, unable to see his original appearance. Based on the outline, Su Mu felt that it should be the head of his cheap old man, Su Hei Hu. The sturdy woman at the forefront is naturally Li Yakin, Su Mu's mother in this life. The eagle-nosed man behind her was Song Ding Kong, her capable general. Su Hei Hu is dead. From today, everyone will obey my orders. Li Yakin looked around and gave a majestic shout. Everyone on the main battleship surrendered to the underground heads, and all the prisoners knelt on the ground. After this time, Li Yakin will become the leader of this group of pirates. However, things are not over here. There are many Su Heihu subordinates on the other four warships. All have to be cleaned up. So after taking the oath, the group continued to get busy. Only Li Yakin stopped after seeing Su Mu's figure and walked up to him. Muer, your father, he, he. Li Yakin squatted in front of Su Mu, not knowing what to say. It was Su Mu who helped her find a reason. Mom, I understand, Dad was eaten by a big shark. Yes, yes, he was eaten by a big shark and can't come back. Just don't move around here, and play with your Uncle Luo for a while. Mother will come back when she's done. Li Yakin reassured Su Mu, then left in a hurry to clean up the remnants of Su Hei Hu. 
Even for a group of pirates, changing a leader is not that simple. She has a lot to do. Seeing Li Yakin's back leaving, Su Mu's mood did not fluctuate too much. Su Mu's mother treated him well. As for Su Heihu, I haven't seen each other a few times, and I want to beat him when I do. If it's gone, it's gone, and the provincial Su Mu has to deliberately avoid him. Just thinking about this, an elderly handyman came out of the cabin with a large bag and a small bag. Suddenly, a statue fell out of it and rolled right in front of Su Mu. After seeing this statue, Su Mu's pupils shrank sharply, and hurriedly asked the handyman. Where did this statue come from? Where did you get it? This statue, three beasts in one. They are a centipede, an octopus, and a three-headed serpent. The shape is ferocious and strange, exactly the same as the one Su Mu found in Yuntai town. When Su Mu discovered this statue for the first time, he felt that it was most likely related to the red dragon centipede. So instead of carrying it on his body, he buried it in a hidden place on the outskirts of the city. But that night, as soon as Su Mu fell asleep, he sensed an evil aura rising from under the bed, and took it out to see that it was the statue of the three beasts. I don't know when this thing suddenly ran from the outskirts of the city to the bottom of his bed, it's really weird. Before entering the dungeon world, the situation was critical, and Su Mu didn't have time to think about it. After entering the copy world, he carefully paid attention to what happened that night. The Qilong centipede found Su Mu, which should have nothing to do with what he did. It was the statue of the three beasts that suddenly appeared under the bed that attracted the red dragon centipede. What is the function of the three beast statues? What does it have to do with the red dragon centipede? These, Su Mu has not yet figured out. But no matter what, the statue of the three beasts is definitely an extremely dangerous thing. And now, Su Mu saw this weird statue again, and it rolled under his feet. How could he not be surprised? 123. This, this thing is, it was found from those corpses, corpses. Although Su Mu was young, he was so powerful that he was so frightened that the servant was so frightened that he couldn't speak properly. Fortunately, he could understand what he meant from the intermittent words. These things are the relics left by Su Heihu's group. These three beast statues are one of them. But who would carry such a thing with them? Su Mu felt a little weird. What's wrong, Mwazi, is there something wrong with this statue? I saw it once before, Boss Su. Su Heihu mysteriously locked it in a secret cell before, as if he was worshipping. Why are you carrying such a big statue with you now? Don't you panic? The not-so-smart Luo Wu scratched his head and said everything he knew in one breath. Su Heihu's stuff. Hearing this, Su Mu's eyes flashed slightly. Why did his cheap old man suddenly carry the statue of the three beasts on his body? Is there any special reason? While Su Mu thought about it, he observed the statue. But like the one in the overworld, nothing can be found outside. After thinking for a while, Su Mu tore off a piece of cloth to wrap his hands, carefully grabbed the statue and threw it into the sea. Hope it's all right. Su Mu looked at the silent shadow of the statue of the three beasts, frowning slightly. This thing made him uneasy, but he couldn't think of any other way, so he could only throw it away. No way, the three beast statues are too weird. Su Mu did not dare to destroy it at will, in order to prevent a bigger incident. Just try it and see what happens when you lose it. That night, Su Mu breathed out his spiritual energy for a while and fell asleep. In this life, he also tried martial arts dual cultivation. It's a pity that the talent is incomparable with Zhuge Hongtu, and the progress is a bit slow. In the middle of the night, Su Mu was suddenly awakened by a strange breath. He sat up abruptly and turned his head to look at the head of the bed. On the empty cabinet beside the bed, a statue of three beasts appeared. Facing Su Mu, he seemed to be staring at him. The most important thing is that the terrifying octopus in the middle is emitting a faint light. It's exactly the same situation as Su Mu encountered in the main world. In an instant, cold sweat wet Su Mu's back. He vaguely felt a huge evil intent that enveloped him. Fortunately, Su Mu has a tenacious heart and is not an ordinary person. 
He reacted immediately and trotted barefoot Dong all the way to the front of his mother's room. Mother. Wake up, it's not good, something happened. Su Mu shouted and slammed on the door. After a while, the door opened, revealing Li Yakin's big face full of meat. Son, what happened? Li Yakin didn't mean to blame, but her eyes were bloodshot, and she looked very tired. Think about it too, they spent a lot of energy during the day to complete the great cause of usurpation. As a result, he was woken up by Su Mu just after sleeping for a while, can you not be tired? It's just that Su Mu doesn't have time to take care of this, he said directly. Mother, there is danger. We may be. Ah. Ghost. Ghost. Before Su Mu's words were finished, a terrified scream came from the deck. Hearing this, Li Yakin hurriedly blocked Su Mu from behind, and rushed forward with a knife. But Su Mu was reluctant to hide behind. He wanted to know what happened, so he ran out after him. On the deck, there was a sudden gloomy wind, causing the hull to sway from side to side. In the blur, some figures can be seen climbing up along the hull. It wasn't until someone raised a torch and the crowd who rushed out after hearing the movement could see the situation clearly. One after another, rotting corpses climbed onto the boat, exuding bursts of stench. These are actually Su Heihu and his confidants who were eliminated during the day. I don't know why, but after only half a day, the bodies of these people were seriously decomposed. It looks even more terrifying. I saw Su Heihu carrying his rotten head and leading more than twenty ghouls towards Li Yakin. Stinky girls, you give me my life, give me my life. Su Heihu opened his head and mouth in his hands, and the rotten flesh fell down in a mass. Those dead eyes stared at Li Yakin, as if they were going to ask her for her life. The pirates were so frightened by this scene that they were all dumbfounded on the spot, feeling cold all over. Guenthalpi. Li Yakin was the first to calm down. She raised her long knife and roared. You guys are scared of. If you can eliminate them once, you can eliminate them a second time. Just follow me. Saying that, Li Yakin raised his knife and slashed at Su Heihu who had turned into a ghoul. Seeing this, Song Ding Kong with an aquiline nose followed closely behind, dancing wildly with two axes and killing him. The two of them, the former is a first-class martial artist, and the latter is an acquired martial artist. And Song Ding Kong has vague signs of advanced innate martial artist. It is the best among pirates. As for the group of ghouls, Su Mu glanced at them and ignored them. Low-level ghosts are similar in strength to third-rate warriors, and there is no threat. The real big threat should be still behind. Under the leadership of Li Yakin, the pirates gathered their courage and fought with the ghouls. Originally, they were still trembling, but as soon as they fought, they immediately discovered that although these ghosts were scary in length, their strength was average. This made all the pirates come alive, screaming and jumping up, and several people beat a ghoul. To prevent immortality, he deliberately beat him wildly, and then gradually stopped until he made up the flesh. That scene was similar to playing rice cakes. Su Mu didn't care about them, but came to the side of the ship and looked at the surrounding sea area. Just then, a thunderbolt flashed. With the light of thunder, Su Mu vaguely saw a huge shadow in the sea, hiding under their warship. Seeing this scene, he froze all over, only to feel a chill running down the back of his neck. They have been targeted. Su Mu's heart froze. He looked back and saw that those pirates had eliminated the twenty or so ghouls. The head of Su Heihu, who was headed by him, was smashed to pieces, no matter how he cheated, there was no threat. After solving the immediate troubles, everyone cheered and bragged to each other. Did you see it just now? I cut off most of the ghost's body with one knife. The ghosts around me are scared to retreat. Idiot! I was scared to pee when I saw you just came out. Are you still bragging? Nonsense! I slept a little while ago and mistook one of them for my mother. That's excitement, not fear. How can you smear someone's innocence out of thin air? Damn, you idiots kung fu is much more ruthless than your swordsmanship. Just lend me your mouth. I can make a shield, armor, etc. And it should be able to stop a congenital master. 
idiot you, believe it or not. Anyway, I have done a great job this time. Big sister will definitely reward me later. I see that you haven't woken up yet, so go to sleep for a while. The pirates were laughing and playing, unaware that the real danger had not yet come. Su Mu looked at them, opened his mouth but didn't know what to say. This group of pirates is considered to be formidable among their peers. But in Su Mu's view, it's just a group of local chickens, and the strongest person is Song Ding Kong with a hooked nose, and he has only acquired the perfect state. More than a thousand people gathered together, not enough for a grandmaster to eliminate. An early master like Qin Wei could destroy them all with one person, but it would be a little tiring. And the monster hidden under the boat was twenty or thirty meters long just what Su Mu saw. Although I don't know what it is, it is definitely not easy to put the body shape in that way. Moor, what's wrong with you? After the battle, Li Yakin saw Su Mu who was standing on the side of the ship, and noticed that something was wrong with his expression. Su Mu pointed to the bottom and said in a dry voice. There's something down there. Hearing this, Li Yakin looked out. But it was too dark to see anything without the help of lightning. So she threw a torch down below. As the torches landed, things on the bottom of the sea loomed. Against the background of the fire, Li Yakin's complexion changed dramatically. She didn't say a word grabbed Su Mu and ran to the bow of the ship, looking at the posture that seemed to want to throw him on another warship. But it's not too late. A terrifying force came from below, and the mighty and domineering warship was torn apart instantly, as fragile as a toy. Then a giant mouth dozens of meters wide with a circle of sharp teeth rushed out of the water and devoured them. Unstoppable suction came from the ferocious giant mouth. Whether it was the debris on the battleship or the people above, they were all swallowed. Which naturally also includes hematoxylin. 124. Popular Recommendation Endless darkness enveloped Su Mu. There were still screams in his ears, but they soon became quiet. He could sense that the aura of life around him was rapidly disappearing, like a lamp being extinguished by a gust of wind. But strangely, Su Mu did not die. Instead, it was like riding on a roller coaster, with ups and downs in the dark for a while, and I don't know where I was thrown. Su Mu only felt that the icy sea water was wrapping him, and the water pressure was getting bigger and bigger. It was so big that he was a little breathless, and even felt like he was about to be crushed. Here, is the bottom of the sea like an abyss. After a long time, a ray of light finally appeared in Su Mu's vision. Under the huge water pressure, he opened his eyes with difficulty and looked forward. In the dark underwater world, a huge vertical eye emitting a green light, staring at Su Mu. This eye is at least 50 meters long. In front of it, hematoxylin was as tiny as a speck of dust. Could it be that the shadow just now is not the main body of the demon, but a tiny part of it? For example, a small tentacle. Su Mu was shocked. He tried to look into the distance, trying to observe the whole picture of the sea monster. But the deep sea was pitch dark, and Su Mu was still young and had just started cultivating, so his eyesight couldn't penetrate the deep darkness. He could only vaguely see a huge shadow lurking in the depths of the sea, unable to see the edge at a glance. The size of this monster is incredible. Even more than the red dragon centipede. The huge green vertical eyes stared at Su Mu for a while, as if thinking about something. After a while, a huge surge came, tearing Su Mu's body in half. His lower body was swallowed by his tentacles. The upper body was thrown hundreds of meters away. Afterwards, a large number of demons poured out from the darkness and rushed to Su Mu's upper body. In the blink of an eye, he devoured half of his body completely. Although with the help of talent, Su Mu's vitality is extremely tenacious. If he didn't have the talent of immortal, he would have already died under the enormous pressure of the seabed. But no matter how tenacious, there is only a dead end in this situation. The flesh and blood were separated from the body, and the consciousness was also plunged into darkness. The conditions did not allow Su Mu to turn into a demon. The first generation of this dungeon world ended just like that. After returning to the standby space, Su Mu let out a sigh of relief, frowned and pondered. This undersea monster is too terrifying, 
and it is not something that a group of pirates can resist, nor is it something that a young child like Su Mu can resist. As long as it attacks, Su Mu's group will surely die and have no resistance. There is something wrong with this. Ten o'clock shouldn't be like this. How could such a level of life and death catastrophe occur in childhood? Could it be that it was because of what Su Mu did that caused this catastrophe? Is that the Three Beasts Withered Statue? After Su Mu thought for a while, the only thing he could think of was that he had moved the Three Beasts. Could it be that throw that attracted the sea monster? In addition, after being swallowed by the sea monster, everyone was eliminated immediately. Only Su Mu was not eliminated directly. Instead, he was dragged to the front by the giant monster, and he scrutinized it carefully before killing it. Come to think of it, the talent Magic Fate should have played a role. Magic Fate, Demon Favorability 5 It's a pity that the extra 5 points of favorability didn't let Su Mu escape, and in the end, he was eaten. But this also gave Su Mu a major discovery. Those monsters slaughtered in the dark have the same breath as that of the seabed giant monster, as if they inherited a little power from it. Like blood relatives. It's a pity that the first life was too short and too little information was obtained. If you want to know more, you have to live well. Su Mu didn't think for too long before starting the second life. And no talent changes, no purchases. The first method of living has not yet been fully understood and does not require much adjustment. After the opening of the second life, Su Mu was the same as the previous life for the first six years, and he lived as he should. At the age of six, the death battle broke out between the parents again, Li Yakin won again, and Luo Wu, a black-faced man, accompanied Su Mu to witness all this again. The difference is that when the three beasts withered statue fell, Su Mu didn't touch it again. Just quietly staring at it, to see what kind of fate this withered statue will usher in. Under Su Mu's secret peep, the handyman picked up the statue at will, and finally placed it at the entrance of the cabin. That night, Su Heihu, who was thrown into the sea, turned into a corpse again and eliminated him. However, the statue of the three beasts did not light up. After killing those ghouls, everything returned to calm. As Su Mu had guessed, as long as he didn't move the three beasts, the sea monster would not appear. Don't tell me you can't throw it. Is this demon so temperamental? You can't even throw its withered image. The next day, Su Mu stood at the door of the cabin, squinting at the statue of the three beasts placed beside him. After thinking about it, Su Mu took the statue back to his house. Of course he knew it was very dangerous. But the more it is like this, the more you have to figure out what the three beast statue is. Because Su Mu is being troubled by this withered image in reality. So should do some research in the simulation world where there is almost no death cost, and try to understand the situation of this withered statue. In the dungeon world, only death to a certain extent will have negative effects. Su Mu is confident that he will pass the customs smoothly before this step. After all, he had died four or five times the most in the previous dungeons. Su Mu placed the statue of the three beasts on the bedside. From time to time, I dripped a drop of blood essence into the image, or sent some spiritual energy, but there was no response. Just like an ordinary withered statue, stay there quietly. Time passed day by day, and eight years passed in an instant. After Li Yakin seized power, this group of pirates entered a stage of rapid development. Eight years later, the number of warships has expanded to ten, and the number of people has expanded to three thousand. Because the flag is a black crow, it is called the Flying Crow Pirate. In the nearby waters, he made a splendid name. Usually specializing in looting official merchant ships at sea, very courageous. As the prince of the pirate group, Su Mu has obtained a lot of training resources. All kinds of medicinal materials needed for martial arts and chi refining can be continuously supplied. This is a treatment he has never had in his previous lives. Until this time, Su Mu didn't feel the huge benefit brought by ten points of life. In this life, whether it is the talent for martial arts or the talent for qi refining, Su Mu can only be regarded as mediocre. But with the help of a lot of resources, Su Mu successfully cultivated his astral qi at the age of fourteen, and advanced into an acquired martial artist. 
At the same time, the three major auras of fire, wood, and earth are cultivated. The dual cultivation of martial arts is very difficult. To be able to cultivate to this level at the same time is almost the limit in terms of talent in this life. 125. Li Yakin was overjoyed when she learned that her baby son had advanced to be an acquired martial artist when he was only 14 years old. Immediately notify all the staff and hold a banquet to celebrate three days. This made Su Mu a little speechless. In his opinion, it is nothing to cultivate for so many years to become an acquired martial artist. If it weren't for the dual cultivation of martial arts, he would feel that the progress was a little slow. But in the eyes of ordinary people, this is already considered a genius. If nothing else, after Su Mu advanced to an acquired martial artist, he suddenly became the top five powerhouse among this group of pirates. Why the top five? Because in this group of pirates, there are currently only four warriors who are more than the day after tomorrow. Su Mu's mother, Li Yakin, advanced the year before to become an acquired martial artist. Song Ding Kong, who was originally the peak of the day after tomorrow, successfully advanced into a congenital warrior, becoming the number one master in the pirate group and the only innate warrior. One more thing, Song Ding Kong has always been stronger than Li Yakin, why would he obey her? The reason is very simple, Li Yakin's abilities in other aspects are far stronger than him, and he can lead the pirate group to achieve better development. Otherwise, Song Ding Kong would not be able to obtain those precious cultivation resources and successfully cultivate to the innate realm. As for the other two, they were newly recruited by Li Yakin in the past two years, and they were all acquired martial artists. Su Mu is an acquired martial artist, which is great news for Li Yakin. On the one hand, every mother hopes that her son can be promising and grow up vigorously. On the other hand, Su Mu became an acquired martial artist, unexpectedly their orphans and widowed mothers had more confidence. Su Mu, grow up. The time when Su Mu was born in this life is the 15th year of Apocalypse. Today is the 29th year of the Apocalypse. Nine years have passed since the famine in Jizhou, and there is still one year before the birth of Sumo in the main world. At the moment, Su Mu has grown into a big guy who is not inferior to an adult. After the ten warships broke down, they joined together, like a flat ground, and put on a feast. Su Mu walked around casually, and everyone respected and flattered wherever he went. In recent years, Su Mu has rarely made a move. But as long as you make a move, you will definitely eliminate the important people of the enemy with the momentum of thunder. The strength displayed far exceeds that of the same rank warrior. Pirates follow the principle of the law of the jungle. People with strength will naturally be respected, not to mention that Su Mu is still the prince of the pirate group. Although he is young, Su Mu has a very high status in this group of pirates, and no one dares to underestimate him. Su Mutin smiled and nodded to the pirates one by one. After walking for a while, he returned to his room. He is the protagonist of this banquet, and the income shows his face. But only in appearances. Su Mu doesn't like to waste time on these things. After returning, he habitually grabbed the statue of the three beasts and played with it. In this life, this statue has not shown any abnormality. If it weren't for the previous experience, Su Mu would only treat it as an ordinary object. Just thinking about it, the statue of the three beasts suddenly emitted a faint light. Su Mu was startled and quickly looked at it. I saw the centipede, the octopus, and the three-headed serpent emitting a shimmer at the same time. But soon, the light on the octopus statue in the middle became stronger and stronger. The shimmering light on the centipede and the three-headed serpent gradually dissipated until it disappeared. Before Su Mu could understand what was going on, the surrounding things quickly twisted. With a flash in front of his eyes, he came to a dark underwater world. Su Mu was shocked. But he understood that these were just fantasies, because he did not feel the terrifying pressure in the abyss. Whoosh! Accompanied by a deafening muffled sound. A behemoth like a mountain appeared in Su Mu's present. It is the sea monster. Su Mu couldn't even see the whole picture. You can only see large shadows and countless dancing tentacles, each of which is 100 meters long. Believe. Gu Ming. Strength. 
Give. The intermittent strange voice sounded in Su Mu's mind, giving him a splitting headache. At the same time, a huge tentacle stretched out in front of him, as if waiting for something. There is no doubt that this is the sound of the underwater giant monster to Su Mu. The strange thing is that the undersea monster is obviously incomparably powerful, but it seems that the IQ of the low-level monster is not very good, and it is not clear in a complete sentence. But after thinking about it carefully, Su Mu felt that it did not seem to be low in wisdom. Instead, there is a feeling of being in chaos, half-dream and half-awake. Believe. Strength. Give. As Su Mu pondered, the strange voice resounded in his mind again, with a hint of impatience and arrogance. This made Su Mu not dare to drag it any longer, and immediately pressed his palm on the huge tentacle in front of him. In the next instant, Su Mu's palm ached. A huge demon force poured into his body along his palm, as if to burst his body. What? Su Mu screamed, took a few steps back and fell to the ground. The fantasy around him receded, revealing the original appearance. In the blink of an eye, Su Mu returned to his room. The whole process came and went faster, and everything just now seemed to be just a nightmare. But Su Mu looked down and found a large pool of sticky seawater on the floor under him. Obviously, all that happened just now. Looking at the statue of the three beasts in his hand, the light on the octopus has disappeared. Su Mu opened the palm that touched the huge tentacle just now, and found a black shadow in the palm of his hand. It can't be wiped off, like some kind of strange incantation. After sensing it again, Su Mu found that there was a strange power in his body, but he could use it at will. This strange power is enough to raise Su Mu's combat power to the level of a top innate warrior. This giant monster is weird everywhere. Fortunately, I often eat octopus these years, and magic fate gives me five points of favorability, otherwise I don't know what will happen. Su Mu leaned against the wall and thought silently. The shape of the sea monster is a bit like an octopus, and the same is true of the statue of the three beasts. So Su Mu often eats octopus over the years, trying to add some octopus flavor to himself through the talent of food tonic. In this way, you can become a family with the sea monster. In addition, there is magic fate to help increase the favorability of the demon to him by five points. Perhaps it was for these two reasons that Su Mu saw the sea monster after activating the statue of the three beasts, and gained a lot of benefits. Change it to look unpleasant, I'm afraid there is no good fruit to eat. Speaking of which. I am now the subordinate of that sea monster. Recalling what happened just now, Su Mu pondered. Recognize a peerless monster as the boss. It seems. That there is nothing wrong with it. In particular, the undersea giant monster still looks like his brain is not very good. Is there anything more pleasing than a boss being a fool to be fooled? Thinking of this, Su Mu felt holding up the statue of the three beasts and whispered. Big brother. Boss. Boss. Are you here? Can you give me more power? The strength of the innate martial artist is not enough, so send me to the Grandmaster Realm first. Hello. Are you here? While calling, Su Mu vigorously wiped the octopus statue in the middle, sighing from time to time. But the three beast statues did not respond, just like ordinary things. This made Su Mu a little disappointed. This stupid boss is still not generous enough. Enemy attack. Enemy attack. It's the Takeda family, these little brats are here to take revenge on us. Suddenly, there was a rush of shouting from outside. Then, murderous. 126. There are many small countries in the waters of the South China Sea. Most of these small countries are barren, but they are rich in some rare and rare medicinal materials and spiritual things. These are the training materials needed by martial artists and qi refiners, and they are extremely valuable. But man must live first. I can't even get enough to eat, so what about cultivation? Therefore, when trading, Dagon often uses some common materials just needed to exchange for a large number of precious medicinal materials and spiritual things, making a lot of money. Su Mu and the other pirates also made a fortune. The most hijacked by the Flying Crow Pirates were the cargo ships of the Fuso Kingdom. 
Among the many small countries in the South China Sea, Fusang is the most powerful. Cargo ships are generally full, and they're all good stuff. Li Yakin likes to grab them the most. Even the largest warship Yulong was robbed of Fusang. But the clay figurine still has three points of fire, let alone a country. Eating hot pot and singing songs, he was robbed by pirates just as he was about to deliver goods to make money. Can this be tolerated? This is unbearable. In recent years, Fusang's counterattack has become more and more intense. Among them, the Takeda family stared at them the most. It was the fleet of the Takeda family that attacked Su Mu and the others this time. After hearing the movement, Su Mu rushed out quickly. He climbed up the mast and looked into the distance, only to see fifteen medium-sized warships surrounded by them in the distance, flying the flag of the Takeda family of Fusang. As a sneak attack, the battleship of the Takeda family has launched an attack. Rockets rained down on them, lighting up the night sky. The pirates who were celebrating the carnival were caught off guard and suffered a lot of casualties. Wave after wave of rockets came, almost without pause. It didn't have much impact on Su Mu. He mobilized Astral Chi, supported a defensive cover, and easily blocked these arrows. At the same time, under the command of Li Yakin, the pirates set up large shields for defense, and controlled warships to eliminate the enemy. The Takeda family's warship had no intention of retreating, and also controlled the warship to charge towards Su Mu and the others. Who knew that when the two sides were 500 meters apart, the warship led by the enemy suddenly launched three fire dragon cannons. The fire dragon cannon is a magical weapon specially used for naval warfare or siege. This kind of magic tool is very difficult to build and the cost is high. Fire dragon cannons are very bulky and cannot deal with powerful warriors and chi refiners, but can only deal with dead objects. In addition, it must be operated and maintained by a powerful chi refiner before it can be used. Although there are many restrictions, the power of the fire dragon cannon is amazing. It's a big killer at sea. Although the Flying Crow Pirates group is not small, it has not attracted chi refiners to join, so naturally there is no such a big killer. And the Takeda family actually launched three fire dragon cannons in one breath this time, obviously they came prepared. After seeing this scene, Li Yakin's complexion changed drastically, and the flesh on his face couldn't help shaking three times. Quick! Quickly dodge! She shouted sharply, urging her pirates. But how to avoid the distance of 500 meters? The cannon was fired at this time, so that they had nowhere to hide. Boom! 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 The three loud bangs shook everyone's ears. In the roar, three fire dragons roared towards Su Mu and the others, aiming at the three warships respectively. The first to be locked was the largest warship at the foot of Su Mu. Catch the thief first to catch the king. Fusang people also understand this truth. So the first thing to destroy is their largest Yulong. The fire dragon slammed down heavily, and there were three loud noises. The deck under Su Mu's feet shook violently, and at the same time, a heat wave exploded, making it difficult for people to follow. He was the only one who didn't move, and there was no hint of fear on his face. The other pirates didn't say that their faces turned pale with fright, but they were also shocked. Under the attack of the fire dragon cannon, a large hole was blasted in the hull, and the fire spread quickly. These fires are not extraordinary fires, but spiritual fires. If you leave it alone, you can burn a battleship to ashes in no time. But even if you leave it alone, the spirit fire is not so easy to extinguish. The people on the other two warships were scrambling to put out the fire, but they couldn't put it out for a while, dragging a lot of manpower. The Yulong ship where Su Mu was on was also putting out the fire, and was commanded by Li Yakin himself. Quick, quick! Put out the fire, don't stop the water. Quick! Li Yakin shouted loudly, her face a little ugly. In this attack, the Takeda family not only had a large number of people, but also prepared a big killer such as the fire dragon cannon. This gave Li Yakin a bad feeling. While directing the fire, Li Yakin glanced at Su Mu and said to Song Dingkong beside him. Wait, if the war goes bad. You take Xiaomu and leave first. 
Hearing this, Song Ding Kong's face sank, but he still bowed his head and promised. Su Mu looked at the situation with a calm expression. If it was a day ago, he really had nothing to do. The newly advanced acquired martial artist does not have the ability to control the situation in a naval battle of this scale. But now, Su Mu has recognized a giant monster brother, and with its help, his strength has soared to the late innate. Although it can't stop the cumbersome and big killer like the fire dragon cannon, there is no problem in extinguishing a fire and winning a battle. After everyone used sea water to eliminate nearly half of the power of those spirit fires, Su Mu made a decisive move. As soon as he made a pinch, a cold air gushed out. At the beginning, it was only the thickness of a finger, but it quickly rose against the storm, and it turned into a whirlwind in just a few breaths. This cold cyclone swept through, and all the spiritual fires were extinguished. Seeing this, the pirates on the Yulong couldn't help being overjoyed, and looked at Su Mu with admiration. Brother Mu is such a powerful method. Wild Rice I only knew that Mu Gur practiced martial arts and was still practicing Qi, but I didn't expect to have such a profound Taoism. Brother Mu is indeed the first genius of our flying crow pirates, such a powerful supernatural power. With Brother Mu, I will defeat the group of sons of the Takeda family today. Eliminate them and feed the fish. Su Mu turned his hands to put out the fire, which boosted the depressed morale a little. But that's not enough. The other two warships were delayed by the fire, and their speed suddenly slowed down a lot. And the enemy's three fire dragon cannons have been fully charged, and they are about to fire again. At this time, the distance between the two sides is still more than 300 meters, and the fire dragon cannon can fire at least two more rounds. In other words, a total of nine shots can be fired. There are only ten warships in the Flying Crow Pirates. If you wait for the three rounds of fire dragon cannons to shoot, nine and a half of them are useless, what a... Thinking of this, Su Mu narrowed his eyes and locked onto a Qi refiner next to the three fire dragon cannons. This person is the manipulator of the fire dragon cannon. At this time, he was preparing to activate the fire dragon cannon to launch the second round. How could Su Mu make him wishful? Bring the bow. Su Mu stretched out his hand and gave a low drink, and immediately someone handed him a big bow, and the arrow was also matched. All methods are one, disease. Su Mu bit his fingertips, cast spells with blood essence, and drew a five-element talisman on the arrow. Then he bent the bow to shoot arrows, and the chi poured into the big bow, condensing all the power at one point of the bowstring. Zheng. The next moment, the big bow hummed, and the arrow with the five-element spell was shot like a streamer. This arrow is the peak arrow that Su Mu can shoot so far. Combines all the powers of warriors and chi refiners. Only a martial arts practitioner can shoot this arrow. The Qi refiner from Fusan Kingdom was still casting spells to activate the three fire dragon cannons, and a huge sense of threat suddenly rose in his heart. Looking up, I saw a little cold light flying towards him like a shooting star. Protect me, protect me. The Qi refiner's expression changed greatly, and he immediately shouted. There were many guards beside him, and when he heard this, he immediately raised a large shield to block him. But before he could stand firm, the arrow had already eliminated him. Bang! 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 This arrow, condensed with five-color aura, unstoppably shattered everything in front of him. Those guards were easily shot through by people with shields and died on the spot. Don't try to eliminate me! Seeing the ultimate move, the Qi refiner from the Fusang kingdom shouted with a ghastly expression, threw a paper figurine and then frantically cast spells. In the surge of spiritual power, the palm-sized paper figurine suddenly soared, turning into an armored warrior and blocking him. Ah! The armored warrior shouted, and the giant blade sword slashed at the incomparably sharp arrow. Zheng! A sound of gold and iron intersected. The eardrums of the people who stabbed the entire warship were in severe pain, as if they were about to be torn apart. The two sides stalemate for about half a breath, and then the five-color aura of the arrow tip condensed, shattering the armored warrior's sword and piercing his body. After being defeated, the aura of the armored warrior disintegrated, 
and the degraded paper figurines spontaneously burned out. At this time, the power of the arrow that Sumu shot was only 10%. But the Chi refiner's methods were almost done, and a few clothes fitting body protection small magic weapons were all defeated. By the time it hit him in the flesh, the power of this arrow was almost the same as the arrows shot by second and third rate warriors. But the Chi refiner's body is fragile, and even this little power can't resist it. There was only a scream, and the sharp arrow shot through the Qi cultivator of Fusang Kingdom, and flew him seven or eight meters away, and was finally nailed to the deck. The remaining power in the arrow shattered his internal organs, causing black and red blood to flow out of his mouth. In a short time, the Fusang country Qi refiner died of anger. Before he died, he never saw what the person who eliminated him looked like. This arrow from Su Mu was so powerful that it pierced through more than a dozen people and instantly beheaded the enemy Qi cultivator. Seeing this scene, the pirates cheered and their morale was lifted. On the contrary, the Takeda family was frightened and morale was low. After the death of the Qi refiner, no one could drive the original big killer, and it became a pile of scrap metal. And among the pirates, there is also a master with amazing strength, who shoots through everything with one arrow. How can this make them not surprised? The leader of the enemy fleet was a middle-aged man in his thirties. Although he was short, he was strong, like a stone pier. He looked gloomy, but not afraid. Bah! It took so much money to raise a waste. Fortunately, there are other preparations this time. Takeda will scold a Tai Loli, and then took out a large conch from his arms and blew it in his mouth. Woo! The conch made a strange whine, very penetrating. Su Mu couldn't help frowning slightly after hearing this. This sound seems to be sending out a signal. Isn't that asking for help? But there were no other warships in sight. Yu Yu reading. Could it be that? Reinforcements came from the bottom of the sea. Su Mu was right. After a while, he heard an exclamation. Not good. The bottom of the boat is pierced. Something is chiseling the boat in the sea. Hearing this, Su Mu immediately probed to the bottom of the sea. With his eyesight, he could vaguely see the shadows of humanoids shuttle back and forth at the bottom of the boat. This reminds Su Mu of an intelligent race living on the seabed, the Merman. 127. Genius to remember the address of this site in one second, https colon slash slash the fastest update. No ads. The mare people are a kind of intelligent race with fish tails. The mare people live in the sea, and the people are not happy, and there is not much contact with the human race. There are many legends related to the merman, both good and bad. According to some legends, the mare people are extremely ferocious and like to eat people. It's almost like a ghost. According to some legends, the mermen are kind and loving, they often help people who fall into the water, and they are very beautiful. Of course, there is no shortage of stereotyped scenes of sadomasochism with scholars. Having lived at sea for so many years, Su Mu has only seen the merman a few times from a distance. This time, I finally saw it up close. No matter what the legendary merman is, Su Mu can be sure that these mermen at this time are enemies. They kept attacking the warship under Li Yakin's command, causing the bottom of the ship to leak everywhere. It can't go on like this. It is the enemy, it should be eliminated. Thinking of this, Su Mu climbed onto the side of the ship, ready to jump into the sea to compete with these mermen. Just as he was about to jump, Li Yakin's rough voice came from behind him. Son, be careful. Your son's safety comes first. I know mother. Su Mu turned back and agreed, then no longer hesitated, and jumped into the sea. Pfft. The sea water submerged the body of hematoxylin. A sense of smoothness like a fish in water came to my mind. How do you feel that the state is better than on land? It seems that you can control the sea water. Is it because you received the power of the sea monster? A guess appeared in Su Mu's mind, but he didn't have time to think about it. As soon as he entered the water, several sharks surrounded and eliminated him. The size of these sharks is similar to that of ordinary people, except that the lower body has a fish tail. I saw that they were all hideous, sharp teeth, and fierce. 
Didn't you say that there are so many beautiful and handsome men in the Merman? This is too long, isn't it? It's enough to stop the children crying at night. After Su Mu glanced at it, he shook his head slightly in his heart. However, the strength of these mermaids is not bad, all of them are full of chi and blood, and there is no such thing as the strength of first-class warriors. If the ship really sank and fought against them in the sea, the pirates under Li Yakin would not be their opponents at all. It's a pity that these sharks met Su Mu. The three mermen closest to Su Mu held steel forks and stabbed him with murderous aura. However, Su Mu was even more agile in the water than the mermen. He turned around to avoid it easily, and with a wave of both hands, two tentacles emerged from his palm. These two sturdy tentacles entangled the three mermen like poisonous dragons, but they shrank and strangled. Under the tremendous force, the three sharks were twisted and burst to death. This tentacle is pretty good. He is very experienced as a demon sumo. The monster power given by the sea monster, he was able to drive it smoothly for the first time. These two tentacles are one of the supernatural powers that come with them. After easily strangling the three mermen, Su Mu took the initiative to attack and began to clean up those mermen who had chiseled the boat. He has a strong body and moves quickly in the sea. Don't say that these sharks are dealing with Su Mu, they can't even touch his edge. Soon, one after another, the sharks were eliminated by him, and the situation at the bottom of the boat gradually stabilized. On the sea, the warships of the two sides collided fiercely. The pickup battle has begun. Just when Su Mu had almost cleaned up the sea sharks and planned to go to the top to help. A gigantic, dark-skinned merman came to eliminate him. Seeing this merman, Su Mu was stunned for a moment. There was a familiar aura about this shark. It's the breath of that sea monster. Could it be that this merman is also the blood family of that sea bottom beast? This dark merman was ferocious and ferocious, with a steel fork waving a torrent to eliminate Su Mu, extremely powerful. But Su Mu did not dodge or evade, retracting his tentacles and punching out. The shocking fist smashed the torrent, and rolled backwards to eliminate the merman. He didn't dodge either, and a steel fork stabbed out an attack that shattered Su Mu. But in the next instant, Su Mu was already in front of him, punching out his fists and strangling him with two tentacles protruding from his arms. The shark raised the steel fork, barely blocking Su Mu's fists, but was hit in the back by two tentacles. Immediately, the flesh burst open, and blood flows. As soon as they fought, the merciless merman fell below. His complexion changed, and after clenching his teeth, he spat out a large piece of black ink, wrapping Su Mu. Su Mu's eyes fell into darkness. But he didn't panic, and while controlling the flow of seawater to clean up the black ink, he was suspended in place and ready to fight back at any time. However, Su Mu did not wait for the merman's counterattack. With a move in his heart, he thought of a possibility. Sure enough, after Su Mu quickly cleaned up most of the black ink, the figure of the merman disappeared. He ran away. The figure of this merman is a circle larger than that of the common clan, and the strength is similar to that of the martial artist in the early days of innate. But it was not Su Mu's opponent, and he was quite decisive in fleeing. Su Mu was too lazy to chase. After solving the underwater troubles, he returned to the ship and joined the battle with the Takeda family. The enemy has a total of 15 warships and about 2,000 people, and the per capita cultivation base is slightly higher than that of the Flying Crow Pirates. Fortunately, under the deterrence of Su Mu, the enemy's morale was low. At every moment, he is afraid of killing a master, and he will eliminate them with a wave of his hand. In this way, the two sides basically draw. With the addition of Su Mu, the scale of victory gradually tilted towards them, but the battle was still difficult. Su Mu can defeat a hundred with one, but it is obviously impossible to eliminate these two thousand people with one person. Early in the morning, he set his sights on Takeda Shoda, who was giving orders. As long as you take down the leader of the opponent, you will be able to defeat the enemy army. But this man was very cunning, and he didn't know where to hide from the beginning of the battle. Su Mu searched for several enemy ships but couldn't find it. In desperation, the Takeda family's warship blew its horn and began to retreat. 
Their ships are better than those of the Crow Pirates, and they are all medium ships and fast. And they are not without the strength of a battle, but under the coercion of Sumu, their morale is low, and there is no possibility of defeating the Flying Crow Pirates. The most important thing is that the two ultimate moves prepared by Takeda General, the Fire Dragon Cannon and the Merman, were all defeated by Su Mu. In this case, the only option is to retreat. But Li Yakin didn't even want to chase after her. Stop chasing, and quickly treat the wounded and repair the boat. Under the command of Li Yakin, the pirates began to deal with post-war matters. Although they won this battle, they did not gain any benefits, and the losses were not small. If it weren't for Su Mu, I'm afraid I would lose miserably. Brother Mu, didn't you just cultivate your astral chi? Why is your strength so strong? Is it possible that the smarter the brain, the faster the strength and diligence? The black-faced Luo Wu is a little older. He looked at Su Mu with admiration and admiration, and he never imagined how the doll he had grown up with had grown up so fast. Luo Wu had a little talent in martial arts, but he was only a first-class martial artist when he practiced in his early thirties. Hearing this, Su Mu pondered for a while and smiled. Want to know how I got stronger? Come with me if you want. With that said, Su Mu walked towards his room, and Luo Wu followed behind him with a look of anticipation and excitement. After arriving in his room, Su Mu took out the statue of the three beasts and asked Luo Wu to test whether he could communicate with the behemoth under the sea. Luo Wu tried excitedly for a long time, but he didn't respond at all. If it wasn't for Su Mu who never made such silly jokes, he would have thought that Su Mu was playing tricks on him. Luo Wu's situation made Su Mu confirm that the sea bottom beast has certain requirements for accepting blood relatives, not everyone. If it wasn't for Su Mu's increase in his favorability, maybe he wouldn't get a response. Fate has not come, try again later. Oh. Disappointed Luo Wu left Su Mu's room reluctantly. After he left, Su Mu packed up and fell on the bed to rest. As the prince of the Flying Crow Pirates, he doesn't need to take care of trivial matters. At that stop just now, Su Mu showed his great power. In the hearts of the pirates, the power has risen to a new level, and it is estimated that it has surpassed the leader Li Yakin and the former top master Song Ding Kong. Su Mu is too lazy to care about this. Sleep is critical. Su Mu slept happily until the second half of the day. In a daze, he came to a hazy misty fantasy, and vaguely heard someone calling him. Brother Mu, Brother Mu. Are you there? This voice is gentle and pleasant to listen to. But Su Mu suddenly woke up after hearing this, his brows furrowed with murderous aura. Who are you? A question makes this illusion oscillate, as if it is about to collapse. The voice was startled, and immediately said. Brother Mu, don't be angry, I have no ill intentions. I am the queen of the mercurial spirit bead lineage. I would like to invite you to meet and talk about important matters. 128. Genius to remember the address of this site in one second, https colon slash slash the fastest update. No ads. After speaking for a short while, the dense fog in the fantasy world dissipated a little. Su Mu vaguely saw a slender female merman floating in the air, about twenty meters away from him, and his face was not clear. Queen of Mermaids. I just eliminated some mermaids. Are you looking for me late at night for revenge? Su Mu stared at the figure coldly. Hearing this, the merman who claimed to be the queen hurriedly said. Brother Mu has misunderstood. The merman can be subdivided into many different bloodlines. The mare people you just eliminated belong to the Black Stone lineage, and they are exactly the enemies of our Lingzhu lineage. You eliminated them, and I am grateful that it is too late. How can I seek revenge from you? Hearing this, Su Mu understood. Just like the human race, the mermen are also subdivided into different bloodline groups, not one. There are differences in appearance and personality. Therefore, there are various versions of the legend of the mermaid. Ling Zhu, right? What are you doing to me? Although he knew that this merman was probably not an enemy, Su Mu still didn't give her a good look. No one likes being woken up when they are asleep. This is especially true of Hematoxylin. Brother Mu, don't be angry, 
I can't explain a word or two about this matter, can we talk about it under the water? The mercenary queen's voice was soft and mellow, which made Su Mu's anger a little less unknowingly. If it was the main world, there is a high probability that Su Mu would not take care of such a thing. But this is the copy world, if you don't go, you may miss some important information. So after a little thought, Su Mu agreed. Okay, you wait for me underwater, I'll be right here. After all, Su Mu's whole body spurted murderous aura, instantly tearing up this fantasy world, without giving the mercenary queen time to speak. As soon as the illusion was broken, Su Mu rolled over and sat up from the bed. After getting up, he walked quickly to the deck and looked out. In the cold moonlight, half a seductive figure appeared on the sea. Brother Mu, I'm here. Please tell me in the sea. The upper body of this mercenary queen is extremely beautiful, and it is very moving under the moonlight, with a pure and flawless temperament. It makes people feel good. Beside her, there are ten mermaid guards. Both men and women, they looked very good, which was the complete opposite of the sharks that Su Mu had eliminated before. Now, Su Mu can be sure that they are indeed not of the same race. Su Mu didn't think much, and jumped into the sea. Brother Mu, please come with me. The merman queen gave Su Mu a sweet smile, and then led the way. These mermen are basically the strength of first-class warriors, only the queen is innate realm. Such strength would not pose a threat to Su Mu. He was not afraid at all, and followed these mermen all the way to the depths of the sea. Fortunately, after absorbing the monster power of the sea monster, Su Mu's affinity with sea water has greatly increased. Even extremely deep seabeds can easily adapt, not much different from those on land. I don't know how many meters I have dived, and the surrounding light is getting less and less, almost black can't see my fingers. Who knew that after drilling into an underwater cave, Su Mu's eyes instantly lit up. There is nothing in this underwater cave. It turned out to be a secret realm with abundant spiritual power, surrounded by countless gems and pearls emitting light. Like stars, they light up the entire secret realm. Brother Mu, please. After entering the secret realm, the mermaid queen naturally took Su Mu's arm and led him to the secret realm. Su Mu's eyes narrowed slightly, but there was no other movement, she was holding her. Along the way, the two sides talked a few times. From the conversation, Su Mu learned that the name of the merman queen of the Lingzhu lineage was Mingyue. As for the purpose of calling him here, Su Mu also guessed one or two. Sure enough, a short while after entering the secret realm, a hint of sadness and pain appeared on the face of the mermaid Queen Mingyue. She hugged Su Mu's stout arm and cried. Brother Mu, look how beautiful this place is. The Lingzhu lineage has thrived here for hundreds of years and has long been rooted here. However, the Black Stones discovered this place a few years ago and wanted to take it away from us. Our Lingzhu lineage has always been peace-loving, and our strength is not as strong as the Black Stone lineage. After two years, there have been heavy casualties. Today, I saw Mu Gur showing great power at the bottom of the sea, and even the head guard of the Black Stone clan was beaten and fled. Brother Mu's strength is amazing. I wonder if you can help us repel the enemy. After this is done, there must be a heavy thank you. At the same time as Mingyue spoke, many female mermen from Lingzhu's lineage gathered around, looking at Su Mu with a half-blinded chest and a miserable face. The hazy teary eyes made people feel pity and could not wait to agree immediately. But Su Mu was unmoved, and his heart was like stone. Gu Chiong. He pulled his hand out of Mingyue's arms and asked calmly. There must be a heavy thank you. What a heavy thank you, take it out and let me take a look. Even if you perform a task in the game, you have to see what the reward of the task is. With a mouth open and a chest exposed, you want Su Mu to do something. How could he be fooled by a mere seductive trick? And to be precise, it's not chest exposed, but chest half exposed. If it was really revealed, Su Mu might have agreed directly. Ahem. That's impossible. After all, half man, half fish can't do anything. This. Su Mu's direct words made the mermaid Queen Mingyue stunned for a moment. After gritting her teeth, she said to Su Mu. Brother Mu. Wait a moment, I'll come when I go. 
After speaking, Mingyue swam to the depths of the secret realm. After she left, Su Mu was not idle either, and looked around. This secret place is indeed a good place. Safe, hidden and full of aura. It is a paradise under the sea. However, the strength of the Lingzhu family is not very good. Except for Mingyue, who is the queen of the mermaid, he has not seen the existence of the second day after tomorrow. After a while, Mingyue came back. She carefully took out a box and opened it to reveal the contents. In the box is a fist-sized translucent pearl, which exudes a faint spiritual energy, and the smell is shocking. The light is overflowing, making people feel swaying. Just from the appearance, it can be seen that this thing is definitely a rare treasure. Minua pointed at the objects in the box and said to Su Mu cautiously. This is the handed down treasure of my Lingzhu lineage, Yuan Lingzhu. Take it with you, it can wash the body and soul, and greatly improve the speed of cultivation. Placing it in one place for a long time can gradually transform this place into a blessed land with abundant spiritual energy. Su Mu's vision is not low, and he can see at a glance that this is indeed a good baby. I have seen the thing, and it is indeed a treasure. But I think you definitely won't give it to me before it's done, so should you pay a deposit? You can't just let me go and fight with the mercenaries of the Black Stone clan. You also said just now that the Black Stone family is powerful. This battle is dangerous. Hearing Su Mu's words, Mingyue's face stiffened, obviously not expecting this 14-year-old boy to be so troublesome. Aren't the scholars in the book all the brains of worms, willing to fight to the death for the female ghost and banshee they just met? Why is it so difficult for her? Seeing Mingyue stunned there, Su Mu narrowed his eyes, and a dangerous voice appeared on his face. Look at what you mean, you didn't prepare a deposit for me. Could it be a joke? Wait. There is a deposit, there is a deposit. Seeing that Su Mu's expression was wrong, Mingyue quickly interrupted him and gave a wink to a guard beside him. The merman understood, and immediately left in a hurry and came back in a hurry. The difference is that when he came back he was holding a box full of gems. Mingyue opened the box and put both hands in front of Su Mu. Brother Mu, these are all precious spirits in the sea. I wonder if they can be used as a deposit. Su Mu glanced at it. There are some precious elixir unique to the bottom of the sea, such as water grass. In addition to this there are some rare gems. Although the box is small, it is worth a lot. It's still enough as a deposit. With a wave of his sleeves, he used Jinkuan in his sleeve, which he had just started, to accept the small box. Sure, I'll accept the deposit. Let's talk about the situation of the Black Stone lineage. Su Mu is very honest when he does business. Now that you have received the deposit, you can do it well. Hearing this, Mingyue and the clansmen around her breathed a sigh of relief and began to talk about the situation of the Black Stone lineage. The mermen of the Black Stone lineage are different from my Lingzhu lineage. They were born to be taller, more ferocious, and more warlike. They like to invade other mermen tribes very much. The most terrifying thing is that I don't know when, the team leader of the Blackstone lineage believed in the undersea giant, Heroic. Many mermen from the Blackstone lineage gained power from the sea monster and became stronger and more ferocious. Our Lingzhu lineage loves peace and is not good at dealing with people. Wait a minute, how much do you know about the sea monster? Can you elaborate? Hearing this, Su Mu interrupted Mingyue. Compared with the mermen of the Blackstone lineage, he is more interested in the sea monster. There is a high probability that this giant monster is an extremely critical existence in this dungeon world. It is very important to figure out its situation. Hearing this, the mermaid Queen Mingyue pursed her lips and began to answer Su Mu's question. 129. Genius to remember the address of this site in one second, https colon slash slash the fastest update. No ads. Brother Mu wants to know about the sea monster. Our Lingzhu lineage rarely goes out, and we don't know much about it. The sea monster. At Su Mu's request, Mingyue told everything she knew about the sea monster. This undersea giant monster is called Hero, and it has existed for an unknown number of years, possibly dating back thousands of years. 
Once, it made waves and disturbed the South China Sea. I don't know how many creatures have died in this sea area. In the past few hundred years, the sea monster has gradually calmed down, staying in the abyss and never coming out. But it will spread its power and create blood family members. The sea monsters will not control these blood family members, allowing them to move freely. Su Mu is one of them. And there are even more blood relatives in the Black Stone lineage. According to Mingyue, the patriarch of the Black Stone lineage believed in the sea monster for a long time and gained power from it. Because of this, the strength of the Black Stone clan has grown day by day over the years, and they have invaded everywhere. After Mingyue finished speaking, Su Mu asked her tentatively. Have you ever seen a statue of three beasts? There are three kinds of beasts on this statue, namely centipedes, octopuses, and three-headed serpents. Mingyue said. I haven't seen it, but I've heard of it. It is said that this statue is a token of the sea monster, and it can be obtained through this statue. But from what you said, only the octopus looks a bit similar to the caracal. What the other two are, I don't know. Hearing this, Sumuda pondered. Whether it's the red dragon centipede or the undersea giant monster, their existence at this level must have a plan. These three beast statues are definitely not only to send power to others, there must be some unknown role. After seeing the undersea behemoth, Sumu always felt that something was wrong with it. It seemed to be dormant. Okay, I know what you said. I'm a person who counts. Since I've received your deposit, I'll help you with things. Let me rest for a night, and tomorrow I will follow you to destroy the Black Stone Clan. Su Mu temporarily suppressed these incomprehensible questions to the bottom of his heart, and made a promise to Mingyu. In fact, this is a good thing for him. On the sea, the Merman family is the real master. Su Mu eliminated so many people from Heishir's lineage, so it's impossible for such a ferocious Merman to just forget about it. If there is a positive report of recovery, I am not afraid. I was afraid that these sharks would pierce through their ships from time to time in guerrilla warfare, and then ran away when they were done. Or eliminate others, eliminate one or two and run away. If this is the case, Sumu will have a headache. Therefore, it is better to destroy the Black Stone lineage under the leadership of the Lingzhu lineage, who is also a merman, so as to avoid future troubles. Then I'll thank Brother Mu first. After getting Su Mu's promise, Mingyue's pure and moving face finally showed a smile, very bright. Su Mu didn't go to see her much, waved his hand and went out of the secret. Mingyue originally planned to send someone to send him, but he refused. Su Mu speeded up, quickly swam to the sea, and returned to his room. He lay on the bed, but did not fall asleep, but pondered about the undersea monster. The red dragon centipede in the main world has absorbed dragon energy for more than 70 years, and Sumu does not know how powerful it is. To say that the red dragon centipede, which has not yet become a national teacher, is not as powerful as this undersea monster. It's just that it's in a weird state. Sumu's vision has not yet reached that level, so there is nothing wrong with it. Only vaguely aware of some problems. In any case, the undersea giant monster hero is extremely terrifying. The clearance condition of this dungeon world is definitely not to eliminate it, otherwise it will be blocked in all likelihood. Or get a few absolute masters and hang out with their ass. Gujia. As for the incarnation of some kind of powerful demon. As far as the current clues are concerned, Sumu can't find a clear direction. After thinking about it, Sumu slowly fell asleep. This is only the second life, he is not in a hurry, just explore slowly. The next day, the Flying Crow Pirates were repaired in place. According to the agreement, Su Mu rendezvoused with the mere people of the Lingzhu lineage in the sea, preparing to destroy the Blackstone lineage. There are several sites in the Blackstone lineage. Except for the largest site, which is guarded by the Patriarch himself, the rest are guarded by the Chief Guard. The Patriarch of the Black Stone lineage has the strength of the Grandmaster Realm, but he needs to be stationed in the center and will not be dispatched easily. As for the Head Guard, Brother Mu also fought yesterday, and he is far from your opponent. We just need to exterminate those stations outside them as quickly as possible. 
There are many enemies in the Black Stone lineage, and once their strength is damaged, they will definitely attack them. At that time, we don't need to worry anymore, just wait and see the death of the Black Stone lineage. Minyue led the way and talked about the rough battle plan. After listening, Su Mu nodded slightly, but felt something was wrong in his heart. As far as the strength of the Lingzhu lineage is concerned, the gap between it and the Blackstone lineage is huge. Since the enemy has already figured out their position, why not annihilate the Lingzhu lineage with thunder? How can they give them the opportunity to ask for foreign aid? Could it be that there is a powerful guardian formation in the secret realm of the Lingzhu lineage? Su Mu felt a little weird. But he didn't ask too much, and hid his doubts in his heart. If there is a problem, then fight. If you lose, you will die and start over. In short, no problem. A group of people quickly traveled through the sea. Just when he was about to eliminate one of the Blackstone's resident stations, an accident happened. A large shadow appeared above Su Mu and their heads. This is a huge fleet. There were twenty warships, heading for the direction of the Flying Crow Pirates. You wait for me here, I'll go up and take a look. Su Mu's heart trembled, vaguely feeling that something was wrong. After saying hello to Mingyue, he swam up. After rushing out of the sea, Su Mu squinted and looked. I saw that the banner of King Jinshan was hanging on these warships. Yes, it is the younger brother of King Biling with the same father and mother, and King Jinshan who was swallowed by the Red Dragon Centipede when the two were secretly meeting. Although it was swallowed by the Red Dragon Centipede, King Jinshan appeared in the world again as if nothing had happened. At the end of the second copy of the world, he also sent people to surround and suppress some unrest forces in Jizhou. Among them are the little friends who defected from the Sumo barracks. Let's talk about Jizhou and Yenzhou under the command of King Biling. After his mysterious disappearance, the wasteland in Jizhou was taken away by the imperial court. And Yenzhou was captured by the king of Jinshan in the chaos. Although Yenzhou is small, it is extremely wealthy. One of the reasons is the sea. From about the 23rd year of the apocalypse Jinshan Wang began to control the maritime trade in the Yenzhou region. Most of the benefits of sea trade fell into his pocket, and he also formed a powerful sea power. Looking at the current situation, this fleet under the command of King Jinshan is heading towards the Flying Crow Pirates. No, I have to stop them. Su Mu's face sank, and he quietly climbed onto the main battleship. After the battle last night, the warships of the Flying Crow Pirates were somewhat damaged, so they were repaired in place. Travel speed must be affected. Being chased and eliminated by such a powerful fleet in this state will surely perish. So Su Mu had to go out in person and get on the boat to see if he could find a way to solve it. 130. Su Mu quietly climbed to the main battleship of this fleet. After some investigation, a heart sank to the bottom. The strength of this fleet is too strong. Just talking about this main battleship, there are many warriors of the innate realm. The leader is a middle-aged warrior in black armor, who looks like a master in the army. This person is extremely rich and bloody, like a martial arts master. And the breath is stable, it is estimated that there is a cultivation base in the middle of the master. This person alone is enough to give the flying crow pirates a headache. Not to mention there are a lot of elite soldiers. Now, I'm afraid it will be difficult. The general was accompanied by a short and stocky Fuso man, who was Takeda Shoda who had been defeated yesterday. Seeing that the two of them were talking, Su Mu restrained his breath and quietly approached the past to eavesdrop. General Situ, please speed up, don't let their pirates run away. Takeda will be too stooped and bowed, humbly begging. Situ Zhong glanced at him from the corner of his eye, and said lightly. What's the hurry? This speed is already very fast. Hearing this, General Takeda was in a hurry and called out. General Situ, those pirates have robbed us of Fusang over the years. This time, our four major families of Fusang have invested a lot of money just to invite you. Enough. Before Takeda could finish speaking, Situ Zhong mercilessly interrupted him. He said coldly. Shut up your stinky mouth, and then I will tear your mouth apart and throw you down to feed the fish. Do you think that if you send some treasures and treasures, you can use Lousy at will? 
Is this general you can call? Situ Zhong's remarks made Takeda froze in place. Don't dare. His waist was even more bent, and after saying a few words, he closed his mouth angrily. Whether it is their own strength or the forces behind them, these two are not on the same level. It is not something that Fusan can contend with if you work the power of one state. Although Dagon has vaguely entered the end of the dynasty in recent years, the situation in Fusan is even worse. It can be described as flash of demons. In any case, Takeda Shogun didn't have the strength to shout at Sidu Zhong. Even talking had to look at the other person's face. Humph. Seeing that Takeda General Tai stopped talking, bent over and looked like a servile, Sidu Zhong snorted and ignored him. He turned around and was about to tell his opponent what to do when his face suddenly changed, and he turned around and threw a punch. Roar. Fist Jean roared, and eliminated them like a tiger to a place behind them. Here, it is where Su Mu hides. He has been found. Although Su Mu was not panicked, he threw out a Dao talisman and burst into thick fog, covering his figure. By the time the fist smashed through the thick fog, Su Mu had disappeared. Upon seeing this, some soldiers under Sidu Zhong wanted to pursue him, but they were stopped by him. Stop chasing, business matters. To deal with this little flea, just ignore it. As long as you find an opportunity, you can crush him to death. Although Su Mu overheard a sentence or two, Situ Zhong didn't care. As the representative of the four major families of Fuso Kingdom, Takeda Shoda presented a lot of treasures and treasures. Situ Zhong cursed and cursed, but he still had to help him. To be precise, it is not to help the four major families of the Sang Kingdom, but to help the King of Jinshan. Although the Flying Crow Pirates did not raid Jinshan King's fleet, the goods brought by Fusan Kingdom would basically be eaten by Jinshan King. This group of pirates continued to loot the cargo ships of the Fusan Kingdom, which had seriously affected the interests of King Jinshan. Taking advantage of the fact that the four major families of the Fusan Kingdom have paid a lot of money to ask them for help, they will destroy the pirates. With this thought in his heart, Situ Zhong methodically directed the fleet to eliminate in the direction of the Flying Crow Pirates, quite like a general. Gu Yen. On the other side, Su Mu has already jumped into the sea. This fleet under the command of King Jinshan is powerful. Far from being able to break Su Mu alone. This made his face darken. Brother Mu, what happened? The mermaid Queen Mingyue swam over and asked worriedly. King Jinshan sent a fleet to deal with us pirates. I am afraid that I can't go with you to destroy the mere people of the Blackstone lineage. I have to deal with my own affairs first, and the deposit will be returned to you. With that said, Su Mu will take out the deposit he received before and return it to Mingyue. Seeing this, Mingyue hurriedly stopped him and said. No, no, I believe in your brother Moore's character. You've collected the deposit, and it's not too late to help us when you're done with your own affairs. Our Lingzhu lineage is not bad for a few more days of defense. Seeing what Mingyue said, Su Mu was not hypocritical. He stopped, nodded and said. Okay then, when I've dealt with my own affairs, I'll come to you as soon as possible. After all, Su Mu didn't stop for half a second, and immediately swam in the direction of the flying crow pirates. After he swam away, Mingyue's eyes flickered slightly, and she whispered. Being so favored by a great existence, I hope you don't let me down. Afterwards, Mingyue led the mermaid under her command to withdraw into the secret realm. Su Mu swims extremely fast in the sea, breaking through the waves like a sharp arrow. But those fine warships are not slow either. The strength of King Jinshan is not comparable to those of the big families in Fusan. Su Mu saw that every warship was painted with spells. When the ship was moving at full speed, the spells on the hull were bright and full of inspiration. This is the foundation of a great country. Even a prince of one party is enough to shock the South China Sea. Su Mu tried his best to come back a little earlier. He immediately found Li Yakin, panting and said. Quick. Let's go. That group of Fusang people spent a lot of money to invite Jinshan King's fleet to destroy us. Hearing this, Li Yakin's face trembled three times, and said in horror. Son, are you not mistaken? 
Is it really King Jinshan's fleet? As long as they don't loot them, they have never cared about pirates. It's absolutely true. Twenty warships, led by a general in the master state. They will eliminate them in a quarter of an hour at most. Hey! Hurry up! Put the boat! Li Yakin was able to seize power from Su Heihu and lead the group of pirates to grow to this point. His ability is definitely not bad. She immediately judged that this time, she couldn't beat it, and she couldn't escape. The only way is to abandon the large force and let a very small number of people escape in small boats. How many can escape? This is no longer a strong man breaking his wrist. Instead, he gave up his body and just kept running away with his palms. But under the huge gap in strength, Li Yakin can only do this. This is the only way. I have to say that this woman with a big shoulders and a round waist and a face full of flesh is extremely decisive. Son, hurry up and escape from here in a small boat, mother is here to delay the time. Luo Wu, Song Dingkong you two bring the no. Twenty elite and leave with Xiaomu. Assist him to make a comeback in the future, and avenge us when he has a chance. If you don't have the opportunity and ability, then live well. Li Yakin's expression was resolute, and she was ready to stay. It is impossible for all the top leaders of the Flying Crow Pirates to escape. If they all escaped, they would be defeated with one blow, and it wouldn't take much time at all. The few who escaped would also be caught. So Li Yakin decided to let her delay the time and let Su Mu escape with a few elites. Li Yakin knew very well that the people who stayed behind were almost dead. However, she still chose to do so. 131. Li Yakin intends to sacrifice her life to save her, but Su Mu does not agree. He grabbed Li Yakin's shoulder and said solemnly. Mother, you go first, and I'll hold them back. Hearing this, Li Yakin became anxious. She pushed hard toward Su Mu and said eagerly. What nonsense are you talking about? Hurry up, hurry up. Leave it to my mother here. But Su Mu's body remained motionless, and his expression was even more determined. Mother, my swimming speed is faster than those warships, otherwise I won't be able to come back and report. If you stay here, you will surely die. But I can hold on for a while, and then jump into the sea to escape. Those warships can't catch up with me. This time, listen to my son. With that said, Su Mu grabbed Li Yakin's hand and sent her to Luo Wu and Song Dingkong's side. His face turned cold, and he said seriously. You too, be optimistic about my mother. Otherwise, I'll ask you guys. Although Su Mu was young, he was full of majesty at this time, and his momentum was amazing. Luo Wu and Song Ding Kong were shocked and quickly bowed their heads. And Li Yakin had tears in her eyes. Son, you. You have grown up. Mother, mother is very happy. At this moment, she deeply felt that her cub had grown up. He can already hold up the sky for his mother. Don't worry, mother, you go first, and I'll find you in a while. Let's go quickly, it would be bad if others knew. No matter who stayed behind, most of the pirates were destined to be sacrificed to buy some time for the few. So the movement can't be too big. This is not to betray them. Because no matter what, the Flying Crow pirates will definitely suffer heavy casualties this time. Either eliminate them all, or escape a very small number of people in advance. Impossible to be safe. Under Su Mu's arrangement, Li Yakin took Luo Wu, Song Ding Kong, and more than twenty good players, and left quietly in a small boat. Not long after they left, Su Mu saw several eagles hovering on the Yulong in the sky. He knew that these were swift eagles, specially used for reconnaissance and tracking. It seems that the fleet of King Jinshan is not far away. Sure enough, in less than half an hour, twenty murderous warships appeared in Su Mu's field of vision. Enemy attack. Prepare for battle. With a roar, he woke up all the pirates. This battle will be directed by Su Mu. Unfortunately, this is destined to be a one-sided battle. When the two sides were more than a mile away, Situ Zhong commanded the Qi refiners under his command to pull out ten fire dragon cannons in one breath. Then, the aura vibrated. Cannon fire roars. 
these ten fire dragon cannons are more sophisticated than Takeda Shota's three. And the strength of the Chi refiners driven is also stronger. In this way, the power is even greater. After some bombing, all ten warships under Su Mu's command were smashed to pieces, and a raging fire was ignited. It's not over yet. The twenty warships surrounded the warships of the Flying Crow Pirates, and then collided together. The violent impact almost broke the pirate ship, which was already scarred and ablaze. Immediately afterwards, the battle of the boats began. Teams of brave soldiers came up and began to encircle and suppress the pirates. Su Mu knew that the purpose of this battle was to delay time, so there was no battle. Just command the pirates under his command to fight back as much as possible and delay the time. But Li Yakin's disappearance greatly damaged the morale of these pirates. And there is a huge gap in the hard power of the two sides. Those who were eliminated soon retreated, throwing away their armor and armor. Seeing this, Su Mu sighed helplessly. Pirates are pirates after all. Shun Feng Zhan screamed and rushed up. A dozen fighting against the wind immediately scattered everywhere, thinking only about escaping for their lives. While fleeing, one pirate after another jumped into the water in an attempt to escape. But Situ Zhong was already prepared. As soon as they entered the water, countless nail guns were thrown down. Soon most of the pirates who jumped into the sea were nailed to death, and the sea was stained with blood. The remaining survivors cannot escape the encirclement and suppression that follows. There is no suspense in this battle. Humph! The turkeys are vulnerable. Situ Zhong snorted disdainfully. Hearing this, General Takeda on the side said too cautiously. General Situ, there is a young boy in this group of pirates who is extremely powerful. It's him who eliminated our Takeda family's chi refiner and repelled the merman I invited. Otherwise, I could defeat these pirates yesterday. Guli. This boy's talent is too powerful, and he has a high prestige among pirates. He's not dead, this pirate will definitely come back from the ashes and make a comeback. Hearing this, Situ Zhong raised his brows and sneered. It's just a little boy, it's stumbling you, what a waste. Open your dog's eyes and watch how Lao Tzu eliminated that little thief. Hearing this, Takeda Shoga's face was a little ugly, and there was hatred in his eyes. But his waist was bent so deeply that Situ Zhong couldn't see his face, and his mouth was extremely respectful. Yes. General Situ is mighty. Situ Zhong was too lazy to pay attention to the Fusang man, and searched back and forth among the pirates with his incomparably sharp eyes. Soon, he locked on Su Mu. Although Su Mu did not use all his strength. But it is not difficult to find him who can easily eliminate Situ Zhong's Ho Tian generals. Little thief, I found you. Situ Zhong sneered, and walked in the air to eliminate Su Mu. The moment he was stared at, Su Mu felt a huge sense of threat. Without the slightest hesitation, he immediately abandoned the enemy at hand and jumped into the sea. Where to escape? Tianlong absorbs water. Situ Zhong chased up and turned his fist into a claw, and grabbed it towards the sea where Su Mu jumped into. In an instant, the sea rolled, forming a huge water spout that flew towards him. A lot of sea water was swept up. But Situ Zhong glanced at him and found that Su Mu was not captured by him, so he couldn't help being a little surprised. The little thief really has some skills. Since that's the case. Go. Situ Zhong gave a low drink, and the condensed water spout reversed direction and smashed into the sea. The water spout smashed down, setting off a huge wave. Some pirates around were shaken into pieces by the huge might. Flesh and blood, tragic death on the spot. Su Mu was also injured. Although Situ Zhong didn't capture him by the heavenly dragon absorbing water, it restricted him from swimming in this sea area. This suction is too strong. Then the water spout came down heavily, how could he not be injured? Fortunately, the demon body protector was only slightly injured. But this is not the way to go, if you can't walk, there is only a dead end. At this critical moment, the statue of the three beasts in Su Mu's arms suddenly lit up slightly. Su Mu took it out and took a look. 
I saw the octopus statue in the middle emitting a strange green shimmer, flickering, as if breathing. After a few flashes, all the shimmering light condensed into one point and flew into Su Mu's body. This power is so powerful. Although this boss is a little stupid, he is quite reliable at critical times. Su Mu had a surprised look on his face. At this critical moment, the statue of the three beasts came into play again, injecting a powerful force into his body. Su Mu's current body cannot withstand such a huge force for a long time. Therefore, this power floats on performance and does not enter his body. Simply put, it's a one-time power. Just right to deal with the current situation. On the other hand, Sivu Zhong failed to take down the little thief he called in two moves in a row, and could not help but frown slightly. He is a dignified martial arts master, how could he be escaped under the nose of a teenage hairy boy? Isn't this a great shame? In a slight anger, Song Dingkong had already pulled out his weapon. This is a murderous tiger-headed sword, and some blood can still be seen vaguely. Little thief, you can be proud of this general's use of weapons. Die! Song Dingkong roared angrily, and slashed down with a knife in both hands. In an instant, the sound of the tiger's roar resounded on the sea, shocking everyone within a five-mile radius. At the same time, a twenty-meter-long sword glow condensed and slashed into the sea. This knife can open seas and split mountains. As soon as the sword light arrived, the sea water split to both sides. If this continues, Sumu will soon be exposed. On the deck, Takeda, who saw this scene, was so horrified that his body trembled so much that he couldn't help himself. This, is this the power of the Grandmaster Realm? It's too powerful. If I can become an advanced master, our Takeda family will definitely be able to. Huh. What is that? Just as he was thinking, Takeda suddenly saw a huge and ferocious tentacle gushing out from the split seawater. With unparalleled momentum, eliminate Situ Zhong. General Takeda clearly saw that there was a panicked look in Situ Zhong's eyes. This incomparably powerful master was panicking. 132. The new dungeon has been subscribed a lot. I looked back and felt that the plot might not be exciting enough, so I thought about improving and adjusting it. As a result, the written content can't be changed by myself. The current situation is that I am not satisfied with the original outline, but I can't think of a better plot for a while, I am stuck here, it is very painful. See if the time can't be changed today, I can only ask for a day off. I will work hard to plan the follow-up plot and outline tomorrow, and strive to bring more exciting content to the readers. I have a demon simulator takes a day off. It is being played, please wait for a while. After the content is updated, please refresh the page again to get the latest update. I have a demon simulator full text update, keep in mind the URL. 133 Huge hideous tentacles gushed out from the split seawater and headed straight for Situ Zhong. A deadly breath permeated. This breath is shocking. Seemingly calm, but it can destroy everything. After being hit by the tentacles, the tyrannical sword light disintegrated layer by layer. It seems to be weathered, and it is impossible to compete with it. In the next instant, the tentacle was eliminated in front of Situ Zhong. The veteran of a hundred battles looked shocked, but his reaction was also extremely fast. He immediately punched out, trying to block the weird tentacle. The fist roared, gushing out like waves, blocking the huge and hideous tentacles from the outside. Looking at that posture, it was impossible to break through for a while. But Su Myuk can't afford it, he must fight a path in a short time. Under his control, the front end of the tentacle opened a small mouth, and a slender stinger was shot out with a whoosh sound. This poisonous thorn is very powerful, directly breaking Situ Zhong's punch, turning into a black beam and stabbing at him. Everything happened too suddenly, and the speed of the stinger was even more astonishing. Situ Zhong dodged with all his strength, but only avoided the key point, and was still stabbed in his left arm by the poisonous thorn. In an instant, his left arm was like dead weeds, withered and lifeless. And this trend is spreading upwards along his left arm. If no measures are taken, this battle-hardened veteran will be damaged today. Fortunately, Situ Zhong was extremely decisive. 
After seeing this situation, he immediately chopped off his left arm with a knife without any reason. In an instant, the residual arm flew out, and blood spurted out. But fortunately it was saved elsewhere. This power. So weird. After breaking his arm, Situ Zhong immediately covered the wound and retreated a few hundred meters, his face full of fear. This power reminded him of a terrifying legend about the deep sea. Is this legend true? Protect General Situ. Seeing that Situ Zhong was injured, the soldiers under his command were shocked and immediately attacked the hideous tentacles. Sharp arrows and nail guns shot over the sky. But after one blow, the huge tentacle turned into powder and disappeared into the sea. The power given by the undersea giant monster is only enough for Su Mu to use once. After repelling and breaking Situ Zhong's arm, Su Mu immediately fled away and fled into the distance. Except for Situ Zhong, no one can catch up with him. The other soldiers were only in a hurry. General Situ, are you alright? After Situ Zhong returned to the boat, Takeda Shoda came over and asked. Situ Zhong glanced at him with an ugly face, and said coldly. General Ben was injured, you seem very happy. Don't dare. I'm just worried about the general's injury. Takeda General was bent over and respectful. But the more Situ Zhong looked at his appearance, the more disgusting he felt. After a cold snort, he stopped worrying about him, and instructed his soldiers. Destroy this group of pirates for this general, and then go after the rest of the fish that slipped through the net. Of the remaining pirates, no one could escape except Su Mu. Was surrounded and suppressed as many as possible, and all were destroyed on the spot. Situ Zhong even sent several Qi refiners to set up a formation underwater to prevent the pirates from escaping. With such an endless network, the strength is not at a certain level, and there is only one dead end. After this battle, there will be no more flying crow pirates. A day later, Su Mu finally found Li Yakin and his party and joined them. Son, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Seeing that Su Mu came back safe and sound, Li Yakin, who had not rested all day, finally breathed a sigh of relief, and her eyes could not help overflowing with hot tears. Mom, don't worry, I'll be fine. Su Mu comforted her a few words, then glanced at the others. I saw that the twenty or so people on the boat were all downcast, with a look of decline. Think about it too, the flying crow pirates have been rampant at sea for almost twenty years. How majestic that is! As a result, after being targeted by the king of Xinshan, the group was destroyed in one day, and there was no resistance. This huge gap made them feel a sense of hopelessness and powerlessness in their hearts. Seeing this, Su Mu shouted angrily. All cheer up. Who can you show me half dead? Don't forget, the hunt is not over yet. If you really want to die, just jump into the sea and eliminate yourself. Hearing this, Luo Wu straightened his body and asked Su Mu vigorously. Brother Mu, what should we do now? The warship is gone, not a single one. After Luo Wu asked this question, almost everyone looked at Su Mu. Obviously, they are also full of confusion and want to know the answer to this question. Su Mu glanced at Li Yakin and found that she did the same. It seems that the current bad situation has left everyone out of ideas, and they are all counting on someone to point out a clear path. It's impossible to stay at sea. Without the warship, the people of King Jinshan are still looking for them, and they will be arrested sooner or later. Let's go to Fusang country. Su Mu thought for a moment and gave an answer. The source of this catastrophe was in the country of Fusang. He must figure out who is behind the money, and ask the fleet under the command of King Jinshan to destroy them. In this way, the next life will be able to deal with it. From the current situation alone, this is not the best choice. The best choice should be to go to a smaller island country and accumulate strength for a comeback. Su Mu was ready to persuade them. But what he didn't expect was that everyone including Li Yakin had no opinion. After hearing this proposal, they all nodded in agreement. In this way, Su Mu saved a lot of effort. If that's the case, let's go. Target, Fusang Kingdom. He stood on the bow, his eyes sharp and undeterred. Fusang is one of the largest island countries in the South China Sea, 
slightly smaller than Daganiyazu. Before that, Sumu didn't know much about the country. This time, maybe you can feel the exotic style. More than ten days later, a group of them landed in Fusang from a small fishing village. What I have seen is a country that is in ruins, corruption, and extreme poverty. The cargo ships of Fusang are all good goods, how can they be so poor? After sneaking into this small fishing village, Luo Wu asked in confusion. They even saw several old people who were starved to death on the road in the village. That skinny appearance is shocking. This shows how poor the people of Fusang are. The wealth of the country does not mean that the people are wealthy. Besides, the Fusang country is not rich either, only a few big families are rich. Stop talking about that, let's find a place to rest first. After explaining one sentence, Su Mu led the crowd to find a place to rest. Su Mu is very clear that the most important thing for them now is to rest. After so many days of running away, each of them was exhausted to the extreme. You have to recover well. Hearing this, Li Yakin also nodded in agreement. Intentionally or unintentionally, she handed over the command to her son, hoping that he could become the new leader. In fact, Su Mu has nothing to say. The power lent to him is extremely powerful, causing certain damage to his body. The injury is not serious, but it still needs to be cultivated. Soon, Su Mu took everyone and found a few empty houses on the edge of the village. After sneaking in and cleaning for a while, they each lay down and fell asleep. After resting for a few days, everyone gradually recovered. Su Mu's injury is almost healed. This dilapidated fishing village has ten rooms and five empty rooms, few people and many elderly people. It is estimated that they should not be found for a while. Even if they were found, a group of villagers with yellow faces and skinny muscles would not pose any threat to the elites of the Flying Crow Pirates. After thinking for a while, Su Mu decided to complete the side mission of the Mermaid Queen Mingwe first. It's not good to receive a deposit and not do anything. More importantly, the ancestral treasure of the Lingzhu lineage is very important to Su Mu. Yuan Lingzhu can speed up his cultivation, which is exactly what he needs now. After saying hello to Li Yakin, Su Mu planned to enter the sea again to find the merman of the Lingzhu lineage. As for Li Yakin's group just continue to make repairs here. I finally came to Fusang country, and it will take another half a month to swim back. I have a headache. After repeating it several times in Su Mu's mind, he probably understood what the giant demon wanted to convey. Su Mu came to the beach and couldn't help sighing. Unexpectedly, just as the idea came to him, the statue of the three beasts in his arms suddenly lit up. At the same time, a strange hoarse voice sounded intermittently in his mind. Sacrifice. Flesh. Teleport. Sacrifice. Flesh. Teleport. Sacrifice. Flesh. Teleport. This intermittent sound was transmitted by the underwater giant monster through the statue of the three beasts. It took the initiative to contact Su Mu. 134. After repeating this voice several times in Su Mu's mind, he probably understood what Huo wanted to express. Can you teleport at will by sacrificing your own flesh and blood? Does the statue of the three beasts have such a function? Su Mu was a little surprised, but after thinking about it, he thought it was reasonable. If this thing couldn't be teleported, it wouldn't suddenly appear under his bed, attracting the red dragon centipede. But every time you teleport, you have to sacrifice your flesh and blood, which is a bit too much fun. The fare is too high, and a little less is used. After thinking for a while, Su Mu decided to give it a try. If the teleportation of the three beast statues is really easy to use, then his troubles in the main world can be solved. Sacrifice the little finger of the left foot and send it to Yanjing. Su Mu held the statue of the three beasts and meditated in his heart. But after waiting for a while, nothing happened. Is the method wrong? Or is it too far away? Or is there not enough sacrifices? Su Mu thought of several possible reasons for the failure. But before he could think about it, fierce low and strange voice resounded in his mind again. The sea. The sea. The ferocious voice repeated the word sea over and over again, 
as if trying to convey what it meant. But for some reason, it cannot be explained clearly. Su Mu can only guess. C. Can it only be teleported into the sea? That's right, Caracal is a giant monster in the sea, and the sea is its territory. Try it again. Thinking of this, Su Mu repeated the operation just now. It really worked. The next moment, the things around him blurred, like a faded canvas. When it is stable again, people are already in the sea. Su Mu was very surprised. At the same time, there was a pain in the little finger of the left foot, and I could no longer feel its existence after moving it. Success. It was really teleported by sacrificing the little finger of the left foot. It's just that it's about five days away from the secret realm of the Lingzhu lineage. It seems that there are not enough sacrifices, so it can only be sent here. After using the teleportation ability of the Statue of the Three Beasts, Sumu vaguely understood how to use this ability. However, to be more specific, we still need to explore slowly later. For the rest of the journey, Sumu doesn't plan to teleport anymore. After all, he is just an ordinary person now, and his flesh and blood cannot be reborn, so there is no need to use this ability until the critical moment. Send it a few more times, I'm afraid everyone is gone. Let's hurry up honestly. Five days later, Su Mu came to the secret realm of the Lingzhu lineage. As soon as Su Mu arrived, the mermaid Queen Mingyue found him. And he came out to greet Su Mu in person, with that gentle smile on his face, which made people feel good. Brother Mu is really trustworthy. You came just in time. I invited two more helpers, and I am preparing to take the Black Stone lineage together. With that said, Mingyue led Su Mu into a hall. Among them, two guys are obviously not mermen, it seems that they are the helpers in Mingyue's mouth. Brother Mu, let me introduce you. Mingyue pointed to a middle-aged Taoist priest with a gloomy complexion and wore a black robe and introduced, dot. This is a tomb Taoist, a master of overseas qi refining, and his first-hand waterway is extremely tyrannical. Hearing that, the Taoist tomb didn't even look at Su Mu, and continued to tease the merman beside him. Moreover, the skin smiles and the flesh does not smile, giving people a feeling of not getting along. Su Mu was too lazy to pay attention to him and looked at the second person. This person is no longer human, but a giant crab spirit nearly ten meters long. Mingyue pointed to it and continued to introduce. This is Zhang Heng. As you can see, he is a big demon. He is also quite powerful. Although this crab essence is wise, its IQ is not high. It stared at Su Mu and said in a silly and violent tone. He, he's just a little baby, how can he be on par with me? How do you say the word human race? As he spoke, the crab was stuck in its shell and turned his eyes to ask the merman maid beside him. Sit on an equal footing. The merman maid held back her laughter and gave the answer. Yes. On an equal footing. A little baby like you, baby, baby, I usually have one mouthful and three mouthfuls. Although this crab spirit looks silly, but his eyes are full of fierce light, and he feels that if he disagrees, he will fight. Don't doubt, such demons with low intelligence cannot use common sense to speculate on their behavioral logic. They can do anything. Su Mu observed this person and a demon. The tomb Taoist had a condensed spiritual energy, and his whole body was full of spiritual energy. Although there is still a long way to go before the perfection of qi refining, the cultivation base is not bad. Moreover, he is good at the waterway, and he is even more like a duck in the sea. It is estimated that the very strength can exert 12 points. In the sea, the combat power is not much weaker than that of Situ Zhong. As for the crab spirit, with a tyrannical body and rolling demonic energy, its strength is estimated to be in the early stage of the master. Similarly, in the home field, it can exert a more powerful combat power. This monster's hard power is not weaker than that of the tomb Taoist. Su Mu didn't know how Mingyue, the mermaid queen, did it. He was able to find two masters in such a short period of time and persuade them to help. It is estimated that it is the same as the treatment of Su Mu, and it promises some benefits. But the most important thing right now is to keep the scene down. 
If Su Mu didn't express it, I was afraid that the crab spirit named Zhang Heng would really turn his face and do it. Once they are at a disadvantage, the tomb Taoist will use his nostrils to look at people even more. Thinking of this, Su Mu secretly communicated with the statues of the three beasts, and borrowed some breath from the giant monster under the sea. During this time, the continuity between Su Mu and the giant monster Hua became more and more close. Probably because of the five points of favorability, Hua's attitude towards him is quite good. It's not impossible to borrow some breath. For Su Mu, this is just a matter of thought. But in the eyes of the crab essence, there was an earth-shaking change. The little human doll, who had only a little threat before, suddenly felt wrong. The aura on his body suddenly became as deep as an abyss. Terrible. When Su Mu stared at it, he actually made it feel like he was on the edge of a cliff, and if he took another step forward, he would fall into the abyss and shatter his bones. This kind of feeling is called day and night not guaranteed. With the help of the ferocious breath, Su Mu stared indifferently at the crab spirit and walked towards it slowly. You said just now that you want to eat me? While speaking, Zhang Heng saw an incomparably huge shadow rising behind Su Mu. This shadow is so huge that it can't see the edge at a glance, and it can't see the whole picture. You can only see a terrifying vertical pupil staring at it, as if to devour it. Ah! I don't dare, I don't dare anymore. Don't eat me, don't eat me. The crab spirit screamed in fear all the crab legs shrunk under the body, two huge crab claws were in front of them, and they shivered and did not dare to look at Su Mu. That gesture, like a frightened ostrich. Seeing this scene, Mingyue, the Taoist tomb, and the surrounding mermaids all looked suspicious, causing waves in their hearts. The breath that Su Mu borrowed was only aimed at the crab essence, and no one else could feel it. But they know very well what virtue this crab spirit is. It named itself Zhangheng, which means to be domineering among the teeth and claws. From this, you can see what kind of temperament this crab essence is. But in front of Su Mu, the crab spirit, who was domineering and arrogant just now, was actually frightened into this appearance. There can only be two words to describe it. What happened in this? What frightened it like this? The Taoist tomb looked at Su Mu silently, his expression sank. His eyes were filled with fear and solemnity, no more frivolity than before. This boy is weird. Mingyue who brought Su Mu in was also very surprised, her mouth opened slightly. She is ready to appease the crab spirit and prevent them from conflicting. I never thought that the domineering and arrogant monster in the past would be frightened into such a state by Su Mu. It's only been half a month since I haven't seen him, and this person has changed again. Extraordinary. 135. Su Mohu pretended to be a tiger, and borrowed the ferocious breath to easily frighten the crab essence Zhangheng. This big demon's wisdom is low, and he can't think about too complicated things at all. It only knows now that the aura of this human race is too terrifying, making it unable to give birth to any resistance. Su Mu slowly walked towards the crab essence, carefully observing its expression and state with every step closer to prevent any changes. But this monster is obviously not as complicated as Su Mu thought, until Su Mu walked to its roots, still holding his head and shivering. Seeing this, Su Mu raised his legs and walked to its broad back, sat down cross-legged, and shouted in a dignified voice, dot. From today onwards, you must obey my orders. However, Su Mu wants to subdue this big demon and make it his mount. Based on previous observations, Su Mu felt that the crab essence should not resist. If you really want to resist and run away in time. In short, this attempt, the benefits are much greater than the risks. Yes. I am obedient, I am the most obedient. Don't eat me. Sure enough, after hearing Su Mu's words, the crab essence did not resist at all. On the contrary, the trembling was not so severe, perhaps because he felt that his life would be guaranteed after being subdued by Su Mu. Good I won't eat you if I obey. Seeing that the crab spirit surrendered, Su Mu touched its hard carapace. And restrained the ferocious breath, and continued to observe it. After Su Mu restrained his breath, the crab essence still did not dare to be arrogant, and his posture did not change. 
It seems that Su Mu has been determined to be a terrifying and terrifying existence. In this way, Su Mu breathed a sigh of relief. It seems that he temporarily subdued the crab essence with a hideous tiger skin. To be able to do this, except that the aura of the seabed giant monster is indeed extremely terrifying. More because this crab is stupid enough to be easily frightened. In the future, as long as Su Mu does not show his cowardice, it is estimated that this crab essence will not have doubts. Such a stupid monster, it's a little scary to think about. Any other helpers? If not, we can go. Su Mu sat cross-legged on the back of the crab essence and asked Mingyue in a good mood. Before doing the business of this trip, I earned a big demon, and the harvest was amazing. Right now, as long as you quickly complete the task and get the Yuan Lingzhu, you can restart the great cause after returning to Li Yakin and the others. With the help of Zhang Hain, the crab essence, the strength of Su Mu's command suddenly skyrocketed. There's no one else left, let's go. When speaking, Mingyue couldn't hide her surprise looking at Su Mu and the crab spirit under him. She never imagined that she hired three helpers, and as soon as they met, one of them became the other mount. Su Mu not only scared the crab spirit, but also subdued it. This made Mingyue couldn't help but feel a little envious. The tomb Taoist was even more surprised than Mingyue, jealous and fearful in his heart. The strength of the crab essence is very strong, and even the warriors in the middle stage of the master can't use it in the sea. If you are not careful, you will risk being counter-eliminated. Although the tomb Taoist is proficient in watercraft, but he dare not say that he can beat this crab spirit. Such a powerful mount can play a great role in the sea. If you give him a mount like this, his strength can be more than doubled. This is not a simple 112. Moreover, the tomb Taoist couldn't see through Su Mu, so he didn't know how powerful he was. But to subdue the crab essence, it must not be weak. This combination of one person and one crab made him very jealous. So when they went to the Black Stone Lineage Station together, the tomb Taoist subconsciously stayed away from Su Mu and the crab essence, for fear that the two of them would attack him. After all, he is not a good person himself, and he often does things like killing people and stealing treasures. Save others by yourself, you will be afraid. This time, there were no surprises on the way. Under the leadership of Mingyue, the group came to one of the residences of the Black Stone lineage. The mermen of the Black Stone lineage are ugly and ferocious. It is almost the exact opposite of the mermen of the Lingzhu lineage. After seeing the invaders, the mermen of the Black Stone lineage eliminated them first without waiting for Mingyue and the others to make a move. It's just that Su Mu's group is not something these black sharks can afford. As soon as the battle started, the mere people of the Black Stone lineage were eliminated and retreated. Su Mu doesn't need to take action. He is commanding the crab spirits under the seat, and he can eliminate these hideous and ugly black sharks without leaving behind. The crab essence is huge, and its armor is extremely hard. It rushed like a deep sea tank, with amazing momentum and unstoppable. I saw it carrying hematoxylin and rampaging among the black stone mermen. Waving a huge crab claw and a pair of pliers can cut off seven or eight black stone mermaids in the middle. The broken corpse was overflowing with blood and internal organs, staining the sea red. The scene is terrifying. The tomb Taoist was not to be outdone, and F.A. Ju even used his magical powers. Or water dragons, or water thorns, killing the sky and covering the earth. A large number of black stone sharks died in his hands, and he couldn't get close to him at all. In terms of the number of people eliminated, the tomb Taoist is even better. But in terms of visual impact, the battle scene of the crab spirit is even more frightening and frightening. As for Su Mu, he rode on the body of the crab spirit and commanded the battle throughout the whole process, so happy. Such a comfortable feeling made him ponder secretly. It's so cool to have such a big demon as a mount. It would be nice if we could do a few tricks in the main world. The one in the sky is a golden eagle, the one on the ground is a tiger demon, and the crab spirit is good if it is underwater. Sea, land and air, live together. Su Mu thought beautifully. But in fact, the number of monsters is not many. In a chaotic world like the main world, there are far more ghosts than monsters. 
Moreover, there are very few big monsters at the level of crab essence, otherwise, where would the human race have a foothold? I want to find the three grandmaster level monsters in Chi, Hai, Land and Air, and they have to be tamed. I'm afraid it will be extremely difficult. The battle of Su Mu's mind wandering is basically over. The tomb Taoist and the crab spirit slaughtered the quartet in front, and the mere people of the Lingzhu line only need to surround some remnants of defeated soldiers in the back. The battle went smoothly, and there were almost no casualties on Mingyue's side. Soon, the station of the Black Stone lineage was taken down. The group went to the next station without stopping. Not much has changed in the course and outcome of the battle. In a quarter of an hour, Su Mu and the others defeated those ugly black sharks. The next step is to repeat the above process, destroying batches of black stone mermen. After half a day, with the help of Su Mu and others, the Lingzhu lineage destroyed more than a dozen black stone lineage stations and eliminated an unknown number of black stone mermen. Seeing that the momentum was in full swing, Minyue simply proposed to destroy the old nest of the black stone lineage. Those who got it all in one fell swoop. Thinking that the patriarch of the black stone lineage only had the strength of the initial master, Su Mu agreed. The tomb Taoist also did not hesitate, and the group set off again. The final battle went smoothly. The patriarch of the black stone lineage was ten feet tall, and was even uglier and more hideous than the ordinary black stone mermaid. But under the siege of the tomb Taoist and the crab spirit, they are still not opponents. Seeing his defeat, Su Mu summoned a huge tentacle with a wave of his hand, grabbing the head and showing his strength at the same time. Although it was only a shot, the strange and dead aura shocked the crab spirit and the tomb priest. In their hearts, Su Mu became more and more mysterious. The banner of the sea monster, Su Mu is getting more and more comfortable. Thank you three for your great help. We won't lose a cent of the promised good reward, please come back with me first. Minyue sincerely thanked Su Mu, the tomb priest and the crab spirit. Afterwards, she left a group of clansmen to clean the battlefield, and she herself and a few clansmen returned to the secret realm with the three heroes of Su Mu. Su Shi received the news in advance. At this time, a banquet had been held in the secret realm of the Lingzhu lineage. It seemed that they wanted to celebrate Su Mu and the others. This banquet is for the three benefactors to see off before parting. Great kindness, our Lingzhu lineage will remember. Minyue thanked her again, took a glass of wine and drank it all in one gulp. The tomb Taoist also took a sip, and then asked. Queen of the Sharks, can you give me what you promised me? This Taoist priest is still more concerned about the benefits that Minyue promised before. Hearing this, Minyue smiled slightly and said. Don't worry, Taoist, we are all here with low strength, are you still afraid that we will default on our debts? Eat well and drink well, and after the banquet is over, I will offer the promised things with both hands. Hearing this, the tomb Taoist nodded. He stopped worrying and started eating and drinking. In the eyes of the tomb Taoist, these beautiful mermen are exquisite toys, and he can squeeze them to death. Are you afraid they can't play tricks? In addition, the old Jianghu, Taoist tomb, has quietly tested these wines and vegetables for a long time, and they are all non-toxic. You can eat with confidence. On the other side, Su Mu looked around and vaguely felt that something was wrong, but he couldn't tell what the problem was. Just eat and drink casually. This secret place is located in a hole in an underwater canyon and can be wet or dry. At this time, the large banquet naturally drained the moisture inside. Although sharks and crab spirits like water, they are not limited to staying in water. It's not a problem to do it for a while. I have to say, this banquet is full of good things. After eating and drinking, Su Mu clearly felt that the astral chi and spiritual chi in his body had increased a bit. Food tonic This talent needs to eat good food for the effect to be obvious. Su Mu hadn't eaten anything special over the years, so this talent didn't play a big role. In other words, if you eat the crab essence under the seat, you should be able to increase your cultivation a lot, right? Thinking of this, Su Mu looked down at the big crab under his butt. The crab spirit was shocked by the sight the big crab with the wine glass froze there. It was not until Su Mu looked away that he dared to continue drinking. 
This monster, it's better to drink a little wine. After eating and drinking, the host and guests enjoyed themselves. The tomb priest said slightly drunk. Queen of the sharks, the banquet is almost here, should I give it to me? Hearing this, Minua tilted her head, and a strange smile appeared on her innocent and pleasant face. Yes, it's almost time, it's time to send you on your way. As soon as she finished speaking, the tomb Taoist suddenly felt dizzy, and the things in front of her were twisted and rotated. 136. How is it possible? There is no poison in the wine and food, how could it be? The face of the tomb Taoist changed greatly. He staggered to hold the table and knocked over the table full of wine and vegetables. The tomb Taoist couldn't understand when he was poisoned. On the other hand, Su Mu and Crab Jing Zhangheng also felt a bit of discomfort. Fortunately, one of them has the body protection of the deep sea giant monster, and the other is a big monster with tenacious vitality, and the poison resistance is very high, so that they will not be poisoned. Tomb Taoist does not have such high poison resistance. Frightened and angry, he propped up his body and took a detoxification pill first. Then he threw out a few Dao talismans and eliminated the mermen from the Lingzhu lineage. The mermaid Queen Mingyue is his number one target for revenge. This Taoist hated Mingyue, who seemed to be pure, and after throwing out the Taoist talisman, he opened his mouth and spat out a small blue-blue sword. This small sword rose against the storm, turned into the size of a normal flying sword, and pierced Minyue's eyebrows. You die for me. The tomb Taoist propped up his body and looked at Minyue viciously, as if expecting her to be headshot. But in the next second, a mutation appeared. The secret realm they were in actually wriggled strangely, swallowing all the mermen in. All the magical powers of the tomb Taoist hit the wriggling stone wall, leaving only a few white marks. This defensive power is a bit amazing. But Su Mu was surprised by the change in this secret realm. This secret realm was originally an underwater cave. But at this time, the inner stone wall actually wriggled, with a flesh-like texture. Very weird. The stone wall wriggled faster and faster, and in a violent shaking, the entire secret realm rose from the ground, and even swam in the sea. This so-called secret realm is actually a living creature. Su Mu and the others are in the body of this living creature. The danger is just beginning. After all the mermen fled, the wriggling stone wall began to squeeze the three of them toward Su Mu, as if they were going to be crushed. When Su Mu looked back, the original exit also disappeared. They are trapped here. At the time of crisis, a pure and pleasant face emerged from the wriggling stone wall. It is the mermaid Queen Minyue. Such a face appeared on the wriggling black stone wall, which was extremely strange. There is an uncomfortable sense of inconsistency. But Minyue didn't care at all, she still had that innocent smile on her face, and said softly to the three of Su Mu. If you want to survive, put three drops of blood on your feet, and then. You eliminated many close relatives, right? Su Mu interrupted her and asked her coldly. Hearing this, Minyue was stunned for a moment, and then smiled sweetly. Yeah. The Lingzhu lineage was originally the most numerous and powerful lineage among the mermen. Otherwise, why am I the queen, and the leader of the black stone lineage is only the patriarch? However, the current decay is only temporary. One day, I will lead the mere people to rise to the sea. This day is coming soon. Hearing this, Su Mu sneered, stared at her and sneered. Queen. You deserve it too. You're just a mad woman. You. What do you know? Who told you? Who? I'm going to eliminate her. Eliminate her. As soon as these words came out, Minyue couldn't hold back. Her complexion changed, and there was a hysterical and crazy killing intent in her eyes. Su Mu is very sensitive to ghosts. After entering this so-called secret realm, I vaguely felt that something was wrong. It was not until Minyue tore his face and the stone wall revealed its original shape that Su Mu discovered that there were a large number of remnants here. And most of them are the remnants of the mere people of the Lingzhu lineage. These remnant souls are so weak that ordinary people can't see them at all. 
Su Mu could see some faint afterimages, and due to the increased favorability of magic fate, these remnants were very close to him. They gathered around Su Mu's ears and said a lot of things intermittently. Putting it all together, Su Mu roughly got the truth of the matter. As Mingyue said, the Lingzhu lineage is the most powerful lineage among the Mer people. Therefore, the leader is called the Queen. But Mingyue is not the mermaid queen, but the orphan of a traitor, who has been bullied and looked down upon by Lingzhu's lineage. In this environment, Mingyue's mind has been distorted, but she just doesn't have the strength to do anything. Until more than ten years ago, she accidentally encountered a strange deep sea monster. This monster is like a stone but not a stone, like a fish but not a fish, it can barely be called a stone fish. Mingyue discovered that the stone fish demon would produce a strange spiritual pulp after swallowing flesh and blood. This kind of spirit slurry is useless waste to the stone fish demon. But for other creatures, it has a big effect. Taking this kind of spiritual paste will not see results in a short period of time, but it will gradually accumulate. After accumulating to a certain level, you can directly advance to the Grandmaster Realm. It feels a bit like a progress bar, and it just takes off when it's full. Before that, even if it was 99%, it was nothing. After learning this, Mingyue with a twisted mind came up with a crazy idea. Sacrifice clansmen and gain power. The stonefish demon is powerful and intelligent. After Mingyue communicated with him, one person and one demon reached a cooperation. Under the lure of Mingyue, a large number of mermen from the Lingzhu line entered the so-called secret realm, and then were swallowed up. The stonefish demon is powerful, and it doesn't matter if it is discovered later, just work hard and it's over. In this way, the middle and high-level members of the merman lineage were slaughtered. Only some low-level mermen who surrendered to Mingyue were lucky enough to save their lives. But Mingyue didn't stop there. Even if the Lingzhu lineage is the most powerful branch among the mermen, the number of people is less than half. Spiritual paste is not enough. There are more sharks waiting for her to devour. Mingyue wants to accumulate enough spirit pulp as soon as possible to advance to the master realm. So, keep killing. But the stone fish monster often needs to sleep, so Mingyue uses her innate charm and affinity to recruit some strong people to help. After helping, let the stone fish demon devour them all. It belongs to you who sold it and asked you to count the money for her. And Su Mu, the tomb Taoist and the crab essence are the tool people selected by Mingyue this time. Before that, Mingyue had never let go of any tool people who had used up. But this time, Su Mu, who is handsome and mysterious, made her heart cords fluctuated, and she became convinced. Who knew that when Su Mu broke the defense with a few words, there was only hysterical killing intent in his eyes. I'm not a mad woman. I'm the queen of the mermaid, I'm the queen of the mermaid. Eliminate him. Mingyue's pure and pleasant face was full of hideousness, and she stared at Su Mu fiercely. Under her urging, the stone wall accelerated to wriggle, and many spikes pierced towards them. Ah! Slut, slut! Damn you! The tomb Taoist was poisonous, and he couldn't use his magical powers. He had been pierced by several sharp thorns. Colorless, odorless and difficult to detect. And extremely toxic. Those with strong physiques like Sumo and Crab Essence, or those with unusual techniques, can still withstand it. The Tomb Taoist can't do it, and he is about to die under a double attack. This time, he was planted. The Tomb Taoist was on the verge of death, and Su Mu was no better. If they can't escape in time, they will die as the stone wall wriggles and shrinks. Fortunately, Su Mu has a backer. Thinking of this, he touched the statue of the three beasts in his arms. It seems that there is less meat soon. 137. Sacrifice the little finger of the right foot, teleport. Su Mu grabbed the statue of the three beasts in his arms and meditated in his heart. In the next instant, he and the crab spirit under the seat were teleported out of the demon belly and returned to the sea. But Su Mu found out that he had only been teleported a dozen miles away. It seems that the more powerful the transmitted object, the more flesh and blood it will consume. Bringing the crab essence and sacrificing a little finger will greatly shorten the distance sent. 
This distance is simply not enough to escape the pursuit of the stone fish demon. Although I don't know how Su Mu and the crab spirit escaped, Mingyue and the stone fish demon didn't plan to let them go. The stone fish demon is huge, with a length of several hundred meters, otherwise it would not be able to accommodate so many mermaids. Its outer stone skin is bumpy, and even coral grows in some places. The overall appearance is very fierce, and a pair of small eyes are slow and fierce. Moo. The stone fish monster made a strange cry, and the sound wave swayed in the sea water, and then the huge monster body broke out into a black awn and eliminated Su Mu and the crab essence. Run. Su Mu was startled, and quickly patted the hard shell of the crab essence. In fact, there is no need for Su Mu to say, the crab essence also knows to run. The aura of the stone fish demon is extremely tyrannical, and its strength is comparable to that of a top grandmaster, otherwise most of the mermaids in the Lingzhu lineage cannot be destroyed. In the face of this level of monsters, their master and servant seem to have no other way but to escape. But where to escape is very important. Under the command of Su Mu, the crab essence fled to the depths of the sea. Yes, Su Mu intends to summon the undersea giant monster to help. It's just that Su Mu didn't know the specific location of the Karakau, but roughly estimated that it was somewhere in the depths of the sea. Don't look at the crab's length and seem to be stupid, but the speed of escaping is not slow. Crab legs dance like lightning. Under the circumstance that the opening was more than 10 miles away, the two of them would not be caught by the stone fish demon for a while. But the distance between the two sides is constantly shrinking, so there is definitely no way to escape. The key point is whether it can summon the submarine giant monster. Su Mu sat firmly on the back of the crab spirit, took out the statue of the three beasts, held it in his hands and called out silently. Boss, help. Murder. Boss, can you hear me? Give me some reaction. Hello. Are you mentally handicapped? The younger brother is being chased and eliminated, don't you care? Su Mu called out a few words in a row, but his words were rude. Anyway, Su Mu didn't worry about offending him, despite his stupid look. Fortunately, after a while of calling, the octopus statue in the middle of the three beast statues finally lit up. Sacrifice. But. Exchange. Everything. The intermittent voice sounded in Su Mu's mind, hoarse and strange with a hint of stupidity. Although the Karakau looks like he has a bad mind, he is very principled. To get from it, you must first sacrifice. Is it possible to sacrifice the crab under me? Su Mu's first reaction was to sacrifice the crab essence under his butt. Although the mount is good, life is more important. No. Only those who hold idols. Can make sacrifices. After getting the hideous response, Su Mu was a little disappointed, and then fell into contemplation. Right now there are two options. One is to abandon the crab essence, and then sacrifice a thumb to teleport to a farther place. The second is to pay a higher price and ask the sea monster to take action and destroy the stone fish monster. After thinking about it, Su Mu decided to choose two. In this dungeon world, Savage must be the key link. But until now, Su Mu didn't know much about the sea monster. I only know that its strength is extremely powerful, and it definitely has the strength above the martial god realm. And it is huge in size, hidden in the depths of the sea, and looks a bit like an octopus. However, Su Mu has not seen the whole picture of the carnage. It's too large, and is partly hidden and shadowed, so that no one can see it. Its overall appearance can only be inferred from the place where it is seen and the shape on the statue of the three beasts. In addition, the state of the carnage seems to be a bit wrong. Su Mu thought about the possibility of it being sealed. But when Cao used his power, there was no obstruction at all, and it didn't look like he was blocked at all. So this possibility is ruled out. Could it be that this giant monster was born stupid? It's not impossible. In short, option 2 is not just for solving the troubles of the moment. It is to learn more about this powerful undersea monster. After making the decision, Su Mu took action. I sacrificed my life in exchange for a shot from you. But there is one premise, you have to let me live for another three years. 
Take my life in three years. How? After speaking, Su Mu waited a little nervously. This sacrifice method is equivalent to credit. And it is a very shameful way of credit. Because Su Mu didn't know if he could live another three years in this life. He may have already started his next life without waiting for Hua to collect the bill. After Su Mu finished speaking, Hua was silent. After a while, its voice sounded again. Can. Hearing this, Su Mu let out a sigh of relief. The huge stone fish demon was less than three miles away from them, and just now, it opened its mouth and spat out a boulder, which blasted at them like a cannonball. Fortunately, the crab essence reacted fast enough to avoid it in time. Otherwise, the deep pit tens of meters wide that was smashed out of the seabed should have appeared on Su Mu and Crab Jing. This stone fish monster is the top group of big monsters in the sea world, and there are very few that can threaten its existence. However, Caracal is the absolute king of this sea world. After the deal was concluded, the carnage took action. The sea area where Su Mu and the others were suddenly surging. The sea water became extremely manic, and the flow rate instantly increased a hundred times. It felt like being caught in a hurricane. Except for Su Mu, the crab spirit and the stone fish demon, most of the other little demons were crushed instantly and exploded to death. Sediment and gravel spewed out of the turbulent sea. Just because the bottom of the sea suddenly cracked, a huge tentacle came out. This tentacle, the front end alone, is even bigger than the stone fish demon. With its appearance, the violent sea water suddenly quieted down. And it is completely still. In an instant, the transition from extreme movement to extreme stillness was completed. This feeling makes the living beings in it very uncomfortable. Su Mu only felt that his internal organs were disturbed, and he felt like he wanted to vomit blood, but couldn't. This is actually already calculated. After all, the tentacles drilled out of the bottom of the sea were not aimed at Su Mu, he was just affected. As for the stone fish demon locked by the savage, it was already immobile at this time. The sea water around it has turned into the strongest object in the world, trapping it in place. Not to mention the body, even the demon power and soul are bound tightly. This powerful and ferocious monster is just a slightly bigger bug in front of the ferocious. Su Mu saw that in the small eyes of the stone fish demon, the previous fierce color was gone, and it turned into a kind of extreme fear and panic. Its petrified fish lips trembled slightly, as if it wanted to say something or roar something. But with its strength, it is already the limit to be able to shake the fish lips twice. What did you do? What did you do to my baby? The bright moon in the stone fish demon was not bound, but it still couldn't leave the stone fish demon's body. After sensing the movement outside, Mingyue was startled and frightened. She didn't know what was going on, but she vaguely felt that it had something to do with the legendary existence at the bottom of the sea. But she just invited a teenage human boy casually, how could she find such a terrifying existence? Where did this troublemaker come from? Mingyue can't figure it out fortunately, her troubles will soon be over. The huge tentacles drilled from the bottom of the sea slowly padded the stone fish demon. But it brought a trend of collapse, unstoppable. In the sea, the caracal is the absolute king. The whole sea rhythmically moves with its breathing. What seems to be a slow and light blow is actually an attack on the entire sea. The endless power of the ocean crushed the stone fish demon, and the world it relied on became its mortal enemy. This shot made the once proud and powerful body of the stone fish demon burst open and turned into powder. Even the merman in the body died. 138. Seeing the stone fish demon disappearing into ashes, Su Mu felt a little emotional. Such a powerful monster has been in the sea for many years. But at this time, if you say death, you will die, and you can't control your own destiny at all. Once you can't mess with it, it's all over. I don't know when Su Mu will be able to live freely without worrying about any threats. Just thinking about that feeling is wonderful. But it's too early to say these things, let's get over the immediate difficulties first. Shooting the dead stone fish demon queen, the huge tentacles slowly sank and submerged into the bottom of the sea. The originally cracked seabed miraculously returned to its original state, like stepping back in time. 
It seems that there are still many methods for the undersea giant monster. Let's go. After everything calmed down, Sumu patted the crab spirit under the seat and motioned it to go in one direction. This gentle slap made the crab spirit shudder violently, and there was awe in the small eyes. Its low IQ couldn't figure out what was going on just now. But there is one thing that the crab spirit understands, some kind of powerful method used by its owner to destroy the powerful stonefish demon. Even the stonefish demon much stronger than it has been destroyed, what else can it do except be obedient? What's more, it doesn't seem like a bad thing to have such a powerful master. In this way, the crab essence Zhang Hun became soft counselor. It carried Su Mu obediently, and swam to Fusang country according to Su Mu's guidance. Along the way, Su Mu used the strength of the crab spirit to eliminate some monsters with good strength. After cooking, these monsters all entered his stomach. Under the action of food tonic, the strength of Su Mu, who had eaten a lot of monsters, improved a lot. The only bad thing is that after eating too many monsters, some monster characteristics appear on him. For example, some scales grow, octopus suckers appear on the tongue, etc. These are the side effects of food supplements. But Su Mu was not worried at all. How many times he has been a real demon, is he still afraid of these Su changes? Done. The speed of the crab essence was much faster than that of Su Mu and the others. Even if it takes time to hunt down some monsters occasionally, the progress of the journey is fast. A week later, Su Mu and Crab Jing successfully landed in the previous small fishing village. But as soon as he got ashore, Su Mu realized something was wrong. He vaguely smelled a faint smell of blood, and not far away there were several corpses lying in disorder. These corpses were not starved to death, but were eliminated. Here, there is a battle. Ha! Huh. It's Luo Wu's move. After Su Mu stepped forward to check, he found that the bodies were villagers in the village, and that Luo Wu, Song Ding Kong, and others eliminated them. If you feel it carefully, you can smell a wisp of residual demonic energy. This made Su Mu's brows furrowed. Something is wrong. Thinking of this, Su Mu hurriedly rushed into the village. Later, it was found that the village was full of corpses and Li Yakin and his party had disappeared. Something very bad must have happened in this small fishing village. Li Yakin and the other twenty or so pirates would not eliminate for no reason, let alone leave without waiting for Su Mu. Combined with the demonic energy remaining on the villagers' bodies, Su Mu had a rough guess. It should be that something terrible happened in this small fishing village, forcing Li Yakin and his party to eliminate. And still in a dangerous place to this day, so must flee, unable to come back to rendezvous with Sumu. It's even possible. Already dead. The more Sumu thought about it, the more ugly his face became, and he hurriedly continued to look for it. Finally, in the place where they were hiding before, they found a piece of rag stuffed under the table. There are only four scribbled words on it. There are demons. Run away. These few words, at a glance, knew that they were written in a very hurry. Su Mu could imagine that the situation at that time must be extremely critical. This blood should be left behind after the person who wrote the letter was injured. It's his own blood. In addition to the cloth strip, Su Mu also smelled a faint stench in one place. The stench and the smell were mixed together, making it difficult to tell the difference. It is also thanks to him that he is a person who refines qi, and his five senses are sensitive. This stench is not like the human race can have. Most likely it was left by the monster who attacked Li Yakin and the others. Unfortunately, there are no other clues. I don't know what kind of monsters are chasing Li Yakin and the others. But what is certain is that Li Yakin and his party have encountered a big crisis. This Fusang country is not a good place either. Even better. In this world, where is the pure land? Thinking of this, Su Mu couldn't help sighing. After searching again and again to make sure that there were no missing clues, Su Mu rode the crab spirit and followed the faint traces left by Li Yakin and his party, heading towards the mainland of Fusang. The crab spirit can also move on land, but its strength will be reduced by about 30 to 40 percent. It resisted going far inland, but had to do so at Su Mu's request. 
After all, in the eyes of the crab essence, Su Mu is an irreversible and terrifying existence. Fusang country is very desolate, and the seaside area is sparsely populated. One person and one crab followed the traces left by Li Yakin and his party for two days, and finally found the second village. Su Mu first let the huge crab spirit hide, and then quietly sneaked into the village. There are about three or four hundred people in this village, and they all look numb, like walking dead. On the surface, there seems to be nothing unusual. But there is no exception, it is the biggest exception. The traces left by Li Yakin and his party were broken before the village. This shows that they have been here. Since it has been here, it is impossible to have no traces at all. Su Mu concluded that there was definitely something wrong with this village. It's just that, on the surface, nothing can be found. After thinking for a while, Su Mu decided to observe for a while. He hid in a hidden corner of the village, quietly waiting for the night to come. Su Mu wanted to see what was weird about this village. In the darkness, should those ghosts and ghosts show up too? Time passed little by little. As the sun sets, the light gradually fades away. Darkness, like a layer of gauze mist, shrouded this dilapidated village. A cryptic, eerie, cold and oppressive aura gradually permeated. The darkness that is so thick that it cannot be dissolved flows around like a liquid, and it seems to be turned into substance. As soon as the night fell, the village showed a terrible scene, and Su Mu was very shocked to see it. He was keenly aware that this ordinary village had changed. It's like falling into from the world. I'm afraid there will be a big terror attack. Thinking of this, Su Mu quickly took out the Tao talisman and tried to contact the crab essence. But after trying several times in a row, the Tao talisman left on the crab essence did not respond. The connection between the two has been severed. Su Mu's heart sank slightly he knew that this place was by no means the good place. It is very likely that Li Yak and his party were planted here. What to do next? Are you going to investigate alone? Or do you want to find a way to contact the crab essence first, and then act with one more help? Su Mu's mind changed rapidly, and before he could make up his mind, the sound of gongs and drums suddenly came from the village. And a burst of babbling chants. He looked up and found that the originally ruined village became magnificent and lit up with a strange red light at some point. It looks like blood is about to drip from it. 139. The strange changes in the village are still on the line. The chants of babble and drums are getting louder and louder. Like a worm into your ear. The eerie red light followed, illuminating every corner of the village. Su Mu was almost exposed. Fortunately, he used the invisibility technique in time to temporarily hide his figure. I can't just hide, I have to see what happened. Thinking like this, Su Mu climbed up to a cold, wet and greasy two-story building nearby and looked at the place where the singing sounded. Then I saw a very strange scene. I saw all the villagers in the village gathered together, twisting their bodies one by one, singing and dancing like boneless men, and walked towards the center of the village together. Every villager's face was filled with a stiff and twisted smile. This kind of smile will not bring warmth, but will only make people feel cold. If that's all it is, that's all. Although it can scare ordinary people, but in Su Mu's view, it can only be regarded as well alive. But what happened next made Su Mu's eyes widen. The villagers twisted their bodies and moved towards the center of the village singing and dancing. As they moved forward, a little bit of black or blood-colored light appeared above their heads. These light spots gradually merged together and turned into a giant statue. It looks like the three big snakes on the statue of the three beasts. These villagers were carrying this blood-black statue, and the smiles on their faces were getting bigger and bigger, and they had torn their ears. Afterwards, one after another blood energy circulated among them. Crack. Su Mu clearly heard a strange noise. This is the sound of a villager's skull cracking. His head split from the middle, and then a hideous ghost head covered with black blood emerged. Immediately afterwards, the villager's limbs and the flesh on his chest were all torn apart. A monster in the shape of a mandrel emerged from his body. A good living person has just turned into a monster. 
this is just one of them. The same thing happened to many villagers. As they sang and danced, their flesh was torn apart, and various strange shaped monsters emerged from their bodies, replacing them. Su Mu even saw a ghost with a head that grows under the crotch and has three heads. That appearance can no longer be described as ugly. Ordinary people just look at it, I am afraid that they will have nightmares for several nights. You might even spit out the bile. Among the three or four hundred villagers, about a hundred have transformed into demons and ghosts, and the rest remain the same. They mingled with human beings and monsters like this, continuing to beat gongs and drums, chanting in a low voice, and carrying three large snake statues to the center of the village. After seeing the hundreds of transformed demons, Su Mu's heart sank to the bottom. This group of ghosts has an obscure atmosphere, and it is impossible to judge their specific strength for a while. But Su Mu subconsciously had the urge to turn around and run away. This is enough to show how terrifying these monsters are. However, Su Mu has nowhere to escape. The area outside the village disappeared, and it all turned into an extreme darkness, like an abyss that devoured people. Su Mu has a hunch, stepping into it is only afraid that even more terrible things will happen. In desperation, he could only stay in place and wait for the next development of the matter. With the arrival of the demons and villagers, the dust in the center of the village dissipated, revealing a huge altar. This group of demons and demons placed the statues of the three big snakes in the middle of the fear, and then respectfully performed a strange etiquette together. Kind of like some kind of ritual. After the worship, the hundreds of demon beasts suddenly started killing, turning around and pounced on the group of villagers who had not transformed. These untransformed villagers did not resist in the slightest. Their faces were filled with stiff and cold smiles, and they were stiffly waiting for the fate of being eliminated and eaten. Hundreds of demons and demons, just like this, started a gluttonous feast. For a time, flesh and blood flew, and the internal organs were turbulent. Even Su Mu felt a little uncomfortable watching that scene. The demons and ghosts of Fusang Kingdom are somewhat different in style from those of Dagon. They are more hellish. Whether it is appearance, breath, or behavior, it is more inclined to the word ghost. After a quarter of an hour, this crazy and gluttonous feast finally ended. Only bone residue and blood plasma remained. Strangely, there was still one villager who was not eaten. A spherical ghost full of eyes led the villager to the statue of the three big snakes, and then a burst of red light enveloped him. Su Mu was surprised to see that under the red light, the villagers' flesh and blood shrank into a ball. And then reshaped into another person. This man has a short stature and is very sturdy. It was actually the Takeda Shota that Su Mu had met at sea before. After he appeared, he immediately kneeled respectfully in front of the statue of the three big snakes and prayed devoutly. Supreme Serpent God, humble believer with all loyalty and gratitude to you. Please destroy the enemy standing in front of us. His Karazushi. Su Mu has learned Fusang at sea and can basically understand it. But Takeda Shoga's last spell was incomprehensible at all. After the incantation was finished, the altar in the village slowly cracked open, and a larger three headed snake stone statue rose from the ground. Below the statue hang more than two dozen corpses with tragic death. After Su Mu glanced at it from a distance, surging murderous intent and hatred immediately appeared in his eyes. These corpses are not others. It was Li Yakin, Luo Wu, Song Dingkong, and the others. There were 23 people in total, and none of them were able to escape. They all turned into corpses and were hung on the stone statues of three large snakes. And with fear and pain written all over his face. It is not peaceful to want to come and go. Su Mu was extremely angry. Although this is just a simulation world. But people are not plants. Li Yakin treats him very well. After getting along for a long time, how could he have no feelings at all? At this moment, Su Mu made up his mind to destroy those three big snakes sooner or later. Not only this dungeon world, but also the main world. The only good news is that the whereabouts of the three giant monsters on the statue of the three beasts are all clear. The red dragon centipede went to Dagon and became a national teacher, 
wanting to devour the dragon energy of the country and turn into a real dragon the octopus lurks in the deep sea, it is the least troublesome one, but the status game amount is wrong. As for the last three-headed serpent, they were in the country of Fusang, and they seemed to be doing well. Not only did the hundred demons surrender, but even the high-ranking family members like Takeda Sakata bowed down in front of it. Could it be that this giant monster controlled the Fusang kingdom? It's not impossible. But no matter how powerful it is, if Su Mu kills the heart together, it will not stop. This monster, he will get rid of it. 140. On the other side, Bai Gue is still in action. Some almost transparent remnants floated from the corpses of Luo Wu and the others, and were swallowed by the terrifying ghost with eyes full of eyes. Seeing this scene, Takeda Shta on the side couldn't help showing a hideous smile. That young man named Su Mu is extremely talented. If he doesn't die, he will have endless troubles. Lord Bai Mu swallows the remnant soul of his accomplice, and he can lock his position. This time, Su Mu will die. Saying that, Takeda Shoga's eyes flashed a hint of color. What if he is a genius? Not to die in his hands. If you dare to their goods from Fusang, you must prepare for death. A few days ago, Takeda Shoda followed Situ Zhong and searched the sea for many days. In the end, it was discovered that Su Mu and his party had escaped to Fusang country. So Takeda immediately returned to the family and communicated with the snake gods that the four families have always worshipped. Then the snake drove the ghosts to look for the traces of Su Mu and his party. Not long after, Li Yakin and Luo Wu were found and they were successfully strangled. Only Su Mu was gone. And what General Takeda is most afraid of is Su Mu. Su Mu is not dead, he can't rest assured. The ceremony held this time is to summon a hundred ghosts, find Su Mu and completely obliterate him. The people of Fusang understand the principle of cutting weeds and eradicating the roots. In addition, they can also take this opportunity to show their power to King Jinshan. After all, Su Mu could even hurt Sidu Zhong, forcing him to cut off his arm. Although performing this ritual is costly, as long as he can get rid of Su Mu and show his strength. In the eyes of the senior leaders of the four major families of Fusang, it was worth it. In short, they will not foolishly give Su Mu a chance to grow up, but will eliminate everything in the cradle. The majesty of the four major families should not be offended. Su Mu, who was hiding in the dark, didn't know what those demons and demons were doing, but he was already a little uneasy in his heart. I originally thought it was just a slightly abnormal village, but who knew there were so many monsters? This time, he rushed into the devil's cave, and he was planted. I don't know if there is any chance for Li Yakin and the others to take revenge in this life. While Su Mu pondered various questions, he observed secretly. I saw that after the hundred-eyed ghost devoured those remnants, the eyeballs on his body suddenly turned rapidly. And it shoots out green light, which turns into essence and spreads in all directions like silk threads. These green lights can track hematoxylin. But what Bai Gue didn't expect was that the hundreds of green lights suddenly stopped before they extended far. Then they congealed together and pointed in one direction. There, it is Su Mu's hiding place. I found that kid. He's actually by our side, so brave. He he he. The hundred eyes ghost had no mouth, but still made a cold voice and a sly smile. Hearing this, hundreds of strangely shaped ghosts turned their heads in unison, and followed the green light to the place where Su Mu was hiding. At this moment, Su Mu was stared at the hair all over his body, and a chill went straight to his forehead. Discovered. Su Mu was shocked, and immediately took out the statue of the three beasts, ready to call Hua to help. Who would have guessed that he had just taken out the statue of the three beasts, and the two statues of three big snakes on the altar suddenly wriggled and came to life, making a neigh at Su Mu. Hiss. This hissing sound is like substance, and it pierces Su Mu's soul, as if a heavy hammer slammed it down. This time, there was a sharp pain in his brain, and the five senses were chaotic. His ears were buzzing, his eyes were blurry, and he could smell a smell in his nostrils. Su Mu's perception of the outside world was reduced to a pitiful level, and he couldn't even see the three beast statues in his hands. 
The three giant monsters on the statue of the three beasts may have a certain gap in strength. But the three big snakes can be on the same level as the red dragon centipede and the undersea giant monster, how is it easy to deal with? It was just a nay that made Su Mu's soul almost collapse. Fortunately, Su Mu's will was firm, and he bit the tip of his tongue to stabilize his mind. But what happened next left him feeling a little hopeless. The snake statue on the statue of the three beasts lit up with a burst of blue light, covering the entire statue of the three beasts. In this way, the communication between Su Mu and Huo was cut off. Caracal seems to have noticed the same. The octopus in the center radiated a burst of blue light, breaking the shackles of the blue light little by little. Blue light is more vicious than cyan light. Looking at that trend, even the ones that light up behind can quickly break through the blue light and counteract the three-headed serpent. But the problem is that it takes about ten breaths to see the progress. In normal times, ten breaths are just a few words of effort. But right now, Su Mu couldn't hold his breath any longer. His invisibility has been broken. The ghosts on the altar stared at him viciously, and they have already eliminated him. It's him, he's Su Mu. Eliminate him and gnaw his bones into slag. Takeda Shta shouted fiercely with pride on his face. At this moment, he wished that he was also a demon, so that he could take revenge himself. But the current Takeda Shota is just using the body of others to move his soul. This fragile body only allows him to watch from behind. At this time, Sumu had no time to take care of Takeda Shota. Hundreds of ferocious, eerie and cold, or ugly and terrifying demons and demons, babbling and singing, twisted their bodies to eliminate Sumu together. For a time, ghosts roared, and the Yin Chi was prosperous. This bizarre scene is terrifying. Those who are a little timid, I am afraid that they will be scared to death, and may even be scared to death. These hundred ghosts are the most powerful demons in all parts of Fusan country. They were summoned together at this time. How could Su Mu, who didn't help him, resist? It can only be said that Su Mu had previously repelled Sidu Zhong and forced him to cut off his own arm, which left a deep impression on Takeda General. There was even a hint of fear. Takeda will be too afraid of this fierce, powerful young genius. Afraid that he will grow up one day and step on them. Therefore, under the persuasion of Takeda Shta, the four major families did not hesitate to pay a huge price to summon a hundred ghosts in the name of the snake god. The purpose is to eliminate Su Mu. Hundred ghosts night walked, Xiang Su Mu surrounded and eliminated. The yin and yang of the Fusang kingdom are reversed, and the ghosts have overwhelmed the humans. Of these hundred ghosts, it would be extremely terrifying to pick any one out. Even if it comes with the help of someone else's body, it is extremely powerful. With only one, Su Mu was powerless to deal with it. What's more, what about ghosts? Although he knew that he was going to die, Su Mu would not give in, let alone wait for death. Eliminate. Su Mu roared angrily and charged at Bai Gue with a knife. Even if he died, he would die standing up. Because Su Mu's body can die, but his spirit must not fall. Su Mu tried his best to display all kinds of Taoist magical powers, martial arts, and swordsmanship, and fought with hundreds of ghosts. No matter what means are used, there is no way to take the ghosts, and they can't hurt them in the slightest. After three breaths, a hundred ghosts rushed forward, about to drown Su Mu. Taking advantage of this last moment, Su Mu looked coldly at General Takeda, and smirked and wiped his neck. At this glance, Takeda's smile suddenly froze. For some reason, he suddenly felt a huge chill, and climbed up his body like a poisonous snake along his spine. It was as if someone had put a knife around his neck, and his fate was completely in the hands of others. Someone can eliminate him with a single thought. Strange, why do I feel this way? This kid is already dead, what are you afraid of? Takeda will shake his head too much to throw this strange feeling out. Eliminate him for me. General Takeda let out a roar, wanting to eliminate Su Mu as soon as possible, so as to eliminate the feeling of fear in him. Just as he yelled, the hideous ghosts drowned Su Mu while laughing and singing. All kinds of demons and ghosts fell on Su Mu's body. His flesh, 
blood and soul were all eaten up by this group of demons and demons, and he was eliminated on the spot. The way to die in this life is similar to the previous one. Undying although this talent can make Su Mu's vitality extremely tenacious, in this situation, there is only one way to die. The second world is over.